Is it Joe Rogan? No, I guess they're keeping Joe and they're saying fuck Obama. I can't remember how long their contract God with Joe damn. Rogan even is, but he's um he's he's out of controversy now, right? He's back to being normal. What's going on? Yeah, I'm sure he's fine. I don't know that. I... I'm not sure I don't, how I don't... much that matters. I think it's like just Joe Rogan was really popular. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's uh, any company, right? Like. It's like, is it, is it, we can hang on to him? Yeah, 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 we're okay. Yeah, okay. Oh, oh, oh. It seems to be that. Alrighty. Live, live. Oh, there we go. I got him. Got to set the public. Public. Yes, that's necessary. Pub public. Yeah, you look Just all comfy and ready to go to sleep there, Rags. I am. It's one of those days. Sometimes it's a it's a nice warm day and you get up kind of early, you go out and about, and then you get home around one or so and you're just you just feel cozy. Mm. You just wanna Oh, it's all it's all just so wonderful. You know, Not I've dim, I've done in some free time in the past like week. What have you done? Played tower defense games while listening to big old true crime documentaries about the greatest yeah. serial killers of all time. It's a very strange combination. Yeah, I will, uh, I will back you up on the the strange combination thing. I'm, a, it's very rare that I sit down and focus on a YouTube video. I'm a big multitasker. I'm playing a game. I'm doing some vid visual stuff on a video, or I'm um doing something but i'll be listening to music or i'll be talking with people or i'll have a a video plan i've been, I've been listening to his ah oh, what's his name his his the histocrat talking about mm. the birth of civilization so i've been listening to some of that stuff idly and yeah that's a neat topic some things up yeah i i legitimately think it really is yeah so it's good to sort of absorb all of that as you're as you're playing a game and just kind of chatting away. Yeah, because what's Springy like, been doing though? Oh yeah, what have you been up to? Wait, what have I been doing? <laughs> yeah, Springy, what have you been doing? I've been editing. Oh my goodness! Yeah, I'm I gotta I gotta put some final time. touches on mine too. Oh, I was talking about free time I, specifically, non-editing time. I I've been playing Mario Kart. That's what oh, I've been doing. which one? Eight. Yeah, of course. Well, I mean, Double Dash, it's people, you know... Smaller <laughs> I love people who assume Double Dash, yeah, that everyone plays Double people. Dash nonstop. Yeah, this is EFAP, yeah. What I, I'll tell you what I did this morning. I We woke up, and we went to a gun show. We went to a gun and knife show at the uh, at the Arkansas Fairgrounds. A gun and, and knife show. Gun and knife show. They're, they're kind of paired together. Because, hmm. you know, it overlaps a bit, I suppose. People who might want both. But um, I went with... Uh, my dad and we went for a couple hours looked around at a bunch of tables um you just you just walk in it's like 10 bucks admission walk in guns accessories uh surplus kits rifle parts optics everything that you could ever want and so we, we we spent hours looking around looking around i almost almost bought some stuff but i didn't quite find something that was really really calling to me i almost got a few things i i will say this i was really close they had a they had i i what i ended up buying was uh money like old bills and stuff i got some some soviet money with a hammer and sickle on it some some ruble notes um some 1944 so world war ii era greek uh money and there was a guy there with a bunch of World War II, like legit, like Nazi paraphernalia, badges, service, like iron crosses, all kinds of stuff like that. And historically speaking, anything with a swastika on it is going to be worth money because it has a very, very specific and well-known place in history. It's like Confederate money or you know things of that nature. And so they had a... And an SS red armband and everything. And I was, I almost bought it because that's such a weird thing to have. It's so crazy that that's just a thing that's real. It reminds you that this stuff existed. That, because I've got, um, 
I've got I've got some Nazi coins that are they like the logos and everything. And it's very it's this tangible part of history that you can hold in your hand. And it reminds you that this stuff is real. This actually happened. This isn't just some story in a book. It's it's real. This was a real thing that happened. And I think that's kind of important for us to be able to understand that this kind of stuff is legit. It's not just some fairy tale. It actually happened. Mm. But I went I went to like a fair and got a Hot Wheels brand TIE Fighter. Oh, not oh I was thinking about you because that same guy with all the Nazi stuff, he had nineteen seventy-seven and no, he he had nineteen seventy-seven and nineteen eighties vintage Star Wars care uh, figures. He had a bunch of stormtroopers and scout troopers and stuff. And I almost was like, oh, I instantly thought about you, Mahler, for whatever reason. Because they had like snow troopers from 1980 when Empire Strikes Back came out and they had all the toys and everything. And I was like, oh, it would have been really cool to have them. But I'm now I'm now I'm dreadfully fearful that tomorrow I'm going to the historical stuff like, wow. And then I'm like, look at the snow trooper rags. I was it was <laughs> it looked cool. It was this old 80s. I mean, it, it's legit, totally legit. And. I, I worry that I'm going to wake up tomorrow and say, Rags, God damn it! why didn't you buy that Arasaka in 762 by 39? You know that it wasn't that expensive and it would have been cool. And why didn't you buy it? And it's like, I don't know. I just, ah, it's, and I worry. Why didn't you buy that SS Nazi armband? It's like, I don't know. It's, I don't know. Uh, I, I hope I don't feel regret for not buying anything because there was a lot of really cool stuff there. They had all kinds of dummy training rifles from World War II and... Um, all kinds of just military paraphernalia, badges, uh, canteens. They had uh, medical kits from World War II. It's all kinds of cool historical stuff. And mm. uh, sometimes I wonder, it'd be, it'd be cool to have some of that to just have around. But I didn't end up buying any firearms, though. They just didn't quite have something that I was super looking for. I almost bought a 1912 uh, Steyr uh, pistol, but they didn't have the clips for it. So I'm like, God damn it. If you had the clips, I would have bought it on the spot. But you are a clips kind of guy. Like, I've noticed that. I like clip. I love clips. Magazines, clips. There, there's something. There really is something special about a clip. Just just sliding it into a rifle. And oh, it's it's so just mechanically. It's so tactily appealing. And, you know, there's oh. such a cultural relevance in that everyone calls magazines clips, or a lot of people do. You know, it's... It does annoy me. It does <laughs> annoy me. Because that's it's what I... It's kind of weird that that seems to be a thing in, like, American films. Like, I, I know the d difference. You know, <laughs> like, I figured that people who, in a country that's got more of a gun culture would recognize the difference between a clip and a magazine. Um, I, um... I, I think I've only come to be much more aware of gun stuff, thanks to knowing rags, like... And that kind that of and stuff. I've never well, been aware of them. Like, in terms of uh, more so than, oh, it's a metal thing that goes boom, boom, boom. I think the most I ever learned is from fucking COD games. I was about to say, Call of Duty was where I learned about, like, the AK. Wow, I knew about the AK 47, but Call of Duty was where I got a. <laughs> this is so funny to say, a better understanding of what weapons were, which one was which. It's like, oh, I, mean, I know Dead Prey 1. That's like the starting weapon in Modern Warfare 2. <laughs> That's how you get an rifle. No, I, I don't remember right. pointing out the names of guns to my dad in like war movies after playing a lot of COD, uh, World well, of War I specifically. Remember, uh, it seems like in the later Call of Duty games, uh, you could expect. I, I I remember this distinctly that in Call of Duty World War Two, like on the D-Day mission, um, the weapons that German soldiers were using were like, like. Russian Eastern Front like weapons. They weren't actually the weapons that they would have used in that uh in that battle. And that annoyed a lot of people. I think there were just a couple of made up weapons in that game that just didn't exist. Um, which is a weird choice for a historical video game. Yeah, there was but a... I mean that's that's the game where they derail a train and then it like they train that's that's all I'll ever like cite from that game. <laughs> And the train gets derailed and crashes for a minute. Like so a minute it... <laughs> crash sequence. Stupid. To answer the question, LMAO, imagine buying an Arasaka and anything but 9mm Jap. So here's the thing. 762 by 39 is everywhere, and I already have a lot of it. And the rifle was cheap. So when you buy a gun, you have to be thinking, can I get ammunition for this? And if I can, is it expensive? Because that's going to be the 
the cost of the gun over time is the ammunition you shoot with it. And I don't know if I can have easy access to um, the, the rounds that the, the Japanese used because the Chinese got it. So after, so the, the Chinese got their hands on a lot of Japanese Arasakas, converted them to 762 by 39, and that's why it was there. It was, that's, that's how it was. It, that's why it exists, which is great for me and many of us because, again, 762 by 39 is a very, very easy to get a hold of round that is in no short supply. So that's why it is, in a, it is an appealing buy to me and should be to you. Well, there you go. Well, there you go. Now, today we're doing a very unconventional to EFAP today, which is, um, we're a little, well, I'll yes, get you to couldn't the, tell. the second half of it is, is, is we'll, we'll get there. The first half, I was just going to say, just like updates in general, in terms of yeah. what in the Wombles is going on, you know? What's, what's, what be happening out there in that big wide internet world? Um, we, we recently done like a series of very long and involved uh, episodes, and so I figure it's like, this is a nice little, little, little chill out one. You're just gonna listen to us talk. We're just gonna talk about stuff. In fact, you might mm -hmm. just see the EFAP logo on screen for the whole episode. I don't even know if you can survive that, chat, but it's gonna happen. Are you, are you not gonna play a video game? Are you not gonna play Double Dash? I don't think so. I don't really intend <gasps> to. Yeah, I know, crazy. Oh my, crazy, oh my crazy, goodness. Crazy. Though, um, I did play a lot of it recently, as well as in because um, this isn't like a, a secret, it's just good news, I think, right? Like, um, myself, Rags, and Fringy have been trying to chip away at different points in time where we have availability, because unfortunately, this is going to be a shock to everyone in chat, we're not in the same country. Uh, mm. That's just what? the internet making it seem that way. I know hey, you're not in the same country yet. They all think we're in the same room right now. Digital room. Kind We're of. all in the big digital auditorium that is the YouTube live stream. Uh, and so, it's great. combine that with the insistence that we try and get most, if not all, Super Chats read by uh, and listened to by the three hosts as presented, it means that we've been falling behind a little bit. But at the same time, we have uh, actually managed to do a little, at least a little bit of catching up. And what's, what's going to happen is... Uh, we're catching up in, in, in real time, public time, but we're also catching up in, in, in alternative time or, 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 or whatever, offline time. Um, and yeah, the, I think I'd have to check my, my, my records, of course, uh, but I'm pretty sure we, we've, we've uh, done the earliest one that was, was still needing to be caught up, which was uh, Falcon the Winter Soldier. It is all recorded, stitched together, and ready to be put out on the old Moolah. So, I picture I'll put it out once the others are out, as in, like, uh, I, don't, I don't even know what the correct order should be for that, but I'll put, um, you know, like, the title will we'll, we'll make it nice and clear. We're that far behind? Well, so, uh, one of the things we've tried to do, obviously, is, is keep up to date, so every time there's a new one, we, we, we do it. We've managed to nail the, um, the, our relevant ones were done in the stream. Denim's ones were done the Wednesday following, and then the Asan ones were done two Wednesdays following. And so today we'll be doing the multimedia medley ones, and then we're, we're up to date with newest from the last time we, we, we fell a bit back. Though there was, um, we haven't done the Denim's catch-up catch-up. Because that's the kind of problem we end up having. However, I believe we'll get through a whole bunch today. Um, and the plan is obviously that once we get Fully caught up, which is the way that the way I'm planning it right now. It should absolutely be more than possible within, uh, let's just say, X amount of time. Um, I'll continue putting out the catch ups. Uh, it's just that once once we start to run out of ones to put out, because I think I'm four behind right now. Um, I'll start putting out the uh, the offline ones that we've made, and then um, we'll be fully caught up. And so, because th th it may have been noticed, it's like where's uh, where's where's EFAT movies? That's a great question, whoever just said that. It totally wasn't me. Um, there's, there's been a bit of a pause, not necessarily in um, the, the, the recording of them, but I guess kind of in that too, because um, lots of different uh, the, the things have been happening, and it's just been difficult to try and get control over making sure the main episodes are happening. So we got uh, all of that has managed to maintain. It's just that uh, getting recording times for certain uh, movies has just been a bit difficult, such as. 
uh, the, the war movie arc, which, it was funny because uh, when we were answering some of the Falcon Winter Soldier ones, there was like an awareness of, of that arc in those Super Chats, and I was like, man, how many have we recorded in that span of a year for that arc? It's like, probably two, maybe three? <laughs> I can't remember. Just because that selection of people is just impossibly hard to get together. But not only are those still, like, we're still attempting to record them, but they're, they're, they're still getting uh, edited as well. They are actually, they are being created, we're just sort of planning stuff with them. Um, but the thing is, once the catch-up is complete, which there is a system in place that's going to happen. I do hope to actually uh, push the not only recording but uh, editing sort of production line for for EFAP movies much much harder. And it would be nice to one day get to the point where it would maybe one per two weeks. That would be cool. Though I just got to sort out uh, a lot of things with who's making what, how, where, why, when, that sort of thing. Um, I've already seen someone mention it. Batwoman. Where be Batwoman? Hmm, I wonder how much I should uh, give away about such such things. I, I uh, obviously, no, it's, it's still happening, absolutely. Yeah, cause... we don't want to, especially now that we know that Batwoman is, it, it is not being renewed. Batwoman is coming to an end. So, all of, I feel um, that... All of season two's recorded. You've got, all of our reactions for that exist. They just need to be, uh, you know, put into place. Copyright protected. All that stuff. And um, it is happening. I wouldn't want anyone to assume that Das Bullshit isn't, isn't doing some uh, amazing work. The only thing now is that uh, it's been so long for you guys since Batwoman, and uh, I know you, you, you love it. It, it. it felt like we, we, we were talking about it, me and Das, and it's like, should it be sort of like released with whatever we have now, and then we, we, we may have a bit of a gap while he's, uh, he's doing his sort of um, primary job and then we just release them as he's able to make them. Or do we stock them up and then we'll release them in like an actual row one per week once all of season two is sort of done. That is now the plan. Um, so you'll see Batwoman will make a grand return for EFAP. You'll get uh, the rest. Our beautiful queen will ascend to her throne. Yeah. and, it, and We descend into madness. It's, it's kind of funny because um, if you remember, we, we, we are getting a little frustrated with season three because, uh, chat, as you may know, Jacob is, is not in season three. They removed him. Yes. Um, or he they removed, removed him very unceremoniously. We were very disappointed. Yes. And, uh, very disappointed. You'll, 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 you'll see all of It's, it's going to be weird to see us because you, you guys very likely have seen Jay Longbone or as uh, or whomever you may be viewing. That sort of thing uh, already react to all of it. Uh, we 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 have many exasperated and very emotional experiences with all, all of the things that happened in that show. I'm looking forward to it all coming out, but that's um that's where that's at. And you know, I'm looking forward to the time where it's in full production slash release um as well. Uh, what is the point in living anymore? Oh no. Don't worry. Oh no, my goodness gracious. Once the Batwoman coverage comes out, then you'll... <laughs> you'll if you're going to say something like that, do it in Hassan's chat and he won't ban you. <laughs> yeah, he'll be like, there you go. That's the good there, attitude That's the spirit. Have. Um, yeah, uh, uh, it's... There's just been a difficulty in terms of um, streamlining and setting up and scheduling uh, for, for myself, because lots of IRL things uh, be, be happening, uh, as they do. It's kind of... Uh, you know, dare I say, policy to avoid talking about whatever it is specifically. Let's just say it's been uh, rather intrusive to get everything I want done done. Um, so of course I've got my uh, streaming obligations, be it um, open bar slash real BBC slash, of course, the the EFAP, which we're still doing. This, this is the kind of thing to maybe set the picture a bit better. We're doing two per week with. Uh, as fitting as many recordings as we can in the middle, and that only gets us the main podcast and catch up. You know, like, huh? This is getting a little, a little difficult just to maintain. So, with the with the new little thing being added, I I think that uh, we, we should be more than able to complete the super chat catch up stuff, which frees up Wednesday, uh, for very likely EFAP movies recordings or. And I think this is probably going to happen once I get more time to sort it all out. But I'm thinking we have uh, a, a new format for EFAP, which is not necessarily one that's new. It's just one that's renamed to better categorize everything. But 
uh, EFAP TV. Maybe go with a purple color, and that's for covering uh, TV shows instead. Because it feels weird okay. to combine mini with trailers, anything we randomly discuss in a small way, and then also yeah, TV has shows. To catch on this to it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, th I feel like that's probably a good separation. And um, you know, it, it, uh, there will be some things that have been recorded already. Uh, like we've recorded our initial reactions to Midnight Mass and Bly, but that's the kind of shit that I can barely remember a lot of what happened in those now. They'll be redone and reformatted to, to better. It'll be like um, early EFAP movies, I think, had the the standard sort of EFAP red look to them, even though they're, they're all titled and they look blue. But yeah, I feel like uh, purple's the color to go with that. What, what do you think, Rags? What would you pick? Purple's purple's a lovely color. Um, uh, being put on the spot, sort of for thinking of a color. I'm fine with purple. Let me take a look at the. Let's see, blue. We got red, blue, and green are our main set, aren't they? Yellow. Let's take a look. Post video. So we got orange for gaming then as well, which we need to do more. So of when we show. a a good a good bold purple or an orange. We got orange. Um. Do we? EFAP gaming, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, it's been so, it's been so long, I just forgot. It has <laughs> been a it's... while. True. Um, purple is pretty decent. Um, yellow would be a good choice as well. Maybe a very... Hmm. Yeah, those could both work quite mm -hmm. well, I think. We can, we, we can decide on something, absolutely. And uh, and yeah, and that would be nice too if we could do every other Wednesday or something became the EFAB gaming slot, and no matter what, we would just we'd play something. Uh, it's just that there's been limited time to to pack everything in, that's all. And yet we were able to do the complete Twitch arc, which I was I'm very happy worked out real well in in terms of coverage, guests, and all the rest. That's another thing that um I I'm hoping to remedy is to uh schedule more people in. Um, who new people and and old people, but com com combinations that are new. Uh, that's been it's a little difficult when like it's stressful enough to get me, Rags, and Fringy able to, to to get things in order with like one or two guests. Um, but when you like like outreach and stuff can be complicated when you're just constantly doing work. Because this is the other thing, of course, that worth mentioning. The same for all of us. Uh, we just got our main line work, which is uh, you try and do whenever you get uh. Well, time separated from these sorts of obligations. But then you also want to have that time every once in a while where you just do shit because you want to chill out. Like watch serial killer documentaries, as I mentioned. Yeah. Need some tricks and tips. This is, um, I did not know John Wayne Gacy's story. I do now. Gacy. Yeah, he's, uh, because he gets referenced on Red Light Media a bunch. Well, here and there anyway. Uh, now I know exactly what he what he done did. You um, you got lots of weird serial killers in America, huh? I I guess I mean I I don't I don't. I'm, know I'm saying it's about your that, responsibility, so. Rags. Oh well, I mean you know we do the best we can. We're just trying to put ourselves on the map. Yeah, I could do that. That's fair. It's a large country, Mola. Yeah, a large psychopathic serial killing country. No wonder we booed you out. Oh, hey, Jay. Uh, All right. Is that the story now? You booted Americans out. You're like, you know what? We're gonna make our own <laughs> new colony, all right? And you're not gonna be a part of it. We don't like We're serial killers in these pods. You guys are, you guys are too weird. Uh, oh, I love serial killers. Why? I don't know. I just think, you know, all the ones I've met have been pretty cool. I haven't met any yet. Well, to my knowledge. I might have, yeah, that's the uh, thing. Yeah. Maybe we have, we just don't even know. At how, some point, how... I, like, it seems likely, right, to me that at some point, statistically in your life, you've interacted with someone who's killed someone else. Maybe not a serial that's killer. From a serial killer. Yeah, maybe not a serial killer. I think a serial yeah. killers are way rarer. A murderer. But a murderer. Maybe just, yeah, like someone who just murders casually, or just they moonlight as a killer, maybe. Or they just want a little taste of it. But I they don't want to, like, commit to People who killing. have just, like, who have, like just killed someone a way more um like one or two people right a way more common than people who just make a habit of it 
is my understanding. Yeah, uh, really uh, great lack of pride in their work is really <laughs> kind of what I'm noticing. What's taking pride in your work? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, if you mentioned that we hadn't got all the super chats for that done, that means that we're going to have to delve back into that world eventually. Only that one's going to be brief. I think I have two pages with for the, uh, it's okay. the denim's catch-up catch-up. So, you know, the further you go down the line, the quicker it ends up getting, I think. And yeah, I'm sure we're going to knock out a whole bunch today. A lot of people were mentioning Jack the Ripper. Um, I'm pretty sure there's theories that he was American. So there you go. Answers that. Oh, damn. No, no serial killers one of, the, uh, one of the suspects is was American. Exactly. Um, there you go. That's probably I, the one. I think there's like some pretty clear evidence that it wasn't him, though. I need to rewatch the documentary. It's really good. The Let Me Know documentary. Yeah, there's one on Netflix that I, I was like, I wonder if there's any point in watching the Netflix one now that I've seen the Let Me Know one. <laughs> I was like, Let Me Know one's so fucking good. Like, yeah. But, um, He's uh, the guy who made that uh, BD Cooper video, right? The That's the, the one. Yeah, that one was fascinating. I, uh, I basically, actually, all of Let Me Know's videos are fucking awesome. Oh, D is it D.B. Cooper? D.B. Yes, right. well, D.B. I mean, Cooper. I had, well, let's, I, I was completely oblivious to that. When Loki did that parody thing, I had no idea what that was. I didn't know. The only reason I knew about him is because of Red Letter Media. I never right. heard of D.B. Cooper before them. I learn a lot about criminals watching Red Letter Media, <laughs> as the case seems to be. So That's I, I can't remember when I first heard of D.B. Cooper now. Um, it's probably some form of like movie, TV, or some reference. Yeah, it wouldn't have been like... I don't think I was ever taught about D.B. Cooper. For, um, me, for me, it was the Let Me Know video. Yeah, well, oh, wow. I'm saying I watched the Let Me Know video after I'd, uh, yeah, seen the... Oh, well, that was, that was like, months later, actually. Loki did not inspire me to do anything in terms of, like, watching any TV show. Well, I guess <laughs> to watch something that wasn't fucking it. God. Uh... Hey, look, the video's nearly done. Yay. <laughs> Silly over the long night. So yeah, that 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 I think is like kind of an update on 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 where the everything is. I'm just saying like, uh, once we move forward about uh, estimated half a year, I imagine everything will ramp up in terms of things that that, that are additional to uh, it's all like EFAP movies and uh, not gonna, no no promises for when Batwoman would start up, but um. Uh, it's just, yeah, looking to get a, a whole bunch of things. And of course, this Halloween. Um, plenty of big chungus plans, because uh, it was all recorded last Halloween. Looking forward to you guys seeing that. Whoever the guests may be, whoever, whatever the films that may be covered. I'm pretty sure we already said what they were when we were recording it in OmniFab, but, but maybe some people don't remember, and so it could be a nice surprise. Who knows? Yeah, you were in those, remember? No, I actually wasn't listening. I, um, I was doing something else. What did you say? Uh, serial killers in Britain. Oh, I, I was, I've been in lots of serial killers. Yeah. Keep, so that's an odd fetish. Going inside him. That's just... And that, is, that is a fetish, right? It's like... Must be, yeah. That's that like ain't a normal. thing. I mean, it ain't particularly normal, no. But like, that is a thing that happens, is that there are these people who really want to fuck serial killers. Maybe it's for like that weird power dynamic of, oh yeah, well I'm in charge. You might be a serial killer, but I'm fucking you. I, I don't know, yeah, I, I wonder if it's like, um, well, I mean, I guess, you know, ethically that's fine, as so long as you take pre-existing serial killers rather than, you know, getting someone and going, hey, if you kill a few people, I'll fuck you. One of those is definitely worse than the other. It's, um, it's fine that that's something you enjoy, you know, I don't, we don't judge here, or, well, we exclusively judge, but that, you know, that's... that's we fine. judge pretty harshly. Yeah, the, kind of the, God, the judgment actually. of the council. Mm -hmm. Uh... So, yeah. I think, I think that, that, that it should, should I just now get to... Because what we're going to do is, um, Streamlabs, I'm going to catch up on them, then we're going to jump to the Multimedia Medley Super Chats for that episode. Then we're going to do the Denim's Catch-Up Catch-Up, and then we're going to do today's, and we'll have a look at the time when, uh, when we do all that. And uh, we'll, we'll go from there, see how everyone's doing. I'm not hearing any complaints, so I assume that's all good. No, yeah, I'm, I'm on board. Yeah, I'm just, I'm <laughs> yeah! just getting all excited. Yeah. I'm ready for this. Now, some of these streams are probably going to be about Lego, because um, that was the whole thing that happened uh, when, I was, when I was streaming it. So We'll see. Um, so, do do. Uh, 
uh, the, the reference to my previous Super Chat is from the new Five Nights at Freddy's game, where a child asks Freddy what happened to his disassembled body, to which Freddy abruptly claims, Squid Game. What? Um, I don't even know... Oh, he got his organs harvested? Oh. Is that what they mean by that? I guess I maybe, but is, right? what a way to stay relevant, huh? Uh, that, that, the popular TV show at the time is definitely a good way to go. Uh, not sure if this is a hot take, but so far this game seems less fun than even the Clone Wars Lego game. Uh, a lot of people recommended that one to me. Yeah. Loads of positive stuff about the Clone Wars one. Like That seems to be the favorite... Um... Of the originals among the people I've heard from. Yeah, yeah, it seems that that is the, the the main one that got recommended for me to play after this one to play like one of the best. But Le Lego Undercover City was apparently the the top dog, um, which is interesting, right? I don't like, think I've even heard of that. I know it's like the most generic one in terms of naming, and it's obviously non uh, like like movie IP or whatever. But apparently, it's got the best gameplay. Uh, or Lego City, yeah. Interesting. Um, I reach rewatched your initial streams about Twitch, and upon seeing Rags' reaction to the house, I got the idea that watching you cover Jay's video would be a really fun mini episode, while also showing how to correctly cover these kinds of videos. Also, hi Rags. Oh, hello. The, the funny thing at that point is that we should probably just um, get the thing to walk around the house in instead right because like we'll oh just yeah be, maybe we could do our own tour we would be pausing jay so much at that point that i don't even know that jay's jokes would come through right i am um, i couldn't hear anything there i accidentally pulled my headphones out of my socket I was out of yeah their, their socket not my socket they weren't plugged into me um what did i miss anything good there sorry no we were just talking no. about you oh man oh cool, cool okay cool mm -hmm. it's pretty neat you're yeah. not allowed to talk about me um, you never know. Unless you Maybe react harder, Lamau. Lamau. Talking about that would be an EFAP episode down the line. I don't know. Does the does the house exploration thing still exist, or is that gone now? Um, like the the actual thing, I can check. Because if it was a part of like selling the place, I assume it may have been sold by now. I don't know. I mean, well, you you think someone bought it? I mean, yeah, it's pretty big. Someone could gut it and just turn it into something else, right? Let's have a look. Because here's the thing, I linked to it in my original description. Because I ain't a parasite. Oh. hey oh, uh, That's true, you're not. Right. Here it is. Yeah, it's still up. Well, yeah. Potential. Uh, Luke be like, big fat alien milkers. I need to suck on those fat cow titties. And get that succulent green milk, Ray. All right. <laughs> I guess that, that kind of is a direct quote, pretty much. Hmm. Uh, can't you waited to tell the gods about all this until now? Why is that ever addressed? I um, think we have we have just begun. We've barely begun to scratch the surface onto why Moon Knight is terrible. Yeah. So, funnily enough, I was actually um perusing the comments on the multimedia editor, and there was one that opened with like, I'm actually pretty disappointed in the uh, the Moon Knight coverage by EFAP, and I was expecting to oh. read that we'd gotten things wrong, or whatever, and they were like, they barely went into all the problems of the show. I know they said that they're gonna have a made episode to cover it, but I wanted more, and it's like, oh, you'll get it. You'll get it. I'm, yeah, good. I'm gonna rewatch it nice and slowly, with some pausing, and I'm gonna make a shit ton of notes. I will, I will. Episode four has uh, come out in the interim, right? Since the last part of the trouble we that I find for this sort of thing is a lot of my criticisms can't emerge until I understand who these people are or what their yeah. ultimate goals are. Um, I am certain yeah. that, especially now that we know what we know now, going back to that first episode is going to be. Yep. It's not going to get better. I, I, yeah. Well. Because episode four was the one that everybody was saying ahead of time. Ah, this is a good one. This is when, like, it, you know, this is when it really explodes into something cool. And we've seen episode four. And it's in uh, our. I wonder if you can tell voice. anything by my tone of voice here. Yeah. Well, are we allowed to briefly talk about that? I suppose, right? Anybody who doesn't want Moon Knight spoilers, you can run away. Though I wouldn't recommend the show. Coward. At point, so. Um... I don't <laughs> coward. Coward. It would seem that the big Fire! shock to a lot of people was was very clear. Like like we'd heard a lot of things shocked people about episode four. 
And mm -hmm. um, they done did a weird thing, is what happened. And and to be quick about it, like I said, if you don't want spoilers, just run away for like five minutes. We'll 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 move on straight away then. Um, he gets shot, and he falls into some water, and then he wakes up in this like pure white building, series of rooms, and bunch of like orderlies around, and he seems to be portrayed as like a crazy person who's in a wheelchair, and. They're doing the thing where it's like, wait, what, 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 what world am I even in? This is challenging my perception of everything. And then he finds one of, well, like he's he's Mark, and he finds Stephen in like a, a um, sarcophagus. Yeah. Um, opens it up, gets him out. They they see a third sarcophagus. It's like just rumbling, and it's like, oh, spooky. And then, uh, well, uh, who'd you say that. it was, Hippo Lady? I think it's Towerette. Well, Towerette. She, she turns up, and then and then they like see her, and she goes hi, and then they hi, they, they scream at her. You know, like an Egyptian goddess would. Yeah, uh, I don't know. Um, maybe it's just some weird manifest. I don't know, but if it if that's just like her, and they just make this this, this eons old Egyptian deity, just like some quirky modern contemporary. Hi everyone, I'm I'm. You can call me Mrs. T or Queen T or you know, just call me whatever you want. I'm just happy to have friends, and I'm I'm not and I'm I'm not, I'm, a, I'm a hippo, but I'm not fat. I'm just big boned, and it, it, I float. It, this I, I hate it. I fucking hate it. Yeah. Um. The it's all confusing and and strange, and I think it's designed that way. I'm, you know, for the next episode to try and vaguely explain what in the world is fucking going on uh i don't care what they're going for if it's like he's got an illusion happening or if he's in some kind of purgatory slash mind prison i <laughs> i have no idea but i also don't give a shit like i don't think it's going to be well executed whatever they end up going with but it just seems that the main thing people were shocked and interested by was the fact that it's just so unusual like, I think that seems to be it. Doing. Yeah, like, hey, we even changed our aspect ratio for a minute there. Isn't that crazy? But it's like everything that led up to that was just like everything that led up to it was the same really sloppy writing. Like that they, they go to a tomb. It's Alexander the Great's tomb, oh, and they're yeah. in there and they found like a plot critical item. Um, but Layla's really mad at Mark, so they have to have a conversation yeah. even though they need to get out of there because there are people coming it to regards them. saving the world, it's very yeah. frustrating that... We're yeah. frustrated with all of the characters. Yes. Yeah. All of them. Everyone is an idiot and I hate them all and I want them all to die. I want the Covenant to win. <laughs> oh wait, wrong show. Well, I was going to say, that should be enough for, uh, for Moon Knight. <laughs> like I said, you'll get yeah. full coverage soon enough. Um, Halo... We've seen four episodes? Three? No, it's three. Three. We've seen three. three. We saw, what yeah, we caught up the other night on Halo, and holy wow, fuck is it bad. We're still well, behind. We, ca we caught character. up a little bit, yeah. We have a little bit. more to explore. It is fuck terrible. We've got an episode for that probably going to be happening, too. <laughs> it's going to be great. I would say that uh, we just, you know, it's it's the kind of reality that... We're not in a great place for TV as of this moment. Um, I'm sure things will get really, really good, but um, uh, Halo is that's something else. Every Ooh, single man. decision they make, you're just like, why though? Halo is challenge. It is legitimately challenging my whole like an adaptation stand on their own. Like I, I'm not going to waver. I stand. I stand by. <laughs> you know the whole. Yeah, yeah, it thinks quality is his quality is an adaptation, but Jesus Christ, I it makes me hate this show even more because I know that it's pulling from source material in maybe the worst way possible. I think uh, what upsets me about it is that it's it's really annoying when you deviate and then make something awful, and not only awful but pretty unimaginative. You know, like you you've made it less original. Like, the concept is less original and less interesting here. It's just kind of annoying, and especially well, when you just permeate through that show a sense of, um, I don't know if I'd say it's contempt for the games, but, like, at the very least, to, like, <laughs> video games, not, like, our TV show. Like, there's kind of that... Yes, we are a very artsy and important and very 
We're a wonderful, yes, it's, we're too well, good they, for video games. They're definitely, kind of thing. they're definitely wearing their complexity on their sleeve, but there's nothing complex about what they're trying to do. Like, it's kind of like they're trying to put it at the forefront, whereas the games, it was always like, they're pretty simple at their face, but there's a lot more to that world. Um, when you go looking for it, the show kind of tries to front load all of that. And I think um, Halo has highlighted the, um, I wouldn't even call it a caveat because it doesn't change our argument at all, but it's something to keep in mind. Because we maintain how, how well written a thing is, is not dependent on how faithful it is. However, right. if you adapt faithfully portions of a thing and ignore the connective yeah. pieces to those portions, you are, rule of thumb, endangering your writing's integrity if you're borrowing from something that is consistent. Um, yeah, you're, you're, it, it is a, it, it's, I, it's, it seems very bad faith. It's like they're using your love of the IP in a way that just isn't genuine. They don't care about it only so far. They only care about it so far as it can be used to kind of trick you into thinking this is Halo. Because watching these episodes, I, I think I said at one point, it feels like, this feels like a, a weird Doctor Who episode. Or this feels like okay. some like Farscape, you know, like it just has these weird vibes and none of them. This does not feel like Halo at all. It's weird. It's bizarrely not Halo in tone or setting or any, or characters or anything. I saw Covenant for five minutes. That was cool, I guess. Their little invasions have been funny. The fucking, uh, yeah. the, what were the, the Gil kid like? Oh god, what even was that scene? It was so bad. Um, but yeah, the way I would put it is like they've tried to adapt a car into their own vision of a car and they took like, not even the wheels, that's that's too generous. They took like the body and the padding around for the, the seats, maybe even tossed in some of the smaller components and the exhaust. And then they were like, I'd like to put some cinder blocks in there for my wheels, because I like that. And then I'm also going to pop in just a horse's heart for the engine. And you're like, this doesn't, this doesn't, doesn't at all work. You, you're fucking everything up. And you're like, why won't my car drive? And you're like, yeah, no, that's because you, because they certainly make things look like Halo. Some things, yeah. I like, recognize they, plenty yeah, of it. As they a make person. a lot of the props and stuff look like yeah. Halo, like the ships and the Marines, what little you see of them. You're like, oh, hey, that's cool. That's Halo. And then the world just in general seems not at all like Halo in any way. We spend so much time in places that don't at all give that Halo vibe. You are then every once in a while intermittently reminded that this is a Halo show. Maybe that's the best way to sort of describe it. Yeah. No, a horse's heart should actually be pretty strong. You do get that a horse is hot in, the, in, a, in a car's engine. On its own is probably not going to do very much, I would argue. Uh, well, did you install it correctly? <laughs> that's clear. They didn't, okay? I would have. Um, I'm going to equate this show with Farscape. I think what Rags is saying isn't that Farscape and, and Doctor Who are bad. It's that the, no, the I'm not, show no, it's, is, is you doing see weird some of these, things. Yeah, you see some of the places and stuff they go to, and you're like, what is, this is a Halo show? You have to remind yourself throughout that this is supposed to be a Halo show. Yeah. Apparently Shad calls him Master Cheeks. He's been... Uh, nice. Like of, His cheeks are pretty toned, yeah. But he is John Halo to me. Oh, yeah. There was that scene where he, like, removes... Because they got emotional inhibitors in their spines, the Spartans. It's not that just the experience that they had kind of turned them into very stoic individuals. It's that they have a little chip in their spine. Uh, Chief finds out that this exists and he tries to remove it himself, like just with a blade. And then he, he, wasn't, he had a little bit of help. Yeah, he had. Yeah. Because yeah. Cortana's like, make a 1.3 centimeter incision, and all I can think is, dude, you can't see it. How the hell do you know how big the incision is? What's weird uh, is that he couldn't see it, but he was standing in front of a mirror? Well, because he was, yeah, he was standing in front of a mirror, but <laughs> face forward. He wasn't like, yeah, you'd think he should have been... The other hand should have had a smaller mirror in it, and then you can reflect, yeah. you know, turn around, reflect, reflect. 
And he like, and it's like, oh, twist at 45. And then it just pops out because it wasn't attached to anything. It was just like a little thing in him. <laughs> it wasn't attached to any of his nerves or anything. And he just does it on his own. Yep. Um, it's, yeah. And I, oh man, I gotta say like the choice of, nah, see the reason why he's like, like all unemotional is because he has an emotional regulator in him. Not because that's just who he is. It's way less interesting to me as a choice. I really dislike it, um, and I'm sure it will yield boundless great narrative moments like the clip I've already seen from episode five that uh, has left me with, I, I mean, wow, I mean, my confidence in this show like evaporated in the first episode, to be fair. Yeah. I, I guess I'm just, at this point, I'm kind of like, I'm not expecting anything approaching like what I would have wanted, and I kind of, eh, I don't know, just, yeah, it's a little bit annoying. Well, a little bit. It's a lot annoying. <laughs> but we'll leave that for another time. Yeah, we'll just continue on. Mark didn't see Arthur retrieve the scarab. If the gods only perceive the world through their avatars, how does Konshu know Arthur has the scarab at the end of episode two? Something I'm going to keep an eye on when I rewatch it is how does Konshu perceive the world exactly? And if he can just sort of be in here whatever he wants, then how come the other Egyptian gods can't? Um, apparently, because they don't fucking bugger all except what their avatars know. Presumably, I don't even know if they state that as a rule, but um, they might want to because it just doesn't make other... This like, show is allergic to rules. Well, because like, they've, they've fucked themselves over in terms of they've made themselves in a position... They have to make their Egyptian gods kind of shit because... Right now, the tension is whether or not the gods know that he's trying to raise Armit, the, uh, the, the, the cult guy, which they should know is just true, like, with, with everything that's been happening. But they don't. So they have to be, like, really limited now. Um, for some reason, the creepypasta is not showing up in Wattpad search, so here is a direct link. Um, the creepypasta story about... EFAP. I don't know what this. Um, it's like a script that involves us in some way. Is creepy. Oh right. my goodness, that is creepy. Yeah. Um, do, do as someone who's made oh, comments about mm -hmm. EFAP not liking anime, I'm sick of hearing people talk about anime. Apparently, sorry, EFAP apparently hating anime. Weebs need to fucking get over themselves. There's more to cartoons and media. In general, than whatever Japs made. I mean, we've we've got a whole three episodes on something that's animated now, so I hope I never hear that we hate animation again. That was uh, that was being that's said at one point. That's a bizarre one that gets around adore animation. Yeah, so do I. Um, funny enough, uh, we had a couple family members over for for, for Easter, and uh, they were trying to figure out what to put on, and they saw Arcane on on the old Netflix. And uh, yeah. I was like, oh, it's pretty good. I feel like everyone would like it. And um, one of the old family members was like, ooh, is that animated? And I was like, yeah. And they were like, nah, I don't want to watch that. Oh. Uh -huh. that's, right. that's a shame that people have that, I guess. <sighs> maybe, maybe they thought it was anime. Maybe they were being a different kind of racist. No, no. I, uh, they, they, they said animated in general. They weren't a fan of things that are animated because they don't. They have a lot more trouble taking it seriously. Anime is not animation, does not equal animation. Uh, I ain't getting into you guys' obsession with trying to argue Why, what is and that? isn't anime or animation. Anime is, anime is categorically animation. Um, like I, don't, I don't know what... <laughs> yeah, you can't have an anime that isn't animation, correct? Yeah, I would... Well, I don't know how people make their definitions, but I would absolutely consider animation to be the broad overarching categorization of everything that is like that is adhering to the principle of animation. Still images being displayed at a rate that like uh, emulates movement. That's yeah. I, I you got know. anime does not equal animation. Then you've got anime is the Japanese word for animation. It's like that you guys go fight it out, okay? We're not doing it. <laughs> uh, yeah. Banana fact of the day. Did you know that Fringy's beak is actually just a banana with a green mask stretched over it? Wow, I had no idea. Interesting. Crazy. Ooh. When were you going to tell uh, us? Does that mean that the other end of the banana is just in your mouth, Fringy? 
<laughs> all the time. How do I speak? If I can't wait okay. for the X-ray meme. Inconsistency. <laughs> yeah. That would be a funny meme, but yeah. funny in that doesn't mirror reality, you know? Or that it mirrors it too well. Nah. <laughs> Um, I've recently heard you read out Super Chats about how FF7 Remake is a good game. I assure you, the game is fucking balls. It tries to be Ryan Johnson and Christopher Nolan at the same time when it wants to, all while being padded to hell and back. Um, do any of us four know anything about Final Fantasy VII? No. I'm, it has I'm a... Of... No, it doesn't. Mm. This is one for, uh, for the chat to argue about, I suppose. Go nuts! Final Fantasy VII. Oh, is no. it good? Is it bad? Who knows? I get, they're talking about the remake, right? Oh, sorry, remake. Remake. I know that people like the remake, but... I, I don't know. I know that the remake is only, like, part of the game, that they're gonna make more Final Fantasy VII remakes. So, I don't know if that's contentious or controversial or anything. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Uh... I'm saying hi ER. Yeah. Doesn't he, his account have a tick on it? How do you check if accounts are real these days? I figure that's all that there is, right? Verified? Because he has over 100k subs for sure, right? I, I, I can't remember yeah, anymore. Yeah. He's been gone for so long. Uh, what is your movie bob rating guess for the Batman and Arcane? Ooh, that's a good question. Hmm. For the Batman? I'd uh, give it a six. Oh, yeah, I'll go for an eight. I was actually going to say six to eight might settle on seven. All right. What I'm about you, Jay? Yeah. What about you? Yeah, Jay. What do you think Movie Bob would give the Batman as a rating out of ten? I think probably a six or a seven. Maybe, maybe an eight, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I don't Shall know. we just I settle well, on the EFAP uh, rating of seven? Yeah, sounds yeah. like it would be, yeah. All right. Do, um, oh, I guess I guess we could check right now, right? Has yeah, he reviewed yeah, it? If, uh, uh I'll do that. Yeah. Let me let me boot up the old YouTube Tibaloony Dooby Dooby and I'll I'll put movie Bob the Batman. All what's, right. What's really conflicting in my brain with this is that um I think he'll really ap appreciate like the artistry yeah! and the cinematography, but it's also really popular, which means he's going to dock at a couple of points potentially. Yep, six out of ten. You gave it a six. I, really? I yeah, I did. Oh. Yeah, he did. I I'm telling you, I am. I'm woo nailed it. So the Rise we did damn good. Also, yeah, I was going to say, what so do you mean? I we we work together on loads of them on the, on the med. Actually, we incredible. Uh, well, to be fair, in this instance. Y'all made things worse, but we still settled on a seven, which is damn close because yeah, we I have been consistently. We said within one point, I said scores. seven, so I'm I'm in the clear. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> well, six out of ten. We we know. And the other one was what? Well, arcane. Right. Okay. Uh, let let hmm. before I Google it, I'm going to say that it is a eight. I think he's going to give it an eight. Because I don't think sure there's anything in one. there that, yeah. Because I don't think there's anything in Arcane that he will really dock it for. I really sure don't know because I just don't have anything on like what does he tend to go for with like animated stuff? Does he have any kind of preference? And then it's like it's pretty popular, but he probably reviewed it before it became more and more popular, right? Uh, hmm. Does he I'll have go with, I'll go with a seven. I really don't know on this one. I do not see a movie Bob. Or oh, movie, is it? He's movie Bob. Show well, Bob. Show Bob. Uh, da, 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 da. Um, let me see. Yeah, I let me let me go. Maybe it's on a site. The movie Bob Arcane. Oh, I like that. The fact that the Batman has such overt, woke trash in it should make it an instant zero. These dudes should not be taken seriously with their ratings. Who's that? Someone in chat. <laughs> is, uh... oh, are they saying it about us? Well, the fact that they said these dudes, I assume they beat us. 
Because we've already mentioned Booby Sorry. Bob. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> That's interesting. <laughs> okay. Well, well done, Let buddy. Me go to the tomato meter. Maybe. Let's see. F movie. Con control F movie. Bob. Let me type in Bob. And just in case. I don't think he has reviewed Arcane. Well, um, unfortunate. If someone would like to uh, at Movie Bob on Twitter, ask him uh, if he has a, a number for movie bob let me know um yeah someone ask him movie bob w w have you seen arcane if so what would you rate it out of 10 be very polite just i just i just would like to get a number if he has one and if he doesn't have a number then that is a okay he doesn't have to give us one yeah um, don't everyone all go do this at once right yes all of you get together and designate a representative yeah in, in a fact, council I, in, I think you might... fact, um Oh, quite suspicious. Jay, Jay and, uh, does Movie Bob hate you? Can you do it? I don't. I, he interacted with me on Twitter recently. I can't remember why. I think he was disagreeing with me about something. Oh, oh so you were right. Yes. <laughs> well, I mean, um, I, I, I thought you would have seen that anyway, right? Yeah, yeah. That's the that's that's why I yeah. That's just confirmation, of course. But if um yeah, I don't know if one of you with a. It, maybe we could we could get someone from the Discord. We could have oh, um, yeah. if you could have maybe I don't know um, I don't know who's in maybe a someone said I'm blocked. That's a shame. Uh, let me see. Do we have could, do we have a maybe a mod in chat? Do we have a wrench? Someone who can is thunder around. Someone's probably done it by now. Thunder, yeah, thunder is bringing it another movie of sense. That's true. Uh, yeah, I. We'll see if we don't get a note. Um, I I would legitimately yeah. If you could tell you what if he tweets back, just go ahead and give me a ping on uh, Discord and the 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 the, 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 the EFAP Discord. And give me a holler. I would be curious to know what his number is, or if he's even seen it. Who knows? Maybe he hasn't. Yeah, he might. Yeah, he might not have seen it. Uh, but I, I'm I think I'm going to settle on an eight. I, I think that he even though it's very popular in terms of its reception, I don't think he could really latch on to anything in the show that for him, because I'm trying to look at this from his perspective, that he would dock the points for. So. Uh, so I'm not sure. Who knows? Who knows? Neither am I. You guys want to see something cool? So. I would love to see something cool. You guys want Jay? to see something cool? It's not not upsetting. It's cool. It's totally cool and not upsetting. Here it comes. Oh, I bet I know what you're gonna post. Uh, wait. Suspense. Uh, I... Oh, the suspense. Suspense is boring me. I'm sorry about <laughs> my internet. Anyway, how, how are you guys doing? Just you know, doing uh... pretty good. I was doing pretty good. A um, pretty well. Change. That's true. I'm doing well. Well, I I'm doing both. Oh, that is apparently Ia. Uh, okay. <laughs> I just I just clicked the because uh, there is a channel link. Unless unless they found a way to impersonate beyond that, I'll never know. But uh, so this is. I don't I don't think Movie Bob's gonna be happy to to uh, <laughs> to reply to you. Ia. He probably doesn't like you. I know that. All sucks. right. So. Jay, you're gonna have to explain to me what's really cool about this. Maybe oh, I just don't quite. Um, this is that that really cool YouTube channel we were just talking about. Let me know. Basically, every one of their videos uh, from the oh. last couple of years, uh, next to the XQC reactions, which I have checked and are unedited, pretty oh, much. Oh, I see. Wow. Oh. oh. I understand now. So his search for DB Cooper videos at 29 minutes and 27 seconds. The XQC reaction is 31 and a half minutes. I wonder how oh, if, if it's as bad as it seems or, or not. Well, I watched I um I watched two of these. Um, there was one edit that I saw, um, Ooh. and it cut him. Um, he says, "Oh wait, wait, pause," and then it cuts to the video playing again. Well, he, he he cuts out the the one time that he paused. Yeah, but from what uh, I've heard, XQC doesn't even like 
really address any of these criticisms himself. He just keeps going. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's one way to do it. It's not even about, like... Uh, see, at this point, because we did make this point while we were doing this whole thing. Um, if, if Lemino is just like, this is totally fine, you can do it, I'd still be like, yeah, but it's just a fucking... The whole take pride in your work thing again. Pride in your work, exactly. Yeah. That's the thing that comes... And even then, right, like... If Lemino was like, yeah, you can react to my videos on stream, you know, like, you can just use my videos to fill, like, time on your stream if you want. I don't imagine that Lemino ever said, and then you can take you just sitting there and not saying anything at all and letting the video play in full, and you can just upload that to your channel. Um, you, like, it's a competing YouTube video. Yeah, that's, that's cool. This is his channel that this is all uploaded to. Yeah, I figure... Uh... The beauty of transformative content, you might say. Oh, wait, one of those is from, no, two of those aren't from his channel. I might have to um, check and see if those are on his channel. <laughs> yeah, I actually did do that tweet. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm sure. It would just be funny if it actually sparked a conversation with Movie Bob about Arcade with ER on Twitter. They're just like, very chillily discuss it. I was actually. Did ER ask him? Apparently, yeah, I'm gonna check now. But um, if um, if you are here, did you see Arcane? What did you think of it, Spooky Nazi man? I wonder. Yeah, he did ask him. <laughs> we don't like that. That's good shit. I just don't think he'll reply. Um, there's even an official channel named XQC Reacts. More of the same. Yeah, that's the thing. Um, as far as I'm aware, he's... Some people are saying he's worse than Hassan for this. Just like, I, I didn't... Uh, unfortunately, he did not cover Jay's video, so I didn't get to sort of have a reason to check all that out. But, um... XQC's uh, bigger than Hassan, right? As a streamer? I think, potentially, hang on. I think XQC is uh, pretty popular. Oh my god, when you Google him, his description is literally pro-gamer. Well, instead of anti gamer, he is pro gamer. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good position to hold. I also hold that position. I am the pro gamer position. Uh, yeah, I said he's only seen the first episode. It was very pretty. It is very pretty. Well, to add to everyone else, I recommend it. But uh, maybe wait until until the whole show is over. Right, that's what a lot of people do. Which, for those ty Someone... types of people, they must be so happy that Better Call Saul's on his last season. They can finally watch it. Someone's saying he used to be a pro Overwatch streamer? I've got... I'm actually wearing... Well, not me, of course, because I'm, I'm a dog and I don't wear clothes. I only accessorize. But my human, he, he's over there. He is wearing an Overwatch shirt. I got my, my Bastion Salt shirt that i'm wearing that i got many years ago before that game kind of man you but switched yeah, like I... who was speaking and what there several times yeah. keep yeah, shit straight so rags and confused we are straight we're straight we're cool yeah we're cool fucking weirdo For each weird person here what is your top three favorite dog breeds top three favorite um I, I will have to I will have to bow out, shall we say, of this because they are my they are my people and I don't want to show favorites hmm. uh, because I am of course a dog. So like, that's like so, like that's like if someone asking Jay, what are your three favorite races? Yeah, you know, it's one it's it's a little. I, I love all of my people. Yeah, but uh, well, I think yeah. I think my favorite is uh, husky. I really like huskies. They're cool. You gotta have three favorites. They don't even let you get away with uh, one. Yeah, no, I know. Um, <clears throat> um, uh, damn. Uh, it's yeah, yeah. Tough. Don't don't think too hard on it or anything. Just whatever comes to mind. No Labrador. pressure. There's no no wrong answers here. Hey, hey, um, hey, sheep. Well, yes. I was gonna That's... say sheep, but I don't know if I'd put him as second or third. Oof. Um, wow. Wow, you gonna you gonna stick up for that, Rex? No, no, it's it's fine. I've, um, I've as you can see, I have made my bed and I am laying in it. So I'll 
I'll just be over here with being impartial. It's fine. It's all good. The problem is people are listing a bunch in chat, and it's like a lot of them are really cool. A there lot of dogs cool. are really yeah. cool. That's the thing. It's hard for me to... I mean, I like oh, Labradors. Today at the gun show, one of the vendors brought their dog, and he was behind the thing, and he was just sort of hanging out. So that was cool. Hmm. Well, as you guys, as you guys uh, talk about your favorite uh dog breeds i'm gonna go grab a drink and i'll be back because i have a feeling my heart's already gonna be broken so it's all right that's fine i'm gonna be over someone said guys. cat oh, <laughs> answer. Oh, um, breed of dog. i really like all kinds of dogs i don't know what that i have kind of any dog is that for over preference um if there were a more generalized sort of way to put it like the uh size and sort of I guess disposition of like a husky that, that I kind of like that that element. But then I of like course I do yeah. I do like the smaller dogs as well. Uh, that that are like cute and sort of I don't know. That's the thing I, that I'm I'm a fan of pretty much all dogs. Dogs are really cool. Yeah, I I don't know if I'd say I'm a fan of like all dogs. I think I have more of a preference for the larger dogs. I like the dogs that feel like more like a wolf than. This weird sort of like, you know, just like the result of this kind of crazy like breeding habits. Um, like I, I like huskies and um, yeah, I would say I the, like the exception like, being uh, the ones that are actively suffering because of bre breeding stuff. Oh it's... yeah, like I, I can't say that I have much of an affinity for like chihuahuas, you know, or like um, I, I always feel really bad for pugs. Feels like they kind of mm -hmm. have a difficult time persistently. Um, yeah. Yeah, like, I like sheep dog. Yeah, Kelpies I like a lot. They're cool. Um, what's the, the one that's like the, it's the black and white one with like the big fluffy ears. What's that one called? Border Collie? I like those. Yeah, those are the types of dogs I like. Any dog under 50 pounds is a cat and cats are useless. <laughs> I like <All> right. cats. <laughs> I like cats. I like how aloof they are and how they just sort of sit around and don't care what's going on <laughs> in the rest of the world. They're not very uh, invested in current events, the cats. Yeah, that's why I like them so much. Oh, they, they seem they're really chill. They're just like, I'm gonna lurk around here. and, and Lurking is care. what they do. That's a good word for it. Yeah, they do a yeah, bit of lurking. I, yeah, lurk is a good word to describe. It's just the general tenor of cats. I recently rewatched Suicide Squad and found it to be of high quality. I know we dunked on Jared's Joker character, but I found him believable and compelling. And the way the movie faded out on his iconic, but anyways, guys, brought some tears to my eyes. Man, is that a Jared reference? Nice. Yeah, I, 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 the, the, oh, I get it. Jared's Joker character, and then, but anyways, guys, it just feels like it's been so long since I've heard. But anyways, guys, um, I think that uh, that if there were a biography for for Jared Genesis, that uh, Jared Leto should play him. Actually, oh my god, it would be it would be an incredible role, and he would finally break through. He must feel so bad, like that he's sort of hit all the marks that he's supposed to to be a well-respected actor and he just isn't now. Like, um, I'm not sure if Morbius was the one that did it with a combination of his Joker, but, um, Jared Leto at one point was just, uh, fine if not good to everyone, and now he's, like, a joke. Um. Yeah. I feel a little bit bad for him, I guess. I don't know. I think a lot of it stems from all that method acting stuff, though. It's yeah. kind of like, yeah. you claim to be a method actor and then you you're in like a film like Suicide Squad that's pretty terrible. Do you remember the one it's with him, like... him moving around set the match that he was in crutches for the character before he yeah, I guess I becomes a vampire? That. And that like it held up production and, and for all kinds of in, in all kinds of ways and it's just that kind of thing where it's just like, is this are you what are you Hmm Yeah. It's um well, especially when <laughs> Especially when it's like for, you know, what what are the results that are yielded out of this process? It's like nothing that great. So Morbius. like you know Well, Morbius, right? It's uh Morbius I I actually looked up how much money it's made. It's made hundred and fifty million dollars, so I, I wonder if they're gonna make a sequel to that. 
like it's double its production budget but i wonder if they're happy with that <laughs> like if they're happy with the amount of money it made um I mean, sony's moving ahead with like five other projects that are all coming out like next year so i could see sony thinking that they just need to get that villains movie and then they'll be great well, I mean, but... it seems like they're working towards that, but I mean... Well, I mean, yeah. it almost comes if they do, like, though... a Venom, Venom Morbius team-up movie, it'll already be a massive meme, and I wonder if they're going to add any more to the pile before they actually well, do that. Like Vulture? They're, they're, doing, they're doing a Craven the Hunter movie next year. They're doing a Madam Web movie. They're, uh, I think there's another one as well that's happening. That um, they got a lot of movies that they're working on, because is... I think... It's, I hope it's, it's a simple... Much- as them being like, yeah. we did Suicide Squad and that didn't work. But if you look, sir, if you look at the MCU, the Avengers, the reason that the Avengers works is because they had their movies before it. So now we got to make a Mobius movie, a Venom movie, a th- this movie, this movie, and then we'll do our evil Avengers or anti hero wow. Avengers. I don't even know what the fuck they're doing. The, I'm, uh, I'm pretty sure that's because that's that seems to be what they're doing is all of like the adjacent. Our League of Mediocre characters. Gentlemen. Well, the thing is, is that there's a lot of incentive for them to do it. Like, a lot of people will complain, like, ah, oh, no, I don't like these Sony Marvel movies. Like, you know they're never going to, like, stop, right? <laughs> they, they want, like, having Spider-Man as, like, an, a thing that they can make movies for, super useful. Um, and even if, like, Morbius fails, you know. Oh. No, no, Racy, what if they were really good movies? Well, what if they were I making, mean... like, shit tons of, um, of, like, a huge, expansive universe all based on the Spider-Man mythos? They, they abs. Well, that, I think that's what they want, but it's just not. I don't know. Like, it's not. Well, yeah, they they failed, right? It's not like. It's not like that. You don't want what they're trying to do. It's just they're fucking it up. Um. Well, I I would imagine a lot of people are unhappy with the idea that a lot of characters are just going to always exist in like adjacent worlds and aren't necessarily going to interact with Spider Man. I think I think that probably upsets people. Um. I suppose. I I I don't know. Yeah, like. Yeah, I, I don't know how much that um that really matters because you can still have Spider Man interacting with villains in his own movies that will probably always be attached to the MCU because it's just it's too good a deal I think for Sony to like look how much money they made. Um, rags. In your interpretation of the Hi. Bible, yeah. did Jesus shed manly tears, go full messy cry, or somewhere in between? Well, I assume it was uh, a manly tears. I don't think he messy cried. That would be, that would just be, I don't know. And then uh, it's got, Dear Sir, may I ask you to say a few words about this on EFAP? I stumbled across the subject uh, with the with a vid. May your days be a delight. And the subject is what Pedro Pascal has said about uh, Last of Us, being that he's avoiding the games he wouldn't want to just copy the performance or whatever, right? Uh, I don't have the exact yeah. quote. Joel, yeah, he didn't want to. Yeah, he didn't want to learn about Joel from the game. So that's great to hear. Yeah, because yeah, the question was, did you watch uh, a playthrough of the whole thing? And and Pedro said, I watched for as long as I was able to that day, and then I had to leave for Florida. I found Joel so impressive. I found the whole. The whole of it such a visually expressive, impressive experience, and then I got worried that I would want to imitate too much, which I think could be right in some circumstances and then a mistake in others so i just wanted to create a healthy distance that to be more in the hands of the show co-writer craig mazin and neil Druckmann. um that's like that, that's a better way of putting it um it is a better way of putting it maybe there are times where you wouldn't want to imitate directly with how you've moved mediums but uh i'm sorry at this point it just evokes the same thing that we're dealing with with halo games we didn't look at the games yeah we're gonna take pieces <laughs> of the game and then fuck with everything else and it's not gonna make any sense it's gonna oh god i just i'm not looking forward to whatever that'll be especially after the last of us 2 was already enough we'll see maybe the show will be good guys maybe 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 certainly gonna be expensive are you guys gonna be interested in seeing that because i will be yeah I'll uh, yeah if you uh, i will join you it's always interesting how the the passions sort of move around, right? Because with Halo, yeah. I'm kind of the, uh, the the odd one out with it in terms of dumb, but that's as far as it goes. No anger, really. Yeah. It's like bringing with Game of Thrones. 
a l well, well a both of you bit, actually. Was, well, three of you. Yeah. Yes. We're all hyper nerds who didn't watch any Game of Thrones. What the fuck. Um, but yeah, we caught up with Streamlabs. Oh, cool. cool. Um, Nito Toledo. Next is the multimedia medley, which is so it's like it's like part it's like that stream never stopped and we were just still here. Answer yeah. my question. Um, so the first one is uh, Kick J doesn't use DSL properly. No. Oh. No. Um, that's dick sucking lips, right? You don't use it. It is. Damn. I'm sorry if I've given you a bad blowjob. Um, I well, the tongue plays I'm profusely well. sorry about that. Good that you. Please don't let it. Realized. Please don't think it reflects on my character. 2020 to 2022 is the Star Wars sequel trilogy of life. You think it stops at 2022? <laughs> you uh. fool. Chris Pratt as Master Chief. It's a me, Mr. Chief. Mr. Chef. Um, I fucking take it. Yeah, I was gonna say, I, the I'll guy we've got right now up. sucks. Yeah. I hate him. <laughs> I'll take Chris <laughs> Pratt being goofy any day. That might be entertaining. Yeah. Hello, e fappers. Have you guys watched the Hassan music video that Sitch and Adam show shared? It's a banger. Um, I have actually. Have you guys seen that? Oh, sorry. What thing? The uh, so it's a music video that Adam and Sitch have made, where I think it's like um Hassan and Vorsch sort of having like a out of context series of random clips, sort of no, rap apple type thing. It's fun. And uh, Adam put a bunch of girls dancing in it. I think he did it on purpose. He's getting that what, sex you think appeal. That was an or, like he accidentally ended up in the final cut. Oh, so that's kind of what the joke is. No, I, I, I know that's I know that's what the joke is. I was just playing along, but then you decided, nah, you know what? You're not allowed to play along, Fringy. Yeah, I'm fuck you, Fringy. I was just making sure you got the joke. That's all. I was just Chop worried. The legs off. Yeah, yeah. Chuck this the podcast is staring itself apart. True, uh, but yeah, I, I don't know if because I remember hearing Adam saying that he had to change it because felt like he did have some stuff that was a little too out of context, or he had a copyright issue or something. So I don't know if it's still up, but if it is, give it a look see. Mm. The banger, as as the super chat says, I agree. Uh, today is my 18th birthday. Thank you for years of entertainment. Here's to many more. Hi, Rags. Hello. Happy birthday, dude. Well, Happy I guess belated because now it's a while mm. ago. Fucking nuts, man. Almost every time we stream, it's someone's birthday. Oh, what is it with humans? What are the odds? Yeah, to me, it feels a little too convenient. Right, Jay? I don't give a shit. Damn, Jay. That's harsh. That is harsh. Fuck you. Oh, my God. Oh, my goodness. God. Wow. It's biting commentary. I'm just, I'm just glad that Jay. people can finally see the abuse we receive. Uh, yeah. The real Jay finally this comes out. Live, you know right? Live, right? Yeah, yeah, we are live. A little bit live. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> you guys are great. Yeah, a bit late for that. Bit late. Like, Everyone literally sees, only right? half past eight. Yeah. See, look at this. This is the next one. EFAP on my thirtieth birthday. I'd just like to say thank you all for the content over the years, and I say hi to Rags to show dominance. Oh, so hello! Apparently it's someone else's birthday oh, no, too. No. Okay. Alright. Happy birthday. They like to pretend that saying hello to me doesn't make me top dog or something. Well, it's just, uh, I've always assumed it was a sign of peace. Sometimes How many layers of dog are there? How many layers of dog are there? Yeah. In the dog hierarchy? Yeah. Uh, higher Barky, um... You've, um... Uh -huh. Oh, that's way better uh, than just the fucking lame-ass Doggeraki that I was thinking of. <laughs> dog <-er> yeah. <laughs> um, it's more of... It, it's not very rigid, you know? It, it's not a very sure. rigid system. Everyone's sort of... It's more of a general understanding that we have. It's something special. I don't know if there's a way to explain it to a non-dog, but there is... It it just works. It's something. Mm -hmm. it, it's it's something in our souls. Um, little doggy hearts. Remind me by saying that. Can't remember if it was the John Wayne Gacy one or 
Ted Bundy, one of the ones that I watched, where like when they were investigating him and explaining sort of his uh, intentions and the way he operates, uh, mm -hmm. it's like this clip from fucking eighties, I guess, or whatever, where they're, they're going over on like a big board and they're trying to explain how he works, and they go, um, you "Have to understand this man." There are many layers to him. He is, he's like an onion, and you need to peel back all the different... Blah, blah, and I just immediately was just thinking about Shrek, and I was like, this is yes, ruining Shrek. the tension. <laughs> just try to understand Shrek this Bundy. Yeah, I, well, do we know that Shrek isn't a serial killer? I don't I'm think just so. saying. What is... I wonder what Shrek's body count is. <laughs> it's up in the 50s, I think. 50, 50 53. 50s, That's my guess. damn. Wow. Yeah. That's impressive. If anyone knows Shrek's body count, let me know in chat. And mm -hmm. don't say, huh, one, two. Yeah, it's fucking hilarious. <laughs> but please, I, I would like to know his body count. I don't know that uh, Shrek uh, killed any of the main villains. I think they all uh, either got killed by someone else or by their own undoing. Which only proves he didn't kill them. I remember Farquaad. Yeah, I Farquaad was eaten by the dragon, the fairy god. But he was still, he's alive. still alive. That's yeah. the thing. He was saying he was singing, staying alive inside of the dragon. Right. Well, so we don't know a what has existence. become of him. Yeah, it's a little. Well, we don't know what. We don't I know mean, what if he's. We can hear him from there. inside the dragon. He must be able to hear what's going on outside the dragon. Sort of. Which means, and that he, just but he only had like one. He can hear a donkey life. fucking that dragon. Absolutely, he just hear that thing fucking going to town. Absolutely, and he has to. What if he sees the tip? Just uh, you know what? Forget it. Let's move on. Thank you. Um, he grabs onto it to get out. <laughs> he pulls like it. <laughs> donkey instantly comes. It's like that's new. Uh, I said we were gonna let it go, but we just got pulled right back in like donkey did. <laughs> nice. Oh. Oh, stuff, can you stuff. confirm yeah. Mola isn't a tree? A tree? I, mean, I don't know that I can confirm that. Not even well, I can based on that. based on my understanding of trees, I don't think Mahler would be a tree. Like Mahler talks and live streams. I don't know if trees can do that. Can can they? I don't think so. I don't know that trees can't do that. I mean, what about I think tree beard could. No? Tree beard could. But was Treebeard, Treebeard what, based would... on a real thing, or was he just in that that little book the guy wrote? Was that a Treebeard was based? Yeah, he on was that based guy, on a real right? thing, a tree. Yeah. yeah, and beard, a beard. He was based on beards. If Treebeard streamed, he would have long streams like us, but he would say about a twelfth of what we're able to say. That's generous because he you. does. He likes to take his time. He like I'm yeah. generous to the to, to the Ent people. Um, the people of wood, mm. uh, the people of the, the the bark people. Oh, that's a, you. You have that in common. You're both people of bark. Yes, we are both people of bark. We are both POBs. My brothers of the woods. My triggers. Oh no! What? It's our word. Actually, it's their word, but we're we're cool with it. Have you guys played any TCG like Yu-Gi-Oh or Magic? Yes, on, I've played. I have played Yu-Gi-Oh. I have. I've collected Pokemon. I never played it though. Uh, I've played Yu-Gi-Oh. I've played Duel Masters. I've played Magic: The Gathering, and those are really the three that I've played. Um, incidentally, I know in the in a Discord far far away there was some talk in the EFAP podcast chat about. The insane Theo was part of that uh, discussion. Or maybe he's, if he's in chat now, he could uh, uh, elaborate a little bit. But man, the power creep in Yu-Gi-Oh has been fucking bonkers. When I played Yu-Gi-Oh back in the day, looking at that game now, insane power creep with what the cards are capable of doing and how much stronger they've gotten over time. Jesus, it's nuts. I've never seen anything with more power creep than Yu-Gi-Oh. Wow, but yeah, it was fun. We'd play it at school. We'd bring our cards to um to to like lunch, and we'd play. I learned how to play Magic from his name was Jonathan. Jonathan, if you're out there, I still remember how to play Magic: The Gathering. You taught me. It was back in Onslaught is when I got into uh, Magic. But yeah, that was a neat game to play. Uh, we played Yu-Gi-Oh before that, and Yu-Gi-Oh was fun as well. 
that was a uh, that was fun. I really I really kind of enjoyed for the most part. Uh, I, I really enjoyed. I, I like a good trading card game, but I think video games are really where I sort of settled at in terms of my my quality. Um, I don't think I ever played any of them. Maybe briefly at some point when I was a youngin, but I played a little bit of Pokemon. I remember that was a weird game. They're all weird games, nerds. But they're also kind of cool. So they have really good artwork on. Them. Um. Yeah, like someone, someone in the EFAP chat, and there's plenty of these cards, but this is an example that was given. This is a modern Yu-Gi-Oh card, and you're just like, "What the fuck is happening?" And it, it, I remember when I started, nice. you had a four-star normal monster that had 1,600 attack, and that was like a strong card. And now it's like, "Fuck off!" Every card is some multi-paragraph combo piece mm. of nonsense where you and your opponent are both tur both turtling and at the same time trying to independently pull off these insane combos against one another instead of really engage it it's fucking nuts there was there was mucho a time last year star. mucho yeah i am huh because last year i i just like on a strange whim i just started watching Yu-Gi-Oh channels to see what was up with the game and I watched some videos that were about power creep and were about old cards and versus new cards. And they talked about it. And I was like, Jesus Christ, this game has gone to the absolute Yu-Gi-Oh! I think it started as a really cool game. I legitimately really liked it. And what it is now, it's almost unrecognizable. And I think I would hate it if I started playing it again. Mm. What a shame. What a shame. Thanks for sharing what that is... for me. What is yeah. this, Fringy? What is this? I just um, myself. It just popped up on Twitter, and then I saw that Jay's name was in the quote tweet, and I was like, oh no. I posted like, hey, I understand why Miles Morales is called Spider-Man, and why Sam Wilson is now called Captain America. Why is James Th F Foster supposedly going to be called Thor? It's not some mantle, it's literally just the dude's name. It's like Falcon getting handed the shield and suddenly calling himself Steve Rogers. Which I find yeah. funny. But this response doesn't well, make sense because this is the possess the power follow. of Thor. Like, yeah, Thor's possess the power of Thor. Also, Thor's nice. Yeah. He put, he put like, he in there, uh, <laughs> like just because it's not a direct quote. So you may, but it, I just find it funny if we're going hyper. Well, that is a direct quote. Ho, he is in the original. Um, no, and then not, they... that's what I'm saying. It's not a direct quote. Uh, well, it didn't have to be a direct quote because it, it it just reduces their point when 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 they. Uh, it's like the first correction that's got the top comment right now. Um, because the, the problem is that they're, they're telling you to adhere to this. They're like, that quote, it's accurate. And then it's like, oh. But, but, uh, sure, okay, cool, it's accurate. I, I, it's even in the film, is that well, Odin says it when uh, Enchanting the Hammer. But, um, but, well, but, like, but the power of Thor, not the name of yeah, Thor. Yeah, the power of Thor. That's why it's con this one confuses me more so than the other ones because like Spider Man is is like an identity of of like whoever is wearing the mask and jumping around and and web slinging right. It's not like Miles isn't Peter. His name isn't Peter. His name is Miles, and he's Spider Man as opposed they to just, like he calls him Jane. Peter Man. And that's his superhero yeah, name. Right. Yeah, the logistics. Whereas I'm with you. The logi I'm just confused by how this is supposed to make any like it was. I think we've asked this before, but was Steve called Thor temporarily in Endgame? No, of course not. But of then course again, not, like, yeah. Steve, Steve I've already had him. this discussion on Twitter and like reached it to its end, right? I, it was really well, fun. I had someone tell me... Um, I had someone tell me... So I, I made the point in the thread uh, underneath. So what? Uh, Thor uh, wasn't Thor after Hela destroyed Mjolnir then? And someone uh, quote tweets it with like, no. And if you pay attention to the films, you'll notice that as soon as Mjolnir is destroyed, he no longer refers to himself as Thor. Um, at which what? point... So what I, is I, his well, name then? You checked the script well, and you found okay. that wasn't true. <laughs> yeah, so I went and checked and I found <laughs> several instances of him saying, hi, I'm Thor. He yeah. introduces himself to the Guardians as Thor. Um, Son of Odin. When when yep. Valky when Valkyrie is uh, taking him to the Grand Master, he says, "Stop! I am Thor, son of Odin." Um, when um, he meets Hulk, when he meets Hulk, he's like, "Hello, Hulk! It is me, Thor." Yeah. Um, 
but also like that's absurd. Well, what's his name? Well, yeah, yeah what's his name? name? Is, he just doesn't have a name until he. What? What is this stupid shit? Yeah, if, <laughs> if I went and ripped up my birth certificate, what? 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 Would, my, would I not be rags anymore? What? Would, well, I would just be some nameless, ephemeral, so, ambiguous all, canine. All this comes across to me as is that people get really touchy when you ask questions about like. Why I don't understand, like, why is she called Thor? Thor? I thought Thor was Thor's name, and it's almost like they're jumping to the I thought like, Thor was Thor's name. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's sort of, sort of self-fulfilling so statement. That was yeah, I thought I, Thor was Thor's name. But um, but it it just feels like a really sort of touchy sort of response, almost because it's like, oh, I see, you're one of those people like trying to undermine the existence of the character. It's like, no, like I am I am legitimately confused as to the nature. Of I, this I actually think the character is pretty cool. Um, um, I think the just look aesthetically, is cool. and, and that's everything itself, I have on think. her at the moment. You know. Well, right now, anyway, we'll have to see. Yeah. I, so as soon as well, the film comes out, I'll probably get a new opinion. So uh, maybe, maybe this because this is. The thought I had is, so when we think about who's worthy to, like, carry that hammer, like, Cap could pick it up, but he didn't, like, he didn't get, like, transformed into, like, a Jane, like, you know, like, Jane Foster has clearly undergone some sort of, like, metamorphosis or transformation from getting the hammer, but that didn't happen with Cap. Is there a reason for that? Is she, like, really worthy? Or, and also, like... What are the odds that one of the people who is worthy enough to pick up the hammer is somebody who's actually been in, in Thor's life before? Like, if it was somebody... I imagine... Well, I hope that there are explanations for this in the film. Because um, there kind of need to be. You know? Like, very few people have been able to pick it up. A lot of people who've done a lot of heroic things in the MCU weren't able to pick it up. So, um... You know. Then again, Fat Thor was still worthy, so... I, I don't even... Oh uh, yeah. Well, he was trying to save the world, I guess. That's um. We'll see. Yeah, who knows what we'll end up with. Mm -hmm. um. Um. Hello there, General Mola, and hi, Rags and Fringo. Hey. Hi. Hello. Why do you think MG Rising is better than Elden Ring? Or Eden Ring is what they I, said. I've never played any of them, so I don't know. Um, I haven't played Metal Gear Rising enough to, to say that that would be something I think. So yeah, I'm out too. So, like, it's hard to compare those two. I haven't played enough Elden Ring to say whether or not that's an apt comparison. Well, we're all out of luck. <laughs> so, Sorry, buddy. Maybe next time. If you ever play Metal Gear Rising, uh, do it on stream because the story is wild and we want to see a reaction to it. Um, if that's directed specifically at me, then sure, I'm on board with that. Cool game. Yeah. If the four of you were to meet face to face, maybe with Wolf in that picture, I feel like it could be in Australia just because it would be funny. What? <laughs> <laughs> just if, confusing. If we were meeting myself, bringing Rags Wolf, then it would be in America at that point. Because, you know, it makes it less work for two people rather than one, I suppose, the, the logic there. Um, oh, I guess Fringy would cross the Pacific, you'd cross the Atlantic. So you'd both kind of, you know. We'd what? You know, fly on a plane like a Greek god across the sky. I'll just use Apparently, my uh, really long leg. To another land. Oh, he's a step. There's a bit of a tangent. Apparently, uh, according to some former uh, senior and former, I uh, oh, current and former Ubisoft employees. Man, I got that confused. According to some former and current Ubisoft employees, the company might be preparing for a sale. Um, really? Yeah. Apparently, uh, one, uh, the one of the factors was that um, the next Far Cry, Assassin's Creed, and Ghost Recon games are a lot further out than uh, Ubisoft planned or wanted. Um, a lot of senior devs have been leaving the company. They've been getting in trouble, obviously. So, uh, yeah. I mean, it, it feels like that is because it feels like people don't talk much about Ubisoft's games right now, you know? Like, no, really yeah. Trouble. And when they do, it's a meme. Yeah, it's like a meme about Like, oh, I've got to climb another tower. Oh, my goodness. You know, know that's what that. people say. 
NFT stuff and just the yeah, that's right. That worked great. Has like you know Splinter Cell and has just been per- Prince of Persia, like all of these sort of IPs that they own that have been. I mean, Rayman left to just languish, you know, because it's like, well, we're gonna make Assassin's Creed and Far Cry, but I don't know. People didn't really talk much about Far Cry Six. It kind of came and went. Yeah, you know? that just that just it did. That was a puff of smoke. It was just yeah. gone. Kind of. I see some people saying like Sony. It's like I don't know if Sony has the money to buy like. I don't think they do. They bought Bungie. That was like three billion dollars. But you compare it to like Microsoft spending seventy billion dollars on Activision Blizzard. Yeah, and we haven't even seen that start to. Well, no, that hasn't. I think there's still uh, things to do with um, like uh, the the, the, what's what's ah, damn it, I can't. The, the the words elude me. What is it when they when the government is like thinking about whether or not they want to allow companies, really large companies, to merge together when they take up a huge portion of the market? What's an antitrust or something along those? Ugh, that, my brain isn't working right now. Um, I know sure what you're talking cool. about. I forget the name of it though. Yeah, antitrust. Um, I yeah, I think that's still um that's still happening and ongoing. But I I just don't know that Sony has the capital to like to do that I, I don't know that they have the money to do that um i don't know why people always go to that when and then they forget that companies like tencent have a lot of money to throw around um there there are a lot of other companies out there that might want to be looking to acquire hell it might even be another publisher that wants to like merge them in you know um sony is in japan so i don't know how the u.s government will get involved yeah but i mean like ubisoft is a french company right so i don't think america has anything to do with that one but I mean, um, doesn't Europe have very strict like antitrust laws? I don't know. I, I guess we'll see how it all pans out. But it seems like there's a lot more uh, consolidation of uh, of of these brands. Um, is Sony in USA now? I I know that there are parts of Sony that are in America. Or uh, oh, okay. Well, nevertheless, right? I I would be surprised if it was Sony. I think that's just console war thought process that kind of distracts people from the broader picture. The broader picture is Microsoft has a hell of a lot more money to spend than Sony, um, and have for like decades at this point. Um, in fact, it seems like nowadays there's a lot more, uh, like a lot more of what Sony is about is PlayStation, because a lot of their other aspects of their business are kind of like, yeah, you know, it's a bit of a mixed bag. Microsoft just makes tons of money off of uh, Windows and always have. So they got a lot of money to spend. Um, hey, all. Sorry, can't turn over. Yeah. Question. If and when you cook eggs, do you put the empty shells back into the carton or straight into the garbage? I have a... I, I don't... So I have like a... I, basically the garbage. Yeah, I don't put them into the Basically carton. the garbage. The rubbish. Yeah, so so I don't have because I live by myself and I don't generate that much trash. So I don't have like a bin that I really keep around. I have a like a a container for trash that I'll use and at the end of the meals and stuff I'll just put it in a bag and take it out so that it doesn't sit out and attract bugs and stuff. Right. Um like meat and everything especially is what you know attracts you know gnats and whatnot. But yeah, I, I get rid of it after I'm done eating. Yeah, I don't put it back in the carton. Is that a thing people do? I've never... I guess it's not like unheard um, of, you know, because it just sits there. I put them back there, in the carton but... if they're the last eggs in the carton, and then I put the carton in the bin. Yeah, that's fair enough. I mean, it's it's not unreasonable to put the shells back in the carton. I just never really no, heard it's of not it. like it's not like unhygienic yeah. or anything. Yeah, it's, oh, that's oh, fair oh, enough. Oh, but... like you, you, when you crack the eggs, you put the broken eggs, like, shells back into the carton. Yeah. Oh, no, okay, I just put them in the bin. I assume wow, that only you works if you're good at breaking thing. the eggshells. I, I yeah. What, what I, do you think like what do you think Jay's position was? I think you may have missed it. I might have, yeah. I was I was winning in Mario Kart. I wanted to make sure that I oh, no. victory. I needed to hear. What did what did you say, Jay? I can't remember. I do. You said the Oh last... no, you had a fringy moment. I put the eggs. Egg I put the last eggs in the and put it into the bin. Yeah, yeah. You'll do it with the rest, though. Yeah, sometimes I I do. If I'm feeling yeah. real lazy, I'll put an, an eggshell back in the carton. But normally, I'll go straight in the bin. Is why is that? Why do you put the last one in the carton and then in the bin? 
Because it's um, about to go out anyway, probably. Yeah. It's like I used a carton as a ca- as a container to take the eggshells to the bin. Oh, okay. Uh, hi everyone. Tell us a joke. Um, um oh, he's you go ahead, Jay. What's your joke? Mm. I bet it's a cool one. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. I had one. It's gone. Sh- no rags. You go. I'll, 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 an old, a venerable classic. A farmer had 297 cows in his field, but when he rounded them up, he had 300. Hey, hmm. that's pretty good. Um, I got to do one each. Um, Um, hmm, uh, just gotta, just gotta come up with something. I'm not even gonna try. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm gonna pass on this one. Apparently, someone in London gets stabbed every 52 seconds. Poor bastard. Yeah. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! There you go. Me and Rags have done it. Yeah, yep. it's up to you. And and to save, to, to, you gotta tell two jokes to make it for free. All right. Mm. <laughs> that one was pretty. All funny. right then. Yeah. <laughs> hey, what does Chris Rock have on his face right now? Fresh Prince. Oh, oh, oh. nice. nice. Yeah, I feel like this well, should, should have been a full. Well, you joke. you said a London related joke. Um, it yeah. Is that going anywhere? Oh, <laughs> I was I was wavering on whether or not I should tell another joke, but ultimately I decided against it. I feel like we've done our jobs. Three of us have, you know. <laughs> were, all, were all of your jokes jokes that you made up, or are they jokes? No. That you've heard of? Well, yeah, you could you could just tell what you've heard. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The I, is, that's like, the one I the one that I had I heard. I often tell jokes on EFAP that just come to my head. Uh, none are coming to mind at the moment. No. You don't have like a one you keep in your pocket whenever you. Um, well, no, I don't. You, I don't know? keep jokes in my pocket. I try to. I, I don't. I don't know. I don't. I don't keep jokes in my pocket. I. I all, no. all that you would be getting here is I'd just be looking up a joke. I just look up a joke and then read it to you. So hey, that could know. be fun. I see. That could be fun. It can be fun, yeah. But you want to have a couple that you just sort of have at the ready. I think that's a good Yeah, well, the problem is I remember, I remember there was one time I got myself in trouble uh, when I... I like anti-jokes a lot, um, but not everybody does. Uh, and you need, to, you need to read the room when you tell anti-jokes. Yeah. <laughs> Because yeah, sometimes people people don't really appreciate anti jokes. Oh, I've got here's here's an Australian joke. You'll love this, Fringy. When is a bear not a bear? I uh, when he's dropping. No, when he doesn't oh. have the qualifications. Oh, hey, oh. nice! Oh, I like okay. it. I like it. That's, that's a good one. All right, I threw uh, my wife a surprise bukkake party. Everyone came. You should have seen her face. <laughs> nice. I like that one. I like that one. I'm gonna I'm gonna see if I can remember that. That's good, Jay. Thank you. I, I googled it all myself. <laughs> Ooh, another well, Australian Fringy, this one. Is, this I'm is one looking, that you yeah. should keep ready because you you like to draw, right? You you like yeah. you like the art, Fringy. You like to enjoy yeah. the artistry. So you mm-hmm. should say was one of your go to jokes. Uh, Two artists had a competition, but it ended in a draw. Oh, that's, I like that. That's right. a yeah, one. nice little one. I met a bloke from Australia who worked in IT. I asked him, do you come from a land down under? <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Uh. <sighs> That is on an airplane, and the uh, 
flight attendant asks him, oh, would you like some headphones? And he says, certainly, but how did you know my name was Phones? <laughs> Stupid. Uh, well, that sorts that out. My... No, one more. Why do cows wear bells? I don't know. Why do cows wear bells? Because their horns don't work. Nice. No, damn it. I nice. have a microphone. It was that funny. I... My mum's favorite joke is why do, ele why, why do you never see elephants hiding in trees? Because they're very good at it. <laughs> uh, yeah. That's great. I love that. I love that one. Oh, like that one. Because they're really good at it. My neat animal for you today is the Mangalista pig, which is kind of like a pig and a sheep crossed over. It sounds like you should be like a Mangalista my balls, the man. Mangalitsa pig. The, the Mangalitsa pig. Wow, that is. Wow, let me show you a picture of this. Uh, let me post this. What a. Whoa! What, what is that? Oh my goodness. Wow. Like a sheep. I love a good sheep the wool creature. shirt. A, a good pig wool shirt. Wooly Look, pig. I can't see its eyes. It looks like its eyes should just be hidden in its ears. Maybe they are. Maybe. Whoa! They get fluffier as they grow. Wow. They come out smooth and they get fluffier and with every year. I wonder if there's any viability to... Big wool. That's what you get from that. Well, what I'll do is I'll um I'll take a look. I wonder if you can actually, because I assume this is a uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. It was developed in the mid nineteenth century by crossbreeding Hungarian breeds from in Bacchini with the European wild boar and the Serbian Sumadija breed. So I wonder if it's actually. So it's one of the fattiest pigs in the world. So the meat from a mangalitsa pig is considered among the tastiest pork in the world. But I wonder if I type in wool. Um, da, 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 da. I, I'm going to have to yeah look into it because... There is a woolly pig there at woollypigs.blogspot.com. Nice. Shockingly accurate site for this question. So I hope they have my question answered. Um, the wool of the. Yeah, it looks like it's possible. Someone said that in Spain, there's a center for wool processing, which will have a variety of fiber animals, sheep, alpaca, rabbits, and even the mangalitsa. So I guess you can. Um, yeah. Interesting. Gal Gadot, more like act cannot. Ah. Nice. Cad Bane, more like bad name. Oof. Oh. And I've then, got a problem with his name. And they said high rank. Hello. He cool. is maybe he is the bane of cads and he just goes around killing them. Makes sense. Cool to see you guys doing another multimedia medley. Also, Fairy Rags is too cute. Oh, yeah, it's pretty great. Yeah, uh, Pika drew that. Cat Catastropica uh, drew that. When will you play Sekiro, you Welsh fiend? Uh, I don't know when exactly, but it's it's high up there on the things I want to play list. Oh. It'll come. It'll come. Today nice. is Saturday, April 16th, 2022. That's well, the 23rd, but... You know, only means we're, uh, we're seven days off with that one. Not bad. Reposting this for Ragu. Hello, the number Hi. one Ewoks of the 77th Reich. The Final Fantasy music of the day is the final battle from Final Fantasy IV, actual Thor. Uh, Nugum has the best upload of it, or Nugum. Nugum? 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 Nugum. Nugum. Yeah, I can't, I can't tell you. I, I'm not sure. Mm-hmm. Um, motorbike outside doing a thing. Oh, you have a motorbike out there? Yeah. He, he Dude, does, does anyone? 
does do you ever call them motorcycles or i guess we call them motorcycles you call them motorbikes typically uh yeah them either. i guess i don't yeah, yeah i wouldn't mind calling them either really yeah I, I i do not have a strong position on the cycle or bike uh oh, bike Bicycle, mm -hmm. <laughs> bicycle. I like bicycle. Get your bicycle license. You got a license for that bicycle. Make it funny of people. Got a license for that bicycle. You got a license for that bicycle. Like no, I can't read. Uh, tell drink you said that. Uh, or you. No, I don't care. Oh. No, you. Boop, boop. For one hundred million dollars, would you have the neck of a Siamang gibbon for the rest of your life? It cannot be removed. Is that the one with the big like whoop neck? neck? Where they like, where like they 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 have like a big sack on their neck and like they can move it and they go whoop. You know, I've had a big sack on my neck sometimes, but let's see. It's what? Which monkey is it called? The Siamang gibbon. Siamang gibbon, these nuts. Simon Gibbon these nuts on my neck. So let's take a look. Let's go to images. Uh, this is a decent picture. Let me copy this and I will paste it for you under the piggy boys. So <laughs> it, is it asking, would I have that there? Is there like a, but you get something else or is just, just for funsies, do you want it on you? What does the neck times? do? That's a question. What does it do? Well, the neck What's is a very, very important body part for Inge. It does yeah, no, I, many things. I, it keeps the head I'm, connected to the body it. and it is a vessel I'm for the, like the esophagus and the throat and the air. And... What this little bulbous sort of, if there's any special utility to having this neck. Oh, that's what you mean. Um, I, I'm i sure, it, I don't know. It doesn't, maybe it's just used in like reproduction. Like, look at the size of my ball neck. Are not I impressive? You would like to have Probably my it. babies, would you not? That's got to be it, right? Surely. Everyone's saying it makes Unless them good at howling. Just... Okay. Oh, so the best howlers get all the, get all the bitches. So get that the fuck all a, the monkey uh, women. That's true. That's true. So there's some... Uh, some pressure there to develop a larger throat wobbler, as it may. Also, wait, did, <laughs> did nobody hear the part? What the question wait, was? Yeah. Right. No, uh, well, I did at one time, but I it, I've long forgotten. One hundred million dollars. Yeah, oh, yes. yeah, I'm taking that then. I'm Absolutely. That yeah, probably. I, I mean, plus, if you're thinking, but won't you be I'm less attractive? And I'm like, well, not in, not when they hear my howling. Yeah. Well, it's just, like, it's a cut, cut. Isn't that like retractable, though? Isn't that like the whole point? Is it like it goes back into their neck when they're not Dude, howling? Dude, if it's retractable, that's a 100% Oh, yes. easy 100 million. That's what I hear. Uh, <laughs> look at his neck. It's <laughs> funny neck. Wow. Uh... Rags, Bible fact of today and worst animal of today. Oh, nice. Let's hear them. I think they're asking for you to do them. Oh, Bible fact of the day. Oh, let's start with that one. I'll type in Bible fact of the day. Let me see. Do we have a legitimate, like a Bible fact of the day? Well, here, let's go to factretriever.com and we'll see oh, they, a Bible they, they fact. They love facts there. Yes, the Bible is a great place to get facts about reality. Oh, so about, about the Bible. I think the Bible is probably the best place to go to get facts about the Bible. Allegedly. Um, let me see. It looks like I'm I'm just gonna scroll through because this is a this has got 50. Okay. So I will pick number 37. And let's scroll down and find 37. Okay, Charlton Heston was cast as Moses in the blockbuster movie The Ten Commandments partly because he resembled Michelangelo's famous statue of Moses. Heston would later play Michelangelo in the film The Agony and the Ecstasy in 1965. It's not that's really that's a Bible, sort of a Bible fact. Yeah, that's Bible not a bad adjacent this, fact. This, this is a Bible adjacent. Yeah, let's, let me scroll. I'm going to go it's with like number a, 19. A Bible spin-off gonna... fact. 
Bible Fact 19. John Wycliffe produced the first translation of the entire Bible from Latin Vulgate into English. However, before he died, the Catholic Church exhumed and burned his corpse as punishment for his translation work. Oh, cool. Nice, nice, nice blokes. Mm. All right. Oh. Let me, I'll just Google worst animal. What, uh, what's the result? Worst animal? Oh, mosquito ranks as number one. Not a surprise. <laughs> Fucking no number surprise two is humans. <laughs> Wait. Source Business Insider. Oh, it's based on humans killed per year, so mosquitoes win with humans coming second, and snakes a third. You guys want to know what number four is? Yeah. Oh, I'm thinking. Uh, wait. Uh, cockroaches. Well, you know what? No There's, flies. We got flies. four through ten. So try and yeah, like see if you can guess any of them. So you just said flies. Right, is, number say five top, say, is me sexy top three flies. One more time. Oh, I've heard those. Those are bad ones. Those give you, those give you malaria, right? Uh, I, I guess so. I, I really don't know. Um, um, yeah. hippos, are they in the top ten? Hippos, no. The deadliest animal in Africa, as far as they're going to yeah. killing people. Um, let me see. I'm, so I'm going to think, uh, I'm trying to think some of that spreads ill. So we talk about, how about fleas? Are fleas in there? Fleas? Um, nothing that's overtly named fleas, but there's... Uh, well, rats? No, no rats. Because really? rats are good boys. Um, how about worst those animals? Wasps that lay their eggs in other creatures' brains or something or whatever. Also, avoid chat because they're probably gonna. There's a good chance they've seen the list now because it's been enough time. The hell with chat. Um, the, the, let me see. Wasp, wasps that like lay their eggs or in creatures or something. Well, so the... some of them. Yeah, there's some crazy bug stuff. Uh, there's one here that I'm not sure exactly how it's categorized, but... You know what, I'll knock this one out just because I'm not like sure how it'll come up. Number six is assassin bugs. Cool! Oh, those, yeah. They, they have this long, this, this really prongy sort of mouth thingy, and I think they get a bug and they stick their little mouth into it, and they inject poison or some hmm. shit into it, and it just, like, undoes their insides... And it just the insect world is a horrific, terrifying place, and it's shit. The life of an insect is a, is a horrif that. horrific. You know, one. I don't think you guys are gonna guess one of these. The, one of these is like what? <laughs> like, but we'll see. Um, yeah. So so far, it's number one mosquitoes, number two humans, number three snakes, number five setsy flies, and number six assassin bugs. So you've still got four, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Insects, I notice. Um, what about piranhas? Nope. Mm. Cockroaches? No. Flies. Um, I've kind of... It, Rags, I think, said flies at one point, and that's how Setsy Flies has been gone, but there's nothing else for flies in the list. Yeah. What about... Um, hmm. Trying to think of some sort of critter that might be considered worst like we should get rid of them or something holocaust like spiders <laughs> oh yeah yeah they holocaust are not in spiders. there but if oh, i could okay this to, to it, it i think uh the one that is on the list is related in the family genome of spiders i believe scorpion correct scorpion is number eight okay Yeah, I don't know. I'm just... Well, I'll give you 9 and 10. They're both kind of the same. They're different types of them, but uh, 9 and 10 are uh, worms. Ew. Oh, like tapeworms? Parasites? Uh, 10 is tapeworms, 9 is Ascaris roundworms. Ah. Uh, oh, what about the little fish that swims up your pee and into your cock? The Kandiru! Uh, that's not on here, but yeah. that's Maybe that's, that's a bad one. I don't know. <laughs> That is the Candira fish. I remember that from Venture Bros. So now we're only missing the fourth top human killer and the seventh top human killer. Uh, both of which are familiar to you guys as, as animals. Very much so, actually. One of them you may get, one of them I don't think you'll ever get. Elephant? No. I get, when you say get them, you mean like it'll be on me or in me? 
Oh no, guessing them. I I, I don't. Okay. I, I hope I that neither sure. of these. Okay. Are... Okay. <laughs> yeah, like... yeah. Like. Yeah. Cow. <laughs> you said cow. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Surprisingly, no. The um, cow is not on the list. Was I? I remember was... hearing you know, like statistically, more people die of cows no, than like remember. sharks or whatever. We <laughs> probably said die of cow. According to that cow. Hand, though, about the bovine industry, yeah, you know, where the cow would do the same to you or something. You got to get it first, and then the cow looks menacingly at the camera. Yeah, because I'm I'm just trying to think of like uh, uh, what worst animals. Well, we're specifically meaning kills most humans. Oh, kills most humans. A jellyfish? So I'm almost nope. thinking like, so what kills, what's an animal that's around people all the time? Maybe that's the thing, right? Seagulls. So like, a, like, a, like maybe <laughs> nope. a farm animal that you wouldn't imagine, like a donkey or something, just, or a mule. No, mules are too docile. Or, or like um, or. some kind of bull or... A cow. Uh, a horse? What about horses? No, but I think that's a fair guess. I guess, because, yeah, humans are often around horses. Because, I mean, like, sharks, I don't think will be on this list, because barely any people get killed by sharks, because sharks and humans don't often meet. So, like, but mosquitoes are everywhere, you know, so they bite and they kill, you know, that's, you know diseases. Um, but I'm, I'm trying to think, like, what animal is around... Oh yeah, by the way, this is just, apparently the source for this is CNET, so I have no idea if this is true, I'm just going with whatever this list says. An animal that, like, we interact with that's deadly can kill you, but maybe you don't, it doesn't happen enough to where you might think about it, but maybe it's just around so much that well, eventually, can, just statistically, it kills enough people. If I can give you number seven, because like I said, no way, I just don't think you like you guys would ever guess this, uh, freshwater snails. Oh! Freshwater snails. Like, they, fuck kill, them. they kill an average of ten thousand humans per year. Is that because Why? We How? Eat, because of eating like maybe oysters or something? Oh my god! But those are all from salt water. Business so. Insider estimates that they kill over twenty thousand per year. I don't. I don't even. I don't know. I have no idea that snails were. I had no. These, <laughs> the menace these, of the are snail. They, the menace. Are they like banthas? Like sleeper hits, man. <laughs> Unlikely <laughs> predators. I don't, I really don't know. Uh, the, yeah, apparently. Oh, they're... fuck! How come I didn't think of it before? Dogs! Dogs is number four. Yes! Dogs! Think about how many dogs are around people all the time, and some breeds are more prone to being deadly than others. It's just, so... just got to be proximity, really. Yeah, that's what, I'm, that's what I'm thinking. There's so many dogs with people all the time. There's got to be eventually enough instances where a dog kills a human, right? Just from said, sheer proximity. Yeah. Have we said venomous snakes? Snakes are not snakes in the top ten like, for this list, but I don't. Again. Oh, whoa. Snakes weren't. Oh, I sorry. They, sorry, they were. They were number three. My bad. Okay. Yeah. And um, spiders. Spiders were not in the list. Um, but this, this is the thing. There's more than one of these lists. Like the people have compiled. I don't know which one is the the accurate one. Someone said hippos should be in this list. So, uh, you know, I I just don't know. And I, I think in um, yeah. I think that the they kill more people nah, than any other animal in Africa. The, so I mean, that's where they do it, you know. But I think about that's the 500 statistic. deaths a year. So they're not close. I guess when we talk about, like, I, I, maybe in terms of being an animal that isn't a like a mosquito, right? Is it's a animal because it's not a plant you know but it's not like when people say animal they often treat bugs as their own thing you know yeah. so maybe when people say animal like a land animal the hippo is the deadliest because tigers probably don't kill enough people because there's not it's that many tigers or lions or something like that you know cheetahs or pumas crocodiles pumas people in the 40s alligators. quite a bit but you know have so much Alligator, no, alligators kill like one person every couple of years, right? Every like alligator? From... That's kind of unsettling. Well, no, no, in total. Oh, okay. All right, that's not as that's not as concerning. Um, oh. I remember that from Archer. Is that this is a running joke? Well, not a running joke, a one-off joke. The other kind of joke, uh, based on the fact that Archer has memorized every uh, fatal alligator attack and. Uh, he goes back a few oh, yeah, years naming right. them. 
I'd assume that's accurate. Archer likes to get their facts accurate when making that kind of joke. Although I don't imagine they used specific cases of actual people that died. I imagine they just got the, the right kind of numbers. Well, you know what? This list doesn't include alien killings, and I think that's just a matter of them trying to cover it up a little bit. Um, that is true. They could be trying to cover it up. I imagine they would be really clever about it, you know? They would probably try and blame snails or something. Snails. So anyway, uh, why do people deliver babies? Don't babies need livers? Ha! There we go. Nice. NBA playoffs and EFAP at the same time? Good day. Is that good to have them at the same time? What are you going to do at that point? Or some both on times two speed, um, going from one to the other so you can get them both. Um, <laughs> so, uh, well, if you watch them at two times speed simultaneously, you get done in a fourth of a time. Well, no, no. So you, you watch like a two minutes of one on two times speed, then pause, two minutes of the other on two times speed, and you keep doing it like that. So you don't actually miss either so, of them. Here's the problem. I think that in, in, I think in practice and in execution, stopping two minutes and swapping, if it takes a couple seconds for you to do that every two minutes, that's going to really add up. No, you, you do it. You do it the other way. So you, you, pr you have your hand on like... You have two devices, maybe like a laptop and a desktop or a laptop and a phone. And you have your okay. hand on both buttons, so you can press them at exactly the same time. Okay. Well, that, uh, you technically just... possible. It requires quite a bit of diligence, but it's possible. Well, if it were like YouTube streams, you just play them both on times two and pause right before they catch up and switch to the other one and hit play. And then right when that one catches up, you hit pause and then hit play on the other one, right? That's the easy way to do it? Yeah. Nice. Uh, this this is a little bit of a non sequitur, but uh, I just got sent like a a full blown um little comic based on a a meme from EFAP one thirty six. I don't think I don't know if I want to share it now or if we'll save it for the uh for the EFAP mini, but uh it 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 is real neat just skimming through it. The art's Wait, awesome. Can I have a, I won't be on the meme fab. Can I can I have a look? Oh, now you yeah. want to be on the meme fab. I see. Well, no, I specifically don't want to be on the meme fab. That's why I don't go on them anymore. I don't find them that interesting. Yeah, that EFAP. That's, that's, that's what Jay said right from Jay's mouth. No interest in fan creations. How fucked up was that? The worst thing ever. Kill. We do plan to record one of them <laughs> relatively soon, I think. Um, so. Well, yeah, I figure it's uh the reason why it's because it's it's uh it's a few pages long, so it might be uh worthwhile to have it like in a. You know. Yeah. All right. Um, a, just obviously pass it over at some point, and then yeah. I'll um, I'll put it in. We've got a lot of things to look at on MemeFap. Um, sorry about the delay on those as well. I should have mentioned that in the update stuff. That yeah, we're planning on doing a, a double bill of those at some point, for copyright and non-copyright. Uh, we'll probably yeah, we'll try and fit it in at some point. We just got lots of things to fit in. You know how it goes. Um, Shad has done collabs with those OSP guys. Oh, Overly Sarcastic Productions? Well, that's pretty cool, you know? Just because we disagree with them about fridging, right? That was the... That was that a pretty bad video, yeah. I, ge I generally one. like OSP's videos, although I don't tend to analyze them. The Maybe they're good. all shit! <gasps> yeah, I mean, I did watch the fridging one, and I was like, mm, mm, mm. mm. Didn't pass my spell test. I don't know about this one, Chief. Whereas they often uh, pass my spell test. You know, a couple of the videos I'm like, didn't know about test. that one, Chief. Yeah, where I smell it and I'm like, hmm, this was good. Wait, so what are they a chief um, of? Uh, they are That's... chief of the jungle. Whoa. Chief of Halo. The chief of Halo. That's a different chief, right? Chief, chief, chief of the jungle. Naked as Ooh. he can be. Interesting. Why is Rags gay? Why isn't Jay? Dun dun dun. That is an interesting question, honestly, that I feel requires and deserves a resolution. Why am I gay but Jay is not? Isn't gay more so I just stole, like something you choose no, you to randomly jump into if you me. wanna and it gives you like Yes, it's a lifestyle. Yeah. Yes, it is a lifestyle, and I have chosen the gay lifestyle as my own. That's pretty cool, dude. It is alright. Hey, Charlie. I lolled at Annie sitting at the little kid's table. 
I assume this is about Lego. And cute things that may have been happening in the background at some point, I was probably too distracted to appreciate them from the Oh, that bad. was in the foreground. That was in a scene. I thought that was funny. Oh, I must have missed that uh, So um, After Mace Windu says, take a seat, young Skywalker. Oh. He has him sit down at a child's desk. I was thinking of young Anakin. Yeah, I remember that. I remember. That was somewhat amusing. Yes. If I had a penny, for every time Fringy responded with, well, I'd have $579.32. Yeah, it's a problem. I agree. It's more of hey, a... They didn't say it's a problem. It's, it's, just, it's just a way to nah, it's, prep it's, everyone um, for beginning a sentence. It's No, I, I've noticed a few of these, partly from doing Cosmoronic. I've noticed, like, when I go back through and edit, it feels like it's something I say a lot, and that's annoying. Uh, there's a lot of just redundant words in my sentences that I want to trim. I don't want to turn into... What was it that Vos said I, when he said he was tired? <laughs> I'm beset upon again? by tiredness. I'm beset, beset upon by tiredness, yeah. <laughs> Oh, I love that. That should go with the next Goodell. Well, maybe it'd be edited into the previous ones. I, don't I guess it's know. not quite the same problem. Um, it's not quite the same problem. I just want to trim those words because there's no need for them. It feels like is often unnecessary. You could just say it. I don't know. I don't. I don't think you should take such a utilitarian approach to language. You could flower uh, it up. You well, know. Well, I, that, I definitely is that flowering it up. Flower the problem is, I don't, I don't think it's flowering up. I think it's, I think it's waste. I think it's um. And you're referring to what in particular? Uh, the if what? I had a dollar thing. Uh, well, I don't need to start a sentence with well. I can just start. <laughs> you know. I think oh, it can oh, be I very see. useful for there priming people for what is to come. Yeah, exactly. I think you that. can say well, and then generally that kind of gets everyone ready in a conversation for something to follow because. Maybe they'll stop, or there will be a pause, or you can, you know, it, it's a bit dramatic. You know? noticed, uh, Not in a grandiose kind of way, but... I've, I've noticed I do well, the I same thing with the same word, but I've always considered it the word that most people might not even hear. It's just to let everyone know I'm planning to speak. The reason why I and do it's often that, used as a substitute for actually. The reason why I do it, I think, I remember when I was in school, and, and I can't remember what, how this, this arose in class, but it was um, the teacher trying to point out Hey, try and try and speak without using the word um, you know, like try and get those sentences out uh cleanly. And I started my sentence with well, and they highlighted that as ah, right, you know, like that was kind of sneaky almost. Cause that's almost an um, but it's better than an um because at least it's a word, you know. In that scenario though, she's waiting for you to talk and you have silence. Like I could begin sentences if there was silence without well. Um because I that guess makes it's sense. um it 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 it's a word that buys you a little bit of time, I think, uh, is partly why. But I, I think, think it's also for the audience's sake as well. I don't think it's a purely selfish said, well, um, maneuver. I think, there's, I think there's utility for sure. I, I guess what I'm noticing, when I say it feels like, what I'm identifying this as is soft language. That's that's kind of what I'm not happy about. It's it's soft language instead of getting more to Like the your point. language hard? Uh, well, in the sense that... Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, soft language being that Inst you know, people, of course, whatever I'm expressing as a perspective is what I think. You know, I think is often redundant yeah, unless you, you want to really still, draw a distinction between. Um, you can still dist thought. distinguish between like the level of, um, of confidence you have in what you're saying, right? In terms of sometimes it yeah. is valuable to express that I'm pretty sure about this, you know, but there's, there's a lot of wiggle room rather than I know this for sure. I do not yeah, doubt yeah, this I for a second. Um, yeah, a lot of these things I'm yeah. I'm totally fine with. You don't want to end up pushing yourself to the point where you end up like robotic or Vorshish. Well, no, but Vorsh is the opposite. Vorsh uses tons of superfluous words. Um, I I would argue that not all of them are superfluous. They're just like that you they feel colloquially unnecessary. But he could argue absolutely oh. that they are necessary to his point or whatever. Um. Yeah, the yeah, utility I mean, for a lot of like when he speaks, the point is not trying to make sure the audience understands him. It's to as Come across like as said, intelligent. Flexicon. Yeah, it's yes. Aren't, Flex, aren't I? Yes. Very... Greg, Greg said flexicon, and I was very impressed. Let me tell you, I uh, I really, I really like that pun. That's that's one of my favorite. The reason why I like it so much is because it works super well as wordplay, but it's also incredibly accurate at getting across the point. I could see I, it I, catching I, on as the word for the thing. You know? Yeah. 
it's, it's like, perfect. Oh. Well, yeah, it all began I've, here. I was just thinking about it. And I was like, why do I like it? And I was like, so flexicon as if to flex, like I'm so cool, but also like flexible lexicon as in like all of it can change at any moment into different things as long as they sound better, bigger, smarter. Sort of. I guess it's, it's 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 an interesting balance because when I think about what I want to achieve whenever I actually get back to writing more regularly, um, I really like the English language. And I, I love how versatile it can be and how many, and I like that we have so many words that can be substituted for one another because it just feels like there's a lot of ways to get variety in prose. But the difficult part is that I think the, I think that effective communication is when you can, I've said this so many times, but I, I just think it's true, distilling complex information into a very simple format. Like, you, you know how like, you could say that somebody's understanding of a topic, um, they have a better understanding of it if they can convey it in like less time or they can convey it in a really simple way that anybody could understand without their background. I think that um, that's a strong communicate. It depends. That's one of the main things that I try to do in videos is convey it, um, convey, convey um, what would be a response to someone's point, response to um, like the default counter argument incorporating that into the main point in a way that everyone can understand and in a way that doesn't retract from the statement being made so that I don't have to sidetrack into trying to go, oh, if you think this, then this, and if you think this, then this. Just you don't want people say to it in a way that covers all the bases. I will say one thing is you don't want to have people need to look up a thesaurus to understand what the hell you're saying. Um, even if you use a complex word, hopefully, if it's an obscure one, the context of what you're saying will make it clear to people what that word means. Um, yes. I, I don't know. It's, it's the, the goal with speaking is not to come across as intelligent. It's to communicate clearly. Um, and when you say, I'm on what, the precipice of, um, of drowsiness or whatever, it's like... Uh, man, I mean, that is just fun. That is fun. I find myself you, positioned upon the precipice of weariness. Like that's that's funny, but not if you say that and that's like the foot. Like yes. that's funny as a that's thing. That's how you, you may, yeah. Say, you know, not as a thing that you do say because you want to make people think that you're smart by using big words. Which is, I guess, because I like big words. I like them. I like a lot of big words. Um, but damn, Queen's three English like, ice queen. Damn the... three big words. Um, yeah. And anti, isn't it anti-establishmentarianism is anti the longest disestablishmentarianism. Establishmentarianism. Yeah, there you go. There's that. Oh man, it's, the, it's not the longest word. What is it? The longest I of? I think it is the longest word. Anti-establishment. It's, it's not the longest word. No, no. it's absolutely not the longest word. Well, the the Welsh uh, town the, is longer than that, isn't it? Well, right. town names aren't words. Well, they are words, but I guess <laughs> we're not. Words. Okay. Well, well, you. We will assume you meant something different than what you said. Yeah, I think. But I think. What you meant, say, town names aren't dictionary words. Um, I wonder if you could find London in the dictionary. No, you probably can't. That's huh. too big. Huh. Hmm. What is another big word that I like? Well, I mean, I guess it's not a big word syllable-wise, but conscience. I tend to misspell that a lot for some reason. <laughs> yeah, I have to do, like, conscience. Yeah, that, that helps. Um, I, I often, for some reason, psychology as well as when I misspell, which is stupid. <laughs> like, that's... That's I remember when I was miss. super young, I remembered to spell Armageddon by saying Arm Aged Dawn. It was like, that's how I would remember well, right. to do that. And now Captain Marvel aged the Arm of the Dawn by injuring it. Yes. Kind of. Wow. The, the, one, by the way, I is mean, a character featured in that comic, by the way. It'll be fun when we get around to it. I was curious because I didn't know the answer to either, but London is in the dictionary. Ooh. All right, well, there you go. I guess, fuck me. <laughs> That's not necessary. Oh, okay. We've already established that I'm the gay one. It's a fun um, long word. Uh, orthopedic. That is a oh. that is a big, pretty big word. You know why that's a fun word for me? When I was a, no. when I was when I was a little youngster, uh, and you know, it's like, what do you want to be when you grow up? You know how people always give the default: I want to be a firefighter. I want to be an astronaut. I want to be a doctor. I wanted to be an orthopedic surgeon. <laughs> Uh, and then, and then what happened? Cool. Well, I don't know why I ever thought I would want to be an orthopedic surgeon. Um, doesn't actually appeal to me at all um, to to do surgery on people's bones. I remember I wanted to be a director for a little while. Um, 
Right, I'm just I imagining do. asking like an eight-year-old like kid, what do you want to be when you grow up? For them saying orthopedic surgeon and being like, oh, all right. Yeah, I was, uh, I was a lot more ambitious when I was a kid, I think. Um, <laughs> I think that uh, whatever that drive was, I don't know, doesn't quite exist in the same capacity. I think, a, I think a lot of people who don't understand what effort is are more ambitious. Or, you know, they set their goal, you know, especially as a kid, when kids say, I want to be a firefighter, I want to be an astronaut. They have no well, it's, uh, possible it's when... way to understand what it actually takes to be those things. And um, so they they, yeah, ease, they more easily are ready to say um, that. I could see an alternate reality where I decided to go down a path that was a little more like that, that way. Um, but I think it would, I think it's just a matter of as you get older and you start to realize who you are, you kind of figure out what it is that really interests you. Um, I remember it. Yeah. Because I think film director was one that I eventually honed in on, but uh, I don't think, I, I don't think I'd want to be a film director. I think all that was, was a realization of, Oh, I like storytelling a lot. I like, I, I like stories. Uh, and I think writing kind of cuts more to the, uh, to the core of that in terms of something that I think I'm good at. I think I'm good at, at English, which that might be a stupid sentence. I'm I'm thinking about it. I'm wondering if it is. I'm good at English. No, that's a no. Somebody. I mean. <laughs> yeah. It it was Mahler who said your, uh, what what was your word for your your little trick to learn how to spell the word? What was that one? Oh, which uh, uh, oh, arm age dawn, as in arm age dawn. dawn. Yeah. For me, there's some words that I have just i can't remember things like necessary and successful when you have like a lot of c's and s's and i can't remember I, I, two c's yeah. two s's and s, s c, yeah. I, you know i just i literally just i thank god for well, spell check to be fair, necessary is any c e s s a r y or did i screw that up did i i don't know i just, I just hey, like well, that you said you know that as though it would there. help rags when his whole point was he could remember with s s and c well so. i well, I have one of those things too. It's for the word tomorrow, right? Because a lot of people spell it with two M's. So do that. Yeah, I guess why? that's a thing. So I, I don't, I don't know why. You'll have to find one and ask them, and then they could explain <laughs> it to you. But I always knew that tomorrow was one M and two R's because it's like a name, Tom Aro. So that is my little thing for. Well, what if it was like Tom Morrow? So that would be someone else, wouldn't it? Fucking retard. Got him. Oh. See, I am. Um, what the? Yeah, I, 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 I got. <laughs> I, I was perusing a, a tweet because I was distracted by this big colorful thing. I didn't know this. Apparently, the Abyss is still not on Blu-ray, and yet they've blu ray really? like shit tons of really not well-known B movies by now. And it's just like, is this some kind of legal thing? Do you think? That's you think interesting that the Abyss wouldn't get, especially since the Abyss is another one of those groundbreaking visual effects, James Cameron things. Yeah, I, I, I find that very weird. But then I scroll one tweet down, and apparently this, this happened. Do you guys remember the, 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 the person, Belle Delphine? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah the bathwater lady. This is apparently the 22nd of April, yes, yeah, so it's not that long ago. Somebody like said on some forum, I guess, um, a light bulb can fit in your mouth but cannot be taken out. And then oh, she I said, saw this. "Hey, this is a pretty good idea." She put the light bulb in her mouth, couldn't get it out, and fucking, I guess, crunched on it, and there's blood just coming out oh, of her mouth. Oh, oh. Like, and she put out Wait, a tweet she, saying, "You have no idea that? how much this hurt." It's like, yeah, I figure. How? Oh. When did she do this? Relatively recently, from what I'm gathering. What oh, the what? fuck? Why would you pot? Why would you do that? Well. Because that thing, like, it's pre it's a little bit of, there's a little bit of pressurization in there because of the gas that, you know. Ke yeah. Well, all yeah, I can oh, think yeah. about is just, imagine how difficult it would be to get all of that out of your mouth without you swallowing it, without, like, that's yeah. a, that You hope it breaks in you big just, pieces, obviously. You just have to put that, do your best to put that tongue in the back of your throat, you take know, a breath, like, and just, ugh. Wow, I, I don't know what I'm that you put honestly. water in your mouth no, and then don't, spit the water out. That would be a way. Oh, maybe having water would, yeah, that would help. Or pudding. That, that, but um, oh, yeah, man, putting a light bulb in your mouth, that's just not a smart thing to do. I, I, I recommend it's it. very again. small, but anyway, even then, there's not going to be a gain. Even then, there's I, not a lot of, well, here's the thing, you don't have much to gain, even if it's like a Christmas the, light. Yeah. What is the utility of eating? Oh, well, not mouth eating, glow. Pudding. Mouth glow. I mean, that's this, that's, man, I mean, I, I hate to be the one to say it, but it's really not a bright idea. Hey. Oh, man. 
that that's actually like inc i don't know why anybody would do that like there's nothing that you're going to get out of that well i mean is it a lot of pain i wonder if we're moving towards like a one guy one jar situation where it's like what she had just unknowable modes like she knew this was going to happen she wanted it to happen because she's got something going on in her brain yeah, but like, I don't know what you gain out of, you know, like you think about the business well, move with the bathwater, it's like, I can see the gain there. I don't, I don't really see the gain of like destroying your mouth with class. I mean, okay, so we could also um, acknowledge the possibility that it's fake for, um, for like You're, relevance, right? This is all, yeah, this is all un operating under like, the assumption that this has actually happened, right? I mean, I've seen the pictures and it's like, I don't, she shows like a broken light bulb and then like red fluid coming out of her mouth. She could have bought a, a blood pla uh, pack and That's, smashed a light bulb if she prank. wanted. Yes. Like the guy who like crashed his plane and said that it, it that his plane failed and it was super fake and all that stuff and he lost his license. Hey, I just seen, this is a total shift, but uh, uh, HBO Max has uploaded the Batman chase scene, the Batmobile scene. If you want to watch a really cool scene that's not awesome but wow i like it a lot visually if you like very the, very striking if you visually. like the music if you like the music which i de i my it's it's one of my favorite tracks from the film um though i think it is the uh the the halloween one the opening the violins oh god damn soundtrack is fucking love batman soundtrack it's so good adam and Sitch actually um, uploaded a, a video of them reviewing it during their podcast i think the film and uh sitch was it was funny, Sitch was like, okay. So when he goes through like all production elements, talking how great they are, that he was like, now I'd like to talk about the writing. And I was like, oh god, what's he gonna, oh. Mm -hmm. And uh, the first thing he talked about was the, the chase scene, and Batman's part in it, and the Penguin's part in it, and how none of it seems to hold any consequence to the police at all. I think, um, when you think, because that film is like a spectacle through and through, I think the chase is one of the sequences where it's like, feels like the writing is kind of buckling here uh, Absolutely. In, favor of a, in favor of a spectacle. Because like the scene, the upside down shot and all the flames in the back, it's an awesome shot. Like that, that film looks great. It's an awesome shot. But like when you think about how the ramp lines up and just everything that happened in that the chase ramp and is the consequences like... that stem from it, you know? The ramp is actually like something that I could see myself laughing at if I was watching it in the <laughs> right movie. It's like, uh, man, that's no, hilarious. I, it would be great I if Batman it, and Robin, that ramp. Oh, I yeah. I mean, it would fit well, in Batman and Robin, wouldn't it? I mean, I, I guess there's no getting around that, like, I, I am very much on that film side in terms of I like what it is. Um, you know, what it's I'm glad I saw it and I'm glad it yeah. exists. Yeah. I'm, gl I'm certainly glad it exists. I, um, if we can, if, if there's like a world where we can encourage more superhero films to be willing to like carve out a very distinctive style um to not try and fit into the mold of what's typically done like that'd be nice um especially in the current landscape that we're in uh like the batman is something that is very much welcome um especially you know in a landscape that's filled with like just more and more superhero sequels and yeah supremely bored of superheroes i don't blame well, you that's okay, but I mean, the, the, it's it's only going to get more and more from here, you know? Like, it's it's never going away as a trend. Ooh. A lot of people have uh, been getting some viral tweets lately about how everything, everywhere, all at once, plus um, the imperable uh, weight of the massive North talent. Moon, plus, plus... Yeah, I want to see, but I want to see those movies. I actually got free ticket to go see uh, Nick Cage's little movie, so I'll definitely be taking that up. Yeah, and so people are like, you gotta go watch them if you're gonna complain about comic book movies all the time. And yeah. I'm like, yeah, it's fair. Yeah. It's, it, well, it's true. Um, I, don't, like, I, I don't think I have well, complained that it's like too many comic book movies. I think I've just, because like, as far as I'm concerned, it's just like, it's the market's fault, right? Like, fault, quote unquote. Like, it, people want to see these things, old. so. Well, yeah, it's, um, well, I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll talk about that all in good time, I guess. But yeah, I mean, you look at the, because I'm, uh, the projections for Doctor Strange is like super high. That film's going to make a lot of money. Um, meanwhile, you know, The Northman, I, like it's pr it's it's probably going to do okay. I imagine, like in terms of the numbers that it is compared to how much it costs, it's probably going to do okay. But I mean, there's a chance it won't. There's not really that chance with like Marvel stuff. They all kind of make their money back. Like the worst that you get is where a film makes four hundred million dollars. You know. Um, 
and and all that says is that there is a market that wants something and the market is getting what it wants in a large quantities but you know what i will say that i guess i am somewhat glad that we're starting to see like more discourse on hey guys you know that there are more films besides like marvel movies that you can watch you know like it's not just marvel movies you guys you love no way home and that was garbage so who knows it was half garbage different yeah we, garbage, we explained yeah. in in excruciating detail that the plot was terrible I, li I like how we liked one superhero, like, piece of- well, I guess two if you include the Batman, like, in the last- and, and Suicide Squad, so, like, three out of what? Like, 15? In the last couple of years? <laughs> we got, like, super favorable- well- Yeah, if, I feel like we know, were clear on- that. what was the combining all factor of, of all of them? It's like, it's the, the character work of the usually main character yeah. that we're very much appreciative Mahler, of. hold on. I- are you implying that we might be a little consistent? I mean, I, I always thought it was... Okay. I, I think we've said this before, it's a bit of a weird thing to say, but we should be able to predict what our reaction to something will be, because we've given out all the tools we use for it. Um, but then, of course... Yeah, you should be able to do with us what we do with Movie Bob. <laughs> um, well, I was going to say, yeah, well, even, yeah, even our individual preferences, the, I assume people who watch the show would know them by now. Um, well, I think a it's, lot of it's a matter of... Um, if, if we're working with the same standard and applying it consistently... None of us should be surprised by our reactions to a film, other than, I guess, an expectation of what it was going to be versus what it was. Yeah. You know? Like, if we're well, really I mean, surprised, then, then there's probably something worth discussing to try and figure out the common ground of what needs to... where the system is diverging and where we can align it. If, if one of us is right, one of us is wrong, we're both kind of wrong, you know? Our so emotions can, uh, can be surprising, you know? They yeah, can and, be surprising. And they can get in the way if we... Screw up, but we we, we try. Well, not to. it's 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 worth thinking about. Like whenever whenever you watch a film, and you have that like mismatch where it's like it feels like there's something wrong, but I like it. Or alternatively, this feels really great, but it's doing nothing for me. There's probably something yeah. really interesting at the end of that thought process that um will help inform. Because I'm I I always talk about it, but like one of the things I kind of realized with the the BoJack stuff. And uh, I guess Barry as well was a blind spot for comedy dramas, like a comedy that was trying to go for serious, meaningful stakes and, and conflicts. But like there was kind of a blind spot to the execution hey. of all of these things, you know? Hey, but we, we, we got through Misfits and that did that. We, well, for, so for the that, first eight episodes. Well, so the thing is, is that I do like that format. That's, I think that's a format. And it, I mean, I guess an example of that is that's what Arby and the Chief is. And I value that a lot as like a creation. Um, but, but it's about drawing the distinction between the ones that do it well and the ones that don't do it well. Yeah. You know? Well, and oftentimes what is it the balancing humor and drama, you know, the chosen favorite episodes of almost strict comedy shows are oftentimes the dramatic ones, be it Scrubs, Simpsons, well, Futurama. Simpsons, yeah. Well, yeah. Like Jurassic Park and, um, and, uh, uh, the, the Maggie episode in the Simpsons. Well I wonder if that's a um, a factor of the favorite episode generally being do generally being something that has to have done something different for it to stick out in your mind, right? If you're um, watching a a comedy and you watch one that's like, oh, this episode is like a lot, uh, you know, way, really really funny, and normally the episodes are just really funny. Is that going to stick out in your mind as your favorite episode yeah, just because it made well, you yeah, laugh Cape, more than usual? Yes, Cape Fear is one of my favorite episodes of These The Simpsons nice. because of this, like. Not li well, Lisa on Ice is super funny, but also that ending, man. Oof. Every time. Yeah, the uh, the reason some of these get highlighted for me is because I, I remember being like, damn, I'm laughing even more than usual for, with Simpsons, which is uh, impressive. Like, the jokes just get going straight yeah. away. Some episodes that just seem a little stronger than others. Um, but yeah, I... Th well, I I do think that the ones that are dramatic usually work because of all the bedrock of all the comedic episodes establishing character, and then they yeah. Have, yeah. So and and yeah, they do stand out. Like for instance, when when Homer's mom leaves, and then the end credits is him sitting on the uh, sitting on his car looking at the stars. I'm actually getting sad thinking about it. It's like one of my favorite moments in that show. Just the fact that Homer would be sitting there in the middle of the desert staring at the at the night sky he's been there for a while there's so much to think about when it's a character like homer mm. it's it's such a wonderful like moment it it, it actually it, yeah it would be in like my top five favorite moments in that whole show it's it's fantastic and then the music as well it's yeah like i'm getting a little teary-eyed thinking about it 
I it's it's a wonderful moment. I love that show. The Simpsons is is a fantastic show. It was back in its it's in its heyday. Oh, why don't you go make a video then? I I would be tempted to talk about like some of my favorite Simpsons episodes. I feel like there's probably something to mine from uh from that in terms of again a show that balances comedy and drama really well. Because it's um it's an interesting balance. It's something that I find really because there's so many um there's so many like examples of because you could say Quentin Tarantino is a, an example of balancing comedy and drama, but in a way that's a little unconventional. I think the more common one is uh is kind of like it's almost like the what the Marvel stuff has turned into, where you have jokes but they're like very strictly divorced from the dramatic moments. Um as opposed to trying to find ways to tell jokes in dramatic moments and having them be diegetic, I think that's a much harder balance to achieve. What a non-diegetic um, joke be? Um. Oh, I I use the wrong word actually. I think what I mean is um. You think about like uh, I guess you could say because um, it's like like a narrator imagine, telling the joke. No, I guess it's more of like a um. That be a cut. There's uh, there's examples where like there will be a joke in a dramatic sequence that is like a a joke in universe, but like it's it's um it's something that would be funny on its own, but like it's it's a, it's um it's like very much within the broader scene itself, and it doesn't take you out of it. Like it, I guess it's um it's a matter of what are the ways that you can find to get jokes in the mix without there being like a tonal shift, you know, where it is still funny, but it doesn't, um, it doesn't totally flip your, uh, sort of emotional response to a scene. That's, I think that's a really difficult thing to achieve. It really, yeah. Yeah. Super difficult. In terms um, of non-diegetic jokes, surely Archer has a lot when it makes a joke out of cutting between scenes that a, um, like a very frequent type of joke. In oh, Archer the transition. Is, yeah. yeah the transition a scene transition where, where they cut, um, to something the that's sentences bleed maybe ironic frequently. or yeah. That's not well, a joke that's happening in universe. Um, well, I guess the thing is, is that there are a lot of jokes that aren't happening in universe in the sense that what's funny about them is, um, what's green, funny about like them is, is like, green uh, elf. well, it's, it's like, um, you know, when, when, um, you think infinity war had a lot of, I liked a lot of the jokes in infinity war, but like none of the characters are laughing at each other's jokes because they're not jokes to them. This is just them or like their interaction. Yeah. Or a conversation they're having, but it's funny to you. That's <laughs> usually what a joke is in, in like a story. It's not something that's acknowledged in universe as a joke. It's not like in a sitcom when everybody pauses to let the laughter sort of roll through. I honestly feel that um characters in universe not laughing at the funny things is a almost a trope that's overused, right? And it happens way too often that you will see something explicitly funny happens and all the characters will just sort of ignore it, even though you're like, no, if I was in that room, I would be laughing. Um, well, well, you, I, can I, you think of any I, example off the top of your head if it's a bit? Evasive? I can't. It. I can't. I just. I notice this all the time. Um, but I cannot think of a specific example right now. Hmm. But just you know, next time you're watching one of them comedies, you go go and you'll have in your head. I wonder if the characters actually be laughing at this. Would you count when Loki falls in Ragnarok and says, "I've been falling for thirty minutes"? Do you think Thor <laughs> should be laughing there? I'm not sure. Because that's hilarious. Yeah, I think but it's like, funny as fuck, but whether or not Thor know. should laugh. I don't remember if he smirks or not. I can't remember. I can't remember if he smirks, yeah. That's a good joke. I, love I guess joke. that's the one thing I'll be looking forward to with Ragnarok, at least, is I'm hoping it will be really funny. Love and Thunder. Fool. Oh, oh yeah, right. Love and Thunder. You've right. been exposed <laughs> by Jay. What, a fake Marvel fan? Yeah. Oh, no, anything but that. <laughs> Man, Moon Knight was so disappointing. <laughs> like, yep. Oh, uh, God, and we'll talk about it all in good time. Deep Rock Galactic Season 2 hype this month, boy. Side ranks? Um, yeah, sort of. Uh, mm. it, it's always good to see new content for a game that I really, really enjoy, but I don't really know much about it, so I couldn't really t tell you much about it. Uh, Lord Longbong of Mubslington Abbey, have you given any more? Did Fringy cough just now? He tends to strangely cough every time this thing is read out. What? Sorry. <laughs> no, he didn't cough. He's fine. It sounds fine. 
Uh, no, I'm I'm all right right now. Well, that's that's the super chat. All right. Animal of the day is the Kuoka. Uh, the Kuoka. Like a body right. part. Let yeah. me let me send you a picture of the Kuoka. Oh, it it is one of the most adorable animals on this planet. Another. Great. Gosh, there's so many adorable ones. It's, it's an Australian. I went to the island. It's in Western Australia. I went to the island where there's just like hundreds, maybe even thousands of them just roaming about. Well, I'd assume that there are probably thousands of them roaming about. Why? Unless oh, they're in danger. Walkers are great. Oh, well, that's Walkers adorable. Yeah, they. That they grass are, is every... fucking green. That um, it's it, that grass it's, is yeah. green. the The big thing is that quokkas have they they always seem to be smiling. That's uh that's their big appeal. They're always smiling. Well, they got to be so <laughs> fucking happy about. I well, they live on a little flicking. island. They live on a little island where they get to roam about and. And maybe they yeah. really enjoy superhero movies. They don't really care how well written they are. Yeah. Maybe they're just hyper chill people. Maybe there's something we could learn from the Quokka about, you know, that we can implement in our own way of life. I have lived among the Quokkas. They've taught me their ways to see beauty in all and everything. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder, and Quokkas behold all beauty. Yes. I, oh, so Quokkas aren't, like, dangerous from what I understand either. <laughs> they're, like, they're super chill. Because they just roam around in like close proximity to humans, and you don't have to worry about if you touch them if they're going to give you a heart attack or something. Um, as opposed to because I mean, if you encounter a kangaroo, like it might they bite. Well, I mean, a lot of animals bite. But, like I don't know if I'd lots of animals do that. I, I guess when we're talking about the degree to which an animal is dangerous, it's uh. How do they taste? You can't eat quokkas. I mean, I guess you could, but, like, you don't. I don't know that there are that many of them. They might actually be endangered. Whereas, like, kangaroos are in... They're not in short supply. Uh... Kangaroos kick? Yes, they do. You got, you got to, So do cassowaries. They kick through metal sheets. <laughs> so, uh... If you have a shield... That 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 would be that feels like a fun game, right? Dark Souls, but in Australia, you know, <laughs> like if you had that format, every boss is just a um, it's just like an Australian animal. The final boss is like a amalgamation of like a cassowary and a crocodile. Cassodile. Oh no! That <laughs> that super chat followed up with saying that they're philicidal. That's not good. What does that mean? The deliberate act of a parent killing their own child. Oh. Well, maybe the children are bastards. Yeah. I mean, I read the Bible. I, I just, I just, sometimes kids gotta go. Yeah. Take them to the edge of town. Stone the little bastards. Today's Kirby music is Green Greens from Kirby's Dreamland, as classic as you can get. Green Greens is the, like, normal default Kirby music, isn't it? Uh, it sounds familiar, and I haven't played a Kirby game, so... Da, 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 da. Wait, Green Greens. That's what it is? Let me, uh, yeah. let me double check. Green Greens. Uh... I think it... Yeah, it's... Wait. Yeah, it is. It's just the regular Kirby music that everybody's heard of. I only get that from Smash Brothers, really. <laughs> yeah, same. Bonus fact, at the start of many Kirby games, a butterfly is seen fluttering around his head. At first this was normal, until the reveal the butterfly is actually the embodiment of death and it absorbs the souls of powerful beings to become the warrior Morpho Knight. Neat. Neat indeed. Uh, Fringy, you love pigs. Watch Pig. It's good rat. Um, I think I've seen that. F Wait, Pig? On Nicolas Cage? Oh, no, I haven't seen that. I was thinking of, um, I was thinking of the, the, the one about the pig, Babe. Yeah, that's the one. That, that'll do. I'm, I'm really enjoying the idea that Babe is actually just called Pig. <laughs> <laughs> and the movie Babe with Nicolas Cage Shut is called pig. Babe. I think, uh, that was, that was an Australian movie, wasn't it? Was, was that made by Peter Weir? Oh, I need to know. Weird. I... Uh, not Babel. Uh, no. It was, uh, Chris Noonan. 
Oh, apparently, apparently Babe was like an Academy Award nominated film for like best director and best adapted best screenplay. Huh? And best actor for Babe the Pig, yes. Best pig. I like how the only directors, Australian directors that come to mind immediately is like George Miller and Peter Weir. There are there are other ones. George Miller? Yeah. George Miller made Babe 2. Ah, right, that might be it. Crossed wires and all. Babe 2, crossed wires and all? No, it's Babe in the Pig, in the pig City. No, the Big City. Babe it's in the Pig babe... City? No, it was Babe Pig in the City. That seems like a That seems like a missed opportunity. Instead of, you should have called it Babe in the Pig City. <laughs> babe in the Pig City. It should be like well, a I city guess, of I guess pigs. the problem is that, that's, yeah, I was about to say, that might be confusing. People think it's like, wait, Babe's yeah. going to his home planet, Pig Land? <laughs> <laughs> like, and then there's all the pigs living around it. It's like, the pigs on Earth, they crash well, land. You know, when there they make they that movie, we know the title. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oni Play's thumbnail of the day is Marble It Up. Marble it up. Uh, <laughs> 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 These thumbnails are awesome. I love them so much. I do like Marble it up as a game as well, but that is a good thumbnail. <laughs> <laughs> the reflection. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, because at first I thought that there was someone in the marble. I'm like, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> Um, wow. Yeah, that's great. So, this was just uh, thrown in on a week ago's thing. I, I don't I don't know if I remember I mentioned it at all, so this could be a coincidence, but uh, the new Jimmy Savile documentary on Netflix is tragic as fuck. So, uh, um, like I said... I mean, I, I would imagine day. it would be cheery. Well, uh, well the, the, the coincidence is that um, Moller and I watched that, uh, that documentary yesterday. Yeah. Uh, um... Jesus, like. Well, so interestingly, I, I uh, wanted to see it because I basically knew zero about Jimmy Savile except for the very obvious. The uh, from what I just heard, um, I'm like the only British person who seemed to have no awareness of what he did both before and after all the stuff came out. And so I was just like, I'll, I'll give us a watch. Well, he was dead after the stuff came out. Um. Yeah, but people didn't know what he did until the stuff came out. You understand? You, you fucking understand? You get it? Huh? Yeah. So, I was like, I'll give this a watch. Um, incredibly well made documentary. It's like, I think three, I want to say three hours in total. I could be wrong. Yeah, it was three hours. Each part was one and a half hours. Um, they for format it really well and they they make it so that the first half is you get to know a lot of facts about things that he's done. A lot of them are presented as though, like, you know, charity and, and this and that and the other and this work and, and in, in ways that are like, well, that seems nice and good. But then they'll play spooky music and they'll have some people giving shifty looks and then some other quotes about things he does once we find out, you know, the future ahead of time. And so the first half, like, sets up everything you know about him as a creator person on the BBC for however many years. And then the part part two is basically just like a complete avalanche of all of the accusations and what he actually got up to in all of these different areas and why he did what and he did. Perhaps most depressingly how a lot of institutions and society kind of failed to uh to do anything, do anything about to it. To do yeah. anything about it. It was just like a confluence of all of these factors that made him protected. Um what the the one thing that was particularly like that actually made me quite mad was when they were talking about how I think it was like in two thousand seven or two thousand eight that there were like three three uh people who were like going through like official means through police to um to try and get something done about it uh but they were all nervous about being the only one because they hadn't been told that there were other people who were also bringing accusations at the same time and so nothing nothing happened the prosecution like the case just got dropped that was uh like that was yep drop that, covered that, up pushed away he would even sue people that, yeah for hundreds of thousands of dollars whenever they like bring it up he start doing that later on but uh once and then when you got enough like, people just, out who said the thing it, it 
encourages everyone else to get things out well, and yeah, more and more and more. I, and, and as well, that they were making a documentary, uh, like they were doing an investigation. I think it was a journalist that he was employed at the BBC at the time, right? Like he was doing the investigation and then um, they got told to drop it because that was at a time when they were doing all of their like tributes and stuff for him. And so then they had to take the story to like he, ITV. He gave it away to ITV, so yeah. He said it's all so my material, but break. you know yeah. they can get the but story. But none of the out. footage, yeah, none of the footage because it didn't belong. And then it was because of that that it started to come f forward. But it's like this all happened after he died, um, at least in terms of the the broad public awareness. And then what was it by the end? Four hundred, like four hundred. It was something allegations. Like that, yeah. Ranging from ages uh, 5 to 75, I think it said. Yep. And then as well, just, um, there's kind of like a implication, a strong implication from all of it that, um, the charity work, it's like, well, uh, you know, like, was it just a calculus? Because he wanted to try and balance the score somehow. Like, yeah, he well, was if a I devout Catholic who believed that he yeah. needed to, um, Increase his, as he put it, um, his credit the good sheet. Deeds tab, so that he could account for the bad deeds tab, which, um, yeah, that really tarnishes like all of that, doesn't it? Yeah, and it, and it gave him more um, attention, Leverage. more adoration, more respect, oh, and more access. Yeah, it's it's, uh, it's a bit it's it's a lot harder in terms of pressures against you if the dude has done all this charitable work. But I mean, goddamn, if the charitable work, if the motives behind it, you know. And uh, yeah, part yeah. of how he got away with this, he was he had very powerful friends, ranging from mm -hmm. police to government to the royal family to just it's kind of insane. I fully recommend that documentary. It's incredibly informative, well made, and it's very quite thorough, um, but um, intense. It's, it's confronting. Yeah, it's confronting and quite depressing. Yeah, well, it's not going to be a cheery one. Nope. No. Uh. Yeah. It's um. It's, it's, yeah, it's, I, depressing would be the way to describe it, I think. Um, also, for the chat members who asked for more Uncle Ruckus quotes, find your own. I'd love to post them, but YouTube censorship is insane and impossible. That makes sense. YouTube won't be far behind Battlefield, I'm sure, and uh, Yoda will be banned. Uh, Penguin's cute. Search... Adelaide, Adelaide, uh, penguins. Adelaide, Adelaide penguins. Yeah. X. Oh, what's that? X jewel depravity. Adelaide de pe penguins are these little smaller penguins. They um, they're these little tiny penguins. Because I think a lot of people they think immediately of an emperor penguin. Adelaide's are these little smaller penguins that are, from what I understand, are quite uh like feisty and more ferocious. I guess ferocious by penguin standards. Let me let me find a picture for you. Or an Adelie, I think it might be what it's called. Um, yeah, there he is. He or she. Look at that little fella. Oh, I love that creature. Yeah. So. Oh, once I saw one of them in a zoo and they were warning about how it would projectile shit everywhere so you don't stand <laughs> behind it. Oh no, never stand behind an Adelaide penguin. Penguins Every are child in on Australia the has taught that. Penguins are really cool. They're, uh, they're awesome little critters. Well, this person's warning about unique. these ones. Oh, okay. What's the warning? It's uh, what I read out. The um. Oh, just the, pro the pro okay, yeah. Extual depravity. I'm, I don't know if they meant to say the explosive could... diarrhea. That yes, I'm sure. There's explosive um diarrhea. Because uh, emperor penguins are quite large. I think they're over a meter tall. They're, uh, they're big fellas. And they got their long old necks. And they chill out in their little colony. Well, their little, their huge little colonies pearls. actually comprised of a lot of, a lot, a lot of penguins live in colonies. And then there's fairy penguins. They're the smallest penguins. And you can find them. And uh, oh, good old Do they not transport you over bodies of water? What's that? Do they not transport you over bodies of water? Fairy penguins are too small to carry to carry people. They're little tiny penguins. Oh, they're okay. only like 30 oh, okay. centimeters right. tall. Oh, that makes sense. That makes sense why they wouldn't do that then. 
there are small, yeah well i think i think the names are because you can call them fairy penguins but they're also i think they're called little blue penguins as well that's like one of their names um and then there's because there's a rock hoppers as well they've got the really cool um like eyebrow things going on there on their heads kind of like um pen penguins are really cool is all i'm saying they're uh they're a they're a neat little uh was that a fact of, what that they're cool Penguin I, I mean, penguins are really cool Penguins that is, do live in, in that would be a great first penguin fact to read. Um, and yes, I have been to Kangaroo Island, and yes, there are lots of penguins there. I'm not sure anymore though. There was a, there was uh, during the bushfires, a lot of um, a lot of that island got burnt. So I'm, it's um, pretty sure that was quite disruptive to the uh, natural ecosystem. The insect of the day is the Atticus atlas, which I think we've. Check out before, right? It seems familiar. Yeah, it looks cool. Um, especially yeah, it's with a big the, boy. Uh, it defends itself against predators by disguising itself as a snake. Also, high rags. Hello. Whoa, yeah, that does that look like a snake. Um, I mean, yeah, someone said, uh, oh, yeah, seems like does. bad advertising on the name. Kangaroo Island is filled with kangaroos. It's just got other animals on there, too. It is definitely, I like, yeah, many he said there are a lot of penguins there. there, and you're like, that's false advertising. On kangaroo Island, There's only yeah. allowed to be one mini type of thing there. I also saw a kid, it's just a name. Kangaroo, kangaroo Island, Island yeah. is actually a peninsula. Well, I think, I think, uh, one of the things with Kangaroo Island is that it had a, uh, it was, it was the only. There was a specific subspecies of kangaroos that lived on the island, but of course, because they lived on that island, they're like a not many of them. And I think uh, I don't know if it actually caused their extinction, but it it put that species in a really bad spot um, because of those fires. It's a little bit just depressing, though. Hmm. I gave Sonic Two a five, but I'm an autistic Sonic fan. Um, uh, yeah, I don't know if, I don't know if I, I, no, I wouldn't give it a five, um. Well, funny enough, I saw someone saying, like, does Fringy realize he just gave it the same score as, a uh, TLJ? I don't know if people remember, but we did say after a while that three may have been too high for TLJ. Three might have been too high. It depends on, uh, how we consider the standard now, because it'll yeah, change. Yeah, because that was, like, on. five years ago, four years ago. It was a while ago. ago. Well, yeah, because yeah. it's, um, five out of ten is, like, yeah, it's, it's, like, Neutral, you know, it's it's okay. Well, I, hmm, I think I think I'd say six is like, oh, we're we're doing all right now. You know, it's like, yeah, it's all right. And then five is like, ah, oh, so yeah, it's all right. <laughs> it's that kind of tone. Three is way too high. Well, for the sequels, it might be, yeah, uh, for that one. Hmm. Uh, one I sent this ten. before, mm. but couldn't find the answer. I finished The Witcher three and loved the game. What's everyone's thoughts on the series? There's more to that. I really like two and three a bunch. Yeah, I, I never never played the first one. The second one's quite challenging, a bit bit different than the third. The third is definitely done with a bit more of an appeal to a broad. It's it's designed with more general appeal in mind, um, but they're both good. I'd recommend. Belch. I'd rec I'd recommend two and three certainly. Two is tough, but it is very rewarding and it is fun to. To play, I have not played them. I guess Fringy and Jay don't have opinions on this one. Oh, I have not played them I've, either. I have not played enough of them. Also, check out Valheim. I have checked out Valheim. It's it's all right. Still in early access, but very good value for twenty dollar price. Fair enough. Uh. It's a good movie for babies, though. Sonic 2, I guess? Um, I'm sure kids will enjoy it. it babies might be a little too young to enjoy a film, to be honest. Well, because that film's got some Zuma humor, which uh, doesn't, yeah, like it's, uh, it's one of those generational divides, I guess. Now that Lent is over, invite Shoe on Head. We would never oh, have yeah, she, she uh, on any EFAP recordings ever. Did she give up mm. streaming for Lent? She gave up social media for Lent. She's Catholic? I don't know if she's Catholic or not. It might have just been for like a meme. <laughs> I don't know. Lots of people do Lent stuff. I did Lent for a while. Well, I did I remember Jay. one, I remember one um, year I, I didn't play video games. Um, fortunately, I don't 
observe Lent anymore, so now I just do whatever I the think whole year round. Lent can be a useful uh, exercise in just making sure that you don't fall into uh, any habits that you become too yeah, dependent yeah, on. Yeah. If you think that there's something that you uh, want to make sure that you can stop, Lent is as good a time as any. Um, because it's sort of widely recognized as a set period of time. There's, you know, you know, you're going, if you decide to stop it early, you know that you're stopping it early rather than it being some kind of time limit you've uh, prescribed yourself. I did, uh, oh. I did, I gave up uh, any like dessert foods I gave up for Lent recently. Okay. That was a good exercise. Yeah, I could tell you, you've really been packing on the pounds, Jay. I was, I was going to say oh. something there. But... I mean, um, my diet has been like pretty shit uh, for a lot of my life. I'm, I'm working on it now, but um, just like weight is only one expression of like your overall health, right? And I, I feel like it's just better to have a good diet, surely. No. I'm not like, not like dying or anything, but I don't know. Seems like a, a good thing to, to make sure I'm getting right. You guys know that House of the Dragon's average episode cost is 20 million, and then Stranger Things Season 4's average episode cost can 30 be million. 30 million. Yeah. And then Lord of the Rings' average episode cost can be 50 million. Jesus Christ. That is there there better be no much. excuses for anything. That is that is a lot of money. I don't pay that much it. for each episode. Wow, it's yeah. definitely in excess of what budgets typically. Remember when Mando was like a big deal because it had a hundred million dollar budget for like its whole season. I remember apparently Halo cost ten million per episode. I don't see where that's translating to. So much money, man. Rips. Well, yeah, so much money. And hey, Halo got renewed for season two ahead of season one. I'm sure that's not a decision that will be regretted. <laughs> no, people really love it, and a lot of people are really flocking well, to it. I have seen some people saying, like, ah, oh, it's getting better now. And I, I, something I think that I, oh, we, I don't want to talk about Halo forever, but like, something I think that's happened <laughs> is over the last 10 years, I think people's, I think people's perception of what Halo is has morphed thanks to the 343 tenure. Um, oh yeah, so that's I, true. I, it might be. I honestly think a lot of people like have forgotten what the tone of the the Bungie Halo games was because something that is sorely absent in the show that was in the old games. The old games had a sense of humor. They had funny moments and funny characters and punchy, strong dialogue. Um, like it knew when to inject levity and not take itself too seriously. Yeah. Um, the, whereas the show has a complete absence of that, and that fe that definitely feels like a three four three thing. And someone in chat has pointed out something that is now true, which is kind of depressing to think about. Three four three has been in charge of Halo for longer than Bungie at this stage. Um, yeah, and and look at what that's been yielded. What's yielded as a result of that. An annoying aspect of um, there's you see in the Crobcam made a really good video that was sort of comparing the way that 343 would talk yeah. about Halo compared to uh, Bungie. Bungie. Bungie would talk about the decisions they made and why they made them and the challenges that may come from those decisions. So, like, because a lot of the behind the scenes stuff for like the 343 games is talking about how their ideas are great. Whereas like the bungee ones will be like, you know, it's it's really hard to add new weapons because when you've got like 30 weapons, it's going to be difficult to make sure that they're all functionally distinct. So then we started dabbling. We figured out that what we would do is create power weapons that you don't keep for a long time that have a really distinct utility that explain why. Whereas 343 would be like, oh yeah, the scatter shot was really great. Like we, we really nailed the design. We got it so good. It's like, it's such a distinct difference in terms of the approach. Um... And one of the, the, where I'm going with this is that um, there's a, it was a thing that kind of informed Halo 4. Master Chief is a human. He's not a set of armor. Meanwhile, Joe Staten, who wrote the original game, said, uh, Chief is a big green suit of armor that you move around. It's just funny how it all changes. And I feel like you can see that in the show. See, Master Chief is a human. And it's like, right, so he was always a human. He always cared about people. But you didn't play the games, so you wouldn't know that. You wouldn't know all of the little nods that he gives to ODSTs and Marines putting his hand on their shoulders, kneeling down when he finds Cortana on high charity. You know, like he, Master Chief absolutely emotes. 
he absolutely emotes a lot, but um, but you wouldn't know that if you hadn't played the games, <laughs> I guess. Hey, look, I can't tell what he's feeling. I can't see his face. So what we need is when he's punching the mandibles off of an elite, we need to show a shot of his face that is not in continuity because when it shows cheap punching, his head is moving back as he's reeling his punches. But the face cam Iron Man helmet shot that we've got, he's just staring straight ahead. $10 million per episode, eh? We haven't even seen that episode yet, but that's one of the clips I saw on YouTube and it's like, man... What are do we any doing? The, do any of the characters do cool spins? Um, yeah, Chief does a lot in the first episode when they're I mean, fighting Bungie's the. Uh, I wasn't expecting you to just. I was. I wasn't expecting that to just get no acknowledgement as even like a a joke. Which is like, yeah, yeah, you know, there are a few. Well, no, I, I know yeah, that you were making crazy. a meme out of it, but but they were spinning. Like it's it's really oh, bad. Joy. That because like there are many cool engaging, tricks in Halo. Instead of engaging at range, they do a lot of stupid things in that. The thing is, we haven't had a battle scene for a while. I know that there's a big battle in episode 5, because that's where the clip is, where he's, like, punching the elite while screaming, which, uh, you know, that that feels like a very Master Chief thing to do, you know, scream. I know, we, I sorry, I know it's an adaptation. He's John Halo, okay, it's fine. He's John Halo, he's not, it's not Master Chief. <laughs> All right. I think it's just, what, what, Something strange has happened when you look at Halo. What Halo was originally was it was unique for sure, but there's a lot of aspects about it that were pretty uh pretty standard. Um, Jake Halo. All right, I'll call him Jake Halo. <laughs> well, for now anyway. What's wrong with John? John Halo. I, I call him John Halo. Well, so what? What was it? um? You know, like a really stoic. He doesn't man a few words like super soldier. You'd say that that's actually like a pretty at least when the games came out, that's like not a particularly unique template. That's that was that was something that was quite common at the time. Frankly, in the landscape that we're in now, a character like Master Chief is downright unique. Um, a person who doesn't say a lot and gets the job done and uh, and uh, communicates his emotions in a more subtle way, and is really duty bound and steadfast. Like that is unique uh, now in, in in a landscape where like you know, this show has to. It's like, well, he's got emotions that he needs to explore. And it's like, you know what? I bet you think that's really smart, but it's honestly not. Like, if we're dealing with a science fiction story about a dude who is, like, fighting in a war that is an existential threat to humanity, I think there's a way more interesting conversation to be had about the utility of not being a very emotional person and keeping all of that in check and very clinically doing the job as best you can while still ensuring that you retain aspects of your humanity, like caring about other people yeah. I think that's a lot more interesting than just being an emotional wreck who, when confronted with past memories, grabs a dude, chucks him against the wall and screams in his face, what am I? You know, like, that's that's stupid as shit compared to way, what I would consider to be the way more interesting premise that exists in the games of you had, you had these kids who were abducted from their homes, put through an incredibly rigorous program that killed some of them, and they come out on the other side without any emotional regulators or any shit, they have been turned into these people by that experience and they just think that it was maybe a good, not maybe, they, they're pretty comfortable with it as a trade because as far as they're concerned, they're, they're necessary for the survival of humanity. There's a lot more to explore there in terms of, well, would you feel differently if you didn't have this life and then counter, well, this is a life that I've had and this is a conclusion I've come to, you know, as, as me, but is it a conclusion I came to rationally or is it a conclusion that I came to just because of my experience how do I how do I account for the fact that I was essentially created for an entirely different purpose, but then this crazy alien invasion happens, and now I have a utility in this world that is instrumental? Because that's that's the part that you can't get around in the Halo games. If it weren't for the Spartans, humanity would have been killed. Um, because Chief, um, uh, Noble Six, and a whole bunch of other Spartans were instrumental in several battles and instrumental in like. Cortana being able to do a lot of things instrumental in the Halo ring. Um, you've got a great base to work from, but pff, squandered. Um, that's the really disappointing part of it. Everything is squandered. Squanders is yeah. a great word to use because all the stuff that they could use as a, even just like a gentle blueprint or for some inspiration, it just isn't there. Like, mm -hmm. the more you love Halo, the more this show should just fucking piss you off. 
Which I guess is the the surprising part is I've seen like people have talked about how I've seen a lot of people say they really like episode five and I'm a little bit nervous that it's going to be because that's the first episode where there's like a real battle between humans and the covenant where we see jackals and grunts and brutes like that it's that simple right that we get to see the because I mean we certainly haven't spent any time with like an arbiter POV character in the covenant our POV character is a human in the covenant which is shit. It's so lame as a choice. Like, oh, we can't have the main character in the Covenant be an alien. That would be too alien. It needs to be a human. I bet you that was a conversation that they had. They were like, well, wait, we can't have the Arbiter. That's stupid. That's dumb. He's an alien. You can't relate to an alien. Meanwhile, in 2004, with appreciably less resources and on in, and on a weaker technology, they managed to create a very human character in, in Arbiter. Because there's nothing universal about the experience of being indoctrinated into a belief system that caused you to do really bad things, that your life was a lie, that you were basically a prop for people more powerful than you to advance their ends without any regard for you. That's not a universal sort of experience that humans can relate to. No, that's that's too alien. That's that's dumb and stupid. Well, uh, making fucking chief uh, an emotional wreck who goes around screaming, "What am I?" Yeah. Feels like feels like it would be made as a decision, a decision by someone who thinks it's smart in the same way that people going, oh, what if we did like a, a subversive take on superhero media where we have like a Superman character, but he's actually the bad guy. It, it is it is on that level because yeah, the, you're just the, like, oh, wow, that's so clever. Because like, the big, I, I feel like we've seen the, less Wayne. of good Boy Scout Superman than we've seen of asshole Superman recently. Yeah. I want for Boy a Scout. while. I want that. I want Boy Scout Superman. Yeah, I want. I want Boy Scout Superman, and and his um his struggle is to try and save people beside himself. I'm really tired of the argument of like, well, you know, if he's invulnerable, what are the stakes? The only way to really add stakes if he's actually is if he's actually not the hero. It's like, well, no. Um, you he can derive stakes from other people that surround yeah. him. I, I fucking Probably. despise the argument of we know the character's not going to die, so there's no stakes. Um, yeah, but um, the stakes are always the stakes for him are going to derive from um from a lot of other people. Yeah, you know, the people he cares support. about, how he's I perceived. Think, I guess if we um, look at those kryptonite too. Talk about well, if we talk about he literally died in BBS. What, so. um, yeah, like, like, let's think. Okay, so people probably you know they base stories on their understanding of the, of the real world and their own experiences i wonder for most people of all of the most emotional experiences in their lives maybe you know maybe some of them were genuinely situations where they thought they were going to die but i'd be willing to wager that most of them probably were not in very emotional experiences that they were very invested in simply because oh i might die you know this is something i wonder how chat feels about this because it's a pet peeve of mine i hate when People call Clark Cal. I really don't like that. I feel like yeah, it um, misses. The, the point like is Clark that, would have a problem with that. I feel like Clark would have a problem with that because, I, like, it's it's because we talked about it in Justice League. Cal L, like the last son of Krypton, that should mean nothing to him. If you said Clark Kent, like son of Jonathan and Martha Kent, that would mean a lot more to him because that's his life. Like his life on Krypton it doesn't exist. He left the planet as a baby. Like, there's really not much connection there at all. The whole point is that, like, he's a human. He's a human being. He's Clark. He's Clark. He grew up in Kansas. He lived in a small town and had a humble background. He's an all-American, you know, superhero who tries to do the right thing. That's, it, it's just crazy how, like, when all of these trends happen, you end up in a world where, like, what was the original idea that you initially thought was like, oh, well, that's boring and trite and overdone, that we now reach a point where that's just interesting because you don't see it anymore because everybody feels the need to be like well yeah but i mean superman would like you know if lois died he'd lose his mind why don't we do a superman story where lois dies and he's just depressed not that he goes insane and mad with power why don't we do that you know i I hear that someone will probably be like yeah i'm tired of fucking evil or controversial superman you say that to Zack snyder after man of steel and he's like what do you mean bad guy good guy Uh, you're like uh i I hear that the Injustice animated movie is terrible, by the way. I, um, because I actually like, it's funny, even with this rant, I do like Injustice as its own little thing, but I hear the movie's really bad. I, I saw a clip where, like, apparently Flash gets his head chopped off with, a, with like, a, a blade, 
when Flash can like phase and also move really quick and duck. That's a deviation from the the the, the comic, uh, not the comics, the the comics and the game. That's for sure. Yeah, everybody's saying it's awful. So, <laughs> well, long tangent over. Let's uh, let's get back to them super chats. This one says Django float, which um, Django float. He did float in the in the original Lego game. Just thought was. From my point of view, the Lego are evil. Hi, Rags. Hello. A little bit, yeah. Rewatched Shrek last night. Favorite joke is Pinocchio's dad selling him out for five coins. It's such an absurd joke. I love it. Also, EFAP movie Shrek. Yes, I, I think that's... I think that, I think that's be. gotta happen. It's a matter of time. Shrek's just a great movie. Really good one. Shrek is a great movie. It was the first animated film to win Best, uh, best Animated Feature, which is... Um, it was, Monsters Inc. came out that year too. Um, it was kind of a yeah, because Monsters Inc. That's a film that deserves a an Oscar, I think. You know what? I just had a random memory brain spiky wombo of is when Donkey is um pretending as though he's not magic, doesn't talk, and the old woman is like, no, 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 he talks. It's just a fake it and stuff. And it's this one guy who's inspecting it all, and he's just like, nah, I don't believe it. And then the um, I think a fairy in a cage hits him or whatever, and he and he, he actually starts to float. And um, you have several characters that are like uh, I think Donkey says like, um, I can fly, and someone goes, he can fly, he can fly, and then the main guy goes, he can talk, he can <laughs> talk, yeah, <laughs> like, exactly. exactly. I uh, I think that's a great, a great joke. There's a lot of great jokes in that. There's so many good jokes. Shrek is a great movie. Some of you will die. I know it's a meme, but like, that's a great joke. Well, then, <laughs> that's a really good one. A meme for a reason. There's, there's, a, there's, there's a, a reason character. that people keep bringing that up in reference to shit. Yeah. Yeah. Remember when the and then um the guy who's running away from Shrek and the uh, and he keeps running back and forth, back and forth through the uh little security railings thing, and then Shrek just walks through the whole thing. Oh uh, yeah, that's <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good one. And then they had that little song that played on the uh the, the little um dancing like toys. Yeah. Singing the song about Far Quad. That's a, it's a really, it's, and, and I mean, you know, we talk about the jokes, but like the core story is super cool as well. The idea that the ogre subversive. is the protagonist, it's super subversive and that the princess- It's still subversive, her, isn't it? it? It still is subversive because it's actually like a risky idea to have it be the ogre is the good guy. And also the princess, her curse is an ogre. And that's, and like, it's not, it's not, it's worthwhile to not run away from that. Like that's, that's actually a really great sort of, idea that you don't see a lot of yeah and, and the prince is the antagonist like in all of the shrek films well I, I didn't watch the fourth one actually um like the bad guy is the conventional hero um i, I like it a lot i feel shrek like of, of everything the bad but the bad guy being the conventional hero is now the most overdone of those tropes i was gonna say well prince now, in the second one, right? And like he's he's and, he's and not strictly he's evil. Though. It's just that his grandmother's very bad influence, and he kind of is yeah. evil. And then in the third one, he is the bad guy. He's just the the villain. I thought that was Rumpelstiltskin or whatever. No, that was the fourth one. I think. The third, yeah. Oh, okay. Um, what was? Oh, damn! You're talking about because I was. I remember when I watched Frozen for the first time. And then they turned like the prince into the bad guy. I was like, oh, <laughs> like that's right. Okay. Like, yeah, I guess it was only a matter of time. You can't have two male leads and have one of them not be the villain, you know, like in this story. And it was definitely not going to be the, uh, what's his name? Kristoff? Is that, that was the, uh, that was the... Olaf. The, the, what, Olaf oh, is the Olaf villain. Olaf was the, Olaf was the villain, yeah. That was, um, that bad guy, I can't remember, because there was something stupid about that scene where it's like, he could have won quicker, but he just decided not to, for some reason. Something like that. Oh yeah, because why would you reveal to him her that you're the bad guy? Why would you tell it's Anna, right? That's the yeah. Why would you tell her that that you're the bad guy? Why wouldn't she like play along until she's dead? There's way more risk if you tell her because she's not dead yet. She could tell someone. She could do anything to try and prevent your plan. True. And also, like, I'm not even sure that I even understand like the nature of his plan either. It's like, would why would you not want to have like why would you want to get rid of her like? Is there any reason why you couldn't just like marry her and get in anyway, rather than having to kill her? Like that seems like a big risk to take. 
when I don't really see the harm in her continuing to be alive, you know? I can't remember a whole lot about Frozen. I just remember when I watched it the first time, I was like, wait, is this like, why does everybody really, like this was the one <laughs> that made all the money and was super duper successful. Um, so someone wants to check out the uh, the Tentacle Moth. We actually did. Uh, that was, I don't even remember where when we checked out the Tentacle Moth now, which which stream it was, but we did. It's uh, creepy. That was uh, that was the last one, wasn't it? Was it multimedia medley? Was it? I, I think oh, it was Wednesday? catch up. Oh yeah, it would have been yeah. a Wednesday catch up. Yeah, that's yeah. Um, check out the show Vikings. It goes downhill toward the end, but seasons one through four have incredible character writing, and it doesn't end nearly as badly as Game of Thrones. That's not a great sell, but <laughs> yeah. No. But I have heard that show is cool. Yeah, same. I've, I've so have I. But uh, the North. Well, I've heard that it goes to absolute down, shit. So. Is the thing as well. I, well, I've... I guess when you, you talk about a sales pitch, Northman's a, a film that I can watch in like a couple hours, and that's a whole show, and they're both about people up in the Northlands. So I guess priority right now would be watching uh, I'm up in that. the Northlands. You are in, in Northlands, but not the Northlands. You idiot. You're in a Northland. The only, the only Northlands that exist are Scandinavia and Canada, not even Siberia. I'm gonna cry. Mm -hmm. Are you? You gonna mm -hmm. cry? Mm -hmm. Little just, cry. I mean, probably in the fullness of time, at, at some point in my life, I will good, yeah. eventually cry. But not like Goblin Junior, though, right? Like Jay Junior. Like if there was a mini you, and he sat in your pocket, and he's like, "Hi, I'm Mini Jay, and I'm I uh." I'm not entirely I, um, sure what's happening at the moment, Free. We're all I'm trying to, to figure out. I'm trying to figure out a, a joke, but it's it's uh it's it's disappearing before me. It's it's fading away. That's okay. I want it to not fade away, but it is. Uh, it's gone. Hey, look! All right, you win some and you lose some. This yeah. was a loss. <laughs> so the joke anyway, just died. documentaries <laughs> are just that? React content. Oh no! What was that sound? What sound? Being disconnected, I guess. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Everything's alright for me. I didn't hear a sound. I can hear. Yeah. It oh, no, it's definitely it's, it's, it's the sound it makes when someone disconnects in a USB, so I don't know if it was a controller or oh. something. Oh. Uh-oh. Hopefully, nothing tragic. Just gonna carry on going as though nothing happened at all, I suppose. Um, until everything explodes, I guess. Documentaries are just React content. Think about it. They're just low-effort, bottom-of-the-barrel React content. Ken Burns is the proto-Hassan, lol. Um, I'm guessing that's a meme, right? Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Documentaries are really awesome. A lot of the time. Well, you gotta do a lot of research. Oh, pardon me. A lot of research. Mm. A man grunting while holding a banana. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't know what that looks like. <laughs> to be fair to that comment, uh, in the complete saga, Django's jetpack was limited and there was only one true Jedi for both story and free play, also high rags. Yeah, I brought that Hello. up. That's, that's their mistake, you see. They're not um they're not as well yeah. versed in Lego or old Lego. See. I, but when you guys were kids, you were like, Oh, I'll play the complete saga. When I was a kid, I was like, I'm a few years earlier, so I'm playing not the complete saga. See, we've lived different lives. We are not the same. I thought we were the same. Nope. This is the worst stream. They just repeat their points like a book. Their critiques are poor. But worst of all, I've been waiting 156 episodes and I still don't know the secret of Mario's jump. Ooh. We did well, we'll promise. Well, we part two of that. We did promise that we would tell everyone what the secrets of Mario's jump are eventually, but we still haven't. But we gave that promise based on a promise, and we were lied yeah. to. So we were deceived we, just as you were. That's French for yes. We were, we were deceived. You know, this is a Lego game intended for children. No. No, it was intended for adults. No. I mean, okay, they must have known that there was going to be a large adult audience invested in this Lego game. And yet they didn't care. 
My Thor tweet now has 200 quote tweets. Yeah, it's getting around. You got yourself in trouble I for Derry. I did get I... myself in trouble. You keep doing this. You keep getting yourself <laughs> in trouble on Twitter. You can't be asking these totally basic questions. Very banal questions, yeah. That have very I would have one up to you, honestly. Well, not on Twitter because it's a nightmare, but um, I prefer Look, Do it. That... Do it now. Tweet it. Um, no, so, I, I would never. It would be a psychopathic <laughs> thing to do. Uh, I, I oh, sorry, go for it. So I would one up you in saying that um, I don't even like the Falcon as Captain America. Not for any of the narrative reasons that make that show fucking terrible. I just think that it takes away from him being Falcon. He's adopting a new mantle, and there's no reason to at all. Falcon is very respectable and a good guy and a hero. But I know that the what people are saying now is that he's getting Falcon is getting replaced by that other dude in the show. I don't even know if he's gonna call himself Falcon. He's something to do with the comics, um, like Falcon Two or some shit. But I just well, that's almost acknowledging the ma the matter of like Cap is a more main character than Falcon. Yeah, yeah, that's how it feels, and it's just like, bro, you're Falcon. You're awesome. Why why are you doing this? Um, man. I'm not impressed with the quote tweets. Uh, a few of them are saying, read a comic, as if that's even mm -hmm. a meaningful response to what you've said. One of them said there's a character called Frog, which I read that, and it's like, that's, um, that's, yeah, what, what, what is that, what, what point is that, that there's a character called Frog? Well, you can know, have a character have to do with anything? Uh... Yeah. Um, and then... Well, loads of them are citing the, um, the, the, the phrase, um, who, um, whoever holds this hammer, um, if he yeah. be worthy, she'll possess the power of Thor. Um, as if that says different words. Well, and That's also why everyone who gets elected to be president is called Washington. Yeah. There's, there's one that says, just say you haven't read the comics and go. It's like, you know what? A lot of people haven't read the comics, my Most dude. Most people might have not read the comics. comics. Yeah, you, you'll find... If you haven't read the comics, many of the quote the tweets haven't read the comics. I, yeah. Well, let's put it this way, right? I... I haven't read comics for a little while. Uh, I got like a couple of shelves with a bunch of comics in them. I would wager that just based on that alone, I've read like more comics than like 90% of people who exist on this planet. Maybe even more than that. And I haven't I've read, read the, that. Um, I read the Bartman of. comics. I read the Bartman comics. I read a lot of the Simpsons comics. They were like my first introduction to comics. Um, that Those were really cool comics. Uh, yeah, like, so many of them say, read the comic. Um, Why don't you just tell me what the answer is instead of telling me to read a book? Yeah, like, and, and look, it's, and someone here is really mad that you've chosen not to read the comics. They're like, they're so accessible. It's like, so it doesn't, doesn't matter. It's about a matter of preference. There's only a certain amount of time in the day. Like, what you choose to do with it. All, dude, just this is the thing are, that I've already done. These are no. so disappointing in terms of answers. It's like people saying it's a mantle. It's like, I thought it was his name. I thought his name was Thor. That that was he the was most into... satisfying, and just to be clear, most satisfying answer I was able to get was um, Thor in the comics is, is supposedly both a mantle and a, um, uh, his name, right? It's just in the same way that Duke is My a mantle, mantle, but it also can be someone's name. So Thor is like a guy who is a Thor, but his name is also Thor. That, well, funny. that will be established in Thor the new is film. A Thor. One one person said, "What do you they propose they call her instead?" It's like I don't know. I mean, you could call her, her chain. Um, like you I had call suggestions. <laughs> well, like Thor is the Norse spray. word for thunder, right? So uh, you could have like the what Norse word for storm or the Norse word for lightning, or you know, those seem like good shouts. Blitz. Yeah, well, um... like that's what I mean. It's like everybody's getting mad that you haven't read the comic, and someone said Thor named her himself. It's like, yeah, in the comics, like what? What does that mean? And also, oh, so... you can just disagree with like the writing, you know? Like yeah. you could just find yeah. it confusing well... and weird. Yeah, well, I, like... I don't think a lot of these people understand that I can just say, oh, so the comic shit too? Uh, well, yeah, because uh, so this yeah, is so well, a lot of the thing that whenever anyone, um, I get this a lot. I will make some argument about a comic book movie and then I'll get loads of people saying, oh, read the comics. And I'm like, okay, what will I find out if I read the comics? And they'll cite to me something I already fucking know. It's like, yeah, dude, okay, sure. That's what I don't care. That's shit. The, or whatever. Dude, these, are like, these are so toxic. Like, so many people are like really mad that you even asked this question. How else are they going to feel good about yeah, themselves? How, how else like, they... who, and, and then one person's like, who cares? You do. You quote <laughs> you tweeted <do>. it. Like, <laughs> 
what everybody um yeah like people telling you to shut up telling you to pick up a fucking comic it's like holy shit chill like it's just just a question i find it's all very interesting as well because um it doesn't there are there are examples and people are referencing um beta ray bill right that he's not um he's not thor and he... well, yeah, so Hela wasn't called Thor when she wielded Mjolnir. Yes, yeah, she was. I don't think yeah, Vision was totally. called Thor when he wielded Mjolnir. Well, and Captain and America Cap wasn't called, called Thor. Thor. Yeah, he was Captain still Thor. I think the, the, Thor America? The, at least I would say the best of those all probably is the Hela example that she wielded Thor for a long time as Odin's right hand. She wielded well, and, and then uh, and then the um, the other Hela, edge of the sword. Thor. The other edge of the sword is that um, Thor, when he wasn't wielding Mjolnir. Uh, in both Thor 1, when he lost the uh, the right of being worthy, and in Ragnarok, and Infinity War, and Endgame, when he um, when Milner was destroyed, he readily still introduced himself to people as Thor. Yeah, because well, it's, we've and I guess they screwed up. <laughs> there's a matter of well of just... So, when I watch the film, like, I'm gonna call her Jane, because if I keep calling her Thor, I'm gonna get myself confused. No, just call it Mighty like, Thor, it's like, easy. Mighty Thor is not easy. I don't know why well, any like that's that's not a combination I assume. of words that's common, you know, like Mighty Thor, like in terms of a, a way to call someone. Because I usually call him Cap. I don't typically call him Captain America. I ain't like, call him Falcon Cap, I'm calling him Falcon. Or Sam. And like or and and also like yeah, you often call him like Sam or Bucky or or like Steve or Tony. Or that's Nat. what I mean. I've learned I names for these people well before they like you must now refer to me as a name that belongs to somebody else or a mantle that I mean Captain America like I said with mantle for a long time there are other arguments to include for that one cuz like I fucking hate how he's become Captain America in that show it's it's like if it were done re really well maybe it, I could uh, be convinced but he basically just stole it yeah, like, the well, mantle he, being handed down can be a really satisfying thing to see. Like, uh, Spider-Verse, I think, gets that right, right? Yeah. Um, well, yeah, I, I like Spider-Verse a lot. Miles uh, earning the mantle of... What? Uh, and you know what? That's actually a good example of this, because when you watch that film, I definitely refer to them by, like, Peter and Miles, because I can't... If I call them Spider-Man, it's, it's going to get confusing. Well, yeah, because we just like, like I, who, I, which one... <laughs> But the awkward part here is it feels like there's almost a public shaming culture of calling her Jane, which is bizarre to me, because that's her name. Her name is Jane. Like, that's... I, I, it's not... You know what I mean? Like, it's not... Yeah, no, and even if they're both called Thor, again. right, surely the, the instinct would be to call them... Because um, I've, I've had this discourse at being thrown at me for a day now, is that uh, when Thor isn't called Thor, he gets referred to as Odinson. Well, so, th see, this is kind of the problem, right? Is like... Because someone might be like, well, why don't you apply that standard with, like, Spider-Man? It's like, well, so here's the thing. Like, there's Peter, there's Miles, there's, like, Gwen. You know, they all have their own names. Thor's name is Thor. There's no other name I can default to for him. I guess unless I call him Odin's son. But, like, he's always called himself Thor. Like, that's, he's Thor. That's the only name I've got. So, like, that name yeah. can't change, really. That That's kind of the problem here. That's the reason why I don't think it's comparable. It's like, I have no other name to call him. He's Thor. So what do I call Jane? It's like Mighty Thor. It's like, I guess I could. Doesn't feel like it kind of doesn't roll off the tongue very well, though, does it? So Thor and Mighty Thor go on an adventure. It's like, which one's who? Thor is Thor and, and Mighty Thor is Jane. That's always going to be the way that you explain who's who. It just, it just doesn't make sense to me. Is like a, I don't know. It feels like you're always going to be in a confu Thoria. <laughs> Thoria. Thoretta. You, well, I guess the thing is, is if you, I don't know, called a Lady Thor, maybe that would be like... Just, but I guess you can't, right? Like it's it's you got a mighty Thor. I like Lady Thunder. Lady, yeah. Well, uh, I don't know about that one. That's uh, I'm not sure. Well, someone in chat suggested why don't you just call her Thor Love and Thunder? That is her title. To call her Thor Love and Thunder. Yeah, <laughs> Mighty Blanket Jane. Mighty well, yeah, Jane. I don't. I I guess I just don't see why like people got like you just call her Jane. Like I don't consider that to be an insult. <laughs> you know, like I don't. You know what I mean? Like, so you could call it's her um, Elding, as in the Norse word for lightning, as in Thor is the Norse word for thunder. It feels like that would be the, the, the easy workaround, is to just give her her own superhero name. Like, I don't even really have a problem with, like, the character, you know, obviously, pending whatever explanation there is, that there is, like, a, a female equivalent. But if you just give her a different name, I don't really see the problem with that either. Or like, uh, give th give Thor like an alternate name, 
as opposed to just Thor, which is the only name that he yeah, has. Yeah, so if, like, if Thor had been going by like another name as well this whole time, it wouldn't seem as weird. Um, yeah, but, but he doesn't, so... <laughs> yeah. Well, they're gonna try like it if anyway. Thor, if Thor was like on Earth, he was always calling himself Jack or something, I don't know. I think he does have an alter ego name in the comics. Uh, like well, uh, it's an interesting name. thing. It's like the original comic story of Thor is like just there was some dude who picked up Mjolnir and then was transformed into Thor. Right. Hmm. Um, I, I. Oh, oh, what's funny is that I'm getting is that I I referenced that in one of my tweets, and I'm it's getting um quote tweeted by loads of comic fans who are misinterpreting it because they don't know about the comic story I'm referencing. Telling oh, me no. that I'm not familiar enough with the comics or whatever, which is well, kind of fun. Isn't uh isn't the thing that happens with her in the comics is that she eventually loses the mantle and then becomes a Valkyrie? Isn't that like what happens? I've heard that, her? yeah. Um I guess maybe we'll work towards that light. I I mean I doubt it, right? I imagine they want to keep her for the long haul. But the, um, there's also another character in the MCU who exclusively goes through Val by Valkyrie. Well, she doesn't yeah, even have right, like the but... Odinson shit. Like, what other name? I, <laughs> have a name? I don't have another name for Valkyrie. Well, if you so call that, another that... Val character Valkyrie, yeah, you know I will get confused. There's your apt example. All right, you can use that one because I won't get you in as much trouble. If you if you just it's just like there's Valkyrie, and if she was called the Mighty Valkyrie, that would be incredibly confusing. I don't know how anybody could pretend that it's not. It's like so there's Valkyrie, and then there's Mighty Valkyrie. So yeah, in the film, Valkyrie and Mighty Valkyrie go on their adventure to like I don't know. Uh, like Olympus and then Valkyrie no sorry Mighty Valkyrie y yeah I don't know just give me different names like, I don't know if I <laughs> or like at least give me other names I can default to that make it easier to distinguish between the two Agreed. yeah it's, this has also started a, a kind of a meme which I'm enjoying I see this is like every third notification now is like a picture of Cap holding Mjolnir with the caption Thor is my favorite Avenger <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, it was pretty cool when he lifted that hammer and then became Thor. I, I also, because isn't the line that Odin says shall wield the power of Thor? I don't know why you would yeah. necessarily assume that that's a mantle or rather just a description of the power that well, you're getting yeah. from someone else. So it's established in Thor Ragnarok that um, the, the, the Mjolnir isn't Thor's power, uh, source of strength, that no. it just helps him to focus his power. Um, but if other people lifting Mjolnir can use the the power of Thor, then sure, okay, that's cool, I'm happy with that being a rule. But then it's not, right, it's not a power that's been granted to Thor, as like, well, hey, now hold not, this hammer and you become of... Thor. It's, well, it, use the power it, of Thor because it's the power that Thor has, and that's his name, it's Thor. Well, yeah, because I assume that if Thor got Odin's power, or, I mean, Thor has essentially taken on Odin's role. He's not Odin now, like, he's he's Thor still. Like, even if he assumes basically the Odin's mantle and responsibilities, he'd still be Thor. Yeah. Like, he, he wouldn't like, then become Odin, Odin's son, right? If they wanted as well Thor to be like this mantle that can be passed down from person to person, they really needed to, you know, establish, establish that, that, I think, in the first three films. And yeah, also but the thing is, is that um, the first four Avengers films. Jane Foster Thor was like 2014, came after those films. She wasn't an idea yet, um, so that's well, probably surely, why they surely, didn't if it's based on consistent uh, law, as a lot of comic oh, book fans are, are are arguing, then um, it should still have been incorporated, right? If they wanted, because like, well, that'd be the question: Can they appeal to anything that came before that comic run that uh, that establishes that it's a mantle? Because, like, I mean, if it is a mantle, right? Then sure, cool, that's great. Um, well, yeah, I guess that might be the thing to, because like I'm, I'm like I'm not opposed to the idea. I, I think the design well, yeah. is really cool. I think, I think the, 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 I like the helmet a lot. I like, I like it as like I a particularly appreciate that visual. Natalie Portman like actually like Got beefed up her arms to do the yeah, that's the, cool. Yeah, it's, it's cool. I like it. Like I'm not opposed to the idea at all. Um, I just find it a little bit confusing right now. Maybe it'll all be explained in the film. But I guess the problem is like we're in a meta where it's like the MCU has broadly been not good, whereas uh, there's another meta that, that exists, the more popular meta, which is that like, I don't know, Marvel's in a good place right now. So that's not Natalie. Have you seen the set photos? She definitely got buff for the film. I, I, I wouldn't know. for I'll just see it in the film. 
we'll, we'll know she that, said right? that she went on like an intense training regimen as well so yeah women yeah are. um when we're Sorry, reviews, uh, over. a tweet saying you don't have to do that every time we end a tangent you're okay you yeah. make it um Quinn Reviews put out a tweet saying, with a, with a screenshot of Veteran Awards host Ricky Gervais has some thoughts about Will Smith's Oscar slap. And then he says, a new article like this comes out every week. Nobody cares about what you think, Ricky. Shut the fuck up. Well, like, I, a lot of people care what Ricky I, thinks. I think, I think people really wanted to know what his thoughts were on it specifically. I saw of loads course, of people yeah. being like, what? Cause, and then we want to know what he would do. Uh, if you were in that position. And then I started to think to myself, you do understand that, like, he could say things once about it, and then articles could continue to be written about that one instance because mm -hmm. everyone's catching yeah. up with it. Like, it doesn't well, it's mean... Like, it's like, when an article is written about someone's opinion, right, as well, it's like, someone could literally have gone to, like, asked him, hey, will you do an interview for us? And he said, oh yeah, sure. And then they asked him this question, and then someone else has written an article, oh, Ricky said this. It's like, no one cares, Ricky, shut the fuck up. You know, like, I was specifically asked. Yeah. I, I assume he's been asked several times. Like I said, I think he's possibly the the number one person people wanted commentary from about this event outside of, I guess, uh, Will yeah, Smith and Chris Rock yeah. and yeah. Chris Rock themselves, yeah. Also, I do like Ricky Gervais. I, I enjoy his commentary on lots of things. So I care. Game. What did he say? Oh, um all I, I remember him saying because I obviously I don't have a link to that article right now, but like the what I remember reading was that he said like he would have made way more jokes, like he would have gone way further. Oh yeah, the, yeah. Uh, yeah, and obviously the Chris Rock and slap for that joke is pathetic, and I, I think he even said like Chris Rock's joke was barely at all offensive. It's like they have no idea. And it's it was so chill. Like, yeah, a little bit. <laughs> and I mean, the big the big takeaway from it all is if that slap hadn't happened, nobody would be talking about that GI Jane two joke. You know, that wouldn't be something that was burnt into the public consciousness. And of course, people would remember that Will Smith won an Oscar, but nobody ever really talks about that part of the night. You've all focused on what he You must regret that slap so fucking much. Oh yeah, he, he totally. has to regret that. I don't see how he couldn't. Um, it's completely overshadowed what should have been like a really important night in his career. And I think we're well uh, past anybody still claiming this was set up. Um, I don't no, think no, so. Aren't they getting a divorce? Are they? Smith? That, well, I think there are rumors that um, there are problems oh. that are stemming from that. Surely if it was staged, Jaden Smith would have been in it. <laughs> they would have slapped Jaden. Well, didn't Jaden, he tweeted out, Jaden Smith tweeted out on Twitter, it. like, that's how we do it, which is so funny to me that someone oh would say God. that. Like, especially that he said it, you know? Cringe. Will Smith like, found oh, someone yeah, on his side. It. It's the great well, thing, man. In the <laughs> initial hours, possibly like the first 10 or so, there was a sentiment of like, that was good, and I would have done the same thing. Wish, wish my man would stand up for me like that. That all dissipated pretty quickly. Yeah, as it should, because it's stupid. Yep. Yes. You don't hit people because they said something you didn't like. Especially if it's a joke. Anyway. Is that a fairy, Rags? It was at the time. It was a fairy, and now it has gone elsewhere. It is, it is traversed to another location. Here we are, fairyless, and who knows when it will be back. It could be tomorrow. It might be today. That, that picture is very snug, Rags, I gotta say. You look oh, like no, you're very I just, I'm, it's a bed. mood. It is a mood, isn't it? Especially with the Venetian blinds casting all those, uh, those, uh, shadows. Oh, like, no, look that's at just how the pattern on the... Right. Yeah. yeah, that's just the bed sheets. Is it the bed sheets? Oh. Yeah. Oh, it is. Yeah, you're right. The 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 uh the blinds, the shadows aren't being cast on your your little snug face there in the blankets. Yeah. You guys are hey, spoiling all the cool movies. Building. Sad face. I actually saw it on Twitter just now. Yeah. It's, um. Interesting. That's... Cool. I like the idea that we would we were spoiling the Star Wars movies as summarizing the fucking Lego, Skywalker saga. <laughs> <laughs> That's fun. Stop complaining, Muller. It's a Lego game about space wizards intended for children. True. I know, I know that's a meme, but I, I, I will say what I said then, which was, uh, uh, children deserve games that work. There I said it. Also true. Um, just FYI, I was joking. I, I agree oh. with whatever that was about.
Back in the day, it was gears that made me hate slow walking while talking in games. Good doggo, bad froggo slash birdo. What did Thank I do? You. Thank you very much. <laughs> Wait, who's? Oh. Well, I'm so... the good dog, he's the bad for Frogo Birdo. Um, but wait, was it when we talked about it, did we decide that it's bad to have walkie-talkie parts in these games? Because I don't think so. I don't well, what I, when, when you talked about the annoying aspects of it, yeah. when, it when, when it just it really breaks up gameplay and it doesn't work well, um, I think it was Gears of War that had popularized that as an option for people, because that was a big game that came out in the series, and they do that, where you all of a sudden have a slow walking section. Yeah, and you can't Your character aim. has two fingers to their ears, and you just slowly mm -hmm. progress as you listen to stuff. I think, and, um, um, I think what I might have said is that I consider them to be, like, a cheaper substitute for full-blown cutscenes. Yeah. Um, because you're using in-game mechanics to, uh, to advance the story. Well, you know, you don't have to animate, like, a full sequence by doing that. I don't know if I said anything about Gears of War, though. I think I said I uh, liked how infamous that was. I think I was the one who mentioned well. Gears of War. Because well, we we mentioned sort of uh, on top of that then that at least when you do it that way you the player can choose where they want to look and it can make it feel a bit more dynamic I suppose than a cutscene but then again gears would implement um, points of interest I think if you hold down Y it would it would take control off you um, it would yeah it would foc yeah yeah it would just basically focus your character the screen on something of importance that the game wanted you to see yeah. And then you, it only happened as long as you held down the button. And it would even sometimes be like zooming in really far away on like a distant cliff where you see some creatures yeah, climbing around. Yeah, and you could, you'd keep your movement too. It would just focus in the camera on that thing. So I think that's yeah. the important part to me is I don't want, I think I want games to not, as much as possible, not change the core mechanics and keep them consistent. I think that's, um, I think that's important. I think that's where slow walking sequences can be a problem. Is I'm I'm not sure how I feel about like a radical change in um. Yeah, I could kill pacing. I, I yeah, I guess it's just more so maybe that I have an attitude that it's a good idea when it is gameplay to give the player full control always, um, and then to like clearly segment cutscenes. And I think it's because of um just replayability. Like for instance, I replayed a bunch of the Uncharted games. I don't think I'll ever replay four because four just has so many like slow walking, like climbing sequences and, and all of these things that like really aren't like the core gameplay. I, I just don't want to go through. How would you be able to feel like sections a... where like your character is injured or something along those well, lines? No, that's why I'm saying it's complicated because one example I think of, I really like Max Payne 3 and Max Payne 3 does this. Oh, I was this. just about to say Max um, Payne 3, yeah. And, but yet I like Max Payne 3. Um, I like it a lot and I've replayed that game a lot of times. So I'm not even... I oh control. I was about to I, say I don't know Max how Payne I would uh, square away. I couldn't get through it a second time. I really liked it, and then the second time I played it, I wanted to just so much of that game is story stuff, and it's like it it it's great the first time, but the second time I'm like oh, I know what happens. Can I play? I just want to play the game. Well, yeah, because the mechanics. I would have to sit through massive sections of narrative and cutscenes and stuff, yeah. which I'm are more... which say that they're loading screens, which is a fucking lie. Um, Some of them are loading the, screens. Well, it it constantly is loading, and it says that for the entirety um, of the cutscene. When I know that you're done loading, and you're just making me sit through a cutscene. Sometimes, I did you play it on PC or did you play it on console? Absolutely, that's how I know because these long ass cutscenes would go on for ages, and it would say loading, and I'm like, you're done loading. Stop. Let me play. Might be that it was yeah not badly optimized, or that it was optimized to not go further than con console level loading. Well. That game, uh, that game had pretty intense PC requirements when it came out. I remember that. Um, it, it like it was intense. That game looked really good for the time it came out. Like the animation in that game is superb. It's it's yeah, stellar. It's a great game. Um, I I think it's a great game. I think um because I I mean of course I enjoy the story, but mechanically it's like simple but really strong. Like it's um the controls yes. are responsive despite how good the animations are and usually it seems like the more you push animation the harder it can be to ensure that the player is in control always constantly and can always aim exactly where they need to um and i remember the multiplayer was really cool but unfortunately like the multiplayer died off really quickly it's a shame because it was it was really cool and um and and fully featured um opinion on peaky blinders not seen it. Intend to. Not seen it. I've heard to. it's good, but I've just heard it's good. So who knows? 
I sent my mum the... likes it, and she also likes the elephant hiding in trees joke. So you know she has good taste. But that's a good joke. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. That's my point. I sent the gif gif super chat. I said, I should have said no objective argument holds up. It's certainly valid to think it sounds dumb. Hi, Wags. Hello. Oh, uh, yeah, like I said, as far as I know, you can justify it via English rules and language and stuff either way, so. But it seems that GIF has won the fight for the most part. Um, GIF seems to have won the fight, yeah. I think I see more people referring to it as GIF than GIF. Yes. Anyone else miss the pantomiming? Charm is gone. Oh, for, uh, for like Lego. Star Wars. Yeah. yeah, no, I, I, I think there's a serious lack of charm in the new game. Um, a lot of it is because uh, I, don't th I think they repurposed the scenes, like copy-paste, cut them down, and then maybe we're going to try and maybe add some jokes at some point, and then only some of them got that treatment. A lot of them just run as they do in the movies. Um... Possibly because they ran out of time. Well, that seemed like development was tough. Don't forget to mention how censored this game is versus the originals, because kids can't handle the words death, dead, kill, killed, or slave. Hi, Rags. Hello. I Do they not have any of those? That's interesting. They might have knocked a lot of those words out, yeah. Um, they certainly came away did. from a lot of the deaths. Um, um, they, 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 uh, the one I really noticed was... Um, I can't remember what the actual line they have in the game is, but it's not, uh, in your anger you killed her, it's in your anger you lashed out or something, and I'm like, ooh, okay. Oh, okay. It's a very, it's like, it's, it's a very clear and deliberate decision. It's like, you in just changed the line. In mm. Jack 2, the first thing Jack says is, I'm gonna kill Praxis. Jack for some reason, a... for some reason I had it in my head there that the line was, I'm gonna fucking kill Praxis. <laughs> I'm gonna fucking kill Praxis. Well, I was just saying, like, Jack Directed 2 is, by Zack Snyder. Th those were like definitely games that they knew that kids were going to be playing, like Jack and. Um, yeah, to be fair, but like I'm going to fucking kill Praxis would totally fit the scene really well. Well, I remember, uh, I remember when I played like those games, I was like, oh wow, they said crap, like goddamn, <laughs> this is intense. Um, and they said piss off. It's like wow, oh my god, this is like, geez, this game is going real intense. And of course, Ratchet and Clank's got lots of violence in it. I mean, dude, the names of the games up your arsenal. <laughs> like, dude, the cheeky. Like, um. Hey, nice cheeky, cheeky, cheeky's ass. I get it. Yeah. Well, that wasn't intentional, but I'll. I'll t there, there were a lot of our sneaky little jokes that they snuck into those games. I think I've told the story already, but there was one that they didn't think they'd get past the censors, but they did. It was in uh, Ratchet and Clank Three. The when the guy was describing Quark. He was butt naked, screaming and holding a banana. Or maybe it weren't a banana. <laughs> it could have been. It's <laughs> like one of nature's mysteries. It's a, it's a good joke. Those games are funny. Fun. You and the bananas. Huh? You and the bananas. Well, he, well, I mean, there was a banana gun in that game. Like, if you needed Quark to do stuff, you'd uh, get a little banana gun and shoot it. And then uh, he'd oh. go... Or would it, you shoot him with the banana... Did you oh, shoot wait, him no, with what? the banana gun? No, it wasn't Quark, sorry, it was, uh, was it Skrunk? What was the name of the monkey? Was he Skrunk? Skrunk, Skrunk is such a flumbo word. It there's absolutely a, is. There's, there's a lot of flumbo words in Ratchet and Clank. Um, I can't. I think his name was Skrunk. Like, what you would do is if you were playing as uh, Clank in the puzzle sections, you'd need to shoot the banana so that uh, he would go over to, like, the button and stand on it so that he could do little platforms and get you to move around. Um the, the, yeah, the, I I adore those games. That's like that was a good, that was a good era for video games. The early two thousands. Um, honestly, one of the problems I had was just NPCs just stopping like force user bosses who freeze up when they can't throw objects at you and you can't do anything till the AI really realizes they are stuck. Um, there was a lot of clunk to the, the processes of what they intended to be, how the fights would run, including NPCs being weird, as we saw some of them, like, not loading in even, uh, the background ones. Um, yeah. Sucks. You suck. Whoa, Mahler, are you gonna take that? Oh, I thought he meant it about you. No, no, no. He was he was directly referring to you. I, I, I he said you. I'm gonna let like you that. guys have this fight. Yeah, he's looking at you. That's it. 
Yeah. I think like he was Jay's pointing. also looking at, at, at Fringy right now. Fringy. Hmm. The dark horse. I, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Um, still, stunned into silence. How are the characters in the game have like their name and then in brackets the modifier and someone really stupid and someone's going here Luke in brackets crotchety old man. It's like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if only they'd had that. Thoughts on Hereditary and Midsummer? I'd recommend those movies if you haven't watched them yet. Anything I've seen not? neither. No. Jay, seen either? Nope. Well, I've seen Hereditary. It's Quite a creepy movie. Um, I think I would recommend it for horror fans. There's a certain moment in it that I was really impressed with. There's actually a couple of moments I was impressed with for horror stuff, but it's uh, story-wise, you're in for a bit of a oof. What the flumpy fungo is going on? Is it an odd boy? Um, it's not even not in the sense of like I don't understand what's going on. More so just oh wow, they made those choices. Okay, all right, I'm watching. Very um, very violent too. Well, uh, oh. yeah, I, th I think so. I think it's pretty violent. Uh, Midsummer. I have not seen it. I know the basic plot line, and I know that Drinker fucking hates it. And I think it's his most controversial video, because a lot of people like Midsummer. Um, I do not know anything about Midsummer. From what I'm aware of, it's a group of kids, teenagers types, go to... I, I don't know if they're hiking or something, but they end up finding this cult that are very squid away, and then I wouldn't want to say any more for what may happen to them or not. Cult is squared away? Like, they have their, like, taxes filled out, and they dress nicely? No, just like they're in the uh, in forest. Or whatever. Oh! They're... Oh, okay. Nothing to do with taxes. I don't even know if they have to do taxes, to be honest with you, Rags. They might get yeah, cult that's eggs. That's why I was confusing, because... Yeah, they might, um... Because you, you just said squared away, and it's like, oh, like... Do you know that means things are neat and tidy and professional, you know? Yeah, I think that's applied. They 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 seem very um very neat <gasps> cult. Has Boogie got himself he's made a video called About the Johnny Depp joke I made like on Twitter. What did he say this time? <laughs> if you can find he out. He said a joke curious. on Twitter and so he felt the need to make a video about it. Um oh, I'm let, sure okay. Oh he deleted okay. them. I can't find them. Um they're from a few hours ago. Um damn. There we go. Don't listen to Drinker on this one, but we've also got I Walked Out of Midsummer. so Kat, I'm gonna need you to have a singular thought, okay? How are we supposed to know if we're supposed to see a movie or not? Gosh. Alright, I need you guys chat, I need you to elect a representative to let us know what your opinion is on Midsummer. Just mind meld, and there's only one account in chat at any time and it has the unified opinion. Midsummer is okay. God, what a confused person that would be. Yeah, they'd be, they'd, well, or maybe not. Maybe it, it's so efficient, it just combines and averages out an opinion. I don't think that's what would happen. Yeah, well, you know what? It's my fantasy. It's my sci-fi slash thing. Did you find out what he said yet? No, because, uh, but obviously a lot of people were mad at him, but, uh, I don't know. Let me, let me see. Oh, that's a yeah. fun noise. What's he said? He's been doing this a lot, where he keeps making things about himself. He he took he. So this is what that's he boogie. said. Let me let me watch it in full, and then I'll I'll explain it to you. You can you can continue on. Wow. Well, it's an, it's a minute. I'll uh I'll listen. Oh, to it's it. it's just a minute. Okay. Wait, sorry, was was that, um, I was distracted by reading something. Did we get what it was? So, he, so what he said in his, like, in the video, so he must be paraphrasing what he said, but he said basically along the lines of, my uh, ex-wife and I broke up when our relationship wasn't going well, and Johnny Depp went back to Amber Heard, even though she had, like, you know, abused him. Like, that That was the sentiment of whatever he said. Why, it's um... just like, why would you say that? Like, yeah, I'm what, trying to figure out, like, why would he even... Why is he even feeling the need to... 
And why would he make it about bugging. himself? Like, hey, look, all right, look <laughs> me in my relationship. This is what I did, and Johnny Depp didn't do it. Like, why would you say that? Johnny Depp could learn what? something from me. Uh, to be fair, Johnny Depp probably does watch a bit of Boogie here and there. You know? Yeah. I mean, it's possible that Johnny Depp knows who Boogie is. <laughs> he feels betrayed by this video. He's like, oh, this represents me. I, had a, I just remembered my Boogie interaction. Hang on, let me see if I can find it. I was like, sure. I, I was like, I was just like having a, a brief recollection of, I swear I had an interaction with Boogie once and I just remembered it. Um, hang on. <sighs> He's like, I need to use this as a teaching moment. Every single thing he has to frame it as like, look, I'm doing some sort of service here, okay? It's not narcissism. <laughs> Wait, I've had two interactions with Boogie. I didn't even know that this is a thing that... Um... Well, Boogie gets in trouble all the time because he says stupid things. No, I didn't know that this was a thing. I, I just didn't notice that this happened, but apparently I got a boogie reply. Um, oh, there you go. I, I'm glad to know that he agrees with that take. The Thor like, one? I, I, I no, don't know what he's trying to... I... I saw I on Twitter said... Um, Starting to think that Movie Bob has a humiliation kink and we're just all part of his game. And Boogie comes in and says, this is a known fact. Speaking of humiliation. The fucking champion of it. Uh, I don't understand why you would say that. <laughs> like... I don't know what compelled them to be like, you know what, this is a thought I'm going to share on the old Twitter. Everybody's looking to see what I have to say on this topic. I'm going to just put it out there into the world. Apparently, um, Johnny uh, Depp has expressed frustration with the quality of writing for uh, Pirates of the Caribbean 5 uh, through the emails that are coming up in oh. this court case. That's kind of funny. Nice. Really? Glad he cares. <laughs> um, well, he said he didn't the films he uh he doesn't watch his films after he's finished with them which i didn't know oh, I, I don't know what, that, what does that have to do with the whether or not he thinks oh well, i i guess it's um the, the, his concerns with the writing must have stemmed directly from the script then less so than what he saw at the end oh yeah that's what i assume um because you you have i think i rewatched them all with uh with a friend like years ago now almost it might have been two i don't know but um uh Black Pearl, Dead Man's Chest, At World's End, On Stranger Tides, Dead Men Tell No Tales. That's the five. And um, yes. they just keep getting worse. Well, you showed me the fifth one and it was awful. Yeah, it's, uh, the fifth one's really bad. Um, yeah. That'll definitely be an EFAP movies arc and it'll be really cool to watch the first one because it's fucking awesome. And then everything else will happen. Second one. Oh boy! Oh, right. Sounds anyway, fun. honestly, one of the problems I... Oh, wait, that's the one I read. Uh, why Dragon Ball Z fans hate Boo Saga? I know it's too long for its own good, and Gohan is wasted, and it has too many transformations, but I still like it. All right. All right. Yeah, I don't, we can't help you there. Yeah. You guys have enough EFAP movies requests to cover the next 100 years, but here are two more. Oh, Hancock, no. because it was ahead of its time, and D&D, &D because it was a new line produced... Before Lord of the Rings, we're definitely doing D and D at some point. If not, yeah, any I of think them. it. I think that released the year Lord of the Rings came out, or is like the year before. It was basically it was done right adjacent. around the same time. Yeah, like I, either the same year or during Lord of the Rings being made, D and D was could... made by the same by the same New Line Studios. That's insane. They made both of those basically at the same time. And you could say there's different levels of sort of approach and execution in those movies. Sort of. They're not quite as similar as one might assume from facts. In fact, one of them is uh, still to this day rewatched with uh, with Glee, and the other is Lord of the Rings. Yep. Yes. I met Jay at the Sainsbow's Sainsbow's? Sainsbury's, I guess, on Wellington and Bothwell, 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 uh, told him how cool it was to meet him, 
didn't want to bother him. He said, like you're doing now. Kind of rude, but I still like his videos. Wow, Jay. Holy fuck. Did you say that? Yes. <laughs> wow. I'm just confused currently. I'm not sure what's going on. That doesn't on. seem like that. This must I, be I a could see Jay, Jay saying it in a, like you're doing now, like, like troll face, and then continuing to troll. Can you read that again <laughs> or put it in the chat? Yeah, I can. Uh, I'll grab it up. But if you, like said, if you said that, like, very stone-faced, I'd have been like, damn, Jay. Mean. Unless it's a copy paste or some kind, I don't know. You I, I don't know. I, this, I think I that is a... I promise you that this didn't happen. I'm pretty well, sure I've case, seen... Yeah, it's probably a copy paste. Yeah. <laughs> that's a funny one. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've seen this before, actually. I've seen the one that's like... Uh, Someone cuts in line of them in a grocery store or something like that. They always say that. That's a copy pasta for loads of celebrities. Um, where I think I think I saw one for Chris Pratt, like used recently, where they say like they cut in line and like the conclusion of the story is just like you know, you get a, you get a bad vibe about this person, that sort of thing. From Jimmer's community, I I do not know this this meme very well, but all right. One Punch Germany's Man versus. Community. One Punch Man versus Ultra Insect Goku. Who wins? Fuck is Ultra, Ultra Insect, Insect Goku. Like he bites you and gives weak. malaria. One, mo he one Punch Man wins. Blood? That's a good point. Yeah, One oh, sorry. Punch Man wins. I'm uh fucking one of the things that's wrong with my brain. Ultra Instinct Goku. Ultra Instinct. <laughs> <I> read Insect. <laughs> Ultra. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one Punch Man wins. Yes. Ultra insect, <laughs> like he's a big, he, he's a big bad beetle board. That's exactly what I you thought. Know, I was like, you know, we're getting drawings of ultra insect Goku now, <laughs> ultra right? Ultra insect Goku. <laughs> uh, I was already working on this. <laughs> I thought, I thought ultra that's, insect. That's what I thought Goku. it said for so long, and I, I believed it. I was like, yeah, Goku probably has an arc where he, he fucking becomes a giant insect or something. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, yeah, none of us question it either. It's like, yeah. That seems about right. What do I need to put under my pillow for the Rags Fairy to visit me? Thanks for the stream, and take care, you massives. Thank you. The Rags Fairy to... Oh, let's see. What do I want? What do I want? What do you have that I want? <laughs> what do you possess? What possession of yours is... Or Everything. was precious to you? Oh, I don't know. I am not a greedy person. I don't necessarily go out and break into people's houses and steal their possessions while they sleep, even though there's sort of a consent implied by the fact they leave it under the pillow for me. Oh, man, what do I want? What do you have that I want on such a massive scale, too? Like a tooth fairy. I assume she does something with all the teeth. Um, oh, what do I want from you? Um, I don't know. How about money? You want to you want to put like a you want to put money under your pillow? That's I'll take that. That sounds good. The problem is that generally the tooth fairy will take a tooth and then leave either like a coin or a you know oh, some you can money leave behind. Teeth. Oh, that's a good idea. I all I need to do is find enough teeth to. I basically I'm basically selling teeth at this point. Yeah, kind of. Um, through a very strange intermediary uh, intermediary process. Um, wow, yeah. Uh, I'm going to have to secure a source of teeth so that I can then essentially convert that into dollars. And the thing is, if you do it you early enough in the night, then the tooth fairy will come in and replace that with money. Oh! You want your That's teeth a cycle. Surely. That's a cycle. Don't let, don't let the tooth fairy take your teeth. I feel like, yeah, so I'm the middleman in this scenario, but that's fine because I'm getting paid. Tell you what, I'm going to think on this and chat, await further bulletins as events warrant. What do I, uh, uh, the animal of the day is the coconut crab. Oh, I know these boys. Oh, coconut, coconut crabs are fucking cool. They're big old, they're big old chonky boys. They're big old boys. Let me oh, get yeah. you a picture of a coconut crab. Here's a picture of a coconut crab. What's their, um... 
It's a yeah. big old. Ah, it's the famous boy. picture of one. You know what? So, yeah, I, so, I like it's it's a creature that I struggle to believe really exists, even though it's like, yeah, I can see it. It's right there. Is a big crab, you know. So here is a picture that popped up, and like, thank you so much for the person who made this. There, thank I. <laughs> do you, you guys see it? Do you guys see the crab? Oh, with the red circle, I can see it. Uh, yeah, yeah, with the red circle, oh, kind of in the middle there. Yeah, but it's on. It's on the. Why is it the, the other picture? Just who's decided to flip the picture? Why? Why not? Same reason they put. Now, on now that both versions are out there, how do I know which way around this was originally? Maybe I'll never know. I'm sorry. I didn't mean for this to crabs happen. Are, crabs are neat. I wonder how much like meat is in a coconut crab. It must be a crap load of meat. Perhaps. That's a big old boy. Yeah. But, I, but I'm not afraid of him, you know? I'm just like, wow, look at you over there being a crab. Crabs yeah, gonna, he's not, he's not gonna bother me. He's 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 spec for defense, and he doesn't. And they climb trees too. They 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 just climb around. They in climb trees. trees? Yeah, I'm just imagining them swinging from the trees. Yeah, they're just they just climb trees. They're just up and down on them trees. They they grabbing trees, climbing up. I think I would I would certainly be startled if I saw one, especially if it was like eye fucking level. Um. And it was like in a tree. I'd be like, oh, oh shit. Oh, it's a coconut crab. All right, we can be friends. That's cool. You know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, these are cool. Coconut crabs are neat. They just hang out in trees. This uh, is a, here's, here is a, here's, here's a picture of a, he, he's got himself a little house there. He's hanging out. Mm -hmm. He's got a can do attitude. He's got a can-do attitude. Oh, I get it. Okay. He's a can, and he's in a can. Yes. Yes, he is. Someone says, I liked it when the main trio were on screen. The main trio. I don't know if they're referring to EFAP, or Lego, or Spider-Man, or Sonic, maybe? maybe it's on Irrelevant and Denims. Hmm. The OG trio. Sonic does OG make you trio. orty as a child. Ah. Gives you a bit of the ort. What? Uh, you can do things in space. You can find capital ships, fight them, board them, and then capture them and buy them. Talking about, um, Lego? There's definitely things you can do. It's just, uh, a lot of it's very awkwardly done. Did, did, did you do a, a mission, Jay, where you just kept getting pulled out of hyperspace to fight bounty hunters? No. I was what, incredibly what fucking annoying. That in? Because uh, I'm on episode four at the moment, and it's oh, well, all right. It was in Camino four. Space. Oh no, I don't remember that at all. Well, no, it's not. Um, it's not a story mission. Ah. Uh, you still plan on playing more of that game? Yeah, I plan on critiquing it. Why? Um, why not just say it's, it's bad? Because it is bad, and people need to understand why. I think if you just put out a video saying it's bad, that's that's. We get yeah. I think we get the thing, point. It? Yeah. I think we get. The point, I think it's a bit honestly. sad for you to like. Oh, I'm gonna explain it with objective facts. Let's feel a little. What am I? What else am I gonna do? Explain it with subjective feelings, like a woman. Whoa. Yeah, I've been going to, oh. Women like Lego. That's true. Women like feelings. Mm hmm. There's an objective. Women like fact feeling for my you. balls. Whoa. Got <laughs> Oh, we got some spice here. Fringy pretends he's a Sonic fan. Lol. Australians oh. don't play Sonic games. Did I say I was a Sonic fan? I don't know, but they they see they tried to predict your response and they got it wrong. They I said it would begin with I like well. The old Sonic games. That's right, it didn't begin with well. And I like the old Sonic games. I like the Genesis ones. And I like Generations. But your quote would be well, categorically no well. Got that one wrong. Mm. Has Fringy played Sonic games before? And then they've got in quotes, well, dot, dot, dot. Oh, really ripped into you for this, apparently. Jesus. Fringy pretends he's autistic as the rest of us. Yeah, he's trying to fit in. That's, you know, that's nice. <laughs> How I'm glad that he lowers himself to our mm -hmm. level. Damn, dude. Wait, How autistic? familiar are you with Oh, no, Sonic? we're the next step of evolution. I was about to say, yeah. it's the next step yeah, of evolution. Yeah, that's right, yeah. 
course. Because that's how evolution works. Got another In one that steps says, how that familiar to. are you with Sonic? And it says, well, in quotation marks. This is more than... What's going on what's here? What's going on? What's so mean? Springy pretends to care about Sonic, and then they got well in quotations again. What's going on? I don't know if this was all the same person or if it's just people, but this is, this is, uh, this is harassment. Fully. Fans. Fans everywhere. <laughs> this one says, complain about Halo, please. Don't worry. Well, you got that go. earlier. Don't worry, and you'll get more. You get little doses, and then you're gonna get and... a big avalanche of us complaining about it soon enough. Maybe not soon enough. Actually, it'll be a little while because it's gonna take a while to get it out. So but... Hey all, big fan of your show. I'm starting from episode one, and I'm gonna go through your entire backlog. Any luck? I'll be done with it in eight months to hear you read this super chat. Cheers all. Well, you caught up. Unfortunately, you've got another 30 episodes to watch to catch up to us currently. Is that accurate? I wonder if I'll be accurate. How close I got. I think 30 is a solid guess. Uh, bought this game for my youngest brother and told him I only wanted to play the Anakin vs. Obi-Wan level with him for nostalgia reasons. I couldn't even finish it. Yeah. Uh, a little different. They do everything a little different. Uh... Some would say worse, but just their opinion. Hi, Rags, Springy, Jay, and Longman. Hello. 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 Hi. You see, what you're failing to understand is that this is a game about space wizards intended for children. Plenty of people make that argument. They're out there. The Obi-Wan vs. Anakin fight annoyed me so much in Revenge of the Sith, they needlessly changed Obi-Wan's character and why he's fighting Anakin. It ruins the fight conceptually for me. Yeah, it's a really weird choice that they change what he's saying in that fight. Not sure why they did that. Uh, Wings quote of the day. You need to look up the word scam. I don't have to read any donations. There's nothing on my channel that says I'm going to read a donation. Oh... <laughs> they called it a scam event. <laughs> I wonder how scam. that arose. Who stopped reading them because they, they were, were mean. Just too, too mean. <laughs> yeah. scam. Read out the insults, you fat fuck. Damn right. Yeah, right like he's saying dance monkey dance to the poor man who's just trying to live. You know? dance so what's the bonus monkey quote? Dance. Bonus quote. Not... See, this is why I don't play Rainbow. I can't get no one to play with me. Oh. Oh, Can't imagine why. Man. <laughs> Damn. Cannot imagine why. We'll play with you. Come play Rainbow Six what, Rainbow Siege. Six Siege. On, on, yeah. on EFAP. Do it. With the last Unfortunately, season... Unfortunately, all the Super Chats are going to be ours, so you will, you'll you'll have to get your own. I'm sure you'll get a few, from, even from the EFAP audience over on Twitch. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, wait, he streams on Twitch and YouTube, right? What does he... Uh, I think it's just Twitch if he's a partner. Oh, he definitely streams on YouTube, um, because I've seen him. Does he? No. Well, it'll be on different days Does he still have partner, or, uh, well, maybe he's not partner anymore. It'll be on different days, surely. He'll stream on YouTube one day and Twitch the other. Can't do different days. Maybe. Do the exclusive partnership. It's not about... Oh, apparently he lost his partnership. Oh, there you go. What did he say? What did he say that got him in trouble? Which of the many things got him in trouble? Well, because that was what that was what happened to um DSP, right? He got banned on our Twitch because um I can't remember exactly why actually. I think it had to do with like slurs or something, but I, I don't know what it was specifically. Hmm. He said cracker. Damn. Wow. I, Sorry for I, getting I, you banned I, off YouTube more. You have to call someone a cracker. Just saying cracker in general is allowed, I think. Mass reports. Oh. With the last season of Better Call Saul coming up, will we get an EFAP about it? I love the show, and it could be nice to talk about it. Something good for a change. We've been doing that here and there. It, that exists. It's all right. Um, but no, I don't imagine so. Um, I don't have a huge amount to say about the show. Uh, and then that would also mean that I would need at least Rags or Freeney to, to go through the whole thing as well. And then find people who also have, which isn't... I, I don't know how many people are up to date on, on Better Call Saul, so I don't see that being a being a topic really. No. Uh they should make a Lego FPS. Imagine a story about all the Lego South a South American countries forming a single large army and taking over a Lego pin launcher. Oh. That's Call of Duty Ghost, but Lego. 
<laughs> hmm. Also, high rags. Hello. Me and the boys were watching Moon Knight, and it got real bad real quick. Episode two with the bad fight scene and dialogue. Well, episode three and four, man. Ugh. Well, just you wait, and now I'm sure episode five, which I hear is the best one, from all the people who got to watch it early, talking about it on the old interwebs, I'm mm -hmm. sure it will be filled with so many answers to all of our questions. Like, why did anybody make any of the decisions they did? Um, I loved when Palpatine was getting shocked in episode 9 and he goes, Anakin, help me. Oh, wait, he's gone. That was probably my favorite, or oh, biggest chuckle, I said. Um, yeah, I think I was already way too disenfranchised at that point, you know? The last of the campaigns I had to play, I was just like, eh. Would you guys want an elderly decoy? And if so, what would you use them for? An elderly <laughs> decoy? Well, the problem with an elderly decoy is that I am far from elderly. Yeah, so they the must be referring to, um, be... to Santa decoy in, in LEGO Star Wars. Probably, yeah. Um, no, I wouldn't want an elderly decoy. <laughs> yeah, I, can, I, 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 I wouldn't want, want anyone to die in my place, I suppose. I gotta take care of myself. I gotta defend myself. If I've got problems, I need to. Be, I gotta face those head on. I can't let somebody else, you know, take the hit for me. Sometimes you gotta, you gotta live your own life, and try to not die your own death. I always found the "it's for kids" to be a stupid argument. If something doesn't live up to me or myself when I was a kid, then why should I subject my children to it as a future fun uncle? I gotta think of these things. Uh, well, that's, yeah, I mean, I only recently-ish played all the LEGO games, and I still think those are pretty solid for, for kids to have fun with, but this new one is like, eh. Mm. A lot of boring crap in it, and it doesn't fully work, so. Mm. Hi, Rags. Hello. I love your PFP. She is all. Thank you very much, thank you. Is Moon Knight the worst one? No, no, Loki is probably the worst not. One. Loki's got to be the worst one. Yeah, I, I don't know how you could get worse than Loki. Not um, really. Yeah, I like legit don't actually know. Um, breaks space and time. All of continuity retroactively ruins an insane amount of stuff. It is. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't. Yeah, I don't know. Loki has a. It, it is the opposite of self-contained. <laughs> It just it exudes ruin in all directions, including nice backwards, phrase. unfortunately. It exudes ruination. Lego Star Wars The Clone Wars is by far the best of them all. You are depriving yourselves of greatness by not playing it. Also, play Outer Wilds. Hi, Rags. <laughs> Hello. What I hear is a good one, and that's also apparently a very good thing. Don't throw popcorn at the screen, please. I have to clean that up. Oh. I'm not throwing it. I'm eating it. Oh, uh, what kind of popcorn? Just butter popcorn. I've got... Um, I buy that Amish country stuff. It's, I just eat it plain. You know, it's, it's okay. a decent sort of snack to have here and there, but no butter or anything on popcorn it. Popcorn is a good snack, honestly. It's a, it's a surprisingly good one. I'm a big fan. I like my pop. I like my corn popped. That's how I like my corn. Yep. Likewise. Which is better, still alive or once you gone? What's the second one? Once you gone. Once you, I prefer once you gone, but I mean, I think still I alive is still both. a classic. I don't think I could choose between them. I mean, they are both fucking great in every way, right? Like. Yeah. Uh, what do you think, Fringy? I don't. I don't know. What are those? Credit the, songs for Portal. Yeah. Oh. Um. Hmm. I mean, I really like the second one. Yeah, probably be the second one. The first one is eluding me though at the moment. Still alive. Uh. General just yep. like, oh shit, GLaDOS isn't dead at all. Yeah. 
I like the second one. The second one's really uh is um much more of a layered that song. One... Like yeah, this one seems like something it's... they made to have some fun as as a thing, and then the second one felt like it was like we got to make another song. This one's gonna be super produced and not in a bad way or anything. It's, uh, I like them both though. You know, I also like the uh, the turret symphony that gets played. Hmm. Yeah, that's cool. The turret sequence was neat. But, um, my favorite line, I think, from anyone is from any of them is, um, "Remember how you killed me? How you uh, broke pieces off me and then threw each piece into a fire." It's great. It's very I mean, funny. I just, I just love Glados as a character. A lot of her dialogue is great. Yeah, oh yeah, Glados is fucking um, awesome. I I like Portal 2's just main soundtrack as well. I mm -hmm. uh, I really like it. It's an interesting um. I don't know what genre it would be called. I guess it's 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 all electric, but I don't know what you would call it. It's, it's neat. got that really distinctive synth lead that's kind of yeah. distorted, I guess. Yep, I really like and the that, um. That game more than yeah. many just uh, feels like it feels like it pops out to me in terms of man, the dialogue is so fucking well written in that game. It's so sharp. Wheatley's got so many great lines. Glados and um, Cape Johnson. Johnson. Yeah. There's so many what a good cast lines. in that game as well. It's an incredible cast. I, just the, the, there's so many funny things that Wheatley says. You remember when you open the door? Ah, ah! Oh, you look terrible. I mean, great. You look really good. <laughs> he just starts My favorite. Like, don't panic. Don't panic. <laughs> the favorite Wheatley line has got to be, uh, "Let there be light." That was uh, God. I was quoting there. I was quoting God. <laughs> Seriously, it's like every line, uh, funny as fuck. And then, um, his, his, his four-part plan, and then part five, booby trap the stalemate button. It's, uh, I what remember, a great I mean, idea to have the edit. It's weird, but that's one of the moments I remember best from just all of the time I've spent playing video games is when, um, they have it all at the same time announced, this is the part where you die. Oh, yeah, this is the part where he kills you. Yeah. Well, yeah, what was it? He, he said, like, um... Fan, more hmm? Hmm? Well, no, it changes based on POV, right? Because, like, the achievement is, this is the part where he kills you. He says it's the part where I kill you. GLaDOS says it's the part where he kills you, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you have the chapter on screen. And, yeah, it's just really cool. Which, um, the dynamic is, is really... That's, like, one of the only times I feel like achievements are implemented in such a way that it's almost like it feels like there's awareness of them popping up and saying what they'll say in the bottom right. Or yes. in Xbox's case, it was uh, top middle, right? Or bottom middle? I can't remember. I think it was, it was top, top right. right. Oh, okay. That's what I played it on, so I should know. Because they got all them achievements, getting so many. Oh, yeah. I'm so good at games. Achievement hunters, unite. Even hunters hunt versus bully hunters. Who would win? Achievement hunters, because they're positive. Damn. Um, how about that super well-written trial with the avatars? Everything to do with the fucking Egyptian gobs. Gobs, yeah, I said it. It's terrible. <laughs> yep. Pain. Sea creature of the day, the giant phantom jellyfish. Yoinky sploinky. Giant. What was the giant? Phantom jellyfish. What, what, phantom jellyfish. Let me get you a picture here, this lad. Hmm, interesting. All right, let me post this. With a fucker boingo. Boingo, boingo. This came up for me when I was looking at it. I don't know if this is like accurate, but kind of scary. That looks like a different jellyfish. Oh, that's fucking huge! I was looking at that picture for ages and then I noticed it's the diver. Oh, yeah. yeah. Are you sure that's real? But that's how I introduced that. I don't I'm know. Vaguely aware of these existing before. I think they're real. I don't think that. I don't think Mollers is real. I don't think there's jellyfish that big. I think there are. I think I there are. Think so. 
big ears. Maybe, maybe, uh, jellyfish. maybe the jellyfish is just a lot closer to the camera. The lion's mane jellyfish is the among the hang on. It's the largest among the jelly species, with the largest known specimen across 120 feet, 36 meters from its top, from the top to the bottom of its tentacles. Well, there are jellyfish that big. Well, is that a jellyfish um, bigger than that? So it looks like a lion's mane jellyfish, but I'm thinking is 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 because that looks like a like a YouTube thumbnail. That that picture, or they're using that picture for it, but I don't. I don't know if this is legit or not, because that's just so big, you know. Well, yeah, well, it's thirty six meters had, across. It's the biggest specimen. Jay's, uh, what well, just it's like, dead. Like, I don't uh, think yeah. that that's thirty six meters across. No, I don't think it's. I think that, that it means it gets bigger than that. Yeah, I think that that. Compare how many people tall is that? I guess is the question because I don't think it's. Uh, I don't think it's that many. I wonder if you could eat it. Maybe like a little at a time. Yeah, give it a go. But try it not all at once. <laughs> yeah, no, probably not the whole thing at once. Just I mean, it's like as a... Now, Movie Bob could. Movie Bob thinks that this jellyfish... That's an average size, uh, a small meal for an average person, eh? Yeah. It's an average jellyfish meal for... <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Uh... He goes to the pet store with the fish. Do they do do a bit with it? If you wanted more, that's understandable, but I can't say it was forgotten. Huh. Are those song lyrics? I'm assuming it's referencing Moon Knight, because he goes to the pet store with the fish. Maybe. Um. Okay. Uh, do you guys think that there might be a third unidentified personality, one that would account for the date and maybe even the extreme violent parts? Account for the date. The, the time date he missed. Three days. The time he missed the date. Yeah. yeah. Well, but like we wouldn't that be accounted for by Mark anyway? Yeah, I'd say so. But yes, there is a third one for sure. Definitely a third one. But they weren't that curious to see who it was. No, they left him in there. <laughs> <laughs> he was trying to get out like the others, but they were. Yeah, they weren't really having much of it. Mm-hmm. Really sucks. Moon Knight is my favorite superhero. I'm hearing that from different selections of people, that there's lots of potential. Moon Knight's cool. Yeah. He's like a knight from the moon. Mm-hmm. Knight from the moon. Fuck, Mary kill. Moon, moon Knight, Coom Knight, Noom Knight. Also high rags. Well, we're fucking Oscar, so we're gonna be fucking Moon Knight. We're gonna marry Coom Knight, because he can provide all the Coom. And what's the other one? That's a, that's a wise decision. Yeah, I would what marry was the Oscar Knight. What was the, the I think I would was, too. Third was Doom Knight. Doom Knight. Doom we Knight that one. Like Noom Knight. Yeah, we Noom killed Knight. Noom yeah, Knight. Noom's dead. Um, I guess I would fuck Coom Knight and marry Moon Knight because Coom is yeah. he is the Coom Knight. So if you're gonna you fuck someone, it, it, Coom should Knight. The, it, it should be the Coom Knight, really. Also and I think rights. that checks out logically. Hello, hi. Mola, would you be interested in streaming Lego Lord of the Rings or even Shadow of War? Uh, yeah, sure. War of Shadow. Why not? That seems like a... What is this? Hippopotamus... Who are Hippopotamonstrous... <laughs> equipped Orlophobia. Probably not pronouncing that close to correct. But, um... Really? Hippopoto monstros equipedeliophobia. Isn't that the fear of big words? Is it? Maybe. Well, let me highlight it. Man, that I'm seems like a, a cruel way to name it. It is, is uh, a joke? yes, it is in an ironic twist, the name for a fear of long words. Wait, really? Hmm. Yep. Oh, no. I think they did that on purpose. English. Oh, you so silly. 
I was like, I know your diagnosis, but you're not going to want, you're not going to, want to go to, you're not going to want me to tell you what it is. You have a fear of long words. Well, at I diagnosis, guess... they were already tensing up. I guess, you know, you could just, you could just say it to them in small words. You could paraphrase. Oh yeah. Like the, the world's deadliest joke, the Monty Python sketch. Oh, that's a fun one. Uh, wow, the cops want me to be explicit about who robbed the store, but subtle about the nature of their investigation. Hypocrites much? Kappa. I'm confused on what this is referencing I'm a little exactly. confused, too. Yeah, I'm not well, sure sorry. what you mean. What if, if I knew I had to feel sometimes, Harry. What if Cheetah became Killer Croc? <laughs> well, maybe she'd be better what off. If If Cheetah became Killer Croc, Killer Cheetah. The first episode of Moon Knight showed so much potential. Oscar Isaac acted very well as Steven. There was mystery and intrigue around what was going on with Mark and the secret identity, and then it went cartoonish sad. Uh, it was a bait. We were legitimately interested in the first episode, and then it went downhill pretty quick. Uh, and now we're here at the bottom. Um, are we really hearing the It's a Dumb Superhero Show in a post-Daredevil timeline? Not that it's perfect. Seriously, you can write a superhero show without it being lame and dumb. It can be done well. Um, it's, it's a common well, defense to be like, oh, come on, it's absurd. It's a superhero thing. Why are you getting well, so... It, uh... it's, it's funny you say that, because it's a common defense while people will also go like, wow, look at how mature and, and you know, like, and how deep and everything that... But it's you're right. Like it you compare it to way, Daredevil. You compare it to Daredevil, where it like does take itself seriously, and is meaningfully trying to explore character. Um, and then you compare it to what, because that's kind of the thing. It's almost um, I don't really like the other uh, Marvel Netflix shows, but at the very least, those those ones, despite the fact that they were actually building up to a crossover event, very much felt like they were trying to be their own thing, for the most part, anyway. Um. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I am glad, though, that at least there is the sentiment it still seems to be around a lot that's like, well, Daredevil is at, like, the top, though. Like, nothing's nothing's approaching Daredevil. And, like, even among the people who like these current shows, it's still like, yeah, but Daredevil is, like, peak um, Marvel TV. Damn, I get worried about what they're going to do with that character. No worries, Fringled. Me only joking. And then they got in brackets. Well, or not brackets, quotations. Maybe this is the same person. Ah, uh, jeez. I don't know. Hope you guys view Egyptology videos to learn intents. Maybe I will. Well, I'm, I'm not going to go stuff. out there to learn. I'll just. I mean, use I'm, my I'm mostly going to try and be fair to the show. They can do whatever they want theoretically with the Egyptian gods, but. Uh, oh yeah, it's. It's mm, yeah, you know. Yeah. We'll see. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. How long until they introduce the Christian God? I think did we make jokes about that? I did. I said uh, that was one of my really jokes. Funny. Yeah, I said yeah, they should be uh, they should uh, they should be ballsy and say that in the MCU the Christian God exists. Well, that's one of the things I guess they're going to have to confront sooner or later, right? Like in a world like the Marvel Universe where Norse gods and all these gods exist, the how gods does that affect Egyptian religion? Gods are real. Well, yeah, just how does I that affect the, people's perceptions of, of religion, or are we just not interested in exploring cause, that? Because what's interesting is that essentially means that the god who is worshipped more than anyone else, because if you want to stretch and say that the, the Jews, Christians, and Muslims worship the same god, then that means that the most popular god, in a sense, is actually, they are the ones who got it wrong, it was actually all the other ones who kind of got it right. Which you is say funny all the other ones, about, there's yeah. going to be like bazillions or whatever, right? I don't know how many gods there actually are, how many faiths, yeah, not, but... Not well, if you were to... Because I'm pretty sure Hinduism has like thousands of gods. Oh, I'm sure um, they'll make their entrance any day now. Wow. Well, I'm just, I'm just imagining that. God they're and Jesus actually joining these members of the Avengers like Thor. You say they're not going to do that. 
It would be really no, funny. There's no, there's no way they're going to do that, right? Like that would there's be. There's no way they'd we... say the Egyptian gods are canonically real. Well, well, no, but I, I, I can definitely do that because these are like dead. Keep forgetting that Moon Knight is part of the fucking MCU. Oh yeah, like the aspect of no one, no one, there are no like followers of well, that religion anymore, so they want to avoid. Yeah, it. not really. Maybe there are a handful of people, but like, there's nobody who's like really observing any of these religions. I like. Could you imagine if they actually like? included from current be, religions in, in there that would be insane Imagine it'd be they funny wanna, but i mean yeah, it would be really like, funny they want to respect everyone's beliefs they have the the atheist god of flying spaghetti monster the atheist god no yeah. science it would no remember it'd every atheist is their yeah. every atheist is their own god remember well remember in south park they'd say oh my science you know that's that's what it is oh my science oh science. my science i could i can see that being in um... my child a Guardians <laughs> film, like casually, that there's just this big ball of spaghetti in space that maybe even makes yeah. some noises, and they're just like, what? Like maybe not even addressing it, it just goes past a window. <laughs> it's just a little spaghetti guy. Hello, I'm the spaghetti monster. When I was young, my I'm... grandma would call my bionicles critters. It's a very wholesome childhood memory of mine. <laughs> that is wholesome. Do y'all have any? Wholesome. Special memories of family similar to this, da -da -da, similar to this, day long and high ranks. Do we have happy memories with our families? No. <laughs> they, 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 so I'm assuming or they're talking about relation to terminology things. Yeah, because like in my school and my parents kind of did this as well. No matter what you were playing with, technology-wise, they would call it your Nintendo. Um, no, of course, yeah. You could be playing with PSP one, yeah. and they'd be like, get off your Nintendo, and you'd be like offended. <laughs> it's a PSP! <laughs> you idiot! Get the fuck out of my room, I'm playing Minecraft. I mean, they're, they're probably, I think they called every Pokemon Pikachu at one point, when that was the thing that was kind of coming out, and I had or mentioned it. Or mistaking Pokemon for Digimon, back when Digimon was a more popular thing. Yeah. I, ooh, that would be a that would be an interesting um like little which is which sort of thing if somebody wants to arrange it is this a Pokemon or a Digimon because oh, there's so I think many of them now that I like so legit many. don't I know so few of the I I know a lot of like I know all the original Pokemon and I know a lot of the second gen ones but after like after the I was like out of Pokemon way before they started really getting into a bunch of that so I legit I think don't know. actually yeah the more you because I'm pretty much now up to like phase not phase gen three maybe four i think there are some i'd remember from four like bidoof i remember bidoof. there are it says there are eight generations of pokemon right now yeah i think there are about 800 different pokemon at this stage um so i i i know maybe uh, reliably an eighth of that <laughs> i guess but as far as digimon go i know oh, very yeah, few digimon wow. Very few Digimon. I know basically no Digimon. I was never into I, it. Yeah, I, I never got into Digimon. I saw the show a couple times as a kid, and you just sort of pick it. It's just random internet knowledge. You just sort of pick up that a thing is a Pokemon or a Digimon. But that's kind of it. Yeah, Tamagotchi in America, right? Yeah, we did. We had them yeah. as well. No, they were all over the world. I remember Tamagotchi. Everybody had one of those. I think school, there was. But you weren't allowed to play with your Tamagotchi at school. Like, they didn't want you to do that. So people would just, like, sneak around to find ways to, to get to play. So um, there was a Tamagotchi that was for Digimon that we had. And it, it had the little walker thingy in it where you're supposed right. to take steps and it would simulate you traveling and then a random uh, an event would occur. It's not random because I was. I was a smart lad when I was young, and I knew that I could bullshit the game into hurrying up to the next thing if I just shook that yeah. bitch, um, and it would bring you to a certain fight or whatnot. Um, anybody, I actually let me give you a picture. I, I only my Bakugan reference is Barbuda, Barbuda when they did the the Barbara Streisand thing in South Park. That was Bakugan parody, right? Oh, what's that? Is that yours? Or was no, that that's yours? just one I saw on eBay. That was ah. That that's what it was. I I just remember the, the kind of the look at it. I th uh, look of it. I think mine looked different from that. Mine was uh the screen was more prominent on it. Um, are you talking about? Let me see. I think I found it. Let me. Is it this one here? Let me post it for you. 
Was it was it that one? No, actually. Hold on. Let me let me see if I can find. Was it a, was it a Digimon one? It was no, it was it was Tamagotchi, but oh, okay. they look, he was a, yeah. Okay. I, I, it, they look like this. This is what they look like. Yeah, I always looked like that. Yeah. Oh that's yeah, the that's, one. That's, yeah, the, that's, right. yeah that's, that's the yeah, that's the original that's Tamagotchis. Yeah, that's what they generally are. But and I guess they made a bunch of there are Tamagotchis of all kinds of stuff, like Digimon and there's probably a crap load of other things. Oh, do you guys remember scanners? No. Did you give her No, no, not scanners the movie. This is scanners with a Z fucking pleb so scanners <laughs> was a it was in that big the the big age of little mini handheld game thingies with the shitty displays scanners was a it was a barcode scanner uh toy oh. and that was it that was its um that was its uh, it's its thing right that was its shtick you would scan barcodes on items and you had a chance to get an item or to get like a monster that you could have as your own or you or to fight an enemy monster. And you'd go around. Yes. I remember I'd have a scanner and I'd go around the house and I'd find every goddamn product I could. And I would scan all of the barcodes to see if I got something. This is and, the one I had here. Uh, let Oh, load. Load, damn it! Load. I don't know why it's not loading? Load. Here, I, I will post it. I will, I will post a picture of what they uh, looked like for me because this, this isn't. I had this. Yes, yes. I had the ones on the left. I didn't have the commander. I think I had the red one. I think. I think I had the blue but, one. Yeah. So one of the thing, the reason that. Um, I stopped. I don't. I actually don't know why I stopped. Maybe it's just I was a kid, and eventually you just fall out of love with old toys and move new ones. In order to heal your scanners monsters after fighting and whatnot, was you had to scan specifically a barcode of a Radica product, and Radica is the company that makes this, and so Radica would provide a barcode that you could use to heal your monsters now i being not a particularly smart lad at the time at least in this regard because i was a smart lad i wore the barcode by sort of pressing the scanner to it and so it kind of made the scanner healing barcode kind of broken so i wasn't it was extremely difficult and basically impossible to get it to register the healing barcode to heal my monsters um the one thing I will say is that the scanners monsters were shit. It's like the most crappy, low tier looking monsters you could. Let me. This is a picture I think of. I'm one trying day. to look. At, I'm trying to get a um, like high def, like high resolution picture of the card art, and I can't find one. There, the the scanners monsters themselves were so shit. The they were just the lamest most <laughs> crappy looking nonsense they had no uniformity they were all just poorly drawn whatever creatures these are the ones that i remember they had um i don't know i don't really know how they were incorporated into the game but i had one with cards why won't, why won't none of these fucking pictures load you have bad <laughs> internet that's not uploading them because you're bad yeah rex did you have cards with yours yeah so i think it came with like a sheet or something uh but i'm not I can't remember. I think I had like stat cards or something. Also, there's a scanners wiki that provides all of the barcodes for everything so that you if you want to get into scanners in 2022, there is a scanners wiki that provides all of the <laughs> barcodes that you need for all of the um the, the monsters and stuff. If you want to if you want to play the game in, shall we say, a non organic way. I just um, want to remind myself of all of the card art, you know, I, I just remember... Yes, now that you show it, yes, there were cards, yes. But just look at the monsters, they're just so shit. I, I mean, disagree. I like some, some of, these, of them. Some of these are cool, yeah. Name, what, name three that are cool. I like the this, samurai this, this robot thing. with four arms. Yeah, the, 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 the kaiju looking one, and then... Wait, no, you, you got... Can I have a row and a column? Where Where is this? I'm just looking, I can't. Um, the four arms samurai looks like, one. Uh, King Ghidorah, but he's like, on all fours. Oh, I like the little like electric ghost on the right. Uh, 
Alt furthest on the right, bottom third row down. What oh. a what a journey we've taken. Bloat. I think that's a cool looking a... thing. Looks gross. What a journey. Oh, they have got names. Where's bloat? Ooh, mumster. Look at mumster. Where's bloat, Wongo? Left down halfway ish. All the way on the left? Well, the left of the three. Oh, though you're looking at the fir first image. Oh my god, it looks like Dr. Oh. Eggman. His little Whoa. machine. Yeah, he's he's funky. Goo -goo 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 -goo. Yeah, I don't I didn't I never saw these uh these red ones. I only had the green ones. Yeah, it was in this really long sheet. Uh, so maybe because they were part of like different, I think there were like three tribes friend. That's probably what the colors stood for, but, um, there were these tribes and, and, and cause I think I will you will forever had be allegiant to my scanners tribe. But do you see, notice how the cards that you posted, the green ones, they're kind of look at the edges. Yeah. Yeah. I remember you had so that red the sheet with the, the pre cut so that you could pull them yeah. apart. Yeah, and then you. What's would, that you, weird tree-looking thing? Um, Groot. And like near the middle, um, next to the actual scanner. Um, to the left, third down. It's Wilhelmina? like a pink tree. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, that's that. Her name's Wilhelmina, clearly. And there's Granger next to him, and he's just a guy with a pitchfork and a and a bowl hat. And yeah, I like. I love how he's just a guy. <laughs> like he's just a guy with a pitchfork and like a red vest, and his name is Granger. That is and then next to him is Electro Rock. Well, below him is another guy with like a mace. Tithicus. And then to the right is Mysteria. And it's this weird. Fucking You're right. Mysteria. The lack of continuity. Charm. Like they're just ran they, like there's no there's nothing unifying any of these. There's just whatever someone came up with that day. Yeah. There, there's like a there's a crossbow on four legs, and I was just like, what? What? what yeah, is... like it's. Uh, I think that's blast, the. Uh, bro. It's almost the uh, the understated aspect of what works. Like the Pokemon has, you know, like nine hundred, and there are some weird ones, but they all feel like they fit in that I like world. Like the Pokemon, that's yeah, just fucking a set of keys. Oh Dude. yeah, that one was cool. Division looks that's terrifying. What is going on there? That is Lockor, the key creature. The 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 keycher, the Capatron. Oh wait, is the that Capitron. actually the name of board? Where's that? He's a uh, top left across one. Oh yeah, that uh, was. Cool. Whoa, what's the actual? Top I like. Oh my god! Fuck is that? Look at his arms. Bottom row, number five, swarm. It's just a bunch of bugs. Are called swarm. Well, so and how come? How bugs. come the bottom? The bottom row, last one, the very bottom right. Cat Mando. There's nothing cat like about that. I no love cat. that as a name though. Cat, cat Mando. <laughs> Look it's at this. It. It's, it's not a cat, cat at all. It's this, it's this weird reptile I guess thing it that's made of jelly. To be a cat. I guess it doesn't what? need to be a cat. And above him like is Mando Gojo. What uh. actually is the um the one um on the right of the scanner at the very top? What is that a drawing of? What's his name there? I can't read it. What, which one? Right at the top, you've got um, you have on oh, division Pixella, Decapitron, Expiris. Fourth one on the top row after the scanner, division, Divis division. No one's heard me mention division several times. It, it, it oh, looks creepy uh, as fuck. Look at it. Can use Leo, but right back. I like the one that's just like a, a wood chipper. No, that's Excelbiator. Possibly. That's Chase's compost machine. Metal Sforge viewers will understand. So anyway. Watch Metal Sforge. Next super chat. Stargate does Egyptian gods better. That's probably true. I just haven't seen Stargate. Would you guys rather rewatch Moon Knight or Marathon all the semi-modern mummy movies? The Brendan Fraser trilogy and the Tom Cruise movie? Uh... Hmm. Oh. In Probably the Brendan Fraser mummy movies. I mean, yeah, but... Because at this point I'd just be like... 
Why am I being forced to watch a whole bunch of something? I guess with the Moon Knight one, I can make use of it as part of the the rewatch for uh, for Ethan. Yeah. So. I might just opt for that, like uh, pragmatically, because I do want to see the Mummy movies again, but for that recording. Yeah. Steven in this show might as well have the England is my city meme as his personality. Could you imagine having to hear that so many times? Oh lord. I mean, it's kind of crazy how much we uh, haven't done for his character. Like, yeah. There's a bunch of it in episode one, hardly any in two, and uh, it's just not really doing it anymore. When Arcane season two and or other Riot game shows are to come out, will EFAP check it out? Yes. Well, we'll definitely watch it. As for whether this coverage will depend on what we end up getting, you know. Mm -hmm. Also, I heard that Riot Games wants to make a new live-action series in the universe of League of Legends slash Arcane in the near future. Hmm. Maybe a different animation style and focus. Yeah, maybe. Why not? Wait, they said live-action though, right? Oh. Um. Yeah, yeah, they did. That'd be interesting. It could be. Yeah. What is your opinion on the Carl Urban Dread movie, and would you guys do an EFAP movies for it? I don't I haven't know seen if, it. I don't know if that would work for that movie. Well, um, not a whole lot to say. Um, I'm not sure actually. I would. I, I would. You, to be fair, I've forgotten a lot of it at this point because I saw it when it came out. Um, mm -hmm. I just remember being it was cool that he didn't take off the helmet. Or well, I, I yeah, think he I does mean, take it off. Uh, he puts it on me. at the beginning, but you don't see his face. So. I see. Didn't he fight to make sure that that was the case, that he kept it on all the time? As far as I'm aware, yes. That's cool. Um, Amit judges people based on their future crimes. Ethan Hawke's goons have guns, so Amit judged the goons and deemed them to be worthy of living, even though they're killing people. I guess it's okay when they kill for Amit. It might be as simple as that. They're releasing Amit and therefore they're good. Well, so I guess the thing is, well, I guess Armit makes sense in the in the no free will MCU. Well, not anymore, I guess. Yeah. Hmm. Is she aware? Like, how does her judgment well, factor in the Moon Knight? Can I ask you something? Project? Do you is there free will in the new version of the MCU? Uh yeah, I guess we have to assume that there is, right? And that's what well, creates the multiverse. Okay. So, how is there then free will? Because surely, if um. Every time there's, there's a decision that you could make two decisions on, right? Uh, yeah. Every time that, that decision is the case, like, um, surely if you then just split into two versions of the universe, one where you make one decision and one where you make the other decision, you as an individual don't have free will. You just... Well, have... I mean, I, of course, it depends on if we get... I guess when we talk about free will, it's more so that there was no free will in the MCU in that if you made a choice that was wrong, they'd kill you. Right, like that. It's yeah. just everything which that happened is very entirely yeah. orchestrated, which is different from what well, I would consider I in don't... the conversation of you know, in reality, do we have because like will? in in terms of free will, right? In in that case, there's no more free will if they kill you or if they, or if they don't. You're still making the decision. It's just in one of those two instances, it gets you killed for reasons that are entirely beyond your control. But in both of those, you're still just getting, um you're no longer really making decisions. Every decision is being made, and and the results of every decision are being played out. The thing is then, that if that's of... the case, why is it meaningful that you made any decision? Surely that's just, hey, we're deciding to follow the version of events where you made this decision, even though you made potentially hundreds of arbitrarily different decisions. We still talk every about decision can ever be made and will be made in the form of the multiverse, I don't even know what that says about determinism. Yeah, exactly. I mean, even if... I mean, it's not even so much as determinism. It's just that, in if we if we stick to the aspect that on like quantum levels, things can be essentially ran all that weird shit, right? And say that okay, things aren't technically truly deterministic. If you have an infinite amount of multiverses, then anything that is logically possible is, and you have an infinite amount of chances for it to happen. Anything that's possible is going to happen inevitably, and it will happen an infinite amount of times. I guess my question is right. Let's say you're in the MCU, and you <sighs> know that um, there is a version. There's going to be a version of reality where you just like decide to wake up. You go outside and you kill the first person you see. Right? You know that version of reality exists. Um, why does it matter if it if that is you 
or the other, or if that's a different universe, right? If that's clearly someone else, yeah. That's kind so of part in... of the problem, I think, is like, how is it that there's a universe where Cap just decides to kill everyone as an offshoot of when he's making his tea in the morning? Like what? Um, because yeah, the... at that point, it's such a different character. Then what's the point of even comparing the two? Like, think... why? How? Why are you comparing the two people when they're just? completely different in every way free will is meaningful because it is deterministic and it's like i exercise my free will to always make this decision that i would make because that's what i think is is best right um i don't like the idea that if in like the significant um decisions that i've had to make in my life that there are versions of me that made like the opposite decision potentially well every decision that's kind of why i'm saying it affects determinism in the yeah. sense that if Cap can, you know, we've seen everything up to that point in that table, and then he does this universe where it splits off for every single possible decision and micro change to absolutely everything incl that includes every possible thing you could think of. How could all of them be justified by determinism? And so, it, it, like, it, you know, when they're all wildly completely different, like, you'd have to have lived different lives with different upbringings, but we're to assume everything is possible. Everything did happen, and it created offshoots of multiverses. It, it kind of, I just, I don't know that it's compatible at that point. Because part of it's, the whole yeah, point with it's, determinism it's, is that we could look at your entire history and determine likelihoods for what you would react to situations, but if you're telling me, like, it could literally be anything. It'll be everything, actually. Like, so that's just throwing that out, then. It's just everything. Like I said, it, I think that there needs to be a complete reformatting and what effects determinism even has on a world that has a multiverse that has every possible outcome in it. I mean, if, if the multiverse is essentially and only things that are possible could happen, not everything is possible. I mean, I guess you could say it's... Can you even say well, that it's possible? Yeah, but yeah? the Ancient One said it's infinite. But so, that was infinite means that existed. only things that are possible could happen. Oh, you, right, right, right. I understand what so, you mean. Like that. Yeah. I, I guess. Um. I guess it depends on. Um. Would the universe? Would we have multiverses where just for whatever reason the, the like, fuck. This might be well beyond my capabilities to answer as a thing. Like, if there was a multiverse where just the chemical reactions and compounds that existed are just fundamentally different for whatever reason that may be. You know, and if, if that's the case, it'll be like, well, that's an impossibility in our universe, but in that universe, the rules are just different. You know, like, would would it be, when you say, like, an infinite number, it's like, well, what's possible? It's like, well, what does it mean when we talk about possible? Rules that everything's being, you know, yeah, used. Yeah, exactly. Because, as, like, for, like, as far as we know, for this universe, it's not necessarily, we don't even, we have no reason to believe that it could even have been another way. We have no reason to think that. Wow, like, that's, that's one of those challenges. Time and all. We, it, it could have, it, it's just an, an intrinsic aspect of reality that is just beyond yeah, us. Yeah, and, and the hard part as well is that because we don't know what happened before the Big Bang, it's like, it was really hard to, it's really hard to say what could exist beyond what exists, you know, like there is, there is what exists and it's very difficult to answer if there is anything beyond that you know because and and part of the problem as well is i guess when we're you know we're part of the universe it's kind of i don't know how we think about it being you know different right like i don't, I don't know how we would uh square that away like thinking of a universe where i don't know there is as opposed to gravity as like a core thing that makes everything happen that there's some other system because if there was some other system how how would it work you know what would it result in kind of basically impossible to think of or maybe it's not maybe someone has <laughs> i also still think that doesn't quite answer the question of like so if is part of what makes determinism uh foundationally solid is the everything that's going to happen could have been traced back the the, the multiverse even if it's only with things that are possible then would be a multiverse into, where the same not only can is... hang on, not only can things that may happen or could happen as a possibility they will. All of them will. How does that, like, that sounds like conflicting deterministic systems at the same time. Because if you have everything well, up guess. to Cap to having that drink of water or whatever, and then it splinters off into, like, you know, he drinks yeah, it real fast, it he burns his tongue, he walks off to go to the toilet, he does this, like, how, could, how can all of them be compatible? 
Yeah, if if the universe, tr if the world truly is deterministic, you can't have, you won't have those multiverses, or they'll all be the same thing. They'll that's kind of yeah, that's kind of where I was going. Yeah, about. what what is what is the difference between each of them that is the causal? Yeah, I get what you mean. Like what what would it, what does it mean for something to branch if everything follows a causal link always all the time anyway? Which is what the complication with Amit um, judging people for things they haven't done yet is, right? Uh. Well, yeah, because how does she know what's going to happen? Like, what does that mean? For, yeah, uh, to is, her? is it, I mean, is I guess we don't know if it's, if it's a lie or if it's just playing odds. And if so, then how could you, why, how could you have ever convinced? Some, that's the thing. They don't, they don't ever give the, an aspect of, he never explains why this is the case or why Amit should be worshipped or how he convinced all these cult people to follow along with him. Like, how did, yeah, there, there's just, we don't get anything for any of this. No, well, and, and to be honest with you, that's questions. another thing that the show didn't even try was like dealing with the fact that there yeah, is this try. ancient god that's um, able to tell what you're going to do in future and judging the morality of those decisions. Like, holy shit, that should rock your entire world if that gets confirmed as like an actual power Amit has. Like, it's yeah, legit. <laughs> but How they're not going to do it. Factor that. into your just the way that you exist in the world if you know that th that what you're going to do in the future is preordained. You know. And that there is a, a way of figuring it out, you know, what, how are you going to go through making choices or anything, you know? Mm -hmm. But we're not, we're not, we're not ready to ask these questions. Like we're but, not, we're not ready to explore these topics. In the same way that I think Halo was nowhere near ready, the show to even deal with the fact that she was talking to a clone of herself who said, wasn't it like our daughter? And then she, I was like, yeah. this show is not going to deal with the fact that this is unprecedented, horrifying in many ways that she's gonna fucking boop her brain well, and then we want to she, address it. Yeah, exactly. Her brain gets booped five minutes later. Maybe less than that. <laughs> uh... Also, hi Rags, Moolah, Fringu, and Jay. Hello. Hey. I forgot I was muted. Hello! Uh, I don't know if Rag is Rags not here. I missed I'm going to go and get some water to put it into my mouth. Right. Sounds like it's you and I. Very well. Um, I, uh, personally, for me, I prefer Night's Watch, Master Cheeks, to uh, John Halo as a nickname. Master Cheeks is funny, but I think I've uh, settled into John Halo. I was going to say, the only thing that I definitely would want to pick John Halo is Master Cheeks is fun. Um, John Halo, I think, better... Sets the tone of what Just we're dealing fine. with, which is yeah. a fucking bland, shitty, not uh, Master Chief version of Master Chief. Yep. Master think, Cheeks I is fun. Master Cheeks is fun. John Halo is like, yeah, that's that's pretty much represents exactly what he is. And it kind of helps with clarity because you can call him John for short, and that is actually his name, right? Yes, it is. Well, yeah, J Chief's name is John. Juan Halo. But I respect the Master Cheeks. Don't worry about it. Yeah, that was a good one. Uh, up, 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 up. Missed opportunity to take the piss out of the sequels. Um, oh, they're talking about... Mm. I remember saying that I thought they might, might have been referencing the um, Moon Knight. If you're... Uh, fuck, my brain's all over the place. Uh, Doctor Who... Uh, this may not be what they're talking about at all, but Doctor Who, uh, they're doing something with the stars. And the guy says, I just used an app for that. And, and it felt like if it if you told me that was making fun of Moon Knight, I would have been like, that 100% would make sense. But I don't think it would make sense production wise. Um, I'm back. Sorry about that. But, it, uh, but they're saying there was a missed opportunity to take the piss out of the sequels. I'm not sure what that was, but. Today is my birthday. Oh, another one. All right. No, oh, okay. nice. I'll believe it. Could I get a happy birthday for my favorite eldritch creature, Plague Doctor, and Sheba Dog? Yeah. Oh, happy, happy birthday. birthday. Happy birthday, buddy. Happy birthday! How far back was this? Eh, a last I'm... week, right? Yeah, it was just last oh, week. Oh, nice! That's not that belated. Uh, my name is JT. Really happy birthday in, for me, Fantastic, like a month in advance. They said immoralize me forever in EFAB Lord. You mean immortalize? <laughs> No, they want to be seen me. as a Immoral villain you. forever. Um, Immoralize me. Yeah. Happy birthday, JT. Give me the multiverse JT. version of myself that's evil. 
Um, high rags, belly rubs for rags. Oh, thank you. The good stuff. The first instance I could find was in episode 3. Start watching from 3323. Stephen talks to Mark without a reflective surface nearby. Perhaps it can only happen when one of them is in the, in the suit, but still. Um, I am going to take the moment just to check that, because I am actually curious. I'd like to know if there's an example of it. I suppose you could still escape this, no matter what, by saying, no, something was reflective in the area, trust me. Which is, to be fair, feasible. Um, but I don't think the but show easy. wants us to think that. I don't really know. Seems to me the show tries to come across as clever in how it's like, ah, you see this thing here? It's reflecting, which means now Mark slash Steven's gonna talk. Like, okay, but that feels like it would be happening at all times, probably. Um, so 3323. I'm not clear on, is it, is it like, um, literally DID that he has, or is it a uh, like some kind it's, of? It's, it is DID at least like on explicitly. a meta level, not in the show, but that's what they say in the interviews and everything. Which makes you right. wonder. Um, well, yeah, yeah why not say it in the know, show? If they didn't intend at all for it to be that in the show, and then they realized people were talking about it that way, and then they were like, "We should probably argue it is that actually." But we'll find out. The example they brought yeah. up, by the way, is when um, I think when when even is uh, takes control back from Mark when he's doing the fight, and then he gives it back again, if you remember. It's like, what's the reflective surface there that, that allows him to sort of talk or whatever? Because, um... Yeah, that's that's probably fair, actually. Unless, again, what we talked about, where he's strangling someone at the time, it's like, maybe their eyes are reflective. Yeah, that would be awesome. But this means... I think, I think you know what? That's good enough. I know, I think this the reflection moment... stuff is cringe. I wish it was just like voices in the head or whatever. Well, it eventually it would, becomes could, kind of they could, I think it bit. might be interesting if it was kind of un they could communicate or at least try to. It was very unintelligible, like a this this mumbling and a a a, a mirror was needed for clarity so that these two people could speak to one another like it was something that well, was like I the mean, other person was always there but they needed sort of some extra thing that allowed them to like they needed to utilize some aspect of the real world to communicate with the person who had the body that was interacting with the real world I mean, if it is literally just did if you have did you can generally i think hear the monologue or the internal monologue of like other alters um i'm not sure how consistently but i know that that can happen Okay, um, I don't find the mirrors thing cringe, I think their implementation is cringe. I would uh, yeah. happily have them able to talk to each other at all times, and that it gets more common and more overt the more time goes on, because maybe the implication is the walls between them are coming down. I'm not sure I would commit to DID. Um, I, I feel like the show needs a reformatting to a degree if we're going to be basing it on like a real thing, as opposed to some kind of supernatural gods of Egypt thing that's happening. And then... Um, I would prefer as well to have it be that we only ever show them in the mirrors as like a subtle thing. Uh, and then, like in the background, that he, he doesn't that. require that to talk to them, but you can always spot whenever there's reflections in, in places where his reflection's never seen as it actually is. It's always the other person who's controlling it and watching him or something. I feel like that would be way cooler. More a Mike Flanagan approach with like the zombie yeah. people in the background stuff. Just juicy thing for the viewers to enjoy. I find that um, this show has been trying to coast on the fact that neither of them speak very much at all when they are not in control. They only talk yeah. when they want to have them talk. It's just dumb, because you know for a fact that if you guys had had control of your body as far as you were aware, all the way up until like your 30s, and then some fucker just starts walking around with it while you are actively able to see that happening, you would be talking. Of course you would. So, um, yeah, lots of things you'd want to change about Moon Knight, probably. Um, yes, good citation. I, because I, I think that does, that one alone can sort of fuck the rest of the show. If you look up the Big Dipper, it changes over years, it shows the changes over 200k years. That's yeah, what I mean. They, I'm pretty sure that we have that just mapped out because people spend their whole lives on this. And you it's just, very predictable. Needed an app, man. Just yeah. 
Uh, there's a third option here. They could be moving Earth back through time 2,000 years to fit the star alignment. This is insanity. Yeah, that would... That would insane, yeah. <laughs> dude, where do we even begin with that? Um, uh, man. Astronomically speaking, the sun is responsible for time. What? What? what no, um... So you mean time our, time. our categorization The sun is responsible time. for I mean, time? I mean, day, you could I say mean, that the, the sun calendar. is a good metric for how we, because we go by days and then days to months, but and then months to years. Like, but but it doesn't, like, time is time. Yeah, it's, time's it's not beholden I assume to they mean how we have, like, labeled and categorized time. How we yeah. categorize time. Yeah, oh, yeah, sure, because I don't know what else we would, I don't know what else we could use other than lunar cycles and celestial, yeah, like, stuff like that. But, um, as for because the problem is, all of the stars, the of our, our solar system is moving. All of the other planets and stars and everything, they're all moving. The galaxies are moving. To rewind the sky, you just got to rewind everything. Like I, I said, you know, I don't know, I don't know how else you could possibly do it. That or an incredible illusion. Um, please react and talk about Hawkeye and Peacemaker. Oh, I'm sorry, you're out of luck on no. both of them. Oh, man. <laughs> it's oddly no, specific, no. both the ones we didn't see to fall. <laughs> no desire. Well, it's funny as well, because uh, there's just no time at this point. Um, I'm, yeah, no. We're not going to be able to fit them in, they're going to be left behind, because we've already got TV shows on the way, and TV shows currently running. Knew the MCU wouldn't have the balls to focus on how a mind deals with the weight of multiple personalities. Nope, it has to be some world-at-stake plot. Yep. Mm -hmm. Osmort said Idris Elba was bad as Knuckles in the most boring part of the film. He's wrong. Knuckles says a lot of things. He's just made, wrong. Said they made Wait, him dumb. Said that? Said they, they did. Okay, continue. He said they he made said him. <laughs> uh, no, I, I, who who is saying this? Cosmonaut. Cosmonaut. Okay. He said they made him dumb when he's really just ignorant of Earth's customs. Does he even know how to pay attention? Um. No, he doesn't. That is the, my conclusion from the film is that he is ignorant of Earth's customs and not stupid, and that's why I like it so much, compared to what I've seen more of Knuckles in later years. He's just wrong. Like, I, I don't know what to say to that. Well, I mean, I guess you can't be wrong in saying that you found it boring. I just don't understand how that is the boring part of the film, you know? Yeah. And Idris Elba was very good in the role, as far as I'm concerned. So the Emeralds are screwed up already in Sonic? The Master E and Chaos E are separate things. The M-E has the power to reverse the C-E. That's a change. Yeah, well, I, I don't know what the... I don't know the lore of... Like, <laughs> I don't know the lore of Sonic the Hedgehog, right? I can't answer that one. Um... Nick Cage for Shadow the Hedgehog? Yeah, yeah, I think that would be great. I think you got a lot of options for Shadow the Hedgehog in the, uh... You got a lot of options that could be really cool. Sonic didn't need to snowboard when he's that fast. Uh, I mean, I guess he could... action on the snow? Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know how Sonic deals with no walking, I guess it could cause trouble. Also, no snowboards walking. are cool, bro. Yeah. yeah, they're so radical and tubular. They're very super duper cool. They're sick. Why are shows with magic so scared of showing any sort of strain to indicate characters can't go max power all the time, or in this case, speed? Because don't think about it is easier. I mean, Sonic is... Uh... Does he have like a moment of if he strains, he can go real, real, real fast? I don't know. And he goes and yeah. shits himself, yeah. and all of the the weight he he now loses yeah. from the poop yeah. makes him faster. Yeah. Uh, I'd rather have bad crowd pleasers than bad shows slash movies that make me miserable and sour on the franchise, a la Halo. 
sure. I guess if those are the only two options, I agree. Those are the only two options. I'll but take they're it. Not. It feels kind of categorical if you make the options bad. They're both bad, but one of them is miserable and one of them is a crowd pleaser. I was Once, like, well, yeah. I guess I'd rather be crowd pleased than miserable. To, <laughs> kind of answered your own question. I don't know. I don't know. Here's the thing, right? Oh, um, bad and crowd pleaser um, can mean you just get a situation where, like, it's still pretty unenjoyable for us, but it just gets loads more praise for doing that. Like Mandalorian, right? Yeah, but that goes against Endgame. what he said. The, 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 the binary is that one makes you miserable, the other makes you is a crowd pleaser. So in this scenario, we are pleased. So we, we specifically we, we can be pleased, pleased by, by crowd pleasing well, moments as well. At least yeah. they're greater odds of being happy. The miserable one sounds pretty, like, just categorical, right? It's, it's just going to well, be I guess, no I guess for me, like, the, the conversation is if it's um, really shit, but also a crowd pleaser means that the, it, it's the same, it might be the same level of enjoyment for us, but then just the no, discourse I, I is more annoying. I understand that. I assume that they might be talking about, like, No Way Home versus the Halo show or something where it's like, They've done something that everyone wanted to see and was ha kind of happy with, but the the way they got there was pretty goompy. Meanwhile, Halo is just miserable. It's, yeah, it's just sad. I was like, imagine, I guess the disc, the level of discourse and how how fucking terrible the discourse would be if you brought back um, Tobey Maguire Spider Man, Andrew Garfield Spider Man, and all those characters, and you had them interact. They were all like character assassinated, and it was all really shit. The discourse would be horrible. It would be horrible. Um, like, you know, the kind of movie where, um, that's where I've referenced this hypothetical several times now, but just, I feel like it would be a really bad sign if when Toby arrived in No Way Home, um, Ned had gone, Oi, who are you? And Toby just goes, Who am I? You really want to know? You're like, oh, that's what we're in for. Fuck. But they didn't. They didn't. They showed restraint. Um, Maybe like, they did in the multiverse. Do you like this image? Uh, got it. Insect Goku. Oh, beautiful! That's what that is! I see now! I saw it straight away. I thought that was like a fucking Scanners creature. <laughs> well, kinda. <laughs> yeah. I mean, anything could be a Scanners creature, so... That chair over there could be a Scanners creature. Whoa! Happy, happy Nihilus drew that. That is that is our beautiful ultra insect Goku. Jeez. Ultra incest Goku. All Ooh. right. Um, first time super chatter here. You should check out the videos on you by Jackie Chan, Dark Thor, e A.K.A. Film God. Insane tism in those. Thanks for all the work, fellas. Really makes the work hours fly by. Uh, I feel like anyone who calls themselves Film God. I don't know, maybe he's a nice uh, guy. I don't, I don't know. know. Jackie Chan, Dark Thought, I think they've done all the damage that they, they need to do to them. I can't find this channel. Look up Film God. I mean, they did. I looked up Jackie Chan, Film God, Dark Thought. <laughs> I've got a channel Jackie... called uh, The Fragment. Oh, no, there we go. There, there they are. Well, that is actually just their name. It's, the, it's not... Like the, this is the name of their account. Just oh yeah, Jackie Chan, Chan Dark, Dark Thor, Thor, aka, AKA Film, Film God. God. So okay. at Mahler's an unbridled rampage, hypocrisy exposed by Rags and Jeremy, geeks and gamers. Oh, this is the this channel is. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's gone under different names. Or unless it's a different one. Yeah, the, the people send us clips of it every once in a while on Discord. They they say a lot of crazy shit. Give me an example. Um, they I think they said that something to do with them, uh, me criticizing Disney for merchandising with um, uh, C-3PO's arm. Uh, they said the fact that I am um, selling merchandise of my own means that's a hypocritical argument when I have no problem at all with merchandise in anything ever. Uh, go Disney. I just don't like it when changes are made. This comes back to the basically the core philosophy of how we do everything here. We want every decision in a story to be serving some level of substance. If you change a character's arm color 
for no reason at all, and then you're like, yeah, but now we can sell different visions of him. I'd be like, oh, well, that was the motive. That's all that's achieved. That's not very good. It doesn't assist the story at all. Um, hey, I liked the joke. You probably joke. didn't recognize me because of the red arm. All right. I didn't even realize that <laughs> yeah. was uh, with Benjadig, but okay, yeah, if, if you like that. I thought it was funny. Okay. Um, oh, he did one on you and the Black Widow thing. It's unbridled, cata unbridled catastrophic take. Mahler and Black Widow, part five. Film gob exposes Mahler's MCU ignorance. I didn't know there were these like entire just channels that go over all of this stuff. Very interesting. I, I piss I don't off know. a I lot like of the... people. Right. Yeah. Especially the Snyder cut. That video pissed off. It's only wow, it's only seven and a half minutes. Um Oh yeah, I'm sure you got some some crazy stuff from this. I I almost expected that there would be an EFAP going over responses to this Snyder Cut video that you made. Um I think there was at least one or two that was sent. Um I mean it's the kind of stuff where they want to argue with every point sort of thing. And I'm always just like, um Okay. I, you know, it's like the, just the ones be... that you think are actually wrong. Yeah, that's I guess that's what I'm saying. It's like uh, there's there's a good chance I've gotten some stuff wrong and everything, but like when you, I think even um, because because now I'm this is going back to when Snyder Cut came out, but uh, I made um, it's a reference in my video to the Batman plot armor in uh, BVS when the radioactive shit. Remember when he hides under a rock? You, you, you yeah. guys remember that? Fucking great. Yes. Um, I'm pretty sure they even tried to defend that. They were like. <laughs> something to do with like the radiation would have gone above or whatever <laughs> um good times everyone in chernobyl should have just ducked hey it's worth giving a shot i suppose i like eggman's boyfriend uh i'm guessing i'm talking about the barista uh, uh, um guy Baristo? I don't know. But, uh, well, yeah, you wouldn't know. You haven't watched the film. Mm hmm Baristus? The Egyptian god name. Baristus. Eggman made a Limp biscuit joke and had Pantera playing, which pleasantly shocked me. Alright. Hmm. Greetings all. Did anyone else notice how well Fringy can impersonate Rags? In the last Super Chat catch-up, Batman and Streamlabs at 3 hour and 50 minutes. I... We, we put a ban on timestamps. <laughs> <laughs> we have to draw a line at the lore somewhere. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you can send them in, but... Just not gonna, I'll accept the animal pictures, okay? Cause, but otherwise, we'll never get through these... Uh, Lupa did an article saying Jim's joke about good people on both sides crossed a line. If you want a good laugh, go read it. Crossed a line? Whose joke? Sorry? On both? What? It said Jim's joke about good people on both sides. Was that, um... Who's Jim? So I'm assuming it's not Sonic, is it? Or is it? I, um, is the this Batman. the same Jim the from The Flash? The Batman, surely. Uh, was that in Sonic? Maybe it was, and I'm forgetting. I assume they're talking about Jim Carrey. I don't know if... The Batman, yeah. Jim Gordon. Jim Gordon? Doesn't he make a joke like that at some point in that film? I don't remember that. Maybe, I, I, I maybe remember them crazy. saying there are there are good cops. I don't remember someone saying there are good people on both sides. In oh, that. it it was in it was in Sonic too. Oh. Who's what crossed the line? What? That's <laughs> now I'm know. catching up with that. Okay, whatever. The second act of Sonic Two is an absolute mess of side plots and divisions from the plot. A bit. A bit of that Spider-Man 3 syndrome. Frangy, as our resident expert on Sonic 2, what are your opinions on this super chat? I, I, I mean, I, I can see that, um, but I'm not sure. Yeah, I, I don't know much for that, really. All right, well. I'm not hugely more money's worth out of you. Hedgehog 2. <laughs> Hedgehog 2. Yeah. Hedgening. <laughs> the hedgening. Hedgehog 2. I asked before, but I got no answer. Uh, if you could turn any series, game, or movie into an amusement park, what 
what answer and what would be the main attraction? Hmm. Well, I'll make an Amario one, and that seems like a, uh, a good choice, because there's a lot of variety in that series. A lot of characters. Smiling friends. A theme park? Oh my god, Dave Land! Oh, right. TV show. <laughs> we can go to Dave Land! I want to use the Dave toilets! Yeah. Um, what about like a fully functioning and safe rapture? That'd be, be cool as fuck. Yeah, you could have all kinds of thematic restaurants and beverages and fun rides and... Like 50s style too. Yeah. That's neat. Main attraction in that would probably be some kind of like theater and you have someone in control of it that isn't as crazy as Santa Cohen, but maybe dresses like him. That could be fun. Mm -hmm. Fun. Um, at J, I too enjoy Snap Cube. Snap Cube? Snoob. Also, have you listened to their reading of Sonic Destruction, part one and two? An AI generated Sonic script that has been a delight to watch them voice act. I have no idea what that is. Boom. Doesn't either. No. Arrived late. The Django jetpack bit was the oh, that was the, <laughs> the pettiest thing I've ever seen on EFAP. It was uh, we'll we'll be bringing it back whenever court needs to be adjourned on someone being inaccurate about the functions of mechanics in a Lego game. Every time. I will I yeah. will even uh write letters, contact officials, get advice. Uh, trash Taste X EFAP Crossover. I don't know, are they talking about Sonic at that point, or...? I have no idea. Well... Um... Look up EFAP on Wattpad by Artemis? Oh god, what's going on here? What? By Artemis? Well, it sounds like someone's written an EFAP fan fiction. Uh, uh, that's what Wattpad is, right? Always happy to inspire artists of. Look up EFAP by Wattpad. EFAP on Wattpad. Yeah, let me take a look. Let me open up a YouTube page here. EFAP on Wattpad. Um. Uh, I guess I'll. Uh, I can't. EFAP on Wattpad isn't bringing up anything. So let me. Uh, so that's V R three M one five. Unless that's an I. Let's try that. I, let's see, EFAP on Wattpad. I gave it a search, I couldn't find anything. Uh, I'm just going to put that into Google. What? Oh, Wattpad is a website. It's yeah. a creepypasta based off of the EFAP podcast. Start reading. Here it is. It's, oh, whoop. Let's go back. It, it here it is. Oh, this was the thing I think that was sent in through Streamlabs as well, maybe. It's under five minute reads, so we could save that for later and check out the creepy. Now that is, of course, if you if you don't think you'll get scared, if you don't think you'll get scared by it, because some people spook easily. So maybe be careful. You know, makes sense. Uh, oh my god, guys, I didn't take it seriously, lol. I just think it was a bit much. I mean, I thought it was funny. The ghosts of Christmas past, present, and future live inside the Sarlacc pit. Nice. That lines up, yeah. No, Cadbane is really gone, Irags. Hey. As Cadman, the, Cadman. Oh, hello. As the article said, he's dead until he isn't. Bing, cat, bing, cat, bing, cat, bing, cat, bing, cat, bing, cat. 
Good, good, Ben. Good, Ben, good, Ben, good. Good, good, Ben. Good, Ben, good, good. I can't believe we. It took us the end of that season to realize that they were just saying Boba Fett. That, no, I think they the slowly lyrics. start saying Boba Fett. Fett. They weren't saying Boba Fett season. at first. That's why. Oh wow! And then they just wow. That's that's so clever. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. Really. Whoa, Jay. Not all aliens look the same. Xenophobe. Damn. Yeah. Um, like Help an ask by viewer out. Are you guys just really sarcastic slash ironic or actually mocking people? I honestly can't tell, and the latter would make it really hard to enjoy the show. Not referring to the critiques, to be clear. We're actually mocking people. I don't even... I need to know what you're referring to. Oh, yeah, I, I don't know what this person is referring to. Like... Um... Sarcastic or like, what you, if you're talking about just saying someone's making a stupid point and you consider that mocking, I'd be like, well, I mean, sorry if that offends, but you're in there. Um, I think it's fine for everyone to do a bit of mocking of everybody, right? Oh, you're you're you're, yeah, you're, 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 I'm you're thinking smelly about and it. your face looks like a goose. Oh my goodness, you oh Mahler goose face. Yeah, I have been just. Yeah. Uh, oh my god, should we can we just quickly get opinions on this age old debate? What do we got now? I was reminded of this just now. Oh right. <laughs> um it'd be A, right? Yeah, I would assume it's A. I think it's A. If you inherit As momentum so yeah, but the top one's coming it's down. Cute... It's not the yeah. yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Um... Oh, yeah. So like, imagine, imagine just like the same scenario, but with like a literal hole, because they're they're just like holes, right? It's it's equivalent yeah, to a door. Exactly. So imagining a, a door moves around a box very fast. That's what would happen. Is a surely it's a yeah. I don't see why I, it would be. As far as I know, it's a yeah. Because they even the, show the like with the blue portal, no momentum. It's dark. Yeah, the dark platform that the cube. Yeah, it would just it would it would just yeah, slide BA, down. Right? Yeah, all it, all it would do is it would just slide down. Is there is there anyone in chat saying B? I want to I want to know why. Most people say A. Yeah. yeah. Uh, they say Muller is a long man, but Efap has never showed him making a long video. Hi, Rags. Hello. Hi, Frongo. Hey. Pick J. Oh. That was my, I was kicked. That was the noise of that. Yeah, I guess that's referencing the, the Heimerdinger stuff. That's a strangely popular take from him, apparently. Why? People thought it was an Don't interesting thing for him to say, but hey, they do. All wrong. All bad. No good. Jace, I hear you're quite the scientist. You know, I'm something of a scientist myself. No, that would be a lie. He's a fraud. That's what we learned, okay? Yeah. You're a fraud, Heimer man. Flips over table. Yeah, I don't remember that scene, but, you know. Should have been in there. Fraud? Uh, Jay, the light in the sun takes so long to get outside of the sun's core because it's absorbed and scattered constantly before it reaches the surface. Good. Hey, Mola, what did you think of the book series Inheritance and the movie Aragon? What could the movie and or book do better? I don't know fuck all about either of them, really. Hey, we were talking I about read, Aragon recently. I read the first two books, lost all my interest after the second book. Um, the first one I thought was deep. Now, this is based off a lot. I was very, I was a lot younger when I read these. I liked the first one. Really didn't quite like the second one, and I ah. eldest was the third, right? Asking us, Eric, there's Aragon, eldest, and no, let me double check Aragon, Aragon series. So there was Brissinger, yeah. I read, 
I did read the first three. Yeah, I read the first three: Aragon, Eldest, and Brissingir. Um, and I just, I just stopped caring. I barely, I, I just, yeah, just really didn't feel it. And I, and I think I saw the movie with friends at some, went to their house and we watched it, and it was just to make fun of it, and it was pretty bad. Um, yeah, really, yeah, I just really started i think i think they just waned in quality as far as i'm aware i just didn't bother i didn't even bother it's a series of four and when the fourth book was out i was like nah i don't care suppose you could ask jay but he most likely hasn't seen it also high rags hello i've seen aragon i was like a child though so yeah I mean, the, the one thing i remember about it is something that uh really annoyed me is that um, they like bait Aragorn's death in the final battle? I I literally don't remember how, but like I'm pretty sure like they show something. You think, oh no, did that kill Aragorn? And then they cut to like the human hero character waking up all injured after the battle. This is my vague recollection of it. The 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 thing I remember about it is very specific, right? And this is just the context that I'm pretty sure happens. I'm assuming must happen to justify the scene. I remember. Um, so yeah, wakes up after this battle, all injured, I, I assume. Resident Evil, the final chapter. And yeah. believes that, um, Aragorn died in the battle, because he saw, like, Ar Aragorn's death being baited. And then one of his friends is there, he's like, and he says to his friend, he's like, oh man, sucks, how Aragorn's dead. And his friend says, yeah, some friends can't be replaced. And then there's, like, a pause, and he says, but some friends don't have to be, and Aragorn's, like, behind the curtain, he opens the curtain, he's like, Here's Aragorn. It's like, man, you, you caught the fuck. You, what? What a dick! It's like, lol, baited you into thinking your friend was dead. You little fucking cuck. Just a prank. Also, high ranks. Hello. Is anyone? Is that? Am I? Am I remembering that accurately? Because it's been fucking. Gonna, I, at least I remember so little years. about this movie. I saw once that one time, and I, I, I don't know. I can't tell you. But yeah, I it think it's primey fat material. Like two thousand five, two thousand six. Came out in two thousand six. I probably saw it in about two thousand six, maybe two thousand seven. It was a two thousand six film. Let me see. Starring Jeremy Irons was in it. Ed Spielers played Aragon. John Malkovich, Garrett Hedlund, Robert Carlyle, Sienna Wait, Guillory. It was Aragon's dragon that was baited, not Aragon. I thought Aragon was the dragon. Man, I haven't Jumon seen Hoon this since 2006. Jimon Hoon... Haun... Haunsu? Jimon Haunsu? How do you pronounce his name? Oh, that guy. Jimon Hounds. Yeah, I do, I do not know how to pronounce that name. Sapphira was Sarah Aragon's dragon. I remember that because she was like blue, like a sapphire. That's the name. I don't think you should give people names based on the color of their skin. Scales. Oh, yeah. Okay, that's fine. I don't know. People, you can call me Whitey if you want. <laughs> That'd be hilarious if there was a dragon that was just really pale and he called it Whitey. <laughs> uh, we call the, the fucking white dragon Mayo Monkey. Like. <laughs> Mayo Monkey. You melanin demon. Oh. It has a the um it has a sixteen percent from critics and a forty six percent from audiences. Let me look up Aragon movie. See, like, just go to images. See if there's like screenshots from the movie or some shit. Savara looks gay. Draco looks way cooler. Oh. Watch you play Lego Star Wars, so disappointed. If you want to play a good one, Lego City Undercover has the longest Lego levels, um, with fun puzzles and a better open world. I'd recommend it. What I've heard is the best one. When he Very said, good about it. When he said horrible politicians, he put the guy who sold the toy to Mel on screen, not a politician. Why didn't he put one of the counselors up there? Yeah, it was, um, a bit of a 
mishap there? That's the one who said that there's no good people in the world of Arcane or whatever. Uh, yeah, that's right. That was the one. EFAP crew isn't autistic enough to be Sonic fans. Correct. We got some, some Sonic fandom. We had some autism. Bit, yeah. Watched the new episode and now severely depressed. Conchu is a lie. He is a tiny stone doll now just because he made the stars go brrr. A recap of Moon Knight Episode 3 from my friend. Also, hi, Rags. Hello. There's By the no... way, out of curiosity, because I know you were wondering, I was actually curious. So we have, I, I will include two pictures. One of them is Sapphira at the, at the cover of the book, the cover of the novel. And the other is Sapphira in the movie. And, and there is, and I'm not saying this is an adaptation thing. I'm just saying, the one on the left seems to have this very distinct sort of style, you know? And the one on the right just looks like, eh. I don't know. It just it's like a very generic, oh, I, I suppose. I you. And the, you know, it's a toned down version. When you say left and right, I assume you mean. Up and oh down yeah, top, top and bottom. bottom. Yeah, 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 top and bottom. I guess I thought I'd post them side by side, but yeah, the um. Yeah. But maybe I'd been missing. Uh... No, no, no. You will die. Oh, that is some shitty dialogue, isn't it? You funny though. Will die. <laughs> it is really I funny, will yeah. destroy you. Lies. <laughs> that would never not like, be funny to me. I like. I like. I look over to the chat. Yu Gi Oh has gone. <laughs> Yu Gi Oh has gone crazy. Rags is right. <laughs> it's like yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's always. I assume they post that thinking that's live. They just didn't realize it's not, right? That's how that works. They might just maybe they behind. don't. Maybe there's just a fucking sigma, and they don't give a shit. I don't give a. Fuck. They're just chatting about the things they're seeing right now, and in several hours they're gonna hear this. Me like, yeah, I am a sigma. You're right. Fair enough. How can you call yourself a long man when Quentin? I mean, Quentin has outdone with an eight-hour video. Shake my damn head, short man, bad. Hey, uh, we've done 30 hour ones. Oh. So... No, we still win. We're still uh, the longest. Streams. Hell yeah, they are. It's even harder. Britain has that longest to... all with the single video stat. It's true. I'm only, I'm only vouching for that because if we go by longest single, on it, uh, longest single video that is fully edited, then I beat all of you. That's the only reason I use that stat rather than like including part one, part two, and part three of stuff, because then Wombo, of course, you win. And well, we can't be we having win that. in general because I'm combining them. It's the, the joint award for longest streams and videos. I think it averages out, though. You're a Sony fab, we just win. We need to do a month-long stream. Yeah, maybe one day. Maybe. Actually, it could, it could. It would be fun to just like set up like a challenge to set up uh, an entertainment for viewers while I was asleep, and then to make sure that I was... I could that could be really entertaining. This is like something to set up. Yeah, maybe. You, you, is... do, you do that. Well, it's like uh, people have done that. It's like subathon stuff, right? It's a thing. People have done it. I didn't say it wasn't a thing. Hey. Sensing a great need to change the topic, I was looking through the posters of the Aragon movie, and there was this one very prominent one where the camera is very low. And it's looking up, and all the characters are looking down at the viewer, except for some of them who seem to be at like like. Did you know? Oh yeah, the, in the, the ones back? in the background. He's just like he's just not. He's standing he's, on an incline. Yeah, clearly he's like the 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 cube in that portal picture. But they're all looking down at the viewer like this, which is weird. Is that normal? Looks like looks like they're about to beat you the fuck up. It looks like that picture where you have the sad Pepe with the spilled. Um, oh Happy my Meal. god! It's a... <laughs> you, you should post those need... back to back on Twitch. Oh, I yeah. Uh... Oh, every I time just... I see that, every time I see that picture, Pepe, I get sad because I feel so sorry for. Yeah, it's well, great because I can people. just, I just Google sad day. Pepe falling. I want it to be okay. And... <laughs> oh, poor people. <laughs> poor, poor, <laughs> poor, poor innocent oh, soul. God. Oh, really? <laughs> the oh. shadows of a people. Hey, people, out. don't don't worry. So you can, oh. uh, you, I'll give you some of my fries. It's okay. That's right. We can get you some more. It's all good. 
There's more more nuggies oh, where those man. came from. It's so sad. There just wasn't much left in his drink at the time then, huh? <laughs> it could be really thick. Yeah, true. Um, <laughs> what I like about <laughs> the Aragon one as well is that most of them all seem like they know what's up, except the girl. She's looking a little confused. Look. Like, they're all like, we're gonna get you, and she's like, who's that down there? What? Yeah. You know what else is bugging me is that, like, I think the city behind them is just, like, at a normal angle. So, like, so all of the background on, and like, everything. Hill, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they're all, like, lean. It makes them look like they're all leaned back, rather than... Yeah. And it's just a strange angle to... Hmm. I would be fine with this poster if it was done properly. Like, I think they're all... And something else seems off about it. I wonder if these are all just separate photos that were put on the poster together. Because it, they don't all... Like, not, not just the ones that are standing upright. All of them seem like they're at slightly different angles to each other. I wonder if... Yeah. Um, I hate I don't this, see actually. how you could really... I could... I don't see how... And plus, a, a huge part of the poster is devoted to, like, their pants and part of their shirts. And they're just sort of up top and... It's the a more, very yeah. strange poster. The more I look at this image, the more I hate it. It's like you could do a sort of really cool, imposing thing of like um, the characters from a movie looking down at you, and that's the poster. You could you could get but some real cool stuff with that. Especially like a villain what? version of a poster where you have the villains well, and they have their the suicide poster in the squad. Good, yeah, like the good guys, and then they have a poster, right? But this is just all the characters. They're all just like. Nyeh. It's like they're all on the same team, which they definitely what the fuck aren't. Is like, what the fuck is death from Bill and Ted doing in the back there? Um, I just can't remember that visual. I can't remember that visual. It's been too long. Oh, well, I love those movies, too. They're great. I, I know I really liked Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, but I, I just, it's been so long, I cannot remember that what visual. Bill and Ted's Bogus Adventure, Never if saw that, that is one. what the second one is called. True. Never saw that Oh, one. you need I to just, see that one's fucking great. I just... I, I just uh, assumed that it was a uh, counterfeit. Um, just watch the first and the second one. The third one I've not seen, but I've heard isn't very good. The new one, I've heard it's... The new one's horrible. Good. I watched all three in a row. Um, curious. I think I ended up liking the second one more than the first one. And then the new one, I was like, ooh, that was stinky. Big stink. The second one was my favorite. So you must be right for liking it. If you want a funny ad, watch the Surfshark ad on Tom Scar's new recent, more recent video on his Tom Scar and Friends channel. Funny and disturbing. Also high rise. Oh wait, did he do another one? Or is um, that the one that Jay showed me? I was say, yeah, because we were the one you showed. I've been showing because that one's not that recent though. And fun thing about that is that recent like got taken down by the UK's advertising standards agency. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Lame, but I guess maybe very lame. Fair. I don't know if that actually breaches some kind of thing. Well, if that does breach a rule, I don't think it should, because um, it's it's just it's just a comedy skit. Like it's a dark, it's a very dark comedy skit that also advertises a product. I think that should be fine. Um, Fringy, watch Dark Space. They have a neat space vid or neat space vids. Oh, okay, interesting. I might do that. Shiba dog gifting a large yes. bone, bowing respectfully. That's the emote. Bow wowing respectfully. I'm listening to your Lego Star Wars review. Sounds like you're mostly walking and talking. Game suggestion. Rimworld. Hero bird person. Hi. Um, oh. I've, I've heard, heard Rimworld is very Rimworld. neat. Yeah. 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 I've heard Rimworld is quite neat. I watched um, Ambiguous Amphibian play a lot of Rimworld. That was very fun to watch him. He's... He's a fun guy. He's a mushroom. No! What? what a misunderstanding. Oh, also I learned that you can't say you cannot say shroom in the Battlefield 5 chat. Good. Oh no. Morning thingy. Thank God they banned that word. You don't know what people would be getting up to if that was allowed. Yeah, that's bad. Who do you think they're referring to when they say morning thingy? I mean thingy, sorry. Probably me, I guess. I guess so. Kick Manager J. Oh boy. Oh no. Sorry, Jay. The people have spoken. Kicked again. It's okay, they I understand. Us, they gave us money to kick you, which not only gets us money, it saves us money by paying you. 
Wayne's World, the movie, was made in a month. I think 28 days. I bet they put a lot less effort into that movie than, say, the Incredible Hulk movies. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah, maybe those were a, a, those were a, a thickly packed 28 days. Maybe they look, they look weary by the end of it. I'm not trying to be creepy, Mola, but your voice is amazing. Also, bonjour, rags. Bonjour. That's not that creepy. It's not the creepiest thing. Yeah. yeah that person asking Jay Longbone for farts is pretty... It's up there. <laughs> what? That wasn't, even, that wasn't even close. Yeah, there was like three or four super chats in the Falcon with the Soldier catch-up that were just asking Jay Longbone to fart. Um, specifically, they were saying, like, please break wind. They kept saying it that way. Probably because they couldn't say fart. That sounds like... Thing. That sounds like something like... <laughs> For some reason that sounds like something like people on Twitter would say is like a, a new alternative to touch grass, like break wind. <laughs> I don't know why, but maybe that'll be where it gets. Who knows? Um. Oh, here we go. Rags, it's gonna test your memory. I see. See what you think. Thoughts oh, on the boy. UFO scene in Fargo season two? That was one of my TLJs before TLJ. Peace offering. Hi, Rags. Hello. I remember that scene quite well in the parking lot. I assume is what they mean. Yeah, well, remembered. um, I I guess because it was teased at the beginning of the season, and then it just shows up at the parking lot and sort sort of saves one of our protagonist's life, and I'm like, oh, I well, that um, happened. I hate it quite a bit. I was yeah. I have no. I I don't. What can you even say? Yeah, I mean, I don't even consider this to be a spoiler. It's um, you have. The beginning of the season, part of it, it happens because a character gets distracted by seeing a fucking flying saucer. And that, to me, is something that I can brush off. It potentially is something he saw that wasn't what An it was. An inciting incident, or... maybe? No, no I'm not even going with that. I'm just saying that, like, I don't need it to be that we're dealing with aliens and they caused all this. It's just, like, he just went through, if you remember, he kills a bunch of people. So yeah, I can, in the restaurant. There's a lot of things that we can say that what It could literally have been a bird or a light that he saw. It, it doesn't have to be as serious, but then they later on have a UFO come right over the big battle scene and there's a character that's about to be killed that we really like, and then he gets saved by someone being distracted by the fucking UFO and it's like, okay, and then the UFO leaves. And for those saying, like, what the hell? I've only seen season one. Why is there a UFO? It's like, that is, we have described to you the totality of the UFO stuff in Fargo season two. It, um, I'm pretty sure the writers were asked about it and they said that they like it for the fact that it's like um, disconnected, crazy world, all things can happen. A lot of coincidence happens in Fargo. And it's like... Uh, but, but such talent. Yeah, I hate it. I was it just... Mm, that, was a, that was a very, very high-stakes battle in that show. And it's just... I, I don't know what the fuck they were thinking. I just... Uh... I would just go as far as saying, like, Fargo Season 2, um, there's a lot of character stories endings that I'm not a fan of. Um, especially because I was liking them along the way, and then they sort of, a lot of those stories just end quite suddenly and without a sense of narrative satisfaction, dare I say. Like, okay, I guess that's how we're ending it. Fargo Season 1, however, I very much love the ending. Basically all the characters. Right. Speak. Oh, what a, what an incredible what an incredible coincidence that we talk about that right after we watch Halo. I thought you were going to say because we mentioned Fargo season two earlier, by chance. Because we watched the actor in Halo, and I was like, "Who's who do I know him from?" And you're like, "Fargo." Oh, that's right. A day of coincidences, or two days. Um. My favorite character also dies as a result of this abomination. Oh, I think they're referring to uh, the Gearhearts. That was your favorite? I, I wouldn't say that um, that's, that's bad or anything, I, uh, in terms of a choice. I just, I remember preferring his brother, but um, I liked him too. Especially with um, his interest in like protecting his uh, kid, who keeps getting fucked over by the, um, the uncle and stuff. I don't know, yeah. Uh, Jay sees Hassan sitting in a tree. S T E A L I N G. Stealing. 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 Read. 
Have any of you watched Moonfall yet? Rags has. Yes, I have. I think Did, it would be uh, perfect. Forge on it, didn't you? Yeah. Perfect EFAT movie. I already know that would be perfect EFAT movies. I've only seen coverage of it. Like, I haven't even seen a trailer, I don't think. Um, though I did use clips of it. The trailer for, looked uh, fucking Kidel. entertaining. Yeah. I think it, it, we'll just do an Emmerich arc. He's, he, all of his movies are fucking probably perfect for you. Yeah. Movies. It's one of those movies that's so bad it's good. Also, hi, Rags. Hello. And with that, we have completed the multimedia medley super chat. Wonderful. Which have we? Interesting. Did, they, did that seem surprisingly fast or slow? Or? I uh, guess it seemed fast, but I don't know. Oh no, I think I think I might just be surprised because of how many tangents there were. Yeah, that took us six hours. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so now I'm gonna do the Denim's catch up catch up. Okay. Wings quote of the day. Uh Charles, ban any mention of the word lasagna unless it's a donation. <laughs> I thought we heard that one already. <laughs> he may have posted it twice because we didn't get to this yet. That might have happened. Uh. Uh, bonus. It is worth posting twice. <laughs> oh, bonus quote. I feel like society creates women on a pedestal, and it's a letdown for a lot of young men. Like, you see a girl that's an automatic 10, but you don't know she farts like a... <laughs> farts like a Clydesdale. Clydesdale? Clydesdale. Clydesdale. A horse. That's the, those are the Budweiser horses. The big old, uh, big old horses. <laughs> they How did that... They right. fart a lot. <laughs> I assume that any horse farts magnificently. Um, yeah, I I could imagine a horse fart. Okay. <laughs> I I I'd never yeah. heard of the word Clydesdale before. Nice. And something new every day about farts. <laughs> there is a oh, skeletal God. enemy in Tunic called a flema. I don't, nice. even, I don't even know what Tunic is, but a Fleema, that's a good name for, for an enemy, I think, yeah. Fantastic game, by the way. Haven't gotten so lost in a game since Hollow Knight. Very charming game it is. Cool, good stuff. Um, I looked at the Star Wars Reddit the other day, it made me sad. Yeah, that'll yeah. happen. Yeah. Um, I'm sure they're very excited right now for, uh, Kenobi. I know Hassan is the finale, but will you do an honorable mention for Kethel's performative art stream? Uh, I I think I mentioned on a different stream. I'm pretty unfamiliar with. I didn't see that before it went down again. So, God, um, obviously my, my the scope of my investigation were the the art relevance contour, the Danims, and Hassan Abay, who is uh. They're all still going strong, except... Wait, did our Elven get banned? Is he still banned? I think it was a temp ban. Because, yeah, he's the least deserving out of the three. But, I mean, I doubt they'll ever get banned for stealing content, honestly. So, Well, not right now. Maybe one day. Not until there's, a, like, a... Yeah, a real sort of a push. A reckoning. Yeah. Free. Basically, have you seen the Big Les show on YouTube? I know you're a busy man, but each episode is generally five minutes, and it has a great it has great Aussie humor. I don't think I have. So I have. But it sounds, it's very funny. It sounds like something that I've heard about. It's very um, very funny. Yeah, no, I haven't seen it, but I might check that out. It's um, it's big in Scotland. Is the Big Les show? Hmm. There's more time between now and Fallout 3 than Fallout 3 and Fallout 1. Fallout 1 was old when I played 3, but 3 doesn't feel like an old game to me now. Yeah, time be interesting like that. Yes, because we're, we're, we're that generation, you know, we're getting, we're getting older, you know, we more decrepit, yeah. and our old stays to be our old. The way it is. It'll be the 80s, 20 years ago, forever. Honestly, I think the LEGO games using voices ruined the humor. The games relied on prop and silent humor. It's just a weird movie now. I think you could make it work if you actually wrote things to be funny and had dialogue that was funny, but they mostly just yes. repeated the lines from the, the, the films, so I was just like, okay. 
and some of them were either changed or, you know, I I say this in a way, I mean it more to mean literally like they were butchered, as in pieces were cut, other things were cut, they were smashed together in different ways, and um, yeah, it had effects. Um, but I, I don't think that ruins the chance to be funny, though I understand the uh, the concern. Wait, I want Rags to hear my super chats too. Well, he's here right now. Yeah, I'm here. Um, yeah. Uh, Muller, have you ever played Lord of the Rings Conquest? It's a Battlefront-style Lord of the Rings game. Also, Battle for Middle Earth 2, but I don't know if you like strategy games. A friend of mine played the um, Lord of the Rings Conquest. I remember seeing it. He was running around as a hobbit trying to collect, like, command posts, and I was like, wait, this is like Battlefront 2, but with Lord of the Rings stuff? And he was like, yeah. I never got anything more than that. Was it good? Did, did, anyone, what, what, did anyone know anything about it? I've never played it. I just don't know anything about it. Hmm. Um, well, anyone in chat? I'll, I'll check out if you got any quick reviews of it. I'm curious, because I'm assuming it's not available anymore, or wherever it went. It's gone somewhere. There was even... um. you guys remember there was a, there was a Lord of the Rings MOBA game? Um, I what was it called? Vaguely rings a bell. Let's see if I can find it. Because I remember Guardians of Middle Earth. Is that it? Yeah, I think, and it's just uh, it's like lol, um, but with Lord of the Rings stuff. I wonder what happened to these things. Man, they they've done a lot with Lord of the Rings for games, haven't they? I just got reminded, They've yeah, done a the, decent amount of games. Got yeah. The Gollum game coming. Are you guys gonna play that? I don't the Gollum know game? I will. No, probably not. I just what the Gollum game? You know? Have you heard of it? It's 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 been announced for heard a of it, yeah. long while, but it's such a like you just don't. It's just hard to be like like why this? Why of all the a things? Gollum game specifically? Yeah. It's like hey, if it's a. Because in a sense, it's like you're gonna be exploring, solving puzzles, and moving through Middle Earth as Gollum. Like, I guess mechanically you can come up with a lot for that, but... But why? Yeah, but why... Why uh, Gollum? Like, the trailer's like, it's got this platforming and... Just exploring collectibles, all this kind of stuff, and it's just like... I think it's Gollum? Okay. Could be cool. I mean, I hope it's good, obviously, but it's just... it's Yeah, it's just very strange. Yeah. Um... Might be worth a try. E jangling. Brand recognition. Let me have a Nazgul game. See, that would make sense to me. If they did that, I'd be like, oh, of course, because Nazgul are cool. Y'all are cool. You could fly on your, your, your boys, and you could play co op with up to eight friends. Once they stop being probable, they take them down. Is the yeah? Because I I was under the impression that Lord of the Rings Conquest was gone as well as the MOBA. But um, maybe yeah, they're actually some money to support support multiplayer games. That is a cost. And then Battle for Middle Earth. Um, I remember seeing a friend play it, and I thought it looked neat, but that was about it. If Rags isn't here, I'm gonna have to resend these. Sad face. Okay. Oh, no worry. I'm here. I am Good. here. Good. I can hear everything you do. I hope Ranks doesn't miss the Wings quotes. I, I think he's heard all of them. I don't think we've read a Wings quote without him being here. You said them all? <laughs> yeah, I think so. I want Ranks to hear the FF Super Chats, please. The uh, FF? FF? Oh, FF? Fantasy? The ones about Seven? I never played Seven. I don't know anything about Seven. I don't know if what well, exactly they're regarding, but I think you've Mostly been used. I do try to make it so that everyone's here. Obviously, if one of you jumps out to get a drink of water, I try to avoid any that are directed at you. Um, yeah. At work in the theater right now, there's a Morbius showing with zero people in it. That didn't happen with Black Widow for at least a week. Oh, boy. That yeah. comment is both sad and not sad. <laughs> um, how is Morbius doing? Do we know? Um, yeah, I, I said earlier it made 150 million so far. Cost 75 million to make, so I don't know if they're happy with that. Oh well, I don't know when it came out. <laughs> so like, when, came out in the beginning of the month, I think. I think it oh, came shit. out on okay. April Fool's Day. Yeah, remember it's April first. 
<laughs> is that <laughs> when it came out April first? Yeah, it did. Yes, it did. <laughs> That's a really funny. The bastards. They did it. They uh, knew. They absolute, knew. Absolute mad lads. My full part FF super chats are mainly for Ragu. I mean, oh, while I appreciate that immensely, I don't know anything about Final Fantasy VII. I promise if I had opinions, I'd give them to you. They might have been about uh, um, a different one. Yeah, it says, please reread the F Final Fantasy Super Chats for Ragu. I really don't know which ones you're talking about, I'm sorry. I wanted Rags to hear the Final Fantasy music of the day. I thought he was here when, when that was read out. Yeah, I don't think he always checks them anyway. Like... I don't. So, I don't know. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry if... Hopefully the... the, the, the... It was the final boss music, right? For Final Fantasy... Ah, oh, damn. What was the last one? It was like the final boss theme for one of the Final Fantasies. Like I said, from my memory, I thought we had... Uh, you had been here, but maybe, maybe I missed one? I don't know. Um... Oh man, I'll have to resend these, lol. I, I'm, I, I mean, I'm sorry. I just, uh, I, I assumed that, uh, Rags would have heard the, because like, I don't know anything about Final Fantasy. I'm, I'm pretty sure Fringy doesn't. So, no, nah, I'm not. The closest. It's not one of the games one. I've played. I mean, I've played a number of them, but not seven. Uh, wait, Fringy is not heel versus babyface. This last year of watching EFAB is a lie. Um. What? Why the are you live high? You're in making. How could you possibly mix up? Are you high? Is it a joke? That's a meme, right? Maybe it, maybe it is a meme. Surely uh, it's a meme. It's hard to tell in text. There was a very clever super chatter earlier on that set a good example. They put Kappa in the text so that yeah. I can know. Slash S is also a very good one. Because unfortunately now I'm, I'm like, you must be memeing because mixing up Fringy and Az? I don't know about that. I don't see how that's really possible at all. Congrats to Fringy on his game debut in Thymesia. Oh, that's the, uh, I, I think I've heard about that. That's the, um, that's the, the game. It's, it's like a combat Ooh. sort of like a spectacle fighter thing with a, uh, where the main character, I think, is a plague doctor. I can see why they would connect you to this. Bit of a green color palette there. There is a bit of a green aesthetic there. So you're gonna sue him? Yeah, that's basically you. I think uh well the uh cause um Darkest Dungeon as well, uh the the Plague Doctor has sort of a green thing going on. I don't know what it is. I think it's just uh it I, it just seems like green and plague doctors go hand in hand. I think it's because like at this point plague doctors as a idea is more like in alchemy than in any real like any real sort of uh Are you implying that science alchemy or isn't medicine? real? I got rich. All of the aluminum, you could turn it to gold. You know how much money I made? Probably I I don't know actually. I don't know. A lot. Well that's that is good for you. Yeah. Um, incorrect game quote of the day. Imagine a oh, world Jesus, Raiden. That blew my ears out. Hmm? What did your mic just went floopy there for a second on my hmm. end? Not oh, right, yeah, it was normal for me. Oh, yeah, okay, not sure why that happened. Mic just, but nothing else went floopy because I was listening to music and that didn't go floop either. Mm, what kind of strange alchemy is this? Maybe it was your internet know. doing it. I came through weird. Maybe I don't think so though. What did it sound like, Frongo? I I can't imitate it. It was, it was like a high pitched. You could like, use adjectives to describe it. Yeah, it was a very sharp, high pitched, sudden, like abrupt sound. That's just how Mola talks. I'm a little offended, but I don't, okay. you, I don't think you're correct about that. <laughs> I don't know why you're getting upset at me. I didn't say that. He did. Uh, I, I said I was upset in general. It might be that I just saw a really. I oh, encourage yeah. Jay to say it with your alchemy. This is some classic no, EFAP banter. Yeah, this is what you pay for. Um, so incorrect game quote of the day. I don't know if these are supposed to be are they incorrect actual quotes or are they 
changed quotes from a game. Is that the idea? Why? Well, maybe they're in games, but they're just flat out wrong. Like they're not supposed to be there or they are out of canon or something like that. Maybe. So it says like the Anakin thing from maybe like like in the Qui-Gon Jinn thing that he says. Maybe Anakin was right about the Jedi. Like that's an incorrect game quote, maybe. That is an incorrect game quote, but I imagine they are just quotes that aren't actually in games, but this person is having a, a big a big they were funny. Inspired. So it says, Imagine a world, Raiden, free of cancel culture, where no one can call me out for my outlandish claims. A world where I can say the N-word. <laughs> <laughs> It's pretty funny. I like it. I like it. Have you guys played Mother 3? The JRPG that unfortunately never left Japan. It is a sequel to Earthbound, which you may have heard of. It's a story is the story is simple yet exemplary. I've heard of it, never played it. I always it, that's one it. everybody wants re released, don't they? And for some reason it just hasn't been. So presume wait, so is there actually no way to play it? Oh, there probably are ways to play it. It's just that it never got released outside of Japan, and like, it hasn't. And I think it was on Game Boy as well. So, and I someone, don't know what it was with region lock. Somebody could have like hacked into it by now, though, right? Couldn't they? Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure there are ways to play it. It's just that there are no official ways to play it, from what I understand. Mm -hmm. And it's been asked for as a port for a long time, but um, oh, and of course you need to translate it too if it's not in English, um. Yeah. Um, I'm convinced that at this point the terrible Spidey posters are on purpose. Legitimately, everyone who likes the movie also thinks they're bad. I'm not what? as familiar with a lot of the posters. I've seen them casually, but I don't even remember a lot of them now. I saw the poster you shared, Jay, about Doctor Strange. Yeah, that was cool. I like that poster. Yeah. EFAP movies G.I. Jane 2. Can't wait to see it. Oh. <laughs> nice. Did you watch The Goes Wrong Show? It's so good. Uh, no, I don't recognize no, that at all. No, I have not. Yeah, I haven't seen it. The Northman, Sonic, Unbearable Weight, and Everything Everywhere All at Once. April seems like a stacked month of movies. Yeah, it would seem That's that way. Good. Well, it seems I hear good things about the Northman. Yeah, yeah I have. Yeah. And uh, unbearable way to massive talent too. <laughs> Although one of the memorial services for Batwoman has it like official officially definitively been cancelled, or has it just not been renewed yet? Uh, I don't think it's been renewed yet. But I mean, at this stage, right? Like, if it hasn't been, you renewed never know. Yet. If they were willing to renew it before, I mean, their bar is not high. Imagine like I still hope. I there's still hope, yes. We have to bat leave. Imagine some super <laughs> hyper A-list rich actor was like, fucking adore this show, and I wish to star in it and produce for this show to, to keep it alive. Charles Dance. And he says, as long as I can be Batwoman. You think that would happen? Not only do... do you think I oh I don't I, I don't know actually if they would tell us the contract said, requirements. It'd be so he funny. said he he would he would do whatever it took he would you know write and produce uh, no no write produce star on the condition that he could play Batwoman. Do you think they would let him? I think if he offered them like all of the money, I I I don't I think they would be like oof you know because it would look terrible and it would. People would be, but oh my god, it would be so funny. And people would tune in. Yeah. People would absolutely tune in to see it. Mm. We would be on board. If you were Charles Dunn, surely you would just be tempted to do that. Surely you would just I be tempted to. I think he's doing to... real roles. <laughs> like, here the... well, he whoa, was in Ghostbusters whoa, whoa, 2016 whoa. and real Godzilla world. King of the Monsters. That's, that's not all the roles he's done. It is. That's that everything is he's rules. ever done. Name three other things he's been in. I didn't think so. Oh, I didn't no, let's have a, a look chance. at his IMDb right now. He was in I the saved King's you the Man. Embarrassment. He was. He was right up in that King's Man. He was. The King's Man. He was Man in Underworld, King. Blood Wars. <laughs> oh, we <laughs> gotta see Underworld. Yeah, we'll do that, don't worry. He played Pope Clement in The Serpent Queen. 
another legendary the role. Queen. Um, he played. And this is spelled with double vowels for every vowel. Hang on, near God. Ooh, um, you can't say that. In against the ice, I can. <laughs> I just did. Wow. Oh, he played the narrator in hindsight. I guess you don't really play a narrator, you just are the narrator. Unless there's a character called the narrator. <laughs> yeah, so... <laughs> unless the narrator is Charles Dance. You don't really play it unless you do. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. He played William Randolph Hearst in something called Mank. Neat. Oh, that, that's the film. Are you, is it good? Well, we've named now plenty more than just... Even you've counted your own point yeah, now, yeah, Jay, yeah. so it's all over. All over. Yeah, Jay. It's all over now. Oh, he played Charles Dance slash narrator in Show the Love. Charles Dance is a great role for him to play, to be fair. I would watch him star Charles in the story Dance, of his own the role. role he was born to play. Oh my god. Could you imagine like uh, like a, a biopic of Charles Dance's life where he plays himself as he is now, like from childhood to his current age, but just they, they don't do any like CGI or makeup or anything. He is just as he is now portraying himself as a child and then portraying himself as a teenager and then, you know, through the rest of his life. His mom is like carrying him. In her arms, but he's an <laughs> yeah. actual Charles Dance size. Charles maybe, Dance. maybe the breastfeeding scene took it too far. No, it didn't. Put, put him in a stroller. Fine. Suck on those titties, Charles. It's art. Do it for the love of the craft. Just, I've got like a haunting mental image now of Charles Dance sucking on a titty and then turning his head 180 degrees to look at the camera. Um, hey, Fab Crew, you guys are solid guys. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, I, I am solid. solid. I am solid. Today I learned I'm a quarter Welsh. Let's make the Isle of Man good media island. What is that? I mean, I'm, I'm okay with bad media being a uh, around. Okay. I, I feel like I, the Isle of Man good media island would still have a little portion somewhere for like the shitty good ones. Good media island. Where the EFAP headquarters is located. And our power core. Subjective voids try to steal. But this is whole storyline they did back in the we, we must destroy the subjective voids. Saw Chud's VOD on your EFAP. Uh, seems cool. Some of his chat, nothing to do with Chud, were trying to character assassinate you with guilt by association. Said EFAP was not funny, cringy, mean, and boring. Whoa, whoa. Guilt by association is one thing, but saying we're not funny? Really, really Banish them to down. the Nightlands. The Nightlands? The Nightlands. The, the Daylands are like noticeably thing? better than the, the Nightlands? Or? The Nightlands are a, are a concept from a little YouTube series that I've been watching called The Refugium. The Refugian? The Refugium. It's, the a, refugium. it's a word meaning... Um, refugium is a word meaning the... Um, a place that holds the last surviving members of a species that used to be more widespread. Neat. So the last surviving member of a species. I feel like that last part is not necessary. The, the last, um, well, as in the last uh, surviving group. I mean, technically, right? If you oh, just group of a... Yeah. So like the, the, the small the population of a species that used to have a much larger population spread over a greater portion of the world that died out everywhere else but um, are retained in one place. The word that you're probably not going to find many places to put in conversation. Maybe if a conversation is really annoying, you could be like, we've reached the refugium of my patients. You still got some that would left, mean that you do. That would mean that you have, you have patients, some, yeah, but this we, is the, yeah, only, pa this there, is the yeah. only place you have patients left. You got a little patients left, yeah. I see, we, I see. There used to be a more widespread patient. There used to be more, but now we've Not reached dead. the place where there is only a little bit left. Um, that's it. You're good. Yeah. Uh, that's it's it's that's fine. Is there's a lot of people in in Chud's chat that would have uh, definitely not partaken in the efaptum. Um, but it is interesting how many of them wouldn't have seen like even a clip, and they would be certain of a lot of the uh, major elements. 
It took us a lot of movie Bob exposure to know that he's a terrible human being. We didn't just make that shit up. Oh yeah, and there's always new quotes. Hey, Fab Crew. Hello. Hello. People are confused on these. Poison slash venom, reflect slash deflect, choke slash strangle. People use one where they mean the other. I'm going to choke you instead of strangle, etc. Just a random thought, GG. Actually, yeah, a... I wouldn't I wouldn't know the difference between strangle, I guess, is when you do it fatally. When you when you feel yeah, you can choke someone without killing them, but it, to strangle them you have to kill them. I guess is how that works. I what think does it mean so. to be strangling then? In the process of killing? So how, I guess you wouldn't know that they've been killed until they die. I mean, like, intent to choking with intent to kill, maybe? While choking is choking yeah, without intent to kill? I don't know. Uh, choking is on food. Is that food. the difference? Oh, oh that's... Okay, oh. that makes sense. If, the, if I don't even know the definitions of those ones, I but I can believe I think surely it. choking has got to have the accepted definition of doing it to a person like... I, I surely like now that usage is wide enough that it's acceptable because it's not like it's its antonym or anything. That just seems like the natural changing definition of a word. It's not like literally where the, the meaning is degraded. It's just the word is used to refer to a different thing now. Joking is air blood is strangled. Blood? Air blood. Well, that doesn't make oh, sense, right? Oh, that's the worst kind of blood. The or the worst kind of air, lungs actually. And lungs pumps it into the blood, right? That's how that works? Uh, no or idea. absorbs it into the blood. Um, no, yeah. Um, choke. Um, a person or animal having a severe difficulty in breathing because of a constricted or obstructive throat or lack of air. It's not just on food. Well, I wonder if that definition has changed to account for the change, or if it was always Potentially. that. Potentially. I don't know. But yeah, um, oh. I, I, I'm fine with any of that. I, I'm fine with someone saying they're choking somebody. That's the but it, it, unless unless they're doing it without consent. Oh, I just mean in terms of using it. They have to say choke me daddy first. Yeah. Brie Larson, Only choke people with their consent. Got a Brie Larson super chat. Get excited. Brie Larson is a 7 out of 10 at best. And that's with the help of professionals <laughs> to do her makeup and clothes for her. Once she starts speaking, that number drops drastically. Hello, rags. Hi there. Yes. You're wrong. <laughs> I, I don't even... Why are we entertaining this? <laughs> I've been out of 10 at best? I, I feel like that should be high. At best, I feel like that should be higher. I, I, Free Larson is, is very attractive. I don't really know much about what she's like as a person. I'm, I could have sworn we... we Because this is in regards to... I even remember seeing comments that people were like, they were upset that Rags was referring to Danims as attractive. And it's just like, look, she's, no, she's stupid. Not. He means that she's a good-looking girl, okay? And that's okay. Okay. I guess the question is right. Like, there's um, you know, if we got like uh, character traits that we would generally consider negative. It's it's interesting because I think there are some that make that person seem just inherently less attractive, and there are some that aren't. Like, I find that um, being very um stupid generally makes a person less attractive to me, particularly in in men. Um, That's... I don't know. I guess I'm, I guess I'm wow. sexist. Wow, double standards. That's Fine, but we, we, you know, if you're gonna actually try and reach any kind of consistency for the way someone, like, cause if you go strictly by personality, then yeah, she, um, she's one of the ugliest people in existence. Um, and maybe I should be fair and say not like dipping just in stupidity, not in like she's not uglier than Hitler. No, yeah, but at the same time, um, but at the same time, if you gave her that power, who knows what she? Well, would that's do what we usually it. say. Maybe she'd be worse than Hitler. Attractive, whatever meaning. Appealing to conventions irrelevant of personality. No, it's not that doesn't mean irrelevant of personality. I mean, I think it generally does because conventions don't normally take a personality into account. But conventionally attractive just means like I'm acknowledging that this person has traits that are widely considered attractive, regardless of my own personal feelings of, as to whether or not they are attractive. I have I just always feel like heard it in regards to how someone looks, are. not their personality. Yeah. Like if well, you, yeah, if you, if you I, in terms, yeah, I, I agree that it is in terms about. of how someone looks, but as it's more important, I think that the element that you're describing there is that regardless of whether or not you find that person attractive, you're acknowledging that they have uh, traits that are widely considered attractive. Yeah, that's what I said, though. I'm confused now. 
Oh, shut up then. Oh, okay. How dare you? Well, and that's what Stop. Rags was saying about Denims, I believe, and that's what we've said about Brie Larson, because I just, I, yeah. no matter how many times you guys tell me she's ugly, I ain't agreeing. It's stupid. <laughs> yeah. I think she's a dumbass with some of the stuff she said, and she does poor acting when not being pushed. Um, is it is it fair to know like what context she does good and bad acting in? Like, do we know enough about behind the scenes? Well, that's kind of my point. I I think she's I absolutely think she knows she's capable of good acting. I just know that she didn't really do much of anything for Captain Marvel. Kind of just meh. I mean, it could be that she nailed exactly what they were telling her to do, right? In which case, yeah, you can't be critical of the acting, I suppose. Or can you? Well, no, no, you can be critical well, of the acting, of but the you can't be critical of the actor, actor yeah. right? Like, in, in terms of... I think that's often the case with a piece of media that's, like, countless people have come together to produce and create, is that you can see elements that don't work, but ultimately you can't generally point a finger at one individual um, unless you have clear evidence that something was their fault. Well, I, I feel like the, the, you know, Gal Gadot's terrible at everything. Exactly, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It seems like regardless of the director, it's an awful performance. Meanwhile, you could point to, like, Ian McKellen is, like, great in everything, you know? Mm -hmm. so it's like, oh, well, I mean, at that point. Yeah. And then you've got what is much more common, right? Which is where it's kind of like a mix slanting one way or another, where someone's pretty good usually, and someone's not that great usually. Yeah. I mean, it's all, it's it's just that um the director is in a sense ultimately responsible for like everything on the creative side. Um, I, I, but I guess it's it's kind of hard to be like, well, I mean, if the director asks you to act in a way that's shit, it's like, well, what's your power over that? It's like, well. He has control over the cut. He or she, I guess, has control over the cut. So, like, I could deliver a great performance and he could say, do it shit. And I could say to him, hey, can you use the good one? And he could just say no. And then, yeah. yeah. That's well, it also kind of depends on what movie you're making. Like, if you're making, like, a comedy or a parody, then that could be appropriate, yeah, sure. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, like, also, yes, NFTs. It's worth mentioning. Oh yeah, she did do NFTs. Sure, I mean, do, do NFTs make her less attractive? Like, no, yes. no, 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 no. You, That's just we were referencing the oh, things just, about her personality that were frustrating, and that's included. Yes, oh, they sure. make her less attractive. Well, no, so the the NFTs. Is just, funnily enough, <laughs> well, um, the yeah, someone right. has mentioned well, as a sort of gotcha for this, but I don't think it's going to work out. Is the is like, well, what about Amber Heard? It's like, <laughs> dude, check out what people said about Amber Heard before all this shit happened. She was so, an absolute knockout is what her like status was. At this point, though, everyone knows the worst shit about her, and so no one's going to be saying she's hot anymore. Yeah. So there's a, there's a quote that's been very influential to me in my life from uh, a little show that a couple of you might have heard of called Misfits. I was going to say Amber Heard. I was um, like, what the fuck did she say that inspires you? <laughs> it's a very, very inspiring... It's, like, it's, about, it's about a more specific situation, but I think it can be uh, applied more generally. There's a character called Rudy says in a climactic point in an episode, he says the words, I refuse to put my cock in a racist vagina. There you go. That's a real quote from the episode. And, you know, Applying I think a, about it a vagina lot. Vagina itself, it has the capacity to be racist. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, Rags, you I, I take it not familiar with Misfits. The vagina in this context isn't itself racist, but... And a, a, a vagina that is itself racist, not honestly out the bounds of the kind of thing that show might do. There is an arc in that show where a guy's penis is stolen. Oh. That's a bit different, because that's possible in our nice world. Penis. That's true. It's possible. Stolen in a way that, um, like, someone uses magic to steal his penis. Um, that's, okay. <laughs> yeah, instead of conventional means. Yeah, instead of the... Well, I guess yeah, the conventional penis theft means are not used here. <laughs> like the muggles used. There. Conventional penis theft memes. It's just like a, a load of them, I guess. It's a popular genre. Yeah. The Amber Heard is I hot, but I wouldn't get them within 100 feet of her at this point. That's probably how everyone feels now. Yeah, she's certainly attractive, but... But, like, in terms of denims, yeah, the... She is very attractive, but she is not bright. And there's a difference between... It almost feels to me like there's a level of a delusion, you know? Sometimes when it comes to, like, trying to pretend that people... It's just like... like you know what I mean? Like, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure how to get around, like, oh, yeah, no, Brie Larson isn't attractive. It's like, 
I, like, I get that you don't like her. I just don't understand how you, you just, like, rationalize that in your head. If it was like, you, you just can't do that. think that people you find hot you, can't be ugly or whatever the rule is? Well, it's, it's a weird what? thing because I, well, because when it comes to, like, how does someone's personality factor into it? I would imagine that there's people that you would see in the world who aren't particularly bright but are very attractive, and it doesn't just factor in at all. Like, it doesn't really do anything. Well, and if that's what was being said, if they were like, well, no, now I find her that way because I found a lot of the stuff she said to be cringe, I'd hate the NFT stuff, I'd be like, oh, well, yeah, I, don't, I wouldn't expect her oh, to be sure. attracted yeah, to her but I mean, Well, I, I guess that's what I mean. It's like, if we're talking about these scales, you know, the 1 to 10 thing, like, are we, are we actually saying that the scale is basically, like, very heavily dictated by you know, like, what you think about them as a person versus, I guess, just, like, the traits that are generally considered to be attractive. I thought that the, the fact scale that was... to make a difference here between physical attractiveness and willing to be in, like, a relationship. Yeah, of course, because there's a difference yeah. between the two. I thought the scale was strictly about looks. I didn't realize it was incorporating I it was personality, because at that point, yeah, I, I don't... I don't mind. At that point, it's literally not even gonna... Inc I don't even know everything about her that you might know, and so your number might... You know what I mean? Well, I guess it's just, um, I, I don't know what is lost by admitting that somebody that you don't like is attractive. I, I don't know, I don't know what you lose from that. Like, that it's so hard to just admit it. <laughs> FX is a racist vagina. Mm-hmm. Well, I find that attractive, yeah. <laughs> FX's Legion did time travel better. I've not seen it. I haven't seen it either. The Grave Mind should be played by Gal Gadot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Whenever there is a... Herself, no yeah. result. Hasn't she been, like, on a really intense, like, training regimen? Captain yeah, Marvel. She's got, like, yeah, yeah, she's six gone. pack abs. Yeah, I, I, like, you, yeah she seems to be Didn't incredibly she... athletic and healthy. I thought she did it specifically because she's getting... She's doing a bunch of movie stuff now. Like... I think I think that's why, yeah, for the film. Um, as tends to be the case, right? She, um, they usually have requirements. And she knew what she was doing. Like, I remember being shared on Twitter, like, some of the... She did, like, a exercises in a video. And she, like, make sure you can see a lot of stuff. Because she's definitely trying to... I wouldn't even be surprised if she was told that this is something she needs to do with the time that she's got available because of the time between movies. Like, that's what the YouTube channel comes across as to me. It's like, maintain your um, cultural footprint as best you can, and, um, you know, uh, keep keep fans entertained, interact with some influencers, because she did that, right? Like, with a bunch of streamers or whatever. Um, I think, I can't remember if Pokemon was one of them, but it's so cringe that that's where we're at. Um, like, th that that is, like, tapped into, because uh, Pokemon was in Free Guy, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like, Cameo. And then did Pokemon play um, um, Among Us with AOC as well? It's just like, ugh. There's all this real, real world stuff. Get out of here. Nerds need to be in caves. True. True that. But yeah, she'll be in the um, the Marvels movie or whatever, right? Marvels. Yes. Not not Marvels. Miss Marvel. Marvels. She'll probably be in that. Will she be in um? Maybe cam yeah, because she cameoed in uh, Shang Chi, right? She did. Who knows what's gonna happen? Well, it seems like everybody's making more frequent appearances, right? You think of like Doctor Strange; he's showing up in tons of stuff. You do wonder if um, if actors are now going to be more and more and more willing as time goes on to do more and more and more stuff like that because they're just like, you know what, job security. It's job security in a landscape that is very much changing towards franchise stuff. And yeah, but it, I, it seems you, you, you play a character like, once in like sci-fi, and you can just play that character for the rest of your life if you if you want. Uh if you want to, it seems like that's the case. Yeah, you know. Yeah, as long as you're I, selling I tickets and putting butts and seats. Yeah, well, they'll because well, they don't give a shit about continuity or plot and stuff. They'll keep making shit for you. Um, Robert Downey Jr. in an alternate universe was like obsessed with always playing Iron Man until he dies. You gotta wonder what the MCU would look like right now. Uh. They keep him around, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, EFAB takes multi month Batwoman break, gets cancelled. We haven't been cancelled yet.
No, they mean Batwoman's been cancelled, I think. Oh! Yeah, that could be tied to it, actually. Yeah, that could be it. We, you know, we, we, we didn't... and this is what happened. Yeah, we didn't stimulate the discussion on, on that movie, and... If EFAP is slacking, the audience is lacking. Folks like Denims are the reason why I still smoke. Oh. Cigarettes? I assume so. I don't know. It is it be. what? Because you want to hasten your demise? Is that what, is that what that's about? <laughs> no offense, that felt a little bit voshy. <laughs> hasten your demise. I decided to go a little bit more, uh, <laughs> a little <laughs> bit more crazy with the language there. You can read 4chan's rules on homepage. Do it, lol. I don't do that. What if what if there's something weird? 4chan is uh is, is 4chan something the internet wants to have taken down or is it chill? I mean, I assume that there are probably people who want it taken down. I guess I mean the attempts to do so like with Pirate Bay or um like live leak before it actually went down. Forever. I have no idea. Uh, will you guys ever cover the X Men movies? I would like to do it. Maybe, uh, maybe. A lot of movies to go through, though. I was subbed to Destiny on YouTube as of yesterday. Watching him live stream, he watched a YouTube video, Jinx style. Viewer called him out. He got fake upset. Obliged. I expected better from him. Now I'm unsubbed. Yeah, he's I'm not great sure with you that. Read that one. I remember that. I'm I'm pretty sure you've read that one. Oh well, they may have sent it again. These are all new. Sent twice, yeah. All right. Um, unfortunate, but that's the thing. It's a widespread culture on Twitch. Uh, I don't think people will stop doing it until they have more reasons. To until not there's more do it. pressure, I think. Unfortunate. Do you see the vod where uh, Kevils defended empty chair reactions as performance art? I archived it on my channel. As no streams ever really gone. I did, but uh, she apologized to me for that now. And we're chill. Uh, Josh Strife Hayes made a three hour react stream to Asmongold reacting to a video by Josh to make fun of the reaction meta issue. Good lad, get him on. Did Asmongold do a decent reaction or whatever? He did a bad job because I'm aware of both of these people and I don't know if. Well, uh, I don't know if it's bad or not. I. As far as I know, Asmund Gold's got a good represent, rep, representation, damn, rep, 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 reputation for reacting to stuff. Um. Hey Mola, I'm playing Dark Souls Remastered for the first time. Who was your favorite boss when you f had your first go? Uh, Fringy 2, and hello. I haven't played Dark Souls 1 that much. I remember so I finding... Ornstein the Smo particularly intense, and I was very happy when I beat them the first time, and they are still one of my favorite bosses throughout the series, uh, with Artorius probably being the competition in Dark Souls 1. Uh, what bosses I like in that game, but yeah, those two in particular feel like the ultra-refined one-on-one -on -one and the ultra-refined one-on-two. Um, in filming of Mission Impossible, oh wait, sorry, uh, Men in Black 3, Will had two trailers, one two stories tall, outside the set, and his $25,000 a month apartment was only one mile away. He's self-absorbed. Oh, two trailers as in physical trailers, not like, for a second there, I, I think I meant trailers for the movie, and I was like, why are we... Uh... So wait. Of, uh, so, so of so the I, two of the two trailers, one was two stories tall, and his and also his apartment was a mile away. That's fucking nuts, man. That is that is an obscene amount of money being used for seemingly superfluous. Wait, who you know. who was that? Will Smith. Will Smith. Ah, Will Smith. What? Oh, and he got paid a lot for a long time in a lot of films. Like, uh, I think that, I think, um, it was until After Earth that it had been, like, two decades since he'd had a film that didn't open at number one in the US box office. No film that made less than a hundred million. Mm. Yeah, he was bankable, but, you know, after, basically after Wild Wild West, from then on, everything... <laughs> Uh, 
Jeff Nation has some of the worst takes on YouTube. We've uh, we've checked out their catalog before. We haven't covered any of it yet. So they have like what Turf Nation? Yeah, as in surf, but with a T. Um, yeah, no, oh, not okay. E. I was yeah, because I was there like, wait, Turf Nation? What? They um, it's all media takes, and they're they're, <laughs> they're like, some of them are really fucking weird and unexpected. I'm not sure why you'd call a channel like that. To be honest, like. Maybe it seems channel. like an obvious URF. <laughs> point of confusion that's going to happen. Or turf, right? There's turf, turf as in this turf. is my yeah. turf. Like astro turf, uh, yeah. I just meant like turf is in territory, <laughs> you know? True. Um, I do 24 hour shifts on the regular. It's easy to get used to. I preferred this over 12, this during the past four months. Holy shit. Wait, 24 hour shift is in like. You get breaks? A whole day. Because, uh, man, you must, you must get pretty tired toward the end of that, <laughs> like... Imagine. Um, does this help with understanding what is written? They put um, full stops in between every word? Uh, commas, but it's still, it's, it's, it's not that, that... I like that commas really put in, but all. not quite that way. Yeah. Hello. Guys, I'm a fan of your content. Hi. Um, Hi uh... What do you guys think of Waffles? He's my mascot. Um, if there was an image tied to your account, I can't see it, I'm afraid, but uh like the name Waffles. The name of Imagine if he looks like a waffle, but he's a friendly little guy. Uh... That's great. That is that is my review. <laughs> Someone posted this on my server, let me... It's irrelevant. I mean, yeah, uh... They would, they would be do... It, sorry, documentary as well. Um, I feel like it's on purpose. Yeah. Uh, that has to be. But, yeah, uh, they, they... I was about to say they would be doing this if they could. They probably are able to do this with some of them, and they probably are doing it, for all I know. As soon as they drip Gordon Ramsay dry, you gotta wonder what's, what's gonna be next. You can't drip Gordon Ramsay dry. He's a very moist man. They're gonna try. That makes me moister than an oyster. Team deck is now peak handheld. Yeah, probably. I don't know anything about it. You guys? It's the uh, it looks PC. cool. Portable PC, like handheld PC. Neat. Hey. Yeah, it's got Valve. like Steam and everything built into it, so you can play all the stuff. Come to think of it, I'm pretty sure Muller wouldn't enjoy Hades all that much, as he has a strong dislike for games with tons of well-written dialogue that can change based on your playstyle and equipment. Oh, is that something you don't like? True. I don't remember is that a... saying that. Are you? Is this an XCOM thing that they're trying to be like a... Uh... Well, that was never my complaint about XCOM, was changing dialogue. Yeah, I I know that. You know that. But does the uh, Super Chatter know that? Because <laughs> I can't imagine... I don't know what else that might be referring to. I think this might be an XCOM. But... I feel like I the game know. has tons of well-written dialogue. It's going to be hard for me to uh, do critical of it. Cause I'm a big fan, but... I'm trying to think of what they might be referencing. Unless it's sarcastic. No slash s, though. Sounds like a joke. I guess so. I suppose. Text makes it very... Sir uh, Kappa. Spy. No Kappa. Mm, shame. They didn't use Smug Ross. Yeah. Uh, hi, Rags. Hello! Goodbye, Rags. Oh, bye. Just kidding, hello. Why are you playing, like, around like this? <laughs> I don't know, man. Do you have, want to hurt us? They do have freedom of speech, unfortunately. Apparently... Disgusting. Well, what do you say? How is this pronounced again? Kuokas, did you say? Quokas. Quokas. Uh, will sacrifice their young to escape dingoes. Oh. It is unfortunate, but I mean, 
Go to escape with fucking uh, dingoes. I mean, what are they supposed to do? Die? <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> well, at least if I get away, I can make more quakas later, but I can't. If I stay here, I'll definitely die. Hmm. And I, I mean, I guess it makes sense in that aspect. Ass. That Wikipedia method is how I found a book on the Dami Amazons. Uh, since there is not a lot of info on them. Okay. I think that was when we were talking about, um, matching, like, things on Wikipedia and stuff. I guess. Hey, Mola. This should be enough to cover 77 days of content, right? Seriously, though. Thanks for the distraction and laughs. Hello, Dr. Fring and Hi Rags. Hello. Uh, thank you very much for, uh, being so kind and for, um... The, the 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 enjoyment, I guess it's kind of weird to say that, but uh, that because like, that would be the we're catching up for denims. Would Hassan stuff have happened at this point, or at least I they would have known it's remember. happening? Why not? But we went. I climb and cut trees for power line clearance. During storm events, we work sixteen-hour shifts. The longest stint was a nineteen-day straight clearing trees off power lines while climbing. Always have podcast playing of your own. Well, well. Nineteen days—that's almost enough to get to a, through a few efaps. I mean, yeah, it's, it's that weird thing where some people on Twitter will be like, "How could you possibly have time to listen to this?" Like, oh. yeah, some people got. Jobs and stuff, you know, that's, that's what they do. I don't have a job. Do. Well, Jay, that makes you a freeloader. Ooh, loads. Yeah. Freeload and I'm a freeload and I'm a... I don't know if you've already been asked, but what's your opinion so far on the Halo show and will you plan on reviewing it? Horrifically negative. Maybe. Oh, it's not a maybe. I think that's... If oh yeah, oh yeah, coverage. yeah. For EFAP, we will absolutely cover it, but it's definitely tickling my pickle to do yeah. potential reviews and thoughts on it. Um, mm. uh, <laughs> best comparison is stealing services like cable TV. I guess they mean instead of comparing it to games like they sometimes try. Yeah. When people get used to preferential treatment, equal treatment seems like discrimination. Thomas Sowell. Sowell? Thomas Sowell, yeah. Uh, also, High Rags, Longman, and Fringu. Hello. 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 Hi. Hello. EFAP 66 is at 999k views, by the way. <gasps> um, think, didn't you say it went over a million? Uh, yeah, it did. Uh, Wait, I so think it's going I back checked. down. Oh, no, they well, the, unviewed it. They, unwi they forgot problem. about it. Uh, whenever you forget about something, a view is lost from the video. Yeah, but 66 it did, yeah. was... Uh... I checked during an EFAP, and it was at, like, 1 million and 7,000, 1 million 8,000. So it just crossed over the hump. The 1 million... And what a day view. it was. We talked of the conclusion... Of the sequel trilogy. Fascinating. I don't believe that people like Denims are aware of their inconsistencies. Inside each normie's head is a hamster named Desire. The hamster spins the wheel until it gets what it wants. That's it. I think that uh, there is there is some truth to that. People, yeah, even even if it's sometimes people will try to rationalize their behavior and whether how much they believe it is one thing, how much they show it is another thing. People, I think with her, it's all empty upstairs. I just, um, people don't want to acknowledge generally their brain hamsters, but you know, they have them. Well, it's just that, um, I think that it's easy to default to acting strictly in your own self-interest in your, of course, in your own self-interest that, um, I think that's just, um, easy to slip into naturally and so there's kind of like a, a level of work involved in um not doing that hmm. work to be clear 
I do care about ethics a lot. But my point is that even if this was 100% ethical, I still would hate how vapid this kind of content is. Yeah, agreed. Yeah. We, we've actually kind of... That point is made with, in a sense, with like, if you have permission, and then you're like, I have permission to react to this, no matter what the quality of my reaction is, and then you just sort of slouch and drink every once in a while, and you go, huh. Huh. And yeah. then you go, oh, super trooper, thanks for, thanks for subscribing. <laughs> Man. Right. Make sure to slur it out as much as possible. Yeah, right? <laughs> uh, watched EFAP since episode one. I think the Denims video may Woo! have been the most painful so far. Can't wait for the Hassan wow. coverage. At least I can spend the end of my birthday watching you three. Hi, Rex. Hello. Um, You've been through a lot. You're, you're, you're a veteran yeah. of EFAP. You've watched a lot of, a lot of crazy, stupid people. And as for, not just our guests. As for worst video, it's it's a tough one. It is a tough one, but I think that they are in the running. Right on top of that. That'd be a great video because you edited it, right? No. So of course it must it's be good. Bad, and I'm responsible for the pain inflicted upon cast and. Oh, then I'm gonna throw eggs at you. Don't do it. Sorry, it's I'm happening. Completely unrelated to Schminems, but I was watching an old EFAP and Molly, you said you hate Interstellar. Why do you hate it? Ooh. <laughs> bring out my saved thing. I bring it out every every once in a while. Well, this is saved as Interstellar in a paragraph. Okay. It's funny because as time goes on, the less I remember how accurate this is, but I mean, I wrote it, so I assume that I wrote it <laughs> with passion and hatred for the details. I trust my past self, yeah. Um, humanity is able to exceed their limits in terms of exploration and overcome mass famine because they crack the secret to harnessing gravity and can thus travel the universe. They do that through a formula. A formula that was converted from a binary message. A binary message that was sent through the ticks in the hands of a clock. Ticks that were manipulated by pressing on the walls of time in the fourth dimension set up by humanity in its ultimate form many, many years into the future by a guy who entered the horizon of a black hole in the hopes of traveling back to his family through time after one of his teammates had suggested choosing the best place to begin humanity anew by going with the one that she has the most love feelings for. This movie thinks its audience is fucking retarded. <laughs> okay. Your explanation, I guess, for now, anyway. That would be the broad take I have for that film, the so many mechanics in terms of how everything fucking comes together is like hand waved away with with an appeal to how you, uh, doesn't it just feel right and doesn't it like look cool um yeah that that space bookcase thing man something else yeah that was um what uh <laughs> <it's> so <laughs> stupid what 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 when what? you put it like that, anything can sound terrible? What do you mean when I put it like that? What was the lie? That's what happened. That's what yeah. happened. Did you not see the film? That's what happened. Interstellar was a fun movie. I didn't have fun. <laughs> I, <laughs> I was already um, checked out the after the stupid cool. the water planet shit. I was already checked out. Oh, that was the one that I was thinking of as a cool set piece. Maybe I need to rewatch the film. Well, it, can something well, maybe be a you're cool wrong. set piece while also being poorly written? I, I, probably, right? I, I don't know. Well, I, I imagine, yeah. Um, it was a joke. I, Very find, well. I just remember the waves things. Like, those aren't mountains, those are waves. And thinking, oh, they are orbiting a black hole, so I guess the waves would be fucking huge. I guess it's bizarre that the sea has got that much water in it that can produce waves that large while they're still, like, standing in, like, just knee-high shallows. I guess the rest of the water is really deep. The water planet was the best part, what the hell? All right. <laughs> no. I was going to say, did not just say that. I'm pretty sure, yeah, Frig, you're fully aware of all the problems with that scene, right? Like, Dude, the water planet is absurd. Everything about it is stupid. The only reason it exists <laughs> to be a massive inconvenience that costs them a lot of time. Why did the other dude get in the ship? Why was he just standing around? Hmm. Like, he was right next to it. He just stood there and then allowed himself to get killed I, I oh and it's another one of those um interstellar is riddled with something that i actually hate in films Dial. not and uh, uh 
stop it. No, it's a, it's a specific thing that some films do that really pisses me off. And it's a lack of in-story recognition and consideration for other characters who've died or have had something bad happen to them. Peak example uh, yeah. is Gordon gets crushed by Gears in 2012 and nobody cares. That's like the peak example in my mind. A dude who's been nothing but helpful, who you wouldn't even be alive if it weren't for him, and then he gets crushed by Gears and there's just no consideration for him. And that's another example, because in that film, there's no consideration for that guy. Matthew McConaughey's character just doesn't seem to care about his son. Like, the son is not important at all. It's all about Murphy, right? That's uh, yep, Mur Jessica. Oh, well, that's true. Who calls all her daughter Matt Murphy? Oh, I don't care about that. It's just, he doesn't care about his son. He never thinks about him or talks about him. Like, the son is, he's like a non-factor. I hate that. Like, I really don't like that when it's a, um... Well, and this is the thing, yeah. man. Um, I've said this before, but fuck it, I'll say it again. When I first saw it, it was with Smiler. We were both very unhappy and talked for a long time after having seen it about how bad it was. Then I think X amount of time later it came out. I said, like, does he want to come over? We'll watch it and I'll record with Audacity just a file of our commentary so we can just pause it and complain, whatever. And that recording, I think, was seven hours. So lots of things were complained about. Did the exact same thing about two years later, but with metal. Um, as, as, as the three of us, and then I'm pretty sure I did it again with with us, and, and the plan is to do it again in future. And then I'm just gonna listen through all of these and see if we had the same thoughts, different thoughts, or... This movie is a movie that I pause, like, often, because there's something else that just doesn't make any fucking sense. But, the soundtrack, amazing. The, the cinematography, sure. the amazing. amazing. Practical effects are amazing. The, the, the vistas are amazing. And so, like, wait, what are you describing? Fucking everything that's coming out these days? And I'm like, ha ha ha, nice. But no, it's stellar. And it accurately portrayed aspects of science that hadn't been accurately portrayed before on film, which is cool. It also pretended that love is a force that, like, transcends yeah. reality. I feel but... like that's undermined uh, by yeah. a lot of the garbage science in the movie. So anyway... Mola, please don't say they're doing what we do in regards to bad reactors. They're like bad drivers who don't pay attention. Yeah, but then, so they're still drivers at that point in that analogy. And if we were driving on the road and they are driving, I'd be like, see, we're doing the same thing, but they're really bad. And then they go, whoa, and crash into some stuff, which is kind of what they're doing. We are reactors. Primarily, EFAB was built on the idea that we play a video and react to it. I just think that clearly we've got a completely different approach Set of standards, requirements, you know. We've and... been doing it wrong this whole time. Yeah. 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 And they said, they're like bad drivers who don't pay attention while EFAP is more like a pro stunt driver. Which, yeah, again, in that analogy, I would say they're both drivers. Just like we're both reacting streamers. Oh, well. Reactors, I guess, is more accurate because they, everyone, including us and them, do it in, in like a video format as well, not just streaming. Okay, uh, so this is the last one for the Denim's Ketchup Ketchup, and it says, GAY! Nice. Which leads us to today's. Alright. These are hot off the presses, up-to-date memes. Who knows what'll be said in these ones. Shit. Crazy. EFAP react to MGS Rising incorrect summary? Is that... Incorrect... Is that someone summarizing the the game? It wouldn't be as funny to me if I wasn't familiar to the game with the game, though, right? Um, hmm. Like if someone incorrectly summarizes the story of a thing, it's not going to be as effective if I don't even know what the correct version would be. Maybe, maybe it's funny stuff on its own. Who could knows? be, could be. Is that a YouTube video? Is that someone's funny, funny thing? At that point, may as well just direct people to it, right? Do you remember when we watched the fucking fairies versus 40k people on EFAP? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was, uh, that was Flash Kids. Flash yeah, it was kids. just like... It. Avenge me, brother! <laughs> Ones like that are difficult <laughs> to transform because you want to be able to appreciate it Consume as a it package. It, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so you Mother hate the... Me. You hate the creepypasta animals. Fine, here's a normal one. The kangaroo rat. Kangaroo rat. Oh, I know these Never boys. Yeah, yeah. I know about. I know the kangaroo rat. 
Oh, I am like... aware of the kangaroo rat. I didn't realize they were called that, but makes sense, I guess. Okay, yeah. They're hopping around. Uh, finished rewatching Kingdom Season 2, the Korean zombie show, and man, it's bloody terrible. I don't know how I missed so much the first watch. Um, I don't want to be too mean to it, but I just didn't like... I think we, we, we were essentially done by the time we got to the last two episodes or so, weren't we? Mm, they, yeah. They wiped out the potential of a lot of characters we really liked. Very quickly, yeah. Daily reminder to brush your teeth and floss. I've not been doing it and had to get seven fillings for developing cavities. It cost $2,789. Fucking hell. Um, yeah, right. A lot of cavities. Is, uh, is dental care like that covered in Australia with the health? Depends. Um, you, if, if, it's, if it's public, you can. You just have to wait. And, uh, but you can go to private if you want to. Like, like if you need to get braces. Well, that's, that's like one example I have. Braces, you get them, uh, and I think you still have to pay for them. Some things I think you have to pay for, and some things I think are covered. Um, yeah, because in Britain, I think it's the same. You can wait as long as you're... You, you have to be, like, attached to a particular dentistry, like, on, uh, as part of their patients, quote-unquote, and then you'll get... Waiting um, list. Yeah, and, and, and you'll, you'll get your, uh, your appointments and stuff as they're able to. But you could also go private if you want to get it done quicker, which is much. Then again, expensive. I don't know. I don't know if anything's changed really. Um, government and all that. There's differences because mm. someone in chat said dental is not covered by Medicare. It's like, oh, yeah, I yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure. I don't know. Well, um, there was a mix up with my dentist around about when I was mentioning when I was talking to him about Game of Thrones about a time ago, uh, where I had to get. Uh, one thing done not with the NHS, and the fucking cost skyrockets. Uh, so, doesn't surprise me you have to pay that much, but let's just say uh, it's unfortunate you weren't a British citizen to get the, all that done under the NHS, because it would have cost you probably like £100. Right. So, yeah. I can't believe you're taunting this poor individual. No, I just, it kind of, you, you feel bad, right? Because, like, um,. I think Wales specifically as well, not even just because we've got um, more coverage with the NHS than even England does. Like, uh, uh, to give you an example, well, you know, like, all know about England, country, right? you know, like Ventolin um, for asthma. Yeah, I know what Ventolin is. I I have that prescription. Yeah, oh, I don't know if um, they do. Uh, I have no I idea what that prescription is. For Ventolin. It's uh, Ventolin is basically it's just the as if you have asthma, you it's an inhaler. And, ah. then you, and then take a deep breath, and then that just uh, opens up your airways. Well, the blue, right? The the orange, yeah, the like long one. form. Care. The, uh the yeah, the orange one we got here is like flixotide. Um, that's like one you take in the morning, and then in the uh, in the evening. That yeah, yeah. it's like long term for the whole day. Um. Anyway, the uh, friend of mine in England has to buy them, uh, once per month as a package or whatever, uh, you get them all with the NHS in Wales. Right. So it's just like, there's lots of ones like that, which are just like, damn, dude. It's, it's it seems like, um, eating away that's and... unfortunate for people who have difficulties with teeth. I've just not really had problems. Well, well difficulties with anything that's, um, yeah, you know, cause like the, the one that's always is controversial right now is like cost of insulin, depending on which country you're in oh yeah because that's a big thing in america right like insulin what like a thousand dollars or something what, what is the price of insulin in america the amount that it's become quite an issue insulin prices in america oh okay so apparently um average per unit is uh oh so yeah average price per unit across all types of insulin in 2018 uh australia was Seven dollars, UK is seven and a half dollars, Canada's twelve dollars. You just go up, and then America's at ninety eight dollars and seventy cents. We got that. We got that good shit. Well, it's just uh, it's not subsidized, right? That's uh, because I mean, I don't know how it works in the UK, but like that's how it works here, right? Like a lot of um, I don't know much about a lot of stuff here. 
Well, you get scripts in there, and those scripts will get you a subsidized price for um for whatever it is you need to grab. You can, but you can buy a lot of this stuff over the counter. But um, well, some of it, some of it you need a prescription for. But um, you get like scripts, and depending on what your uh, you know, what your status is, essentially, like if you're like a pensioner or you're on concession or whatever, then it you know gets subsidized by the government to some extent. Thoughts on quantum TV situation. Uh, that's the stuff with Act Man, right? Oh, I'm um, I'm pretty out of the loop on that. I don't know if you guys. I am too. Like. I uh, I think you released I... a video today though, Act Man. So that might be worth looking at. If I I don't I don't know enough to talk about it. I know I'm quite a bit about things. it. But do you? Okay. I do. Yeah, but I won't go into it now. Well, Act Man's made a video, so if anybody's interested, that uh. Yeah, I'll check that out. Um. Yeah. Yeah. You pay in USA but get better results. Highest cancer survival uh, act. Is that I know about the cancer stat, but is that you? Is that like true universally for everything? I don't know. That like the, know. the United States has the best health outcomes. It wouldn't surprise me if the United States end up with the top like surgeon slash doctors or whatever. I could see them even. Uh, yeah, that wouldn't maybe. surprise me just because it's kind of the thing that happens with developed economies. You get a lot of the most talented people sort of converging in those areas. Um, but I, I just, I'm not sure. I feel, I feel like I've heard that one before, but I'm pretty sure I've also seen examples to the contrary, right? That it's not that simple. Um, and then I guess, yeah, it is a matter of like, um, if, depending on how much it costs, right? It's like, how much is that worth? Um, yeah. So, you but, know, but, I, I imagine for a lot of people going, that's probably hearing that news is like, yeah, that'd be great if I could afford any of it. Well, well, so I remember, uh, I think it was Kraut made a video that was interesting where he was talking about um, this thing and how, like, the conversation is a little bit complicated because, like, a lot of people will point to European countries, but, like, you pay a lot for, for like, these healthcare systems. Like, it gets paid for so somewhere by someone somehow. Um, and so it's a matter of what are you willing to accept as trade-offs. A lot of European countries have, like, taxes on sugar. Because these are all things that you try to do to disincentivize people from having habits that make them more likely to uh, seek medical care, right? There's so many things that you need to think about. Fuck, I, sorry, I don't want to turn this into a politics. We can, we can just do the next uh, super chat. Uh, EFAB reacts to death of Stalin. Uva is Sigma. Uh, Slav. I know I'm aware of the movie Death of Stalin, but I I don't I assume it's about Stalin dying, but I've never I've never seen it. I don't know if it's supposed to be a comedy or a drama or a no clue. At least I know it has a happy ending. Hmm. Um, Ari e. Keffels vs. J. Around 1934 on the Vod, she argues not only. The empty chair reacts as performative art, but that they should be mass adopted. Um, I archived that insane statement Keffel's made as well as the rest of the VOD on my channel. I called the VOD, no streams ever really gone. I'm guessing she may have changed her mind? Yeah, I think she changed her mind. Um, oh no, about to be evicted, wish me lucky, Fab, do a movie. Oh! Well, hopefully you can get whatever the issue is sorted. Yeah, you know, yeah still so. sorry to hear it, man. Stay strong. Uh, love you guys. Been watching a lot of rags, though. <laughs> yeah, boy. <laughs> That's a funny way to phrase it. Love you guys. I've been watching rags, though. Though. Uh, However, yeah, I'm, I, I'm not sure what they're trying to say. Like, it sounds like it's like uh, been watching a lot of rags, though, or, or something. <laughs> I'm not sure. I don't know. I don't know what to make of that. I'm sure it's only a positive. It's great news. Hope you're I'm, enjoying it's, it. That's got to be it. Yeah, I like it. Uh, based rags take on World War II German paraphernalia. Never forget. Never let it happen again. Fun fact: the thing that person defining Gino was thinking of was the one that happened in Armenia. A.M. Um, just in case I what? managed to butcher that in some way, I'll just post it. Yeah, yeah, post it. Let me read that. Oh, it shows up as a flag on emotes. Okay. 
on the subject oh. of um remembering history, something that I found really interesting was I saw uh, it was World War One footage that had been restored with color. Um, that was really interesting because I think um I think when you see that footage with color, I think in black and white for whatever reason it it's um there's almost like a wedge there. There's something that when you look at World War One or World War Two footage in black and white, you can almost it feels like it's older than it was, like that it was it was much longer ago than it was. And I remember when I saw that footage in color, it's like, and you know, you see like green fields of grass and all the soldiers and um in you know their uniforms that are in color makes them feel I more think like it was people. Peter I don't Jackson. know why it it does it it makes it feel more like shit, man. This this was like this happened on Earth. Like in in places in in lands that like exist here that you could you could go to, these were people with lives. Like it, I think I don't know what it is, but for whatever reason, like the color just um, it makes it feel more uh less like a historical event, which of course all of these events are, but it it just contextualizes it more so as this happened not that long ago, and people who really weren't any uh, much different than you in terms of their life and. You know, especially you know, basically no different at all in terms of just their emotional responses to things. That um, yeah, like that's a really that was a really fascinating thing in terms of how it grounded, um, and made it feel more uh more like a real thing. I think uh, it can it can be easy for that to get lost, in um, you know, in text and in in black and white archival war footage. You know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right then. I saw the Northman. It was okay. Hope you like prophecy, fate, and destiny. Oh, I don't like no, those things. I don't, like those I don't things tend to all. like those things, but let's see. Well, I have to wait and see the how they implement it. Yeah. Uh oh. Maybe they made Mando melt his spear because it wouldn't fit in his cool new ship. So that's why the explanation is <laughs> dumb. Like... Oh, that might be true. That yeah. might be true possible it is fortunate that he gets that melted down by the basically the only person who can melt it down right before he gets the naboo starfighter is his ship Ugh. uh jubilee is fake and gay jubilee is that uh, jubilee. Isn't that like the, the youtube channel that gets people to sit down and talk about oh yeah it is oh yeah i wouldn't be surprised if that was fake all and that gay. stuff and gay. I mean, it's definitely gay. Did you know that the Garand ping to lure out opponents is largely a myth? Battlefields are loud places and trying to hear the small ding would be impasse. Yeah, it's entirely a myth. What is, sorry? Wait, sorry, what, what is the myth itself? I don't understand. There is a myth about the M1 Garand. How the, in the World ping, War II... Like the ping, that one. Yeah, mm -hmm. because the, the Garand uses an, it uses a, an in-block clip. So... You push the clip of bullets in, and you shoot yeah. your eight shots, and on that and last shot, down. it ejects the just the clip, and without the bullets, when it gets hit by the metal and goes through the air, it goes, ding, makes that mm -hmm. distinctive sound. Yeah. So the myth is that Germans would hear the ding of an emptied Garand and know that they have a little bit of time to rush the soldier as he has to reload, right? And I don't... I don't know how this myth got started. I think some of these myths can be traced back to some some guy wrote a book about memoirs of something or other, and it just sort of took off or whatever. But that it's total horseshit because I don't see how that could. Po yeah, battlefields are very loud places. Guns are gun. If y'all haven't shot a gun without hearing protection, you are you have no clue. A gun is loud as fuck. All right. And so if you shoot eight thirty out six rounds out of your rifle right next to your face, if you think you're gonna hear much of that ping, let alone the the supposedly the German guy who's within earshot of that and having him because it, it's it's gonna take you what four seconds maybe to reload your Garand, especially if you're trained with it and you're thinking about it as you shoot. If you think that if you think that fucking Hans over on the other side of some town or field is going to be able to hear that at all that's crazy 
but to think that he Germans aren't stupid, right? Well, to not He's only not hero, try and but cross to also the charge you. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's like, what dumb, about your man. friends? What about all of you other guys who've got guns who are shooting? What about just yeah, any it's, number it's of the... things that could could get you? What? Yeah, that's it, it yeah. Why would yeah. why would that have ever arisen as like a a thing? I think. Or at least someone trying to sound interesting, either... like, you know, well, you know, Germans actually listened for that noise to uh, know when to attack. And no one was like, oh. Was that from that? The only. Was, saw... hmm. This might have. It might have happened in very, very specific Mate. circumstances, in a very close quarter scenario where a German might have heard a soldier that he knew was close by shoot the last shot and then there's a ping noise and he might have known that if i if i just have my take me and me and my brass fucking balls and i just i hear that sound and i go charging in knowing that i've got an, a window maybe that could have happened sure but the idea that it was something that, that like happened in any appreciable amount is probably total horseshit i think either in range tv or forgotten weapons did did some like live stream where they went through? I think. Oh, I think it was with either Bloke on the Range, someone. They talked about gun myths, and that that's one of the biggest gun myths you hear is the M1 Garand ping. But no, it is not true. There's there's, there's also some one other where they big say ones. They, they they would the one that accompanies that is that there would be um they'd keep an empty in block clip on them. And they would hit it against their helmets to mimic the ping sound to lure Germans in. And then they would kick that. It's, that's even dumber. All right. Uh, I rags. Hello. I hiked the Butterfield Trail at Devil's Den in Arkansas the other weekend and had a blast. Ever been there? I have been to Devil's Den multiple times. I'm not familiar with the trail. We, we might be thinking of the same trail. I just don't remember the name. But I've been there twice, and it is very lovely. There's some really nifty caves. That's the Devil's Den terminology. It's very lovely. Um, bro, got me a molar shirt for my birthday, and it's real neat. Aw. Glad you enjoy it. Good stuff. It just has a little molar heart. Smaller heart. Thank you. Imagine forest of corpses dripping on buffet. You call that a nightmare. I call that a Tuesday. Vlad, Dracula, born of the devil. Okay. All right. A bit weird, but you know. Okay. Whatever floats that boat. Just clone yourselves and make them do the catch ups. We haven't figured out cloning yet. We'll, we'll wait Amateur. on that. I do think that that would be the the big priority. I'm hoping to convince the government of that. Um, how is super chat money split between you guys? Oh, what? The name we're not going to tell you that. The name of the account is none of your business. So <laughs> <laughs> I don't know nice. if this is a meme. <laughs> like, nice. Hmm. Um, that is a, that's a good one. Any plans to talk about massive talent? I really liked it, but still noticed a few flaws. Interested to see some other perspectives on it. I'd like to see it. Uh, I wouldn't mind for, seeing I'll, it. I'll definitely be watching it. As for coverage of it, uh, no idea. But you'll hear what we thought, obviously. Yeah, we'll mention it. Yeah, we see a movie. We'll probably mention it. Give it a little looky loo, looky doo lee loo. Why didn't you bring me joke by art in chat? I see. All right. Oh, yeah. Better than that. So. Uh, six point five millimeter Jap is a joy to shoot. Though, I haven't fired seven point seven, but I imagine it's similar. Kind of the core peel of an Arasaka. Otherwise, why not just get an Enfield? Because an Enfield shoots three oh three, and th those are. I mean, I could. That's an option. They're the Enfields are quite cheap because they made seven trillion of them. Uh, there was actually one what? there at the show. But is it trillion? Um, yeah, you... I was being hyperbolic. Okay, okay, because okay. so yeah, the, okay. the British <laughs> used Enfields for a long time. Yeah. For some they reason, had many, didn't... many, many different variants. That didn't register with either of us as hyperbole. We're just like, that's a lot. You know why? Because I, I believe everything you say when it comes to guns, and the fact that no. it, it was, it's just, I guess, if you had said. 17 bazillions or you know like a word that's made up a well, trillion is just enough i was just like wait 
No way. My, my, <laughs> my mind immediately went to, wait, I'm not entirely sure what he's talking about. Is he talking about like a kind of ammunition? Is it possible that there was a type of ammunition that was like made uh, seven trillion of? Like expecting to fire no, I... seven trillion shots? Like Next time, it's Rags, it's, it's a thousand your fault, for clearly. every person in you the world. A bajillion, you, yeah. right? Bajillion. Yeah. Yeah, an SMLE is certainly an option if you want a cheap uh, surplus rifle with rounds that you could find. But uh, I already have. I don't have anything in 303 British, and I have quite a bit of 762 by 39. And so an Arisaka chambered in that, that's already pretty cheap to begin with. It's It makes it appealing. And plus, that's. You know, it's not as common as the Enfield, and it's a, it is a fine rifle, and there's a story to it when it was, a lot of them were captured by the Chinese after the, the 30s, you know, when Japan attacked China in the 30s, and they changed them and recalibrated them and sent them to, I don't know, Indonesia or wherever they sent them, whatever, but, I mean, it, plus, there's only so much that, I, I was there, I could only buy things that were physically there, right, so... That's the point of the show. Rags, I, I'm curious. If you got, I assume you've got a shooting range where you are somewhere. Yeah. What's it like? Oh, it it's just kind of just a building with a bunch of people who just sell gun stuff, pretty much. Uh, I'm assuming it specifically the range part itself. Well, yeah, I mean, I was just, so there's like a gun shop attached to the range? <laughs> yes. There is an indoor shooting range uh, at a gun store nearby that I go to. If I have guns that are delivered through mail, they go through that place because you can't so, you can buy a gun online but it cannot it can only be delivered to that makes a sense. licensed place yes is um so like the cash register area and stuff is it is it soundproof so that the shooting doesn't disrupt the customers? shooting range is in its own kind of place in the back and you can hear some through the wall but it's not like obnoxious or anything um because they generally be will have like a double right? door yeah it, it is it is very sound resistant so was if that, people are using the range, you can hear faintly the noise in, in the um in, in the rest of the store, but it's not it's nothing to worry about. I was wondering because like have um I, I, I got kind of curious, kind of interested in uh maybe trying out some gun stuff um recently and I looked up if I had any local shooting ranges and there's one uh shooting range local to my city that I could go to and I looked at some pictures and it's one guy standing in a field and he has a shed with guns in it that you can use. <laughs> it's uh the ones i've been to are a bit more i guess professional than that or i guess more what you might expect. say there's... i imagine there's not much d demand for it here right it's just you don't yeah he doesn't have to serve many plants at a no. time he's just got you know a shed you can choose your gun uh, and then you shoot clay pigeons there's a fair amount of shooting ranges here if you want to go to one uh, uh there's a couple that are indoor uh most will be probably outdoor, especially for longer range stuff. The indoor range that I go to only goes to 25 yards, but since you generally will take pistols, that is plenty to practice with. Um, but there's just like eight or nine booths set up in a row, and you and you hang up a target, you hit the button, there's a little line thing that sends it however far you want it to be. You shoot at it, and... And they only allow rifle calibers on Friday, I think. Otherwise, it's pistol calibers only. Um, pretty basic. Though, if, if you can shoot anywhere, as long as it's not inside city limits, as far as I'm aware. Um, if, as long as you are outside of city limits and you have a place oh, to, safe to shoot, you can do that. Uh, so my, my grandparents' place is outside city limits. So we can set up things out there, outside at further distances. Um, hey. A, a, yeah, yeah. Super neato delito. Um, read this out as it says. Rags All right. is so charismatic yes. that he could hand mm. me a jug full of his semen, tell me it had healing properties, and I would down it like a competitive drinker. Whenever I formulate arguments in my head, it's in your voice. Oh, wow. That is a, that's very high praise. But first off, my semen does have restorative properties. But... I, uh, thank you. That's that's uh, thank you very much. That's a very kind thing to say. Hmm. I appreciate it. Sitch and Adam Fight Club stream when I believe Sitch said he could uh, contact us on that one. I haven't gotten anything on it yet. Like, do they like Fight Club or do they not like it? Or wow, are they just your memory's like a sieve. 
They said they yeah, want it us is on like a Civ. because they want us um, to react to a video about Fight Club. Oh yeah, yeah, I rem I remember, I remember, I remember. You just needed that little that little little thing to jog me. Mm -hmm. That's all you needed. I got a lot of stuff going on up up here, all around here. A lot of stuff happening. Bringy, I love your content. It's entertaining, informative, and concise. I'm excited for your endgame video, as well as your future comics. You're a wonderful host, and you bring so many interesting conversations to the table. That's very kind of you to say. Thanks. Yeah. And didn't have a capper on it. Curious. Oh, so we know that it's selling the truth. <laughs> <It's> selling <laughs> True. The truth. Uh... Mola, you helped me realize why quality of media is important. Your videos honed my critical thinking skills when it came to stories, and without you I wouldn't have found EFAP. Your voice alone makes me feel calm and safe. Aw, that's nice. <laughs> so fun. I, I, I'll I take that, for sure. Making people feel calm and safe? I was, just, I was just imagining, like, someone walking alone home on a dark night, and they're like, oh, it's kind of stormy and maybe there's like some some shifty person in the distance and they're not really you know it's probably fine but they're a bit you know just anxious shifty and then yeah and they're like it's just you know the person's probably not gonna hurt them but you know still a bit worried um and then they just take out their phone put their headphones in and they hear hello ladies and gentlemen and then they're immediately soothed yeah it's wholesome i've just seen something that's because uh, the the new Halo Infinite, the next uh, season, like they've uh, season they've two now... Lone Wolves. Yeah, they've revealed what's in it, and it's two maps. And then the next uh, the next season comes in November, so this is another six month uh, long season. And I've just seen on Twitter someone point out on uh, the, the Halo Reddit, Halo Three received seven maps in its first year, and Halo Infinite is only getting two. Maybe um, and, and Halo Infinite Halo Three the was future game. rich. Yeah, it, yeah, Halo, Halo 3 released with complete. all of the stuff. Campaign, yeah. campaign co-op, Forge, theater. The best you could Firef say is that no, maybe they should have given you... No, that was ODST. Yeah. The, um, the, it's Foundry. Like The best you could say is maybe Foundry should have been in the base game. But I don't know. I, I mean, if they've added the whole Forge mode anyway, you know? Like, um, the fact that they the mode exists to begin with for the first time, plus theater mode... Oh, I think, oh, um, like manner of features. Maybe the conversation should now just move on to, you know what? Maybe, for all we know, this comparison's unfair, or maybe there's all these kinds of things going on that are preventing it, but the cold reality is you have killed this game dead, and it's, it's not going to come back. You really back. have. I don't, um, I don't see it. I don't see it happening. Well, yeah, I guess it, theoretically it could come back, depending on I mean, yeah, what I, they do. But, well, I imagine, uh, like, they... Um... Like, you know, whole new content renovation for it. It's basically a double, triple relaunch. the amount of content. Oh, yeah, that's never pretty much happen. a relaunch. I don't think that's ever going to happen. I well, I mean, know. launching a new game feels like a better bet at this point. I guess well, the problem that, like, is that... If there's a chance that this has all happened for things that are beyond their control, kind of like the LEGO game, for, for all we know, like all the that's people sure. who developed it, it's not their fault. Uh, I'm just, it would just be like, I'm just, I'm sorry. This is uh, uh, hey, you know what could like... happen? You know what actually might happen is that they release the Battle Royale mode Lego. and then it skyrockets. Yeah, for Lego. They are, because there is rumors and leaks that seem pretty credible that, uh, yeah, one of the support teams, well, what was typically a support team for 343 has been spending the last couple of years making a Battle Royale mode. Um, which is kind of funny because I think the Halo, like the the Twitter or social media people said, the only BR we need is like the BR from the game. And it's like, hi, ain't that quaint? But apparently that's just, that, I don't know, they're going to do it anyway. Because, um, I don't know, Battle Royale seems to be, yeah, I don't know. Halo I get I... Like scrapped 80% of their work. I would not be, that game absolutely had a reset uh, during its development. It's the only explanation. Yeah, based because on what I've seen, it doesn't years, seem like yeah. it's so. There's something about it. There's something I just I can't look at all of that and think like, oh yeah, this is six years of work. You know? Yeah. Like like where it's, did it? Where did it? Where's all the stuff? Well, that just, you've been making, think, right? Well, you, that's the combined development time of Halo Three and Reach was uh and ODST was um was six years. You know, like that was what they achieved in six years. Of course. 
it feels like the caveat that's always worth getting um putting out there it's like games take longer to make there's more assets that go into it but i don't think the players are receptive to that i think they're only receptive to content um the road so i'm not sure what's to be done about that roadmap's getting well, man, i would i would happily apparently. take less i, I would happily it. take uglier graphics for more content but yeah but well yeah less but marketable isn't it well, dude, the the big the big uh the big controversy with Halo Infinite was it looked like shit when they first revealed it. Remember, oh, that yeah, was part of the reason why they delayed it because it looked really bad, and it did look really bad. I think the problem is that when you're a company that's got like 500 employees, you're making Halo, you've got like basically all the money you need. When it's not like the best thing ever on all fronts, there's obviously going to be people who are like, so what happened? Like, what, what, why, why, what happened? And I mean, it's been pointed out, yeah, the game probably did need another year, but then we're never going to get another year because that's absurd. Six years is long enough. And this was, and remember, any, everything that we yeah. got was after a delay of like of a, a year. year. It was meant to this come is, out last Yeah, year all of this is post the year delay. And all that means so is that this would have been a fucking never... disaster if it released on yeah. time. Well, and it already is a disaster, frankly. I mean, it's, um, the game has a terrible reputation. I think at this point, 343 has pretty much t burnt all the goodwill that they had left. Um, I like I, I don't know what you would be citing as like, well, look at 343's wonderful accomplishments in the last 10 years. It, it, it's just... Halo Damn. 5! Oh yeah, Halo 5 was great. It was so great that they ignore it. They try to pretend it didn't happen. You love to see it. Well, at least the show's terrible. Oof. Oh, yeah, at least. I mean, Halo's never going to die, though, because they always keep trying. Um, I don't think Microsoft can ever let that go as a, as a thing. I don't think they're ever going to give up. So, like, yeah, Infinite may fail, but it doesn't mean that there won't be another Halo game. There'll be another one. Yeah, I mean, the fact that this game had... I mean, on Steam alone, it was, like, almost a million players max at, at one point when it at, at, at peak it had three hundred thousand concurrent players which is pretty good i mean more than pretty I good that's pretty fantastic. uh Ma maybe it was i think it was about three hundred thousand. but then you of course you include check. xbox as well right okay, once you factor yeah, was, in xbox too i must have been thinking of something else maybe i was thinking elden ring for whatever reason but yeah two hundred and fifty seven thousand. Like yeah so yeah. when halo halo comes out halo infinite comes out after two generally regarded as quite disappointing halo games and then yep. this one is released it gets 257,000 people in the door and today there was less than 10,000 people playing yeah so sometimes when i check there's only 3,000 concurrent players um it's like dude in in i i remember i saw a twitter thread where it's like oh this is not like an apt point to make like this is not a good point to raise look elden rings player number dropped after launch it's like yeah all games are expected to drop after launch but when a live service game goes from two hundred and fifty thousand people to like three thousand the whole point of a live service game is you want people coming back yeah and play and elder is a single player game a lot of people yeah. will play that and beat it and they'll be done yeah. or they'll get their fill and they'll just move on because it, it's a single player game but even when you look at Elden Ring's numbers, Elden Ring is doing better in terms of surviving long term despite not being a live service Elden game right now yeah. Elden Ring, it's okay. Yeah, Elden Ring today had two hundred and thirty-eight thousand people playing, which is not it's only a, damn, that, dude. that's yeah, like it. Two hundred and thirty-eight thousand people were playing today, and this is just Steam, just, just Steam, Steam, not including PlayStation, not including Xbox. consoles. And now someone might be like, "Well, what about if you include Halo and Xbox?" Apparently, it's fallen out of the top ten. Isn't that unfathomable that like a Halo game would ever fall out of the yeah. top ten? Like, um, guys, but, I, I know some of you, I, I, I hate to be the crotchety old man here, but Halo used to, it was the Xbox game. Halo 3 it was, was the Halo. Most game on Xbox Live for, yeah. for like a good, a good while there. Halo, it was Halo 3 was two, one of the first years, games to have 3. extensive like television ads for video games. That's was, still I think it was the not super until, common. Uh, but well, it was uh, the biggest launch of uh, entertainment launch, uh, like entertainment launch. If you include films as well, it was the biggest. And then Grand Theft Auto 4 came along and dethroned it. Uh, but then Reach was also a really big launch too. Like Halo used to be on top of the world and now it's it's not. It just ain't. Uh, a lot of people have fallen off. 
and it's not because of like there's no reason that it needs to be this way but i mean i don't know if they had Forge, you know, at launch, that would have seriously helped with this map. That's what problem. they should have prioritized. They should have prioritized that because they you go into this knowing, okay, we we because they know the truth. We don't have much content and people will be upset. They hedge their bets, yeah. but they knew what the truth was. And so they should have said, you know what? Pause the campaign, right? Well, pause the campaign. We need to put in some way for user generated content to exist. Yes. We need to have all these custom modes. We need to have all these maps. We need to set up a system where players can make a whole bunch of shit for themselves because we have a lot of stuff that we have to do ourselves. And they didn't do that because no. I don't know why. I'm not going to pretend to be some video game expert, but I like to think some of my ideas make sense. I, um, I think uh, what's crazy to think about is I remember when Halo 5 came out and Forge was launching in like December, a couple months after, and that was pretty unfathomable. It's like, wow, it's not not available to launch, you gotta wait two months. Here it's like, it's going into a beta a year after the game comes out. A year. And like Campaign Co-op isn't coming until like August. Um, I, Or even the ability to replay missions isn't coming until August. People are like done. People don't well, you know, care that, about the campaign anymore. The it's ability over. To, it's to replay okay. missions, you know, that, that seems like it would take until August to implement. Yeah, well, all I can imagine is that there's just issues with the engine. That's all I... That, it just... It explains a lot to me if the engine is just not easy to work with because six months for, like, two maps and two modes, I think a third one getting added later in the season. Holy shit. And then you have almost at the same time Bohemia Interactive is coming out and saying, yeah, so, you know, like Arma and Daisy and stuff with that new engine we've been using for Daisy, the infusion engine, we're going to be using it for future projects. And here's how it's going to be super friendly for modders. And it's going to release with all these developer tools and stuff like that. So you can make all the crazy shit you want because we want to keep because let, let me check. Let me check Arma 3's player numbers. Arma 3. Arma 3. So what's interesting about Arma 3, let me check the release date. Release date. Arma 3 released in September of 2013. Its all-time peak was 56,000 players. Today, there were 27,000 people playing. Damn. <laughs> it's a nine-year-old game that is operating at about essentially half of its all-time peak nine years later. And it is huge on user-generated content. Mods, add-ons, things like that. And it is running an... And Arma 3 is running an, an, a finicky f engine, whatever it is. So it's, it's interesting to think about. Yep. You know, um, actually, well, I don't know if this will mean anything to you. You guys familiar with the Antiques Roadshow? Yeah. I, I'm familiar with the Antiques Roadshow. Um, so... Um, just in terms of, of severe drop-offs in numbers, um, the season 11 premiere of Doctor Who got 10 million live viewers, and I think it was the most viewed program of the week. Season um, 11 is what year? The, uh, that, that was, was the, the that was the start of the new era. So that's yeah. like all of the that's like all of the people coming to check out. Oh, there's a new guy uh, running the show. So there's like a new actor in the lead. What, oh, what it was going to be like, question. right? So like 2005? 2018. Oh, I thought 2018. Season 11, not season one. Oh, oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah. Talking about the Whitaker era, right? Chimble? Um, oh, the, sorry, Chimble. 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 The most recent episode, the most recent episode was beaten in live viewers um, at the same time by a repeat of the Antiques Roadshow. <laughs> a repeat oh, of the no. Antiques Roadshow. <laughs> Holy uh... crap. That is really is it, funny. Wow. It is pretty incredible. funny. Wow. Tough like, decision. Why would you Having to show sink me this? something that far. Oh Sorry. my god. Why would you show me that? Oh, that's an official Netflix. I don't know if it's official, but Netflix updates account put out Moon Knight and Daredevil. It's a tough decision between the two. It, it would it Moon wouldn't Knight be official. Did. There's no way they'd promote uh, it's, Disney it's, Plus's well, media. It's it's called Netflix. There was no I there. That would have been the yeah. big giveaway. Well, the, the more considering part is the 18,000 likes. 18,000 people. Yo, know, tough choice between Daredevil and Moon Knight. Yeah. It's a real tough one. Moon Knight's mm -hmm. shit. With, um, that, I'm going to have to make the tough decision to hop out and go to fucking bed. Because it's uh, 
about the time of night you that I like make to it do to that eight at hours. the moment. What a loser. Ah. Oh, how many hours am I at? Um, You're I don't know like actually because you didn't start at the beginning. Forty something. Oh, you, you I started later. like an hour. Yeah, in. Probably yeah. Yeah, so you gotta yeah you gotta wait probably seventeen hours or something yeah. Yeah. Anyway, you know I'm gonna I'm gonna gonna leave. It, it was um, real fun. Um, yeah, that was, that was a blast. Tell people about how you're in a cuddly format now. I am in a cuddly format now. If you've got your uh, your rags and your mauler that you like to cuddle as you you cry to sleep, uh, you can add me to that pile. And you you got your drinker as well. You got the you can make your full collection of EFAP little plush toys. I mean, you can add you can add me. Go to makeship dot com. Just Google JXE plush. It comes up. That's, that's the way. That's how you get them. There's a, it comes with a little rhino for milking, and it comes oh. with uh, the timestamp of my longest video emblazoned on the chest. Emblazoned. Emblazoned. Sounds a lot better than yeah, it's there. It is. Oh, it is there. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can make it, it's there sound really good. You know, and you're, it's there. It's just loud. It's enthusiastic. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll allow you to go to sleep, I guess. Thank you. I always wait for your permission before going to bed. It's really annoying when you're not free. I'm kind that way. Good, good, good boy, everyone. Goodbye. Goodbye, chat. Boop. Well, let us continue. Are there any mm, plans for more EFAP merch? I am desirous of consuming beverages from a branded mug, but alas, such a consumable does not exist. Hi, Rags. Hi. You know, that's the attitude I like to hear. Yeah, I mean, uh, give us some time. I know that because we, we, we've, there's lots of little projects of things everywhere that we're trying to get moving in different directions. That sounds like one that we would probably like to do. We'll figure it out at some point. Guys, well, look, I mean, you're yeah, in for decades of EFAP, okay? It's not, we, 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 we'll, we'll keep yeah. going. We'll get at some point. Something I feel like in terms of at least like, that's, that's something I'll consider oh later on. God. Not right now. All right. So someone, Someone had posted this, I guess, from a video. This is, this one's, this is rough. All right, this is the big sads. I have no idea what I'm... Oh, is this... Oh. Is this legit? Like, it happened? It's, it's a screenshot that someone took from a video, Life of a Twitch Streamer by Memeify. So I gotta... I just... I mean, oh, man. that's not as, that's not, you know... It... Could be that they're on their way back, you know. They they could. I literally... think it's just it's a little bit dystopian, isn't it? It's just an image. Yeah, I, I think it's more so the image itself giving off a very particular yeah. vibe. Ah, uh, uh, man. And also <laughs> just the whole I took out my college savings, like, dude, probably shouldn't do don't that. Don't do that. Don't to give do it that. to a streamer. Like, oh man, I don't know. Invest that, that oh. man, or just even just keep it. Like, give him five bucks or something. <laughs> It's a lot of money. All I'll say, I especially. guess, is that, yeah, when someone pulls you out of, like, the worst place in your life, or at least you see it as they were the reason, it can mean a lot to you, and thus... You... It can, definitely. Um, I think this was something that I started to think about when I saw that, um, Booney still has people uh, donating through Patreon, even though he's essentially, like, I'm pretty sure he hasn't made anything on the internet now for, like, years. Completely gone. Except maybe the Twitter account, I'm not sure. But, um, you know, people on the subreddit or Spoonie were asking, like, if anyone's still doing it, why? And there were some people who were just like, I, I, I owe him something that isn't going to be paid that ever. Like, he, his videos, like, brought me out of a position in my life that it was really, you know, that sort of thing. And it is kind of hard to be like, stop paying, it's not worth It's like, if they, if they feel well, if that. Well, they feel it's worth it, right? That's it. It's kind of it. If, if one of you gives me a thousand dollars, I'm going to fucking send it back. Don't be crazy. Like, y'all need, yeah, we, we appreciate everything, of course, but man, like, ugh, you gotta put yourselves first. Don't be taking out, don't be taking out college savings to give to EFAP or buy plushes. We don't want you to put yourselves in a bad spot. Jesus Christ, if you need to pull out college savings to get a plushie, I'd be like, you really, need to, do not worry about the plushie. Do not do it. It's fine. Plushies are, they're neat, and they're cute, and they're awesome. And you should buy one, unless you can't, or shouldn't. So calm down. It's all right. Uh, today's animal of the day is the, uh, do you say it was Adelaide penguin? 
uh, Adele, Adele, I think, uh, no, I screwed it up, I think it's an Adele, I think that's what they're called, Adele oh, okay. penguins. Um, look up how horny they are. No, we, we covered that one, no, it's all good, yeah, that. it's all good, we covered that one. I adore all of EFAP, I've watched nearly every episode and I'm looking forward to the ones yet to come. Theo is cute, I want to be his little sister. Anyways, here's a question for you all, would you rather go deaf or blind? Deaf. Deaf, deaf yeah. Don't get me wrong, I would miss I, hearing things. But, but uh, uh... Oh, vi I, I vision, you know? Oof, what a great little invention. There's so much that I can't do without vision that I, um... Well, maybe maybe not that I can't do, but that it would be so difficult to... Are there any, are there any blind, like, really great blind artists? Oh, there's gotta be, I right? Like, I feel like there has to Jackson be in the same... Pollock. Is is that a was he blind or is that a joke? That was a joke. Yeah, I figured it was. I um, that's that's a, is, is a, that's a controversial one, isn't it? Isn't like Jackson Pollock really uh, well uh, well respected? I don't know if he's well. I don't know. Yeah, how weird. Rags making a controversial joke. What are you doing? Yeah. yeah. Well, because it's always you always think about like um, you know, musicians who are deaf, like Beethoven, that's that's the one that comes to mind. I just figured that there's an equivalent, right? Well, I mean, there's, um, we're talking like Ray Charles and Stevie Wonder. Right. Um, yeah, very kind. And for that, as you wasn't, and hopefully you can become Theo's little sister, I suppose. Um, hi, Comfy Rags. Oh, hi there. Who's a good boy? It is me. I am a good boy. And then they wanted to ask you, Tally or Garrus? Tally or Garrus? It depends for what. So Tally and Garrus both are... Um, so Garrus is... I forget the name of the class in particular, but he's half combat and half tech. Tally is full tech, which is very, very useful. But both of them have decryption. And decryption is a skill that's extremely useful if you don't have it yourself. Because particularly in the first Mass Effect, you want to have someone on your team who has decryption because that's essentially your space lock picking. If you play a soldier or an adept or a class that doesn't ha have access to decryption as a tech skill, you cannot open a lot of closed containers in the world. So you want to have someone who has decryption with them in order to get those containers and you want to have someone who has overload overload does a lot of shield damage which is going to be important in the game and it's a big deal i feel like you can get away without adept powers easy more easily than you can get away without having tech stuff because biotic powers are neat especially in combat but out of combat purposes tech does have its have particular very useful actual uses um so that so in terms of combat i'd probably go tolly because i i'd go all the way in terms of tech biotic or combat you know it's good to have a specialist and so having either of them as a party member is really good as far as like romance options go i mean i always i always really liked tolly Garrus is like Garrus is really great you know? too. So it's really it's tough like to say. I don't know. Yeah. It's it's really tough to say. That's the thing. We could look back at these old games that Bioware made and be like, oh, there's so many amazing characters. It's difficult to choose. Um I'm made aware of this. It's apparently part I don't know which comic exactly of Superman it's in, but the, it was posted to the Superman subreddit, and it's basically a uh, Superman is with his dad. Well, he, when he's much younger, obviously, Jonathan. And there's a bus that's about to hit a kid, and he super speeds over to save the kid. Super speeds back and says, I'm sorry, I know that was... And then, I guess Jonathan says, what were you supposed to do, Clark? Let him die? <laughs> it's like, wait <laughs> <Mad>. a minute. <laughs> wait, hold on, what happened? I feel like the roles are reversed here. Like, like Jonathan's saying you should save people, what the fuck? Like Jonathan is encouraging his son to be a good person. It seems that yeah, so the Superman said really do not like Man of Steel, which I guess I shouldn't be surprised. I, I mean that yeah. <laughs> that doesn't surprise me at all. Um 
Jay, you're a cutie and an inspiration. What's your favorite mashup song? What's your favorite remix? Who's your favorite online music artist? Well, Damn, bad timing. they just left. I'm so sorry, oh. because the, there's, there's probably a lot of answers Jay would like to give to that. Um, just I, nothing we can do. Uh, Lord Longbong of Mjöbschlington Abbey. Have you given any more thought to a Kong fab of Peter Jackson's Long Kong? When there's less going on, it'll be a movie fab for the ages. P.S. Hello, Wagsies. Scritches for the good boy. Ah, uh, thank you very much. We yeah, we have plans. There, yeah. We really do. We really do. It's just that we have so much stuff. There's to a finite on. amount of time in the, uh, in the day. But when it, it happens, happen, it is, it'll be glorious. Oh. It will be insane yeah. in the membrane. Oh, yes. Uh, this just says P.P. Cooper. <laughs> yes. P.P. Cooper? That's a bit D.B.B.D. Mm -hmm. Cooper, whichever way around it is. No, up with B.D. Wong. I, I, no, I'm not. I'm just mixing up B and D because there are words that are... Yep. So it's, I know it's a joke. I'm just clarifying, though, for real. <laughs> okay. Uh, if serial killers didn't kill people, they would have been melted. Hey, there's no TVA in our world. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, I guess serial killers are in their world, so, yeah. Damn. Oh, that's, that's gotta be the like worst dang. job, hasn't it? We talked about this before, but just your keeping an eye on, like, John Wayne Gacy fucking strangling somebody, and then you're like, oh, you didn't, you didn't strangle him fast enough, that's just out of sync. Sorry, dude, you're gonna have to do that again, but do it right this time. Or he decided to yeah. not kill people, and so you have to go and reset that timeline so he did kill all the people. Because, uh, ugh, what a fucked up show. I can't yeah. believe people, like, fucking wrote that. I'm sure they didn't even realize some of that stuff. They just thought it was fun. Fun, fun, yeah. fun. Like, fine police. Like, Kang is the most evil character in all of the MCU, and I don't think it's even possible to be more evil. I don't see how it could be. Please react to the new EFAP animatic by John Stenson. It is good rat. Uh, I've already... I, I know of it. It'll be in our, our meme fab, which we will schedule at some point in the future. Oh my. Um, but yeah, obviously thanks to the creator and um, the awareness. Also, hello Commandant Ruggs and Jay Himmler. Oh, hello! Hmm. Fringy isn't a bird, he's an orc. Extra credits. Oh. Very interesting. Very interesting. Orcs can be green, right? That's a common color for orcs. Oh, uh, well, the Warcraft world, right? Yeah. Yeah, in many. Yeah, in, it's in the Elder Scrolls lore and all kinds. I think goblins are generally green in Pathfinder and D&D. &D. So hmm. I, I think there's lots of, yeah. Uh, you could do every frame of program for EFAP TV. True, but the thing is then it would be the only one that has its own name that changes from... Yeah. Like, because the other ones... You know, like, for gaming, it would be every frame of... A game. e every, ga every frame of game. E -fag. E -fag. <laughs> well, well, I don't know why you would continue with it. I was hit abort on that one. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, you know, probably not, but um, EFAP TV rolls off quite fine, I think. Um, at this point, I'm assuming the first three episodes of any deeply D, bleh, D plus episode is just bait. Dude, it's the first one episode. The next two aren't exactly, like, it's already going to shit, you know? So, I guess you could say that about WandaVision. I wouldn't say that about Falcon and the Wind Soldier. I thought it was shit from episode one. Uh, Loki was shit from Loki was shit minute from one. one. The other one again? Is there another one? Wait, what? Sorry, another what? Oh, I didn't see Hawkeye. Uh... Yeah, didn't yeah. see Hawkeye. Uh, what if, which we didn't watch. Well, we saw we watched a couple of episodes of that, right? Yeah, the fucking Star Lord one. Holy shit! Oh mm -hmm. fucking hell! Just fillet that character even more. Um, but yeah, definitely a lot of bait going on, though. I'm sure of that. Also, thoughts on how they're handling Thor? I watched full Fats videos. Uh, I haven't seen his videos on Thor, but um, I don't know. I have lots of very mixed and complicated feelings about Thor's sort of journey in the MCU. And I have a feeling that once I see this movie, I'm not going to be satisfied, but maybe, maybe. 
Hold no hope. Yeah, never know. It is Taika, and I mean, I was on um, uh, open bar with a couple people, and you know, it was put out there that like the, the Ragnarok doesn't have as much favorability with. Um, I think Drinker said that he's come to not like it as much over time, but he does still really like uh, Jojo Rabbit. And so it's kind of hard to pin on what he expects from uh, Taika. I am pretty much in the same position. I don't know what we'll, we'll, we'll get here. Oh, yeah. Especially with the MCU being... Well, it, it is in the MCU, I mean. Yeah. We'll see. Uh, when is, when is uh, the new Thor out, by the way? Do you know? July. Right. Uh, the general opinions of the EFAP hosts I value the most in order is Fringy, then Mauler, then Rags. Wow. Then, video game opinions, Rags, then Fringy, then Mauler. Which, um, I think it makes sense to put me at the bottom of that one. Uh, film opinions, Mauler, then Rags, then Fringy. Well... <laughs> There's not much well, we could... I guess now we know this specific order for uh, this particular chatter. You know what? It's perfectly balanced in a sense. Um, any thoughts on the quantum TV situation? Not just a copyright abuser, just an all-round piece of shit. Why? Again, I, I don't know enough about the whole situation. Well, as was said, uh, apparently Ackman's got a video summoned up. I've got it in my to-watch list, so... I shall discover something about the situation, presumably. And I recommend everyone do the same, if you're curious about that, because like I said, I don't. I would value you Dumbos playing DDLC the most. Fair enough. Perhaps one day. Mm. If you do more Twitch EFAPs, the color should be hashtag... Oh, so they wanted to say shit brown, but they're not allowed, so they tried to find another way. Use a five next time. Don't use a hashtag. So it looks like hashtag hit. Like, shit brown. Um, fair enough. Also, you can escape a tsunami by standing on a curb. <laughs> that's, 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 I guess if you're a... far enough away from it, there is a point where... Yeah, it'll right. settle down eventually. Uh, keep up the great work, you massives. Well, we shall try. If you like One Punch Man, please watch Mob Psycho 100. Same creator. I feel Fringy in particular would love it. Perhaps. Or if he's here. Mm. I, I've, I've heard Mob Psycho 100 be recommended before, yeah. I think Metal might have seen it. Not sure. So I accidentally I pressed dislike, know. then changed it to like, and a fireworks <laughs> mini animation appeared. I'm really hating the treatment of dislike, not gonna lie. Give you fireworks? For pressing like? What? Where? Right. Unless it's a clever ploy to get everyone to click the like button. No, it doesn't do that. At least not on my end. Yeah, have you gotten fireworks when you like stuff? On the mobile app. Ooh, let oh, let me try my mobile. Mobile. We'll go for uh, Shad's newest video. That should do it. Oh my god, it does. <laughs> you gotta get that dopamine in somehow. Damn, dude. And then there's nothing for dislike. And I know you might be like, well, why would there be? It's like, I don't know. It just, it just why? It would be funny if you hit dislike and it just like deteriorates in a purpley black yeah. sort of just there. Yeah, <laughs> just your phone speakers just be like, ugh, you suck. <laughs> I hate you. Who? Fuck you. Um. Yeah. Well, we know why they would implement something like that. We're trying to encourage you, just push it toward liking everything, pretty much. We're protecting. Yeah. We we want to protect the marginalized groups from all the hatred on the internet. Well, I mean, everyone's assumption is they're just protecting like SNL type shit, or uh... yeah, they are. They're protecting CNN and they're protecting SNL and. Uh, boop. Oh, yeah, uh, someone recommended Mob Psycho 100 to you, Fringy. Oh, um, okay, yeah, maybe. Rags, have you played Hunt Showdown? And if so, what do you think? 
I only played like the pre-alpha for a little bit. I have it. I was gifted uh, it by a friend and I need to play it. It is on my list. I just haven't gotten around to it, but he likes it quite a bit. And I hear that there's some nifty stuff in there. So I just haven't actually played it yet. But one of these days I will get around to playing it. Hmm? Bringy, one day we will discover what your goo is good for. There's even a mystery goo containment unit in Kerbal Space Program. Coincidence? Uh, maybe, but I mean, I'm not familiar with that game, so probably... As far as I know, it's I really know neat. It. What's that? As far as I know, it's really neat, and it's like really good representation of um, the tools and, and, and physics of space shit, right? Oh, so okay. Yeah, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not familiar with it. I've never played it, but I've seen people talk about it, and it seems like it's neat. Bilbo's grandpa is named Mungo Baggins. Look it up. <laughs> Mungo Baggins. M Mungo Baggins. Mungo. That's a great name. Mungo Baggins. Imagine being named that because grandfather they named you of Bilbo after a great grandfather, and you're like, okay, but. What was the other great grandfather's name? They're like Tiberius. You're like, oh. <laughs> ah, yes. Tiberius and Mungo. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, Mungo's the small, short, sort of. Like, I'm assuming Tiberius oh, is the big one. Right? Oh, Mahler. The biography. Let me read this to you real quick. Okay. Mungo was the eldest son of Balbo Baggins and Barilla Boffin. <laughs> Mungo had four younger siblings, Pansy, Ponto, Largo, and Lily. God, Ponto. Mungo, yeah, Mungo married Laura Grubb and have five and had five children. Bungo. <laughs> Bungo, Belba, Longo, Linda, and Bingo. Bingo. Jeez. Oh, if I if I had told you to the room, like you're making this shit up, and he'd be like, "Yes, I am." Now it says here that in Peter Jackson's <laughs> The Hobbit: An Unexpected Journey, Mungo is mentioned when Bilbo orders Gloin to put down one of the chairs because one of them was Mungo's. And if there's anything I know, you don't fuck with Mungo's chair. Yeah, man, they always said that about Mungo. It's, I'm glad that we know that now. And I think they're really enriching. Do you think they'll adapt that into the show? Hmm. Uh, a Mungo Baggins? Yeah. Oh, like a prequel. Where we learned to, we we get to learn about Mungo and Pansy and well remember Longo this is set before Lord of the Rings so oh we might we might yeah maybe we meet a very old Mungo are, Baggins yeah the hobbits are long lived people they live for a while so yeah, great grandfather of Frodo Mungo and we might have yeah we might get all Mungo in there um. Jay, what are your favorite three human races? Black is okay, too. <laughs> Racism. Um, a little behind, but Rags, you absolutely are going to regret passing up on the Arasaka and the paraphernalia. You will regret it. Go back tomorrow and get no, the rifle at least. No, don't say that. They said it. I'm sorry. I wish it was... Uh, was there a gun train at the gun show? No, there was not a gun train. No, there was not. There were many guns and gun accessories, but there was no gun train. Uh, Fringy and Mola, look up the dog breed Horgy. You may look that up if you want. I'm, I'm, I'm busy. With my cart. With your Mario Kart? Yes. Or with your shopping my... cart? No. Are not you my purchasing shopping. items for your abode? The Corgi well, that's Huskies. An interesting world. Critter, yeah. Yeah, Huskies will fuck anything. Wow. What a strange. That was. They were wolves once. Yeah, they were. And then what happened? Humans haven't. Well, we learned yeah. that they had alternate uses. 
Yeah. What are your three least favorite dog breeds? I think. I, oh, I don't it would know. Mainly be the ones that have been bred into like horrors. Yeah, yeah, and it's like yeah, it's not their fault. It's just I wish that they didn't. They weren't made to be that way. Um. But I don't know, like probably loud ass yappy dogs that are just like yeah, they bark yeah. and then they bounce when they bark and then they're just like nah, yeah, 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 yeah. and I'm like Jesus, you are you are way overconfident and you're just loud and you got your eyes bulge out of your head and you're just this this weird freaky I don't know little I don't know just little little fucking yap dogs. What what happens if I type in worst dog breeds? Uh, let me see. What are the top ten worst breeds for first time? Not not first time owners, just worst dog breeds. I don't know that there's um, gonna be like an article for that. Number one is Chihuahua based. Okay, yeah, that's number two I was is to lean towards that. True. Number one says, wait, is this just a list of all breeds, or is it? Is this like a voting thing? What's going on here? Oh, I I don't know. You're the one looking. Because they it. have like. They have like Basenjis and English Bulldogs and Poodles and Akitas and Bull Terriers and Schnauzers and Irish Setters and Brasil of Fila Brasilero. Jesus, I need to I need to show you the picture of this absolute fucking unit. Fila okay. Brasilero images. Uh, it's like this. Oh, maybe I was just looking at a particular sample for that one. Never mind. Oh. It's like it's an it's it's fine. But yeah, I think it's just that this site was one where you vote or something like that because it because it starts off with Chihuahua and I'm like yeah it checks out and then the second one was Pitbull Terrier and I'm like what and then third is Rottweiler and I'm like what this can't what Rottweilers are great. So I don't know what the thing is. Yeah, um, bizarre. Oh well, I guess we'll never know. Mm. I guess we'll never know. Any plans to play EDF five to offset Alien Fireteam Elite? We'll play something at some point. We might play that. Yeah. Aliens Fireteam Elite. Uh, yeah, gonna, I hope so. I can't. Well, I think we do more I, I Gardic Phone to be honest with you. Yeah, Gardic Phone is. I miss Gardic Phone a lot. I enjoy it when I play it, and I'm really kind of looking forward to. We'll see about inviting a whole bunch of peeps. And because it's a maximum of, well, we can't go over it. Have they still not gotten past 10 in these group things? Because, man. Don't know. Come on, Discord, get your act together. Yeah, we'll figure something out. Can't stay for this live, but wanted to drop in to recommend the Corridor Crew's coverage of animation in Arcane that just went up also high rags. Uh, hello. I've already watched it, and I assume it's because they want to stick to a particular time amount. But holy fuck, man! I was really interested in hearing what they had to say about the animation, and like, you you get like a couple of insights, and then they're like, "Uh, well, you know, join us next time when we're going to talk about something else." So I was like, "What? what, 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 what? But <laughs> of all the things to look at for this particular group of people, like this is a whole show that's gorgeously animated. Why aren't you, like, really talking? Don't you don't you have more things to say?" It was a really quick video, and I don't know if it was it felt quicker because I was just really enjoying what they were saying about everything, but um, at the same time I was just like, man, this deserves like a whole load more of stuff, surely. I mean, you know, ultimately I recommend the video. Uh, check it out. It's fun. It's cool. It's interesting. Just that uh, it was quick. It was too quick. Yeah, dude, it's a 16-minute video. Which, uh, once you get, like, intros, outros, bit of banter, and I think they have an ad in there done, down to not uh, not much time to be able to talk about the thing, but I think they keep all of their videos around about that. Maybe it is algorithmically suitable to uh, cut down to the most, just the most interesting parts of the conversation, but I don't know. I just, uh, I'd like to hear more um, discussions from, like, seasoned animators about what works in the show. That'd be cool. Mm-hmm. And I'm sorry, you said seasoned animators, and I was just thinking of them like with garlic. What, and like salt seasons? And yeah, and <laughs> like literally there was, that, there was that split <laughs> second where my brain was like, what the fuck is that supposed to mean? And then, of course, it, it's, it's just that one little, that one tiny little moment where my brain just, mm. maybe I'm hungry. 
I am I'm very eat, hungry. Though. I'm a little bit hungry too. I'm not. That that wasn't an intentional segue, but that was just. I I, I I'm probably not gonna really eat because I'm trying to cool it on eating. Food. Eating's bad for you. Need to relax the fuck out of eating, you know. Also, high rags. Hello. Uh, wings quote of the day. I haven't seen my penis in probably eight years. Yeah, I know that one. How do you know it's still there? <laughs> How does he pee? Does he have to sit down, or does he just like? Um, I guess you can still pee if you can't see it, right? Well, yeah, you, you it's got to come out somewhere. It's just a matter of our, <laughs> how good are you at... How good are you at... You know, like, I just, just sort of knowing by feel. All the ladies in the audience, you'll have to take our word for this. Um, Do you think but, when, when he pees all over the floor by accident, he's like, look here, look, listen, and then grabs it and just gets it right into the toilet instead by jumping in? Oh, maybe he goes That's to the bathroom. That's going to be a scary life, actually. Being so fat you can't see your penis? Waking up yeah, wondering if it's even there? Do you think he can he reach? Is I'm he sure so he can reach his it arms with how... even... I'm not sure. Yeah, I, yeah that's he's a, you, he's a rotund would, boy. If you have to, he remember your law rags. He said when he has sex with the ladies, he just has to lift up all of the fat because it's like a big flap. So he yeah, can... but that's a lie because he doesn't have sex with ladies. Well, I still believe the flat part. So that means that the his flat arms part is true. Yeah, can still easily reach the peen. It's just that you wouldn't be able to see it without mirrors, presumably. Yeah. That's why when he that's why he says when I go out looking for bitches, I need I need a bitch with a ass like a table. I think he would say, he say that. Or well, do you think he would say that? He 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 probably would. My... Makes no sense to me. Yeah, that's probably what he's you know. What? <laughs> Bonus quote: I'm pretty educated <laughs> in fast food menus. <laughs> uh, that's not good. Educated? What does that even mean? Like, what does it mean to be educated? Just well versed. Okie dokie then. Uh, COD and or M O H super chat streaming when? I'd rather play. I think I'd rather play Call of Duty instead. Um, the Medal of Honor. Because there are some legit really good Call of Duties, uh, and I don't have really any fond memories of Medal of Honor. I know mm. I played it, but just nothing stuck with me, and I can't really. Nothing just, yeah, nothing just really stuck with me. COD campaigns are in this weird place for me in terms of would they be good for while well, we're doing Super Chat catch up? It's like, um, I don't know if the running campaigns and cutscenes and stuff would, it would clash a bit, but then it's like, okay, so is it good enough to just stream them as a game? It's like, I don't know if COD is exciting enough to do that. Maybe. You know, it's like this weird Maybe. middle ground where it's like, hmm. it, uh, all, uh, Maybe if, like the old classic, the old classic CODs that were less cinematic, like one, two. I don't, I don't know how many of them are co-op. I don't think so. I don't know, though, but I don't think so. All right. Uh, also, incorrect summary. MGS rising quote of today. Raiden, I wanted to meet Joe Biden. Shows old major zero. Who's All that? Right. I, I, I don't know these references. Right. Me either, actually. Why is Joel in the show? I was told by reviewers for The Last of Us 2, Joel was one of the most hated people in the games. Yeah, weird, huh? Hmm. Yeah, but I mean, that's just not true. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's almost like <laughs> it's not true. Perhaps you were lied to. Oh. Hi, Jay. It's Kiwi. Sorry to keep talking about your DSL. I gotta stand out from the rest of the chat somehow. Also, hi chat, you all suck, no dummy thick. I think Jay likes no the DSL thick. thing. Jay. Uh, it's certainly a compliment, I think. I think so, yes, sure. It, it would be a very odd way to insult someone. The, the only way that I think you could insult someone with that is if you, like if they were really like a, like a, like a, someone who just really didn't like gays, I suppose. Like a really old person who's just, you know, and you're like, well, you've got dick sucking lips, and they're like, what'd you say to me? What I don't, say, boy? I don't suck the penis and no queer, and then they get all mad and angry, and they're like, ah, oh, you Damn, take that back, angry. or else I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw my crawfish at you, in the bucket too, and that's what they'd say, um, and and then, um, 
that maybe they get upset at that because if you tell if you tell Jay or me, we're like, ah, oh, yes, well, yes, they are. Thank you very much. I'm glad you noticed. It's it's uh, you know, I pride myself on that sort of thing. But you'd have to tell a particular kind of person for that to come across as an insult. And they might just be confused. They might think, no, I upgraded from DSL years ago, but it was better than dial-up. Jesus Christ. Uh, Fringy, did you know that bird is your city? Don't think that's true. All right. Also, Longman, you should consider traveling the heated wastes of New Vegas. It'll make you wish for a nuclear winter. Also, Gigashums. I think that, shums. that'd be one for a stream, I think, as long as I get the right guides on what mods I should install, because apparently that game can be a bit of a gank. I wouldn't mind playing that. That'd be... The power creep is insane for Yu-Gi-Oh! I just got back into it, and most of my old cards are useless, lol. Oh. Yeah, yeah, man. Damn. I remember a lot of the old cards, because we played with them, and I was familiar with them. And watching these videos talking about the power creep, they're just like, yeah, like all the cards from back in the day, they're basically all just worthless. They've been completely overwritten, and the cards that you thought were super amazing, people don't even fucking play them. There's a card, because Theo was saying this, there's a, there's a card called Regeki. It is a magic card. And it essentially, it, here's what the text is. It destroy all of your opponent's monsters. What an insane power. It just, boom, destroys all your opponent's monsters. You can you can have, like, three of them. You can have the max amount of the copies of the card. And, like, most decks just don't run it. Because why, why would you use a pathetic card like that, like, destroying all your enemies and monsters? Fuck that. You want to be using actual powerful cards that let you do the searching for so you can pull off this combo that lets you find this other card that lets you look for a, this other card that combos with this card to help you fucking win the game. To all in the cast, what is your favorite racist joke? Um, um, I can't tell you. I'm gonna say it's probably not boy, wise that one. Um, boy, it is hilarious. What do you call 100 senators at the bottom of the ocean? 100 senators at the bottom of the ocean. Um, there's no answer for this, by the way. Oh, is that just oh okay. oh? Okay. I got nothing. Oh. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. What? What are we to do with this? Oh, some people saying a good is start. That... A lot of people saying a good start. Is that the? Is that the joke? Right. Is the meme meant to be? Well, the government sucks. I think so. I I Google okay. I googled one hundred senators at the bottom of the ocean and I got nothing. Oh, okay. So I don't know what that's about. I don't know. I you get a lot of soggy. Old people. What, soggy old people, <laughs> yeah. I am white. How bad is using uh, the black fist emoji for me? That is uh, digital blackface as well. That is, that is, yes. It's, so, wasn't it's there, the, I remember there was uh, that video, right? Wasn't it like a BBC and internet thing? Yeah, yeah. And then there was, because, what is it? Wasn't the idea that, I don't know, like white people find themselves boring and they find it more interesting to leverage it's like it doesn't belong to them or it's basically like cultural appropriation but like a, in a racial way it's just some right because i hold that was the whole I, thing I like prefer, emojis I prefer are the yellow world where we don't talk about these things. yeah but mm -hmm. emojis are yellow because they apply to everyone and everything it's not about a person it's about well the emotion no i think uh and the i think a lot of uh I think a lot of emojis now have uh skin shades that you can i know they do now apply. and i just don't use them because I don't, I hate that. I hate that we have to give skin colors to our emojis so that, like, yellow was everyone. It, it applied to everyone because it's not an actual skin color. It, it, if, it lets you focus on the actual emotion and, and the meaning being conveyed, not, oh, I need to, I need to make sure that when I give a thumbs up, it is of the shade that is appropriate to my skin color. Like, fuck, I'm so glad that I don't think of the world in those ways. Hashtag yellow pride. I think it's just pandering to the Simpsons. 
So do you guys remember there was that tweet from a guy who was like condemning all white people who use any emojis or expression at like gifts for, with black people? And then someone said like this you and they had just an old tweet where he did the exact same thing and I think his reply uh, was something like I too have engaged in this awful behavior. <laughs> <laughs> I've grown as a person. Oh nice. <laughs> oh. oh man. Did any of you guys watch the Metica versus Fuentes stuff last night? No. No. Nor have I heard anything about it. Uh which I I'm surprised I haven't heard about it. That sounds like something someone would have told me about, but yeah. No, I haven't. Mola, can you turn the lights on in your profile pic? Um, maybe the lights are on. I just like it dimly the lights lit. Lights are on. The lights. His eyes are on. He, that's those are the lights. His eyes. Also, why is Rags under a blanket? Cause it's cozy time, bitches. Also, why is Fringo Sometimes still in denial of his up. bird heritage? I'm not in denial of anything. You're just not correct in your observations. That's all. I was like denial. Uh, wow. I mean, if that if that's where we've settled into, where anything that I could ever say in like rebuttal is denial, then sure. Oh, that sounds is like that acceptance. We made it. Is that springy? Yeah. <laughs> well, we skipped the other <laughs> four steps. It was is... it was the words in between were all those ones. Yeah. <laughs> we we it was just oh, speed running it. Hey, if the moon hey. were made of barbecue spare ribs, would you eat it? I feel I like don't, I, I don't know why I would eat the moon, we need the moon equivalent rather than Yeah, that's the thing. Well also it's probably really cold. Um I love <laughs> I love barbecue. Well I mean cold ribs cold? probably taste pretty good. The, what, the moon like, is, is very cold, cold the rags when it's well, in the I dark. Well it, yeah, when it's in the dark, but what about the side that's in the light? Is that uh I think when it's in the light it's quite warm. Yeah. Okay. But then when it's in darkness it's freezing, like very cold. So it's constantly being frozen and then heated up and frozen and yeah every up, two weeks it's like cyclical um i remember futurama had a bit on this um oh yeah the whalers three. on the moon and they had to that's run that's right the whalers was, on yeah, the moon yeah, yeah, yeah they yeah. carry their harpoons for there ain't no mm -hmm. whales so we tell 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 and sing out merry tune uh what was it oh and then uh he, he runs over the person god die die doing what i love <laughs> oh <laughs> But the, but if I had the capacity to consume the moon as much as I, as much as I love oh. barbecued ribs, I'll leave I feel that like to the moon is the moon's made of cheats. Yeah, that's a different thing. Yeah, well, no, but I'm saying like if there is any adventure that involves consuming the the moon, I'll leave uh, those duties to Wallace yeah, and because Gromit. They just had a little bit, you know. They're more, they well, they're more equipped bit. to deal with it. They're inventors, they're, you know. They're I'm a conservationists of the moon. Just a little bit. It's just oh, this one time. It was a special then. thing. I don't know that Mike. Do? I don't. I haven't figured that out yet. <laughs> no. I haven't figured out if I made an invention yet. <laughs> yeah, I haven't got the law figured out. I just haven't. Isn't I, your goo an invention? I, I guess you, if you want to call that an invention, sure. I don't know. I guess it is an invention in the sense that it's something I've created. But I guess. When I think of adventures, I'm thinking of mechanical things, you know? I don't know why, honestly. I just, I think I just, that's, uh, I don't know. Like, I'm not a tech guy, canonically speaking. Uh, Mola, what was the electric guitar song you used in TFA Part 4 when talking about convenience? Uh, also, why don't you list the songs you used in the description? Honestly, because I just, like, had no idea that people would be interested in finding them, I guess. Which is an oversight on my part. Um, that song is from the Jim Carroll band, I think. The song is People Who Died. It's in, uh, I remember it first being used in Dawn of the Dead, Zack Snyder's movie, version of it. Uh, but it actually turns up in the opening credits of Suicide Squad, The Suicide Squad. And because I was talking about The Suicide Squad, I felt it was appropriate, especially because when it comes to convenience, it often is used uh, in the form of getting people killed or having them live, especially in the context of Fargo, which was one of the examples I was using, and of course, the Suicide Squad. Yeah. But yeah. Hopefully that's the one you were looking for. I'm assuming I got that right. If it's a different one, then... Whoops. Mystic Mansion from Sonic Heroes does indeed appear in that video. Sonic... Oh, wait, no, that's just the Sonic Heroes song. Mystic Mansion's all spooky. 
Sonic Heroes, Sonic Heroes, and then I don't someone. By the way, it. someone posted the 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 Belle Delphine thing with the light bulb. Uh -huh. Based on the first image of her, like having it in her mouth, it seems like there's a lot of clearance for her teeth. So I don't know. Maybe it's just a weird well, picture. But one of the things I thought of when people say like the danger of putting a light bulb in your mouth, is you can't get it back out. And I was like, well, it, that depends on the size, obviously, right? It must, because if it's like a smaller fluorescent bulb, I imagine you can get those out. Maybe there's a more standard bulb size. I guess if they're talking about, about or... the normal one that we're thinking about, right? The standard, like, I don't know, 100 watt light bulb. Yeah, maybe. Maybe that's it. But yeah, she, um... That makes me wonder, actually. Is it... Is there something about the physics of it that prevent... Like, because like, if you got it in, that means the um the widest part of the bulb cleared through your teeth and thus should be able to on the way back, right? I think it's about suction and pressure, right? Like, uh, wasn't that something that Ryan, you mentioned maybe, earlier? That... Maybe, maybe, but right? I Because I don't know like what else it would be. Because it's not going to be airtight to be able to create that pressure inside of your mouth, right? Because your lips and your, your teeth aren't generally going to be airtight, especially not around a glass bulb. So, uh, so I don't well, know why that is. Well, I mean, how is it that someone fits their hand in a jar and they can't get it out, right? Like, it has to get in, but I don't know that it's that simple in terms of, you know... Because I've always getting... been able to... I don't know, maybe it's the... So, because when you stick it in, maybe there's more of a slope or... But that would be opposite with the light bulb. Um, I don't know. But I, I, it does seem intuitive, right? That if you can get it in, then physically you, there's enough it, space for it to get out, right? I think it is intuitive, but at the same time, you could tell me that it's it's not that simple, and I would I would believe that. That there is a lot more to it than uh, just, you know, oh, well, you got it in, so you're good. Like, that it's a little more complicated than that. I can Yeah, like, oh, don't stick your head through the, like, like kids when they stick their heads through fences and stuff. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, so a little I, shit yeah, got it in there. Like he could pull his, pull his head back out. It's like, it's not quite that simple. However, the longer you wait, the more difficult it will be to take your head out. Why is that? Because your head's growing. Oh, yeah, sure, but I thought you meant, like, over a relatively small period of time, not, like, well, you know, years. I mean, I was just saying, don't don't wait too long. The sooner you try to pull it out, the better. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I guess I that's true. I waited four years, now I can Why is he an old man? I waited four years, and I couldn't pull my head back out of the fence, and so now I have to live here. I've lived here. I've lived here in this finch my whole life. I lived in this finch. Now I'm dying in this finch. Like how we can't just have a normal voice. Like I lived in this here fence That's for a long time. That's what old people sound like. Old people. They sound, sound like, like old. Prospect. I lived in They're this here old thing. fence from eighteen eighty. I'm in this old fence. Yeah. I'm from eighteen. It's like South Park. You know, it's eighteen eighty four. I'm Sheriff McLawdog. <laughs> McLawdog? <laughs> I think his name was Sheriff McLawdog. Yeah. Sheriff McLawdog. I still here county back law, in 18... Oh, God, that was that was a funny one. Because, like, they're like, you know, give me the code to the safe. You're all... It's like, I don't know anything about no fancy safes. I'm just a simple smith. And then he hits him with the face right. of the gun. Minor 49er. He misspelled it, but he knew he misspelled it because he retracted his message. Oh, minor right. 49er <laughs> is, I guess, oh. a, a kid in 1949. But Minor 49er oh. was a, was a, a Scooby-Doo villain. And I remember Velma, she'd say it. <gasps> Look out, it's the minor 49er. Oh my gosh, who could it be? Oh, it's the one person we met right before when the episode started. Huh, how about that? Anyway, I guess we'll go on our next adventure. I, I'm not doing a Simpsons reference. It's a the South Park, Park reference. One. You didn't get to He's finish like, it. Someone, so bad for you. Did, yeah, because the end of it is um, the, the Hans Gruber equivalent just pulls out his gun. He's like, give me this safe code or you die. And it's like, uh, 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 one, two, I, yes. I don't know nothing about no fancy door code. I'm just a simple blacksmith. <laughs> yes, shot. Because he's it's so like the only in Criticism here. I have for you is like you could get rags to understand this joke if you had just delivered the the idea is right. You know when you go to like old timey recreation y places, they have to commit pretty hardcore to their personas. All the actors and all the personas. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I've been to still so set up. They the... set it up at first by everyone seeing that he's wearing a modern watch, and he's like, Whoop. and he goes, I don't know nothing about no, you know, just to give you an idea of, like, how yeah. they account for things going wrong. 
Then uh, they do like a die-hard situation where the whole place gets taken <laughs> over and like these gunmen are trying to get them to do stuff, but they just remain in character as much they as possible. They remain in character. <laughs> and then like Hard Group is like, God damn it, you people are fucking insane! <laughs> <laughs> because the part was, he got a guy who, to, who was actually going to tell him and then uh, as he's about to tell him, it's like, you put in one and then one of the other guys shoots him in the chest. And he's like, what he meant to say is that we don't know nothing about no fancy door codes because we use wood, you know, like wood locks and sitch. Yeah, it's good. And the it's best good part good. was that the only reason that they were there was because they had robbed a Burger King and they hadn't even taken money. They'd taken burgers. <laughs> and this guy's like, I want my cut. And then he just gives him a burger and he filters through all the layers like it's money. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> Good episode. Then, what season is that? Oh, that, that was season 12. Super Fun Time. That was the name of the episode. Because that was when uh, Cartman and Butters sneak Damn. out and go to Super Fun Time. I remember watching that Super when it came out. Like, yeah, that was 2007 or 8, man. <laughs> yeah, uh, how's it feel? Yeah, just well, it's just... That fuck is endearing, uh, enduring rather, but also endearing. It is both endearing and enduring. Endearing. Yes. I don't, because uh, that show has already been renewed for like another five seasons. It ain't going anywhere. Batwoman's struggling to get even a little bit, you know, just one more season. South Park, they're like, yeah, you're renewed through season 28. Also, here's like 10 movies that you get to make for uh, Paramount. Alrighty. Uh, EFAP streams Depp versus Herd Trial when? We ain't doing that here. Uh, we're not <laughs> streaming that. Uh, also, Depp said, I chopped my finger. Amber's lawyer said, so you did it to yourself. Thing is, it's not even chopped. There's a lot of uh, evidence that's being shared. I, c I don't remember exactly the details of that one. Mm -hmm. I'm watching it in full. I've just seen snippets and parts. Uh, big slash obscure works only seek to display explicit knowledge no better than Snapple facts. Implicit knowledge displays a wiser use of communication. What? I have no idea what that's about. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I'm not sure what I was connected. What is Tails' real name? Miles. I was going to say Bartholomew. No, it's Miles. Miles I said I, I, I said I was going to say Wait, Prower. Miles Prower, that's it. What's Sonic's real name? Sonic. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. The Sonic's name is Sonic. Nope, his name is Sonic. And that's it. <laughs> uh, hi, Rex. Yep. Have you ever tried Risk of Rain uh, 2? I have. I've played it I quite a bit. I think you have, right? Yeah. Yeah, I've played it quite a bit. I played I enjoy a little it bit. quite a bit. I think it's, it's neat. A very fun roguelike I would recommend to people. Hmm. If I had to do an impression of Fringy, I'd say, hey, okay, alright. Amused slash laughing. Hey, okay, alright. Okay. <laughs> I think I think okay. I think Fringy accepts that. Okay. Yeah. I suppose so. Um, I love the Batman. I hope there's more movies like it. Oh, I would way prefer we get that over what we're getting with the MCU shit. Oh, yeah. So yeah, give, give, give more. I'm more than I'd be excited to see the the sequel. I don't know, I don't know who, what we're gonna get. Um, have you guys watched Sheev Talks video on objectivity versus subjectivity? I think he makes a lot of good points, and you guys should check it out. I know of the video. I don't think I've seen it, though. Haven't heard of it. Bringy, Google, Google image search Tonberry and explain yourself. Uh, maybe it's just heavy and it's called a Tonberry. <laughs> then again, I could yeah. be totally wrong. <laughs> <laughs> What is this? Where's this come from? Oh, it's from Final Fantasy. That's where I know that from. The Tonberry. Yeah, I remember that. These fuckers were deadly. They, I know in Final Fantasy what uh, did I Tactics do? Advance, they, they moved very, very slowly. But they, they like, 
insta killed you or something it was like they were super deadly but they all could only move like two spaces um they specialize in knife and karma masters high speed they're yeah they're i think they're very yeah they were very deadly like but they were knife. very they just run around yeah. with little knives i guess so that's that's a funny looking character <laughs> i like that a lot Um, EFAP story slash character quality on True Detective 7 Memento Mass Effect RDR 2 FNV. Thanks for being just like the simulations. Watch those wrist rockets. Um, wait, you're asking us to say what the story and character quality of all of those things are? Because, uh, I think I've watched all of those things. True Detective, I barely remember anymore, and I don't think either of you have seen it, right? I haven't seen True Detective. No, I've not seen it. Seven, I would call excellent. Unfortunately, I can't talk very deeply about that either, because I haven't seen that in ages. Likewise. Memento is incredibly well-executed, very unconventional story. Though... So... I don't remember thinking like, oh god, I love these characters. I think I was more so just enveloped in the uh, the idea of how this is all coming together. It's, it's like a film you watch backwards, essentially. Uh, right. Pretty cool. Mass Effect. I mean, up to you guys. I mean, I really like Mass Effect. I like it quite a bit. Absolutely. Any quick comments on the story slash character quality? Uh, it's mainly the characters are the thing that really carry Mass Effect, and the world, I guess. The plot's it's are pretty a great... straightforward. Yeah, the plot isn't complex at all. It's mostly a bunch of small stories that are kind of linked, that, in a way, uh, that has no overarching plot. Yeah, story, yeah. yeah uh, the gameplay is pretty good throughout. The first one is... Um, I don't think it's bad, but it's just sort of... It's different. It is not a. T it's, it is definitely an RPG that is also a third-person shooter. And you cannot forget the RPG part of it, but they certainly turn into more. I get they definitely just turn into third person shooters, third person uh, cover based on. shooters. Yeah, yeah. Um, Problem is, I can't speak much to one because I didn't play one. Um, I played two and three. All right. Uh, next one. Well, another one was uh, Red Dead Redemption Two. Uh, I really like Red Dead Redemption 2, but that is another one where I think it's actually been too long um, since I played it, so I'm not sure what I uh, what I would say about it at the moment. And Fallout New Vegas. Which... Rags, I think, are you the only one that's played that? Or... I think that's just New Rags, Vegas? Um, yeah, I played it uh, a decent amount. Uh, I like it. I like it. It's been a very long time since I've played it, though, so I wonder how well it holds up. Hmm. Probably does decently well, but I'm not sure. I'm just not sure. Is it a strong story, do you think? Do you remember? It's, it's got a really uh, yeah, good reputation. I think so. Yeah, it does have a very good reputation. Um, alright. Oh. Jay, I ordered your stupid plushie, you massive. Hi, Wags. Offeringu, a fellow green. Hello, hello. Are you a fellow green? Good for you. Favorite bit from Quest for the Holy Grail? Mine's the joke with the peasant criticizing the legend of how Arthur got Excalibur. Yeah, I really like that scene. If I went round saying I was an emperor because some moistened bin threw a sword at me, they'd lock me away. Um, Be quiet. Nah, now I see the violence inherent in the system. Oh, sorry. You, you say which one you want. I think he kind of says a watery tart threw a sword at you. I think, I'm pretty sure he says a moistened bin. Um, I think that's exactly what he said. I cannot. I, I think there was. I think there was something about a fast. Yeah, there was a farcical aquatic ceremony. It was, that was one of the lines. He said, "You can't expect to wield supreme power just because some watery tart threw a sword." Oh, sure. At you. But but the line I said was the one that was different one. Yeah, it's a different one. Yeah. Is, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Real power is derived from the masses, not some farcical aquatic ceremony. <laughs> Strange women lying in ponds distributing swords is no basis for a system of government. <laughs> True. Yeah. Uh, he's, I mean, he's not wrong, yeah. For me, it would be the um, 
And I was, it wasn't that long ago, right? Frankie, I was talking about the um, the bridge. The the the. the yeah, yeah. I don't even know the fucking question master guy. Uh, I was just, it's it's a really good memory when I first saw that scene. I was fucking losing my mind with how funny I thought it was, but the uh. Answer three questions, shit, and then Lancelot gets through it like immediately because <laughs> it's really easy. Yeah, <laughs> and like. <laughs> Yeah, just the the fact that it's, it's like, what is your favorite color? And I think he just says blue. And then he's like, all right, off you go. Yeah. And then the next one yeah. is like, what's your favorite color? And he's like, I think he says like, red. No, wait, blue. Ah! <laughs> <Just like, laughs> what the fuck would you? <laughs> Why would you say it differently? And the Black Knight is a great sequence as well. Um, yeah, they're just... These are the kinds of... It's like subversive comedy because you expect the joke to be, it's a difficult question, you can't answer it, you die. And that's kind of absurd and kind of funny, but they do so much better than that in the, the um, like, uh, what is your name, where are you going, or whatever, and then the, the difficult question of, um, what is the average wingspan of a, of a swallow? And then Arthur is like, well, do you mean a swallow from, like, this place or this place? And the guy just goes, I, I don't know, and then he just gets fucking <laughs> What is the maximum <laughs> airspeed velocity of a fully laden swallow? <laughs> you mean African yeah. or European? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know that. Oh, oh it's such bullshit and so funny. Yeah. What are you ranks? What one of those your favorite, or do you have another one? I think Life of Brian's my favorite. No, no, no. It's favorite. A favorite thing. gag from uh, from Holy Grail. Hmm. Hmm. I just don't know. I. Uh, yeah, I just don't know. I, I legit don't know if I could pick one out as my favorite. Also, I haven't seen that movie in a long time, so I need to I need to see it. I wonder if they would work free fat movies or it would just be us. It would it just, be just be us laughing and talking it might about just how be great us it is. And enjoying it, yeah. Song suggestion. MF Doom Figaro, it'll clear up your depression. Uh, almost like a confession. Now I'm gonna dump the trash and press the button for compression. Okay. Well, there you go. Uh, the bolster is Fringy's point. My favorite quote from any Halo game may be from Arbiter from Halo 2 when he says, Even on my knees, I am unworthy to be in their presence. There's a lot. Arbiter has a lot of great lines. Um, oh damn, there's, there's so many great exchanges. Uh, Shipmaster had great lines constantly. Shipmaster is a really cool character. I, I'm not sure what my favorite line would be from like Halo 2 specifically. I think there's a uh, there's too many. Uh, man, what would it be? Damn, I'm not sure because the problem is I'm sitting here just thinking about uh, lines that they're. they're Damn. Uh, well, I like the exchange where it's, uh, you know, that armor suits you, but it cannot hide that mark. You know, nothing ever will. And then, uh, Shipmaster, you are the Arbiter, the will of the prophets, but these are my elites. Their lives matter to me, yours does not. Uh, and then he says, that makes two of us. It's like, yeah, I like, I like that. We're we, we, we doing some... Where it's so easy is from Halo 3, but that might be... that. That's a really strong line of dialogue, uh, given the context both times. Uh, I find the Will Smith slap hilarious. I like it. I mean, it's funny. It's uh, an absurd situation. Uh, <laughs> yeah. What is the political expediency of the statement, criminals are based unless they go after me? Who says that? Who's that? I'm not familiar with the person who said that, but it doesn't seem... Seems like that can, that can be considered a hypocritical quote of sorts. I really love watching smaller streamers. It's really close and comfy and allows you to have a full-on conversation with them. Thoughts? Yeah. Definitely. Potential yeah, that's, that's uh, yeah, a vibe. Uh, I really love watching smaller streamers... Oh, wait, sorry. Uh, Froggy, Raggy, Fry Max Payne 2, better gameplay than 3. Uh, yeah, maybe. I'd like to play those first two games at some stage. 
Rags has any feelings? I guess not. I don't think I played Max Payne. I didn't play Max Payne 2. I, I, I played only 3. I liked it quite a bit, but it's the only one I played. Um, <laughs> they, so they asked you to play 2. Uh, they said it's better oh, than 3. I, I will consider that. Do you, do you know how long it is? About how long it takes to, to beat? No. No idea. I don't know. Jack 2 is what Shadow the Hedgehog wishes it was. Yeah, kind of. Um, Jane slapped around Thor since he represents white male in hate and Tumblr. Will Jane just bend over Thor or will it be metaphorically happen? Uh, I... <laughs> Listen, let's just see it first, all right? See what see what they get up to. See what see what what they got in store for us. Uh, you guys haven't destroyed a popular show for being terrible lately. May I suggest Yellowstone? A lot of love for such a writing disaster. Uh, Yellowstone. How I've heard it? one of my friends talk about it and how much he likes it, but I don't know anything about it, honestly. I just. Also, what do you mean we haven't hate on a popular show? Moon Knight and Halo. Yeah. Well, I guess Halo's not that popular, but still. True. Yeah. Oh, this one says message retracted. Uh oh. Who do you guys talking Unless about? Unless they said message retracted. In which case? Here you go. I've heard yeah. you guys talking about Game of Thrones and stuff. I was just wondering if you got a chance to play Elden Ring. I think he wrote the story. Uh, you're in luck. There's a whole EFAP about Elden Ring. Just go ahead and jump into the Moolah channel and uh, look back on the past few EFAPs and you'll you'll spot it and you'll get everything you could possibly want. We cover quite a few topics. Um, enjoy. Maybe Blixt is the Swedish name for lightning? Blix. Blit Blitz. If it's pronounced... Blitz. Yes. Um, in that case... Yeah, I, I, I don't know about that for a superhero name. I guess it's okay. Blitz. Is it really as good as Mighty Thor, though? Uh, no. Definitely not. Mighty Thor is like Thor, but mighty. Yeah, what's the implication, huh? Are you saying that Thor isn't mighty because Mighty Thor is the mighty one? What's that about? Hmm? I'm pretty sure uh, Thor... They're the one drawing the distinction. They're the one who are making a distinction between Thor and Mighty Thor. So, one just wonders. Thor calls himself mighty in, in Age of Ultron. So, you're saying he's a liar now? By Thor. Hmm. JD said, script for Pirates 5 was so bad, he spent most of the time during filming rewriting his lines and hated the film for what they did with Captain Jack. Um, cool to know that. Man. I'd like to know more when actors are critical of the characters they're playing and the directions they've been taken against their will. Interesting. Even it's, when it's I don't agree, agree with them, I'd like to know. Morley, your Star Wars videos are so on point. Glad you like him. Saw Whiplash recently. Thought it was great. I um. It is. I recommended it to Drinker several times, and then eventually I was just like, "Fucking watch it. You'll love it." And he was like, "Oh, I'll love it." Well, I was like, "Yes." Not even like it's not even close. Like you'll love it. You'll think it's great. And then he watched it, and he was like, "Wow, that was great," and I loved it. Wow. And then he made a video on Damn. it, which was like two days ago. Which I wonder if that's why that person ended up watching it. Who knows? Civilization has been destroyed, but you have the game that will lead humanity. What game is it, and how will it change the world? A game? I think it would be hard to say how it would change the world, you know? That's, that's, well, at that uh, point, I would gun for something like the latest Civ, or maybe something more complex than that, that just literally has, like, a, a loadout. Maybe of Skylines might be good. You know, it's just like, here you go, this will be an explanation of just, I don't know, how a city works. Well, I know this is... But what I'm getting at is more so just an information repository for all tech and progression and how we can get there and maybe even a, a way of simulating systems. Um, yeah. So yeah, I probably off the top of my head go for something like Civ or, or whatever else, but I can't imagine, like, is it, unless they were asking in a sense of like, if actually it was Metroid Prime and they try and learn their ways from it, I'd be like, no, 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 no. We have to go for something less. 
a bit more uh, broadly encompasses civilization. So, what did you guys think about the AJ copyright things? I guess I kind of have a vague idea already, given what Rag commented. Hi, Rags. Hello. Yeah, they keep striking him and claiming his video for his uh, Halo reviews that he's making. Oh, yeah, 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 I heard about that. Uh, and he said he wants to take it further if they do it again, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, he said that, uh, like, if it, if it came up again, he'd be kind of willing to fight against it. Uh, Jesus is the first mutant in the comics. Really? Nice. No way, right? Like, that's a... You, no way. I like uh, it. I mean, I like it could it. be. I like it. I wonder if people were happy with that, or people were very upset with that. I mean, like... <laughs> well, because you wouldn't necessarily have to say that religion was true or not while saying that, right? You can be like... Wait, were they arguing that the mutation like gene came from him, or he was just... I'm assuming not. Jesus, that does... I <laughs> not, yeah. That... That does make a lot of questions happen. Uh, alright. Next, no, oh no, neat word of this EFAP for y'all, sagacity. Yeah, I use sagacity a couple times in my new video, I like that. Sagacious, like a sage. If you're sagacious, you are wise. If you have sagacity, you have wisdom. There you go. A photon went to check into a hotel. The concierge asked him if he needed help with his bags. The photon said, No thanks, I'm traveling light. Yep. Mm hmm. Oh. I like it. I like it. Heard about the Netflix news? Yeah. Did we talk about that or did we not? I can't are we, are I we talking we about have. the. They, they tried to do the subscription changes and the password sharing. Well, I tried to end that. The main so, one is uh the main one is that for the first time like in the company's history they've lost, lost subscribers pubs, and as yeah. a consequence their uh their stock dropped like thirty percent in a day. Damn. Well, people expect consistent growth, and I think if there's an expect because now they even expect that they're going to lose like two million more by the end of the year. So uh, you know, like there's not. That's that's scary for a lot of investors, I would imagine. It's just like, oh, upward growth is not guaranteed um, here, you know? Well, uh, see how that goes. Opinions on How to Train Your Dragon trilogy? I think we've been asked this a couple times now. Uh, I think so. I like the first quite a bit. I, I like can't remember much it. about the second. I, I don't think I saw the third. I guess there's a show or whatever. I can't remember if I saw the second one, and then the third one I've definitely not seen. They are quite beloved, I believe, those movies, and I wouldn't mind checking them out again sometime. Um, I would have a COD Zombies Park and have Kino de Toten paintball. That would be cool. Well, the, the, the IP turned into a park, I guess. Uh, Fringy will get his rent when he fixes my door. Why has he got to fix your door? Why do I have to fix your door, yeah? <laughs> I'm not a door fixer. I'm a play exactly. doctor. Uh, video game controller dances goofily under the word woot. Uh, that's an, I guess. Thank you. Did you sniff the butt of the dog at the gun show, Rags? No. I've seen Turning Red. And I really did liked it more than I thought, but I thought the film was overall okay. Not great, but not terrible. Also, the intercourse in the film is a big non-troversy. I've seen Mr. Enter's review, and it's pathetic and mind-boggling. Uh, I'm not saying that you can't criticize this movie because there are issues with the film. I just want good arguments. I've not seen the film or his review, but I've seen ER's review, and I'm also just found it really funny. I don't know if uh, oh, uh, red. You mean? Hmm. The review of, I I missed that. I was I was doing something. That, were they asking about turning red? Yes. Right. Yeah. Um, the, the, Mr. Ant has gotten in lots of trouble for his take about nine eleven. Oh, I think. Yeah. yeah. I noticed. 
kind of surprisingly viral. Uh, it makes me wonder if there's something in my videos that could easily be snipped out like that. Because the thing is, from what I'm gathering from the clips I saw, what he's saying is that he expected the timeline to be treated with more care because of the event happening in proximity to it, which is his preference, I think I would argue. But I can at least understand why he's saying it. It's being construed as Pixar should portray 9-11 in their kids' movie. You know, like, it's... It seems to have rolled away a little bit from what he was actually saying, at least... Yeah, like, a limited a level of charitability. Yeah, which, um, I might be biased in the sense of, like, God, this could easily happen to me with fucking any clip from me. The amount of times people will cite that I said, um, the lights flickering in TFA was, like, a problem when, in the video itself, it is an example of bringing up a thing that is absolutely a nitpick, nitpick and doesn't matter at all, really. But it's still something that you can look at and think about why they would do it. And I even said, like, the flickering lights, there is just no fucking reason this should be happening, really. Um, but it creates a really uh, strong visual of, of, like, you can kind of just make out that these are the new stormtroopers or the old one and... It's an action scene that they're sort of slowly landing. It's just like, there's reasons they chose to do this that go well beyond whether or not that's what would be happening. And I felt like all of TFA has that problem. Uh, it's not about making it work in a, in a way that like matches cause and effect or anything. It's more so what they want to try and get to show. Um, but that still gets taken out as like, he's complaining about fucking lights flickering, dude. And it's just like, that's not part of the point small thing. So, you know, a yeah. little bit of sympathy. At the same time, I'm not familiar with his work, and I haven't seen that video, so perhaps I'm extending a lot of good faith where I shouldn't be. I don't know. I just, uh... It, he's, he's been, like, flattened by everybody on Twitter, basically, which is not gonna be fun. I've had it happen with Jenny. Uh, it's especially weird when people who you're familiar with are like, yeah... Leave women alone. <laughs> Let them hate Joker. Um, Thanks, well, they could clip the whole Rose Tico Shrek stuff. Yeah, we, unfortunately, that's completely ran away in terms of what the the reason that even started. But it's it's um it's an easy one to make me to try and come up with some kind of ulterior motive with that one. Um, Eos review is quite funny. Yeah. Be curious what your thoughts on that one were, because this is the thing. Uh, Mr. Enter's review on Seeing Red is probably one of the most unpopular reviews of anything ever. Judging from, from the passionate reaction. Uh, well, I guess it's... Well, I mean, yeah, like, I, I, I'm not sure what... It it feels like the conversation surrounding that film has been particularly toxic. Um, which, uh, yeah. I mean, I've certainly not had it recommended to me by, like, anybody, so I probably won't see it. Um. Uh, well, yeah, like, I, I, because it's, you know, it's, plot's pretty wonk. Um, the character work is fine. The animations, like, it's, um, but, I mean, if, I guess at this point, right, like, a lot of animated films look good. Uh, like, a lot of techniques that have been pioneered over, like, the last decade. So, mm. yeah, I, I don't know. It's, it's not, yeah, I don't know. Oh, did I say seeing red at some point? My bad. Oh. <laughs> uh, hey there, guys. I've been watching for quite a while, so I figured I might as well give a little something back. Hope you all have a great rest of April. Well, thank you. Oh, we'll do it. Absolutely. I hope you have a good rest of your April, too. Uh, yeah. yeah left. I hope you do have a good rest of your April. But then it ends. No more goodness after that. <laughs> like, oh, God. Yeah, I hope, I hope that May is a month of misery and terror. Oh, fair enough. Uh... I did see you and Fringy had that discussion with YMS on his Highlights channel, and I thought it was chill and interesting. I'm more on the side of YMS on the topic, but you did a good job, boy. Yeah, it was really kind of random. It wasn't um, really, a, it was just a conversation, it wasn't like a, you know, well, because he was, one side versus another side. I had caught up that he'd um, been having debates in general, 
through Destiny, yeah. and then because he was having Destiny moderate, and then I was like, oh, um, would you be up for talking about it? And then he was like, I'm, it's going to be today or never, and I was just like, oh, fuck. Um, and it, to be fair, it wasn't much to disagree on, it was more so clarifying and then giving some hypotheticals as to how it can be confusing, because ultimately, if the world had accepted the idea of, uh, you have ratings for movies that you've seen, and then ratings for the experience you had, even with movies that you hadn't completed at all. Like, if that was just common, it would probably be fine, and that's precisely what he's trying to offer, and he does signpost it. So, like, kind of a no-harm, no-foul, but at the same time, if I said then, I still wouldn't do it, it'd be like, so why? And I guess I'd be like, I don't know, it's... I think it's just too likely to give off the wrong impression, which is that um, if I got bored of, let's say, the Northman in the first 20 minutes and left, and then rated it based on that, I think everyone would be fucking upset as hell with me. Uh, so I suppose it's just a matter of people will interpret that score as necessarily your, your take on the thing as a whole when you're trying to specifically say that's not what the case is. Um, so maybe you ultimately sort of uh, uh, concede that you'll not be doing it for the sake of communication with the broader audiences. That's kind of the language goes, isn't it? Mm hmm Because, yeah, he, um, I think he did really well in defending his position, but he, he eventually conceded uh, that he would, he would no longer do it. I think, anyway, right? You put a video for that? I think so, yeah. Um... You said you guys wouldn't rule out watching a Wings compilation for the next Multimedia Medley. I beg you, please, watch a Wings Reading Troll Donations comp. It's so damn funny. Uh, I think I watched one of those in my own time, and yeah, it was hilarious. Um, but I don't know if that might be a bit of a risky one. Um, so there are some words he may say that could get us in trouble, because yeah. he just reads it out. But there are yeah, also... Certain names, names that takes a little too long to realize. Oh, wait, no, I see what you're doing. It's also a little bit like... Um, I wouldn't... It sounds a little, like, slippery slopey, be, but it's just, know? like, we can watch entertaining things and sort of laugh at them, and then if that, like, slowly became more and more and more, like, requested, like, you react to that, why can't you react to this? I'm also just laughing mm. at it, be like, we typically like to grab stuff, unless it's community made specifically for us, we typically like to go for stuff that we have commentary for, and it's gonna be yeah. weird to watch him be like, I'm a stupid retard. Hey, you can't say that we laugh and then we go now to break down the quality of this joke. It's like, well, no. Yeah, I don't know what the conversation would be about it. It'd just be laughing. So, um, yeah, this is, this is maybe, maybe, maybe. A song Scott Pilgrim ruined a generation of women, and it's all about lefty women. But one of the lines is, "But I'd still hit it if I could." Great song. I like it because it really rolls off the tongue. Yeah. I find a lot of conventionally attractive people to look fine, at least in terms of actors, they need to be pointed out to me, and even then, sometimes I don't see it. I don't know, it's weird. Maybe you're just a man of particular taste, and that is a-okay. I Maybe. feel that way sometimes about myself. Mola, wake up. You've been in a coma since 2017. Damn. The Last Jedi put you in a coma. <laughs> it all makes sense. Now this just says react to Thor. Oh, we will. React to Thor? That's the plan. One, one day. One day. Uh, not looking forward to it, though. I feel nervous all the time. Tense in the chest. Whenever they just whenever one of these happens. It's like a roller coaster I never get used to. It'll be fine this time, I tell myself. And then it happens. Uh, Panzer Hat has a better interpretation of Chief, and he's jobless and spends all his money on e-girls. Uh, I really hate this show, also high rags. Who's Panzer Hat? Well, hello. But, I don't know. Hmm. Pants are a hat? Pants a pants are, hat. Pants are, ha pants are pants. Pants a hat. Meaning they're using pants as a hat, presumably. Pants a hat? Hmm. I don't know. All right. Uh, oh. You there, Frankie? No. 
Oh, yes. Wait, what? Bringy, insulin is so expensive because it is protected by patent law, so only one person can make it and charge whatever they want. Oh, okay. Um, does that ever... Wow, I, I'm probably not worth asking because that person might not be here. Does that expire? That doesn't oh. seem... I'm going to say, like, is that true? I f that's the first time I've heard that about insulin, and I would have wondered... Is that true? Is that not The whole world needs a supply of insulin, be... right? Well, because a bunch of other places have insulin, and it's, it's uh... What's up? Uh, I'm just... Um... Hmm. I don't know. That, this is something I'd have to actually look into, and I don't even know enough about this field to give any meaningful... A quick Google says... It, sorry. Uh, as, 1923... Yeah. Banting, Best, and Collip were awarded the American patents for insulin. They sold the patent to a University of Toronto for a dollar each. Banting notably said, insulin does not belong to me, it belongs to the world. Okay. Well, and then that would probably explain why it's, it's available all across the world, right? Well, then again, apparently this article is called 100 Years from Gift to Greed. Right. So so maybe things yeah, change. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know enough about it. Um... In order for the insulin to be mass-produced and widely available, the pharmaceutical company Ellie Lilly & Co. were given the rights to do so. While this incredible advancement was intended as a gift from the discoverers, Eli Lilly and the other two other major insulin producers, Sanofi and Novo Nordisk, uh, have turned insulin into profit machines, assisting in bringing in billions of dollars in profit every year. By 1923, insulin was the highest-selling product in Eli Lilly's history. Okay, a gift to the world become a tool for price gouging patients all over the world, the greed of the pharmaceutical industry. Oh, it doesn't really say the thing yet. Okay. Um, I'm not going to pretend to know m more about yeah. insulin than I do. I really, I, I just don't know. Uh, just some guy lost 98% of his Twitter follows. 98%? How does that even happen? How does that happen? What happened? Yeah, what happened? Do you there? delete them, or because like there's that doesn't happen organically. Like, uh, presumably, like I, I don't, not even like a bad take can do that, right? Yeah, because yeah. surely, like, even if you blew up half of the world, I don't think you would. In, in fact, you might even gain followers for people being interested and in see what you have All to right, say. Wait. So, um, Just he did some stuff. What are we? What's? Oh my God, yeah, he's got like. 103 followers. Did he... What happened? Um... Well, uh, I, I honestly, I don't know anything about this. Uh, I, maybe it's a glitch or something? I don't know. Because, like I said, it's, it's, it's got to be something weird going on. Make that happen. That's something bad about Mr. Massacre? So, sorry, what now? I had to get something. What now? What's up with... I don't know. I uh, Honestly, I don't know. Uh, seems like there's a couple yeah. of theories in chat, but... Yeah, I don't know. Uh, ER oh. roasting Saint over Cutie's defense is great. Don't defend Cutie's. It's pretty simple. Don't defend cuties. You can't do the thing and say it's fine. They said doing the thing's bad. I don't want to stay on it even at all, but I will say just when fucking people were like, oh, so we can portray murder and it's not murder, but when we put it, it's like, just, 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 just stop. Murder's like, not fucking yeah. real. <laughs> like, I, yeah. Ugh. You're sexually yeah, exploiting children to say that sexually exploiting children is bad. You failed. The logic is. You had so one simple. job. Yeah. Moving on. Thanks for the Moving content on. and for the unique impact you've had on my life. As an example, my daughter is a stuffed bunny she used to call Bao Bao, but now she calls Bilbo Baggins. She is. <laughs> you know that? <laughs> that, that might have nothing <laughs> to do with us, but at the same time, maybe. He's a Mungo friend. The Mungo friend. That stuff, Bunny, has a lot of incredible money. quotes. Uh, poor form, Jay. Tell him to sleep when he's dead. I shall send that message right now. Don't worry about it. Oh no, Theo wants to brush his sister's teeth. That's, that's about that anime thing, isn't it? The weird... Ew. Yeah, I saw that. Weird. 
Hey, yeah. You know, At least I saw enough teeth, to important. get the idea, and then I went home. I left. But without Garrus, how will I get my weapons calibrated, Kappa? On the That's Normandy. right. He is. Well, he, yeah, but he's the he's busy calibrating them. Who else is going to do that? I mean, who, like uh, he's yeah. he's bit. Wait, you said he's busy doing it. Who else could do it? But he's doing. I'm saying it. That he's the one. Yeah, but I'm saying if the, if he wasn't around, who else would be able to do it? He's the oh, one. Oh, if who he does wasn't it. around, I guess you pr you probably have armorers and stuff who can um, calibrate. Sure, weapons. but but I mean, if you're going on a crazy mission, you know, and you need the best of the best, um, Garrus is probably the best of the best that you can get for that job. For calibrating weapons. Well, I mean, he's he's doing a lot. I guess that means that he he must be pretty good at it. <laughs> I mean, I'm definitely not ready to say that there are That's not some plenty interesting of logic. I don't know. <laughs> well, I, 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 he spends a lot of time doing it. He must be good at it. <laughs> I'm just thinking about a little. Yeah, as long as writers. as long as yeah. he's improving, you know, as long as he's getting better and better every day. Well, he will be if you let him get back to work, like he asks when Shepard comes down to have a chat and he's not ready. Um, hi Rags, Mola, and Fringolingolongus Ruppenheimer. Oh, hi. Hi. Fringy, every frame <laughs> a game? So, Aoife, FBI agent, so close. I'll get you one day, Witch Doctor. Yeah, not this time, though. <laughs> uh, why is Rags wearing sunglasses to bed? <laughs> don't, don't you? Doesn't everyone? Just, just the observation. Oh wait, Rags is killing. Well, I mean, he's not sleeping yet. Problem. He's clearly got the camera on him, and he's watching and, a screen. Like, yeah. And there's light. There's a light on in the room because it's cozy in the afternoon. If yeah. you sleep, but you put like something over your eyes, it will be darker. It will be darker, that's right. But I guess it's just, wouldn't it be something that would wrap, you know, like how Patty and Soma have those things that they wear on their, their you know, the things yeah. that cover up their eyes that like ties around their head. But your sunglasses would like fall off and get crushed if you turn around. No, they just sort of, it's really weird. They just sort of float on my snoot. It's really, I don't know. They do they seem just, to float. Yeah, they're, they're just sort of there, sunglasses. you know? I don't feel them, but they're just there. This these two dimensional yeah. marvels. Have you ever have you ever asked why? No. No? You prefer not to know? You know, just accept it for what it is and move on with your life as best you can. It just it just seems I just they've always been there. They've always right. been there. Yeah, and I guess if they've always been there, there's no reason to, you know, I can move you, them get, you get accustomed them. to them. Yeah. Uh why does Fringy have liver failure? Note the yellowing of his eyes can be a sign of liver failure. Oh, how's your liver doing, Fringy? Have you had your have you had your liver massaged lately? I, I'm I'm pretty sure my liver is fine. Um, I I it's just uh I I well, I, I haven't figured that. Out. Well, the thing is, is that uh, you know how you're talking about your, your sunglasses? They're just there. My my eyes are just yellow, and I've never really put much thought into why that was the case. Um, he took, a, he took a full course meal in fast food. The, wait, who? That'd be wings, I guess. The, a full... I like the <laughs> idea, you're undergraduate, you got your bachelor's in fast food. Yeah. <laughs> your bachelor. Ooh, someone in chat. Mola, been wanting to ask, what did you think of Angel? Uh, by virtue of its <laughs> final season, it's like my favorite show of all time. Um, I like it. <laughs> Do you? I wouldn't have. I wouldn't have known. Like I said, I try and take them together. Buffy and Angel are united. And anyone out there who's like, oh, I've watched Buffy, but Angel, I'm like, die, die. Yeah, that that is one of those upsetting ones. It's like, please watch like both of them. They are companion pieces, okay? Yes, they, they are. Benefit each other. Uh, oh wait. I don't know if you watched The Three Stooges, but if you haven't, I recommend it. It's some of the funniest I've seen, and it's from the 1900s. Uh, I have watched The Three Stooges, and there is something that's have. just... There, I find it amusing. I legitimately like find it funny. There's just something about it that it just... 
just the physical comedy and the reactions and the way that their timing is. Okay. There's just something like all of the the sounds that they make and they're hitting each other. Yeah, this I is just, what I mean. I I'm aware of the three Stooges through just references to them. You know. Yeah. They had quite an impact on culture. Mm -hmm. uh, what dynamic do you want more of in the next Batman? Alfred and Batman. Alfred and yeah. Bruce. Give me more. Yeah. A lot more. A lot more. Yeah. Yep. I want like ten scenes at least with Alfred in it with strong speaking parts. Damn it. Um, but then I would also like... Well, I, I mean, you know, just just your standard Batman and a and a strong villain. Uh, that, you know, more. Yeah, whoever we're gonna get next. Hopefully, not Joker. If we have him, maybe leave him until the end. And this is the thing. I it's funny. Of one mind, I'm like, Two Face, Freeze, sure, go for it. And if people were like, well, we've seen a lot of them, I'd be like, yeah, but this version of them, you know. And they'd be like, so why not Joker? And I'm just like, I. J I, I think it's <sighs> more so. Because in every rendition of Batman, like every single one, whereas there are some times when you don't see Dent and sometimes you don't see Freeze or, yeah. Even then, I just, like I just really... feel a bit jokered out. And this is the thing, if they did their own one and he was fantastic, I would probably be like, all right, I did enjoy that. Yeah, true. I just, yeah. that's how but I feel. I guess feel. It's just, it would be nice to see a fantastic Mr. Freeze again. Yeah, and I'd be really curious how you would go about grounding him, because I doubt he's going to have a Freeze gun. <laughs> I mean... Yeah, I'm not sure what you would do. Uh, also, you got, would, I... would Freeze work in this Batman universe? So what you do with him is he could just be a cryogenics expert and there's something to do with that in the story. You know, like it's... I don't think you make him a supernatural being of a, a free, no, no. frozen person. I don't think you do that. Clayface could work. So Clayface is a really tough one to put into this universe. I don't know if that works. That would works. be a tough one. Yeah, I... Is hmm. taking... The element of him being a clay person out of Clayface kind of... I know you might say, like, oh, taking like the Freeze they, uh, out of Mr. Freeze doesn't change him, does it? It's like, well... It, I, I mean, hmm. a real option would be Victor Zaz. That feels like a, uh, this this world might be the opportunity to do that. And I think Scarecrow will be able to work. Even the Nolan... I think Scarecrow can work. I think he, Nolan I think Scarecrow can... would fit into this universe, I think. A guy who's developing a drug. That's It's the really straightforward way of introducing someone like Scarecrow. And then the... Illusions and nightmares that come from it allow you to have access to all kinds of imagery. Yeah, Do not waste okay. Scarecrow if you have him. He's so fucking cool. Scarecrow is awesome. He's like one of the coolest Batman villains. What are y'all's opinion of Doom Patrol? I know I nothing seen. about it. I haven't seen it. I think uh, Meme Repository really likes it. I've heard good things, yeah. You could do the origin of Clayface if he's a disfigured actor and not a clay monster. True, and you could also have it be that he's able to... I, I don't want to go like to mouse levels. You don't want to do the... Yeah, exactly. Exactly. But mouse. maybe we can make something work that's a bit more grounded. I don't know. We are we are definitely in danger of going to mouse territory, though. If we start giving him surgery to have the ability to manipulate his face. And look like anybody. Um, they said Doom Portal, but I assume they mean Doom Patrol. Uh, guessing, because I don't think I know anything called Doom Portal. Massive, Doom Portal. Future Me, Mauler. The Curb Tsunami comment was in relation to uh, the Batman review where you and Fringy had your miscommunication. Oh no, I, I knew, I knew. Um, also, Fringy, how is... Oh, he might not be here. Um, uh oh. Okay. Uh, no idea how Hello Future Me turned into Massive Future Me, lol. Oh. Yeah, because it does say ma <laughs> Your phone corrects Hello into Massive. <laughs> hello. Uh, also, Fringy, how is your avatar dressed? Just curious. Oh, um... So it's like a... It's a green button-up shirt. And then a darker green vest. Uh, and then the, the sort of like... I'm not sure. I actually don't know what the coat is exactly. I think it's meant to be like some sort of like, either like a, a Victorian era like trench coat that's brown, but also like it's got a hood <laughs> on it as well. Um, and then just like grey trousers. That's uh, that's the that's the style, I guess, of the character. 
and gloves, black gloves or grey gloves, I guess. And then, of course, the, the of course you can't forget the plank doctor mask, green. Uh, thoughts on the new animated film Bad Guys? Just saw it and enjoyed it a lot. Also, hi, Racklefoot. Hi. I know of it. I've seen commercials, but I don't know anything about it. I want to watch it. it. Looks cool. Yeah, I'd be, I'd be keen on seeing it. Mm. Based on a uh, Australian children's uh, book, picture book. Oh. Um, also, someone's just mentioning that they're tired of realistic comic adaptions. We could have it so that he legit is a person who fell into a vat of freezing whatever and, and, and you, the whole thing, and even the freezing gun. It's just that the Batman universe, as they've got it right now, doesn't feel like it would be that accommodating of what yeah. feels a lot more like a supervillain as opposed to a bad person who has come to a conclusion, or rather, a person who's, who's come to a conclusion about their values and they have something important to take care of and it's going to require hurting a lot of people or whatever. It's... The Riddler is, like, as, as people have compared him to, he's like a serial killer and it feels a lot more like something like Seven, where, yeah, uh, you know, look at the Riddler in um, Batman Forever. It's like, that is... That can't be in the Batman. <laughs> or if it were... Wouldn't feel quite right, uh, I imagine. Yeah, there's like certain... There are certain Batman characters that lend themselves better to a... Um, a grounded setting. You would be thinking of like... Because League of, League of Assassins kind of fits in more. Yeah. Joker. Yeah, yeah Ra's al Ghul kind of... is probably as far as you can go. If he had a pool that could bring him back to life... I don't think... You might be able life. to get away with that. I'm not sure. Only, only if it's guarded by an old-timey Confederate war general. Yes. Bane as well, you can find ways to work. But yeah, he's just a meth comparatively, addict. Poison Ivy, like Killer Croc, these are mm. these are harder ones to try and integrate. I guess the only thing I can imagine with Poison Ivy is she was like a bioterrorist or something. That's probably the yeah. Best she's a do. she's an environmental terrorist and she's a like a like a chemist, so she's good at making toxins. Yeah, it and, would have to be that. Yeah. Yeah, she, and they can give hallucinations, and they could cause all kinds of respiratory issues. But then, and once they're doing hallucinations, I think that gets a little bit. We're treading a bit too much on scarecrow territory. No, it depends. I think it depends entirely on the nature and the visuals of the hallucinations. Yeah, sure. If it's just things get hazy, it just like it, it's like you're getting high almost, and it's sort of incapacitating because you just get you just get this this strange elating sensation. Um, or, Someone in chat has mentioned Court of Owls. They should do Court of Owls in this universe. I think that'd be Court a great idea. And from what I understand, Hush is a good More choice as well. I think you could do Hush, yeah. I think you got a lot of options. Batman's got, you know, it's basically Batman and Spider-Man have, like, the best rogues gallery, in my opinion. Um, there's so many characters you can pull. And I have seen someone say in chat, I would like to see a slightly less grounded Batman. I kind of agree, in a sense. Um, I'm really happy with what we've got here, and I think it's really cool. But I also do want to see a more... It feels like we've, um, thanks to how shit the DCEU's been handled, we've been robbed of a Batman who interacts a lot more with the rest of the DC universe, interacting with, like, magic users and aliens and, um, and like, Amazons, you know, like you see more in the comics, where he interacts with the broader world. Um, if he do if Batman he doesn't do have his own credit Batman? card, then don't even fucking talk to me. That person, by the way, Firefly? said... Firefly? Like, yeah, Firefly's gonna be in uh, Batgirl, though, so, yeah. Uh, that person said, I counter with the part where he hit his head in the bridge, and I'd be like, you're correct, <laughs> that is really goofy and the kind of thing that yeah. you can get in like a Batman and Robin type thing, but how much was it highlighted, at least by us, as like a moment of like, oh... You know, not mm -hmm. not as a moment of like, oh right, I'm getting, I'm understanding this tone now, yeah. So, um, and this is the thing, it's just, it's not, I don't want to say it's an impossibility, I just wouldn't expect them to do anything that goes over a, a certain very blurry line of, of superpowers. Yeah. Um, obviously, especially with how they've started with Zero, like, Riddler has nothing except can write some riddles. That's, that's that's about it. 
in because we haven't even like have we got any technology in in the Batman that's I guess aside from the armor the eye thing the eye, eye thing, thing. oh yeah, the, the eye, eye thing camera. yeah that's probably fair but otherwise it's trying a lot harder to be um super duper grounded yeah and maybe um after this trilogy presumably if it is a trilogy is complete there there will be a market once again for a more uh campy Batman maybe I don't know well. It, it it would be um I would just like uh I I do like the idea of Batman interacting with other heroes. It's just that I don't think we're gonna see that for probably like another decade at this point. Um, like I would expect this Batman the Batman universe to persist for a little while. Um, and I'm not sure if they're gonna run adjacent Batman stories. You know. I certainly though I don't want them to through some multiverse shit integrate the the bat stuff like batman stuff into the dceu i want it off on its own i want it safe yeah. stay away from the dceu stay far far away and keep yeah. it far away from you yep avoid I it like the it. plague mm -hmm. Morley, you decomposing whale i asked if blythe is welsh and you never answered i feel tricked bat stabbed and quite possibly bamboozled didn't I answer that? I thought I did. I said I don't know, because I don't know uh, the lore for the if characters in the game. exist in that universe? Um, oh, that's, you well, that's true, strange. too. That's in fact, I'd say it doesn't yeah. exist in the Elder Ring universe. You could have Hugo Strange. That's a good idea. Oh, wait, are they asking the word, what the word Blythe means? Is that what they're saying? You can Google that. Well, you can just tell us. Well, the thing is, they said, I asked if Blythe is Welsh. The word is Welsh. The character m probably isn't Welsh in canon. Uh oh. Well, there's no whales. So. It means. Well. It means wolf. Is, it gonna, is that okay? Yeah, it's just like. Kind of a wolf guy, you know, it makes sense. Yeah, it does. That's the. Yeah. I mean, I'm not faulting it for not being accurate. It's just like, yeah, well. Like, yeah. Right then, uh, is the High Rags meme in reference to Infinity War's High Drax scene? Because that's what comes to mind whenever I hear High Rags. Also, High Rags. Hello. And you guys love the fact that that's been going on for so long. People just do it and they have no idea why it's happening. <laughs> <laughs> kind of funny, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Worth. There is an Origins tab in efab.me that'll have a grand explanation and link to why and when and where and wibbly wabbly for why that's happening. Don't you worry. This Don't you podcast worry. is lore for its memes. How exciting. Uh, Google the Nazarene mutant. It's real. Uh, here. Jeebus. Um. Let's see. Yeah, I guess this is... Uh, the Nazarene Mutant, the title is New Marvel, a bit of release, Snowboy, Jesus Christ, the Nazarene Mutant, as least blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I guess a new comic has sort of established Jesus Christ as a mutant who raised people from the dead and inspired a church. I just watched you beat that in the last five minutes, and now you've given us an actual heaven. Yes. Oh, wait, and then they say they don't like using that word just the waiting room is just a backup and he says yes which is a cowardly word for heaven they don't like saying heaven as it scares them with honesty what is this what yeah what is this well okay um it's odd it's an odd boy uh thoughts on the northman pretty epic i've not seen it ha haven't seen it yet only hearing I good plan things. To. Yeah. Uh, have you played the Bloodborne Bloodborne Demake? Yeah. The same creator is making a Bloodborne Cart game. Are you excited for Lies of P? Lies of. Oh, is that the, the game that look is like a Bloodborne esque game? The PS One looking. That's the Demake. Well, um, that's already been released, I think. Yeah. Lies of. Because I, I, that sounds familiar in the way of me thinking, why is it named that? I, uh, if that's the one I'm thinking of. What a strange fucking name for a game. But yeah, Lies of P is, is, is a game. And yeah, it just, if, if, this, if this is the one I'm thinking of, it's like it feels 
inspired at least somewhat by Bloodborne. Possibly. Uh, yeah, no, that, that would be a game I'd like to check out. Um, as for, um, I have not played the Bloodborne remake. I know that Metal did. Uh, and I'm aware that Bloodborne Cart is coming from that same... Bloodborne Cart? Yep. Yeah, just a PS1 uh, type cart racer with Bloodborne. <laughs> you know, the Bloodborne world. Nice. It's cool. I like that PlayStation 1 32-bit, that is becoming a style. Yeah, yeah, I like it too. It's really neat. Mola, long-time fan here. Amnesia Rebirth videos, maybe? No, I am so never, ever, 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 ever going to play that game ever again. Um, yeah, um, don't ask us to do it. We talked about it, and that's all we want to do, because I hate that game, and it's terrible, and it sucks, and it's stupid, and it's dumb, want to hear and I hate it. me, Rags, and Metal go on a four-hour tangent about Amnesia Rebirth during a meme fab, or at least that was the intention. Um, you can find it. One of the EFAPs. Well, type in Mall of Rags, EFAP, and then Amnesia Rebirth. It yeah. should come up. EFAP, EFAP, Amnesia Rebirth, and it'll be there. But uh, yeah, I never want to go the, near that fucking game ever again. I hate it. But Bad more than just what away. it is, it represents something in meta that really pisses me off for how I used to view that dev team. Um, Trump put a cap on insulin price. Biden repealed it. No clue if true. Mm -hmm. Oh. How it would have worked, but uh, yeah, insulin. Uh, I guess a form of gold dust out there. And rightly so. Um, just some guy did a purge after Rakita did a stream on Just Some Guy. Uh, apparently, I, 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 well, so, some something something's clearly happened. Um, <laughs> because yeah. Uh, well, you I, don't organically lose like ninety eight percent of your Twitter followers. Yeah, I you'd have to like not that quickly, right? Like in the course of a day yeah, or two. Yeah, that's just not a thing that happens. Can you? You can't get ninety eight percent of follows you. I didn't know that you could. I didn't think you could. Oh wait, so if I block Springy, for example, would that mean you're not technically you wouldn't be able oh, to follow? Oh, I guess right? I get. I guess, yeah, I guess. Right? So, could, like, if you, you blocked block a bunch of your own just, followers, but someone just is said that what block okay. bot. So if oh, okay. So like, if you activated well, a bot that was based on their mutual follows or something, and then that blocked all of those people, then I, I guess that, that could explain, right? Apparently, I'm still following him, and I'm friends with a lot of people who are friends with. I think I'm following Rakita as well. So I would have thought the block, mm, yeah, the I... block bot would include me, but maybe not. Block no bot. Idea. Um, yeah, I, I, obviously we're just incredibly out of loop on this one. Uh, okay. Um, which Arcane songs do you think work in the scenes they play? Let me know if I asked this before. Also, bonjour to Rags and hola to Birdman. Oh, hey. Um, there's a lot of great tracks that fit the, uh, the tone that they're going for, given scenes. Um, yeah. So, what's funny is... I would go as far as saying I love the choices for all of them, except both uses of uh, Enemy being its intro. I feel like we could have gone with a much better song to intro that show, considering its tone. Um, and then when it's used in the actual episode, if you remember, it's a bit awkward. Um, because we're... I think we talked about this, but we're dealing with... Um, Victor is in a hospital being told that he's got limited time. And then you have enemy being like, Jane, oh, the misery. And it's like, um, That's a bit of a tone of whiplash, you know? <laughs> yeah, no, that's not quite working out. So th it would just be mainly, it's just enemy. Um, and I don't even hate the song. I, I just don't think it matches the places it was put in. However, I think their choices for all the other ones are pretty good. And then upon re-listening, I, I came to like the songs quite a bit. Hated most of Arcane's music. A lot of it is pop music, and that can be like acid to some people's ears. So. You know, I, I I like all kinds of genres. It's funny that my favorites are like metal. Um, but yeah, I don't know if you've got anything. Oh uh, no, no, that was. Uh... 
I agree, yeah. I think uh, for the most part, the music choices uh, make sense. But I think I am starting to change my mind on anime in terms of like, yeah, maybe... Like if it if it was if it was entirely like the first half, I think that would be an easier sell now that I think about it. Um, and that's we are caught up with the days. We've wow. done so many. Uh, we How have, yeah. Exciting. That was that was nine and a half hours of super chat catch up. Um, and we're still not there yet. <laughs> to yeah, put, but to put we'll, it that way, we'll get there in time. But like I said, yeah, we've uh, we've actually caught up with. An EFAB episode that'll go out eventually, and there are more that we will uh, chug away at, and you'll catch us on Wednesday, catching up on who knows. I, I I don't even know which one we'll be catching up on, but I'll I'll figure it out ahead of time, and then we'll be doing it. Spicy pizza sauce versus garlic chicken pizza. I, Spi I, I wait, so okay, so both are, garlic chicken pizza. So I'm assuming this is both the pizzas. One of them has a spicy sauce, and the other one has garlic chicken. Um, what what was the first one? Sauce? Is it, did they just say spicy? It's a spicy. Sauce? Versus garlic. Well, I I'm gonna go the second. I quite like garlic chicken in general, but I like chicken as a pizza topping. I think it's a really oh good god pizza yeah. Uh, well. So my logic here is I probably like both of them, but it depends on how spicy the spicy sauce is and how much it can distract from the taste of the pizza. While garlic chicken, I feel like it's a safe choice. I'm not going to lose on that one. Yeah, I think it's a really safe choice. I love chicken on pizza. I get it all the time on pizza, and I'm not that keen on spicy stuff. So uh, I'm going to go with the, the latter. Yeah, I want some garlic chicken pizza. Pizza. Um, what about you, Fringy? What do you reckon? Uh, and the t um, yeah, probably the garlic chicken. Yeah, actually, yeah, probably the garlic chicken one. Um, all right, well, there you go. Uh, and then you got was the shoe thing a joke? But what happened was someone said, um, I think have shoe on for EFAP, and then I said that would be ridiculous. We would never ever have shoe on for anything to do with EFAP at any point ever. That's totally not something that will ever happen. Nope. Nope. Now, to be fair, I didn't say Kappa, or I guess I have now. Kappa face. And that's it. So, I think yep. we're probably going to head right. out now, because there's life be calling. Um, but thank you all so much for hanging out with us, all for keeping us company, and for these very kind donations. You'll see us all again on Wednesday, but um, you'll also see me, I think, tomorrow with Drinker doing a catch-up. And then... Uh, Tuesday, doing a show and a catch-up, and then Wednesday for a catch-up, and then Saturday for a show. Lots of streaming. Yeah. Um, I don't think there's really anything to tell you guys from my end, so what about uh, you two? You want to wanna say anything before we go? I was going to have a video out uh, tomorrow, Sunday, but I did a copyright test and I couldn't get away with it, so I'm going to have to uh, just make another version and unfortunately, because it takes a, quite a while to render, I think I might just hold it off and release it on Monday to give me some time. Because if, plus I'm tired, uh, just been up all day. So it'll probably be Monday. Yeah. It would have been up uh, tomorrow, but, you know, copyright. So, oh well. I'll just I'll just go back to one of my freebie options and it will be a-okay. Mm -hmm. Then hopefully a new uh, one after that. Uh, that's pretty soon because it's mostly done. Sweet. Uh, I end game is it's nearly done. It's real close. Um, I can't say exactly when it will be done yet because there's still a good amount of work to do. Uh, but the update would be that hopefully by the end of today, the timeline for like the first pass, the first draft of the cut will be complete. Um, then it's a matter of going back through polishing, re-recording flub lines or lines where there's peaking or just issues. Um, my, you know, final tweaks, reviews, copyright. It's it's close. It's it's close to being done. Uh, but that's all I got for you right now. Alrighty. Um, like I said, thank you all for joining us. Good night. Good night. Bye-bye. See you later, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.